think one of my favorite character names that I had came from Rags, and and there was Chuck the Coom. Chuck the Coom. <laughs> Chuck yeah. the Coom. I named Does the character Chuck like that. Coom, or is he? He is the Chuck Coom. the Coom. Oh my God, that was a very good name. What about Lightning? <laughs> I don't know you if you can say that on Good old anymore, Lightning but... Mac. You gotta get that that white I'm fireball. Now, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think a God Slayer, God Slayer fireball or something like that is like the white one you can throw. If, uh... Black flame, yeah. <laughs> right, just need to go public and uh, we're ready. To... Well, we are already. The re-upload people are listening to this right now. Like, oh, right hello, re-upload oh, people. Hi, guys. Hope How you're, are you doing? You're doing all right. You should also I hope say you enjoyed hello the stream the first time. To the unlisted people as well, because they'll hear this. You know, they'll be the first to hear this. Because all the live people are going to miss this bit. This bit right here. <laughs> wow, they're going to be so mad. It's a secret. They'll catch this <laughs> bit, though. This bit's oh, cold this, now, this I bit? Think. Yeah. Man, they, they miss all the part where the live people heard how bad they are. They and did. And how much we hate them. <laughs> um, I think the plan is going to be that I'm going to throw on the muted playthroughs of me in the background, so I don't need to give mm -hmm. watch together to anybody. That's just a visual of those at home, and I will do my best, depending on what everyone's talking about, uh, to find the parts of my playthrough that match what we're talking about. Okay, Legendary. that is my plan. It's a good plan. I like your plan. You. I like this metal guy. We should bring him on. Mm. Nice, no, ugly. Oh, that's fair. You can um, smell the ugliness. So, hello everybody, and welcome to Hi. the Elden Ring Fap, where we talk about a video game that has taken the world by storm. I it's guess. It's true, it has. Storm Vale? <laughs> that's that's going to have to be a topic on its own, Elden Ring's uh, cultural impact, I suppose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, jeez. not like Elden Ring's cultural impact? <laughs> oh my goodness, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh, no. Theo's just mad that his little cool game is being liked by everyone. Yes, yes, that's exactly <laughs> why I'm mad, <laughs> and ironically. Wow. This is my game, go away. Leave me alone. Okay, um, <laughs> so, structure right, we're probably just gonna get right into it, I don't see why not. Should we do the thing we no. typically do, of everyone gives a short version of their thoughts on the game before we start talking about all of everything? I think that's probably wise. Do we start with uh, with rags? <laughs> I honestly, I thought that it was far too difficult, and there needs to be an easy <laughs> mode for people like me, because all I play is all I do is pay my way through Plants vs Zombies Two on my phone, and I just uh, I, a game that challenges me. I just don't really appreciate that. That's not why I buy games so that I could pay money in video games. And I, I, I don't appreciate this kind of game. Before you know it, I'll just, I, I'm going to kill myself. Oh, no. <laughs> because of Elden Ring. Do... I, am, I am owed victory. Well, one, one person less for Theo to worry about. There you go. Absolutely, yeah. Chad. <laughs> no, I, 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 actually, I, don't, I have not played Elden Ring. I've watched uh, probably four, five, six, probably about six, seven hours worth of Mahler's playthrough of it. What did you gain um, from that? <laughs> um... That it's, uh, there's things that I'd like about it, there's things that I wouldn't like about it. Uh, I'm pretty, by watching you, it's tough to say because it was, like, it was sped up a bit. I wasn't, like, absorbed fully into it. But it seems like it's a game that, uh, yeah, it's it's the, re I think it sort of confirmed to me what I sort of figured all along. Dark Souls and this, the, the Souls games, are, they're just not for me. They're not the kind of game that I enjoy. Um, I just rather play other things. Uh, it's just not for me. Uh, maybe later I'll uh, I'll delve in and see if maybe this one is something that I could uh, add to my list of beat games. Uh, maybe it's some project that I sort of you know chisel away at over time. But as it stands right now, it's just not really my thing. But uh, a lot of people seem to love it, and I'm very games are not that great. Huh? I didn't hear you. What's yeah. that? Do you think that these types of games are not that great, or do you think that they are no, like fantastic? I just don't think they're. You just don't like them. I can't make much of a qualitative statement. I just sort of my understanding of them and sort of watching people play them is just I just don't think that I would enjoy them. Uh, yeah. It's not really what I find fun and engaging in a game. 
though it's always subject to change. Maybe one day down the road, I'll pick up Elden Ring and I'll be like, wow, this is amazing and I, and I really love it. But my my relationship with hardcore games is very strange. There are some that I love. There are some that I hate. And it's it's very much. I don't know. It, it's 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 just it's strange. But I I, don't I wouldn't think it's strange, uh, cool, right? like people have different tastes. Um, yeah, it depends on how it's done, because hardcore is such a broad kind of term, because it's everything from Dark Souls to Escape from Tarkov to all kinds of different things. And they have they, they cover such a swath of mechanics and punishments and challenges and expectations of the player. Maybe that's the the big thing that separates them all. So just saying that I like hardcore games. I don't know if that means you like Dark Souls or you like Daisy or if you like Escape from Tarkov or if you like whatever hardcore game you're talking about. So uh, I haven't played it. I'm just sort of here to listen, ask a question here and there. Uh, all like what I can say though is I think the game's very lovely. Um, <laughs> it has a, it looks very good uh, from what I've seen. I really like a lot of the art style in it. I love this dark fantasy kind of westernish style um almost like it's it's like a it's like the old you know the old uh sword sorcery movies from like the 70s and 80s where they're just kind of dark and they like early D D sort of stuff it kind of has that vibe to it for me uh and i really like it i really appreciate the aesthetic and there seems to be a huge amount of content in it and i really i'm really glad to hear that and I'm glad it's selling well because I'm glad when a single player game sells really, really well, because uh, I don't want the gaming trends to just issue us into the multiplayer microtransaction territory. Um. All right, then. I, I figured that, that, that that's not um, in any way to torture you. It was literally just so people understand. Um, this one's going to have a lot less rags and fringy in it compared to <laughs> everyone else, because the difference here is that I think everyone else has completed it, which can take up to a hundred hours. And so, mm -hmm. if anyone so is like, "Wow, Fringy and Rags didn't complete it," this isn't a movie, okay? This isn't two hours. This is a yeah, big and commitment. I'm, I don't want to play. I don't want to like play a game. I don't. I don't want to play a game that I don't think is for me that I like because I would just hate it. And if I don't want to, because not everything's for me. I'm not seven years old, and I I don't think that everything in the world needs to conform to what I like, and everything needs to be something that I can beat and give me challenges that are just meant for me to overcome. So I'm um, gonna let uh, everyone else sort of enjoy their uh, their video their video. Oh, I, I can already see this. So it might be worth wrestling. Um, I actually spoke with Az about this on a stream. I said to him that um, unfortunately, we've already got too many people and he's not the first person that i said we've got too many people for there are <laughs> three other youtubers who were interested unfortunately they were they were further down the queue in terms of uh, asking to come in i figured that myself and one other of the people here would be enough to get us five hours of talking about this game but um yeah i threw in a couple extras the thing is theo fortier metal myself and mark i have i i imagine we've got a shit ton to say about this game <laughs> Adding anyone oh my, else yes. just means that the individual will be able to talk a lot less. Uh, there are so many fucking subjects hey, to go over. Mola, Hello. Uh, maybe you should kick me out of the... I'm seeing some people want me to leave so that someone else can take um, the so, But if you know, you're know, going to talk what? anyway, then it wouldn't so, matter. So, um... <laughs> It could, funny, though, it could go over the I'm nature of what EFAP is, I guess. Uh, it's a show <laughs> that's run by funny. myself, Fringy, and Rags. Uh, <laughs> like, this... The, the, Hi. Uh, they, they will be here because they they are the hosts, and they will <laughs> discuss mechanics as brought up. The thing is, the, the really cool and interesting thing is, let's take a random subject like graphics. We all talk for a while about how the game looks, and then we talk more broadly about what games should look like. And you know what? Rags and Fringy can jump in on that easily. They don't actually need to have played the game at that point. Well, I mean, here's an idea. I, I might uh I might just boot up my my Elden Ring right now and just uh Ooh. play a little bit of it while I'm uh while I'm sitting here. Kick more. Wow. All right, fine, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um. So well, in that case, then, because we'll just I'll just move up the ladder in a sense, because uh, Rags has watched a decent chunk. Uh, Fringy is the next up with having played 
what we could call a chunk. It's all relative. Um, you want to just go over quickly what, what, what you've got so far, and then I'll, I will go through the rest of us who have all got bazillions of hours. Guess not. No, I mean, no, you don't have not. to. It's all right. If you've got a little <laughs> stage fright, it's okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> are you there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. I was like kind of scared. I was like, did he say Mark before that? I was, I was like, no one's saying anything. I'm like, am, am, I, am, am I, I dropping the, the crazy ball? one? <laughs> I'm the crazy one. In in my defense, I'm very tired. Um, <laughs> what what was the uh, what were the what were the Oh, just just Give a quick of sort of said. a brief thing of of you. What is your relationship with with Elden Ring right now, and any thoughts you have, just so oh, that people uh, get a, a grip, and then we'll we'll move on with sure. everyone else. Sure. Um, I've played three hours because I oh, wow. got I got bogged down with other things. Um, like Mario Kart. Which, uh, <laughs> Did yes. you play Mario Kart instead of Elden Ring? That's fine. I, That's yes, fine. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, re the reason why I've been playing Mario Kart instead of Elden Ring is because Elden Mario Kart. Kart is nice and safe. So, <laughs> it's a so, friendly it's world that takes care it's of funny, you. funny, because if I'm Mario... going to play something random, it's like, oh, I guess i play some Dark Souls. <laughs> Mario Kart doesn't steal my runes when I come in eighth place. <laughs> well, it's just, um... It'll throw Mario... a blue shell at you when you're in first, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, Mario Kart is kind of a hardcore experience online, but, uh, but nevertheless... I, uh, yeah, I, I, I know I had other things that, I, I played a little bit, though, a few days ago. I would have played more, but then things came up. Um, my experience with, uh, FromSoft games is I've beaten Dark Souls 3, basically Bloodborne, until I got up to Orphan of Cos, and then eight hours later, I kind of just stopped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I played a bunch of Sekiro, but I didn't beat it. Um, and I think I played like a couple hours of Dark Souls 1. That's basically me. So I'm somewhat familiar with the series. Um, and in what little I've played of Elden Ring, I like it, but I don't think I have anything of value to add <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to this discussion. But, uh, well, apart from questions and, uh, and yeah, this is very much a, I'm very keen to hear what everybody else has to say. Because uh, I don't have much to add, but I'm going to keep pressing on with it. I well, yeah, one of the, it's going to be a lot of fun. One of the things that is super beneficial for having myself, Metal, Theo, Fortier, I'm not actually sure about Mark on this one, is that we have a vast and obsessive knowledge of all the other games that came before this one. Except for me with Sekiro. Um, but I played the fuck out of DS1, 2, and 3, and Bloodborne. And so we'll have a lot of probably tangential discussions on how they've taken stuff from the old games and used it, or not used it, you know, different choices in that way. Um, which even if... Well, I mean, uh, I guess uh, POV on this one is interesting because I wonder how the discussion changes depending on if the only game that someone's played is Elden Ring, or mm. if they haven't played any of the Souls games, but they played Bloodborne, you know? Like, uh, it... Because I think... This is a game that is always going to get compared to those games because you can see the DNA of like Demon Souls in it all is of very all much games. Dark Souls Four. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I guess maybe that'll be the discussion because I do know that like the big difference between Elden Ring and pretty much every other game that uh, from Soft have made that this one is like just a full fledged open world game as opposed to a metroidvania kind of uh where like it, it opens up in time as you explore different areas and then you can loop back and things like that uh whereas this one's just like a i've heard comparisons to breath of the wild which might be interesting because i have played breath of the wild so there may be points where it's it might be interesting to compare then again i haven't played that game in a while but yeah i'm i'm uh I'm mostly observing this one, mm. but I'm looking forward to it. All right, then. Um, I figure we'll, with the rest of us, we'll just go left, right. Nice and simple. Um, for Tia, take as long as you want, but preferably keep it under five minutes. You know, just uh, <laughs> what's uh, what's your broad take on Elden Ring? Um, well, I think it's amazing. Um, I... Let's see, right now I have 150 hours in the game, a little bit more. Um, and 
like my background with these games is like I'm a Soulsborne geek. Like Muller said, I've I've I have several hours in all of the previous games, except for Demon Souls. I haven't played Demon Souls, but the others I've played hundreds of hundreds of hours of. Um, and I think it's it's super fun. Uh, the further I play, the more I got like odd i guess uh, of how much content there was like I, I played for i explored an area for ages and i was like all right i'm probably done here and then i turned a corner i was like all right there's another 20 hours of content to need <laughs> <laughs> and um but i do think that when we start diving into things more in depth i think the objective value of this game is going to drop lower than than my opinion of the game is because uh, there there are a few tisms that I've noticed and that other people have noticed and we have discussed a little bit before before this stream. Um, but I, I like my personal opinion is it's absolutely amazing. I've had so much fun in this game. Absolutely amazing. All right, Mock, you're next up. Hey, hello there, everybody. Uh, I'm in a similar boat to Forte in that I've played all of the other Souls games. Um, I actually I have played Demon Souls though, but I actually just played it for the first time on PS5 last year. I was uh, reviewing it for Geeks and Gamers. I found though that that was the easiest one in the series by far for me, at least. I don't know if it was just because I had experience at that point or what, but um, I I'm a bit of a Soulsborne geek as well. I would say I'm not incredible at the games like because i mean often when you say like yeah some of my favorite games are the souls games and second row is the only game i have all the steam achievements of but i'm not like a soul level one like wretch build just nothing but a club and one shotting every boss kind of player mm -hmm. i i have to learn and need to take the time to learn the boss patterns and you know, like to use the meme, get good at them. Uh, but I've got 150 hours in Elden Ring. Um, I did finish the game and I um, kind of regret the tactics I used in the, the latter half from uh, Gods Can Duo on, especially with things like Millennia. I was kind of abusing the Horfrost Stomp and the Mimic hmm. Summon. But I think very, very similar to Fortia. I think my personal subjective rating of it will probably be higher than what the objective will be because there are a couple of those elements that break the balance so <coughs> due, due in no small part to the fact that this is absolutely the most ambitious game that from's ever made but I, I think overall it's very good and if you like this kind of game i would strongly recommend it sweet all right for me um anybody who's watched my streams would pretty much already know I quite adore this game. I think it's wonderful in, in all kinds of ways, and I can't wait to appreciate a lot of those uh, in a meta sense as well as just what the game's offering and where it sits in the progression of Soulsborne games, because I'm also a little obsessed with all of them. But um, at the same time, I realize like the more I think about and criticize different elements, the more I'm like, hmm, there is a lot in here that... Uh, would definitely be considered flaws and not just of like balancing th that can be fixed but also just choices they made that relate to uh, the grander ideas that they have but i wouldn't want to be looking to make any kind of uh crazy statements of, of flaws or praises that wipe out either or the other that's why i think this conversation is probably gonna be pretty long um but i love it it's, it, it would definitely be in the ranks of like some of my favorite games of all times um and i think once i've done enough playthroughs of it i'll probably have a way better view of uh exactly where it sits and how good it is but i'm still pretty impressed overall it's just that um when we get into the the specific details i imagine it could come across much more clearly in some other direction but uh yeah i still i still loved it i kind of love them all <laughs> except ds2 and, and that's you know like the uh <laughs> the reality of you. it um i think in our bloodborne streams we went over loads of things that we thought were wrong with that game but we still oh, all yeah. fucking adore it like it's uh it's complicated but hopefully we can be clear on how all that kind of makes sense um yeah that's that i suppose uh metal what do you think uh i mean it's gonna be pretty similar to all the other things that just been said i fucking love this game i mean i've basically been streaming non-stop when i'm not having work i'm just online streaming this game every goddamn day because <laughs> i'm fucking obsessed with the game uh i think right now would actually rate it as my second favorite souls game at the moment but maybe the honeymoon phase will stop at some point but we'll see uh that's just me at the moment 
I I really love this. I have a really good time. I have 130 hours or something in the game right now. Uh, similar kind of re regret my my build choice the first time around. Not that I, that I don't, didn't have fun, but I didn't really learn the bosses and stuff like that. But we'll be going over that in more detail, I'm sure. And yeah, I'm already halfway through my second playthrough, pretty much. Just a melee build now, which is very different gaming experience right now. Because uh, I did a ranged build last time, and that was very, very different. But yeah, a bunch of tisms, uh, as already mentioned, which we will go over. Uh, yeah, I think just, just keep it. I just keep it short because otherwise I'm just gonna go rant. So I'm, I'm finished. All <laughs> right, and finally, Theo, how much did you <laughs> love the game? Oh man, <laughs> well, I've used the word hate in recent discourse. <laughs> I'm starting to come around to the opinion that that might be a bit too strong. However, mm. I have a distinct degree of disdain for this game because I think it stands as a betrayal of everything that makes Dark Souls 1 as special as it is. I think I, I'm i really, really annoyed and upset by this game being what it is. In like oh, very short form. Oh, I mean, you could go yes. a little longer than that if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I... Where to begin? <laughs> like, in in every regard, it's. I, I think it's no longer what FromSoft were originally good at, and what originally made their games worthwhile, as a, other than maybe in terms of boss design. I think it's lost all of the spark in terms of the cohesiveness of how their games tend to be put together. Uh, this one just being sort of haphazard in its execution. I think it's got all sorts of mechanical issues that are showing the limits of this of this framework that they design their games in as action games, because they're leaning increasingly more on the action side of their gameplay. Uh, and the more they do, the more it becomes clear why they didn't do that in the first place with Dark Souls as much. Um, I think something that'll be interesting for people just to know really quick, uh, going from left to right, uh, no offense, but I'm probably going to ignore Fringy and Rags on this one. Um, what is everybody's wow. favorite in the whole series? Um, if you just say that from from basically favorite from software game, um, and do the, well favorite. I was going to say favorite and best. Like, which one do you think is the best? That's a, that's the question. I think I prefer to ask. So, uh, from left to right, just name the game, and then just that's that's information for everybody basically. Uh, Dark Souls one. Yeah, I think I'd say Dark Souls 1 as well, though, subjectively, Sekiro. Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1, and it's not close. All right, there you go. Just so chat have an idea. <laughs> but anyway, um, the, the, I guess that summarizes the uh, the kind of intros. Um, so we could really start anywhere. Um, I wonder if it's an idea to just... Uh, Start with whatever you think is the biggest flaw, Theo. Maybe we could, we could, we could go with that. Um, hmm. There's so many. <laughs> I, guess, I guess the easy one to start with in that regard is the one everyone's noticed, which would be iterative content and, you know, spam of repeated enemies and whatnot. Which okay. I guess would lead into boss design itself. Well, yeah, so to explain, I guess, exactly what you, you're looking to talk about there from, uh, I'm guessing, um, there's a lot of repeated stuff, assets in this game, uh, from everything you could imagine, I'd imagine, is, 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 is <laughs> repeated, but um, the one that, as you just said, everyone noticed and has even compared to Dark Souls 2, which is kind of fair, is that you'll end up fighting different creatures a fucking lot. Uh, the one that I think most people can directly associate with would be the ulcerated tree spirit and the, the mm. tree avatar those yeah, are the yeah, two avatar, you fight yeah. a lot in this game and neither fight is particularly strong i don't think uh, tree avatars are just asylum demons so yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and people complained about fighting three of those in dark souls one like, yeah <laughs> now we get like I, 14 i fought over six way over six probably and oh, then okay. i fought I, like three magma worms i fought like a shitload of us Ulcerated Tree Spirits, I fought a bunch of Crucible Knights, I fought so many fucking bosses, and none of them were good. The ones that got the most play were always the bad ones. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a question, is, it, is the problem that the bosses are repeated, or is the problem more so that the fights aren't great? I'd say I think it's, it's a combination a, of both. 
Yeah, because if it would be like an amazing boss, I would not be annoyed after like seven times, maybe, if it's like a really, really good boss. But still it after that, if it's like the best boss I've ever thought, I don't want to fight Orphan of Cause 20 times in my playthrough. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah every, every zone ends with Orphan of Cast, I think. What, you, might... what you've said reminds me of uh, Halo 5, the Warden Eternal. He was a really cool oh, boss the boy. first time I fought him, but then, like, the seventh time, it was pretty shit. Hmm. I think, I, I don't like, know, yeah. a good example of uh, what I thought was a pretty okay boss is the big, like, scorpion magic guy that hangs off the ceiling. He, uh, like, uh... I know what you're talking about. You're saying he's a good boss? Yeah, I thought he was okay. Like, he had some interesting stuff and some cool moves and stuff. And then they repeated him. Oh, you mean that guy? Twice the health. I I thought you were talking about the random mob that's hanging around in caves. Oh, Oh, no, no, no. no, Not not that guy. Not that guy. You mean the Elstar Astel? Astel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that guy. I was like, man. Scorpion. Oh yeah, Astel was rough. People, I, if you watch my stream, you know I was fucking pissed off when I found the second one, just yeah. with yeah. more health and stronger attacks. I fought the second <laughs> I one first. That boss... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, because <laughs> that Cause fight I, was I, actually okay, but then all of a sudden there's just a, another one in a random cave, which yeah. is like, it, it's like it's kind of like a mild version of fighting Orphan of Cost the second time in one playthrough, it's just like. Uh, I don't know if I want to fight this guy again. Like I've I've beaten him already. You know yeah. this should be over with now. I think the it was harder one fight. first because the, there's the one that's up um in the the secret snowy area, and that's the one I fought first. And then mm-hmm. when I came across the other one, it, it was kind of a cakewalk boss fight. So I wasn't mm-hmm. as annoyed by it because it's like oh, I was sitting there like oh my god I got to fight another one of these, and then he he went down to like five minutes. I'm like oh yeah. okay because for something. me. I was like, oh, I'm doing this uh, uh, Ronnie's Rice quest line. It's like, oh, I'm doing like all this stuff. And then I get to this boss at the end. It's like, oh, this is a cool boss. I really like they put this here. It's like really unique. And then probably like 20 hours later, I'm just like, oh, there's like a little cave. I'm going to do that one. Get some resources and stuff. It's going to be great. And then I enter the, the weird wooden door, I think. And I was like, why, why are you here? Why is this big arena down here? What, what is happening? Why do you have double the health? Why do you one hit kill me? What is happening? <laughs> and I got really annoyed and more and more annoyed because he just he was there. Just even if it would be an easier one, I would be annoyed. Because why why would you recycle that boss? This boss was like cool for this quest line. That's the thing. I think it's pretty damaging on the experiential level because half of what makes me interested to explore in these games is the finding of new things. Regardless of what those new things are, it will usually be interesting on an experiential level, even if it's not mechanically engaging. I use Moonlight Butterfly as an example of this. Uh, That was a fairly unique sort of experience that I ran into in a game that I wasn't expecting, and it kind of stuck with me, even though the boss fight is mechanically bad, I guess. Doesn't Moonlight Butterfly get repeated in um, Crystal Caves? Yeah, makes sense for it to be there, though, and you don't have to fight it. Yeah, it's a mob at that point. Demon is repeated as well. It's it's not even a mob. They don't fight you unless you hit them. Yeah, I I can hang around the wall. For reference, I got it on screen. This is Estelle, and you find him in the middle of a mine, um, which is like, wait, what? Because the first time you're supposed to find him is much more of a grand journey into the the Mm -hmm. depths of a place, but this is just like, he's just in a mine. You're like, okay. And Mm -hmm. the presentation Um, of his arena is significantly more, like, interesting. He's got the big... I don't even know how to describe the vista (laughs) behind him. Yeah, it's like space. It's Maybe really it's neat. worth clarifying for uh, anybody in chat who hasn't played the game. Mandatory versus non-mandatory boss battles. Is there any way to sort of make clear, I guess, how much is one or the other? And yeah, just, like how you figure out which one's which? That's a fair thought, um, considering the fight that's on screen right now isn't mandatory, but it is a boss it, fight. Like, it is... Uh, and it's like, so what's the difference? And it's like, well, I guess that they get their own music, arena, and uh, boss mm-hmm. bar. Versus something that you can walk past in the open world sort of thing. Right. I, um, I did like the fact that I found a lot of the repeated bosses were uh, at least one fight with, or uh, the additional fights with them are usually optional. So if you if you don't want to fight uh, the same boss again, you you don't really have to. You just, you, you kind of can and it's there. My, What's my the problem with that? 
Oh, is, sorry, go for it. Sorry, if I can just... Uh, my problem no, 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 go, go, go is for it. I, I often find them at the end of a catacomb or a dungeon or something, so I don't know that my time's been wasted until I walk through that fog door and see the same guy again who I didn't like the first time. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not fond of the cat statues either, by the way. Oh, fuck I, those. What are the cat statues? So it's many of the boss you boss fight. Are garbage. You fight like 15 oh. of those as well. Yeah, and they become just normal guys in, in heroes caves later on. And there's yeah. like five of them in a cave, and they just go jump, jump, jump. Same like, with the stone so gargoyles, too, are kind of like that. Like the first time you fight one, it's almost like a boss fight, and then you, you, you see so many of them in the capital city. There are fucking two dungeon bosses in this game that are the big flower. The big flower mm -hmm. that sits there and does nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Those were yeah. very fun with my mage build. I was just standing there and throwing rocks at it until it died. Well, for, for me, it was just a matter of, like, I'll kill you before your poison will kill me, so... Uh, yeah, like, yeah, that, and if it does that. the zappy move, you just walk <laughs> back. Yeah, it, it is kind of like a, we don't know. We just threw him there. I don't know. It, it feels like my time has been wasted, because I haven't discovered anything interesting. I haven't... I've got nothing new to think about or, you know, consider in terms of the game, its world, its, you know, atmospheric storytelling. I was not given any kind of mechanical experience I was interested in. The encounter and design of the encounters in the catacomb is nothing. Uh, so what? Am I just persisting on the hope that there's stuff in there that I want? Yeah, because the the caves... I need to <coughs> clear up my mind, because I think the caves give you sometimes bell bearings. Those are pretty useful. Yeah, the mines. Um, and specifically the mines. The, yeah. uh, the mines, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you have Heroes Caves. They most they mostly have legendary summons, I think. You get ashes from a lot of them, yeah. Or ashes, yeah. Uh, but then others just have weapons, I think. Uh, like the Anchor. I think Fortia got that one as his first weapon in his playthrough. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Catacombs have the uh, the ghost glove work that you upgrade yeah, your ashes. Yeah, that's typically yeah, exactly. where you find them. <clears throat> And of course, and I, I, I've, stones already noted, mines. I've already noticed in my second playthrough, I was like, oh, I'm just not going to go to probably 85% of the caves ever again, <laughs> unless that, I specifically want that item. That's been, yeah. that's been my experience with my second playthrough, that I'm about halfway through now. Uh, I just, I just pull, pull open a map, and I don't visit 90% of each area I'm in, because I don't need or care about anything to experience there anymore. But I feel like the same could be said about the older games, but on a smaller scale. Like, you don't go and collect every single weapon in a playthrough where you use a katana. But it's, it's like a smaller scale. But to go and get that weapon is less of a time investment, and it's less of a diversion from a level that is more rigorously designed, as opposed to me having to partake in a catacomb, which is chalice dungeon tier in design. Yeah, but you don't have to go through that challenge don't you, if you don't want to sure so i'm not gonna and uh, are you able to here's a is are you able to identify clearly what is and isn't uh mandatory not, not on your first playthrough. exactly no not on your first playthrough okay. certainly not, not on a first playthrough yeah yeah. I, I think the only way that you could very clearly designate if something is mandatory or not is if it's a legacy dungeon, it is most likely mandatory, like with a couple exceptions. And th as far as bosses go, it's is there any way for you to just walk around this boss? Because if there is, it's not mandatory. And if you it seems like you have to kill this boss in order to progress, then it, it is. I, feel I guess not. Like the, the game's quite clear with what the critical path is, I guess I would say. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about like the, the shards? If you're, yeah, if you're talking to the NPCs especially, yeah. then it'll it'll the, help point you in the right path. The, the one point you point you in certain directions as well. The one place about, you might run into trouble is the lift of Dectus, but even then there's a way around that, and there's an NPC or two that tells you about the way around that if you don't go and collect the medallions, as you would if you were exploring. I just got there yeah. without talking I to anyone, see. and then someone said, why didn't you use the lift? And I was like, what lift? <laughs> it was funny for me. I, I, I found um, the lift. I went to the uh, land of the giants and shit when I still I had the key to the deck just lift and I had the location. I just hadn't <laughs> done it yet. I was like, oh, I was gonna, but okay. <laughs> I guess I don't need to. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I got to Volcano Manor without it. I didn't even realize that the Dectus lift is what brought you there. I was like, oh. And I was like, I just, I just kind of walked around and climbed a bunch of mountains. Oh, I did the, the little little side quest uh, and got an invitation. I just got teleported there. And people in chat were very upset that I just found this without looking it up. I completely missed it in the first place, right? Um... <laughs> So, yeah, um, I guess the, the bosses, uh, we, we got compliments for them as opposed to criticisms. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, uh, I get over with just I, saying that uh, the, if we call it a ratio of good to bad, I don't think it's fantastic. I think yeah. it's staggeringly bad. Hmm. Ooh. So it's so you're saying the relationship of bad bosses to good is staggeringly most of them are bad. Yeah, the okay vast majority. And how does that compare to the rest of the series for you? Like, uh, well, DS3 has a lot of stinkers, but it's got also the reckon? best boss quality overall. Yeah, um, the I, I early like game a lot bosses. Of bosses in Dark Souls Three. Oh yeah, it's got the best boss roster, but right. a lot of the early ones are you know bad. Uh, but... Who's your favorite one in uh, Dark Souls Three? Oh, Gale. Uh, yeah, I, I, I could shit. I could go on. There's a shitload of really good bosses in that game. Um, yeah, just for reference for the people uh, that may not even, I feel like this is going to be people who are just like, wait, what are you talking about? It's like, like you're dealing with a group of people that think Bloodborne has like three good bosses. Um, yeah, don't tell them. God damn it! They should know this really already from the stream. Oh, yeah, no, I know. Even I, I know I that like, based I on like what you said. I like more than three Bloodborne bosses. I also I like, like more than three Bloodborne bosses. There's only about three good ones. Who are the three good ones? Is it Maria, Maria, Koss, and uh, Koss. Ludwig? <laughs> So, um, like, all three from the deals. Oh, uh-oh. Yeah, I was about to say is that Ludwig would be on my list for sure. I like Ludwig's second phase a yeah. lot. I do not like yeah. his first phase. I think first it's phase bullshit. It's like a big oh, really? floppy one. Yeah, he's first just... Phase. He's, he's first a... phase is one of the worst fights in the game, and second phase is one of the best fights in the game. <laughs> it's know, such see, a weird dynamic. Phase. For me, the, the first phase of Ludwig was the one where I was so pleased with how good I had gotten at Bloodborne. I was just like, oh, man. <laughs> I actually I finished that? That's amazing. Sekiro had some cool boss battles. Except Sekiro for the has the yeah. best ones in the series. Ooh. Is the ogre yeah. the first one? Like at the top the level. The ogre is the first one, and I hate that it. One's <laughs> dumb. That one's really yeah. Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah. I played terrible. I played why Sekiro a little bit. I don't know why they led with the ogre. Like, well, funnily enough, I, <laughs> I led with the ogre. I don't like the um the first boss in this game. The fucking multiple arms sword man with the shield. Yeah, I, grafted yeah. sound. Yeah, I don't like him at all. No, that's just I, mini I, Ludwig. He's just flailing nutcase. Which, oh gosh, there's so many ways we could go this conversation. Um, <laughs> I don't, so like, attack, 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 <laughs> attack, attack, attack. And you're just like, what, when the fuck is my opportunity? I'm just like, mm -hmm. attack. <laughs> like, okay. You mean, you mean Godric, right? Dude, that's yeah. uh, Grafted uh, Scion. Grafted Scion, yeah, that's what it's called. Um, and yeah, he's the, the the you should die at this fight boss in the intro. Yeah, which um, I like the idea of at least a chance of beating the yeah. thing. Didn't feel like they were giving you much of a chance at all with that one. They were like, "Nah, you're all right. We want you to die here." And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. um, compare him to the you know the asylum. This is the thing. I I think we're gonna do a lot of comparisons in this. I think that the the opening like half of Dark Souls. There's so much to say about how well crafted I believe that to be as a game that's telling you how to do everything without the mm -hmm. standard uh, overt ways of doing it. And man, the whole asylum opening, it's one of the best tutorials, I think. Uh, just for getting you to understand what the fuck the, the game's going to be about. And mm -hmm. I think most people will come at it just feeling like, no, I'm playing the game. I'm not even playing a tutorial. Obviously, there are tooltips, but what I'm saying is the actual like mechanical interactions you have with all the enemies. They're all tutorials, but they don't quite come across that way. Even the bowling ball thing that hits you, yeah. I feel that's a tutorial. <laughs> they are teaching yeah, you exactly. about how the game is going to take place from then on, and if you don't take those lessons, that's what causes people to struggle in the Berg, generally. Yeah, um, but in this game I was just like, oh yeah, well, I guess we're doing the whole, you know, first thing you fight, you actually die to it, and that's a part of the story. Like, Alrighty then, I don't know, it's like I got annihilated by the Scion um, in all three times I've started this game as a test. And, uh, you know, I'm not useless, 
Like, I'm, 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 I'm pretty bad, but I'm not useless at the game. I was just like, oh man, it would have been nice to have at least a chance. Asylum Demon, on the other hand, I feel like I could probably take it right now without taking any hits. But then someone could be yeah. like, so it's too easy, is what you're saying. And be like, ah, well. <laughs> I think hmm. it is the perfect tutorial. Well, maybe not perfect. It is a very good <clears throat> tutorial boss. The funny thing is, Sekiro kind of starts the same way with you going up against like a endgame boss. And you're supposed yeah. to die, but you can actually win. And I guess the same goes for this. Only difference is that I think if you win in Sekiro, you get like a slightly altered story. Yeah. You get a slightly different cutscene, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so what, what happens if you, if you get beaten by Genichiro in the intro is he just cuts off your arm and that's what sets up the story development of Sekiro having that prosthetic with all the different tools. But if you beat him... There's just an assassin that throws a shuriken at you, yeah. and then he cuts off your arm. Oh. So it's uh, it kind of it doesn't really make too much of but, a difference. But in Elden Ring, it, it's worse than that because if you win over the mini Ludwig, then you yeah. like progress, and Ten then feet. you literally <laughs> fall off a cliff, and then you go. <laughs> out wow! Yeah, no, the, really? the ground the ground collapses underneath <laughs> you. I, I did it yeah. in my new game wow. plus. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, there's a clip of me doing that when I went back there. But the so question: Does that mean all the the runes you get from killing that are lost? Uh, um, no, no, no. You get them. You get to spend them. You, they, they, you just have them when you respawn. Oh, okay. Well, at least okay. you got that. Because I was gonna say that'd be really fucking rude, like oh, to just yeah. be like, nah, <laughs> that's not for you. Especially if you kept on starting new runs as your first run to be like, no, I'm beating this thing before I go in. If you're like a really great player and <laughs> you don't get any of the rewards for it. Um, what bosses did you guys like? Millennia. Millennia. <laughs> uh, I could, yeah, uh, Malekith is my favorite. Oh, Malekith's great too. I yeah. think Malekith is my favorite as well. Um, I think he's the best fight in the game because he's I the only fought one him... I can say that I liked unmitigatedly. I haven't fought him in melee yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's probably going to oh, be yeah. amazing. The only criticism I have, and I think you mentioned this, Valtio, is just that his his shit goes through the big pillars, uh, which yeah. is really fucking yeah, annoying. Yeah, that's true. I know this now, too. It was, somebody in my chat was like, well, then don't stand behind the pillars. And I was like, <laughs> they are protecting me. <laughs> like, why would I? Or at least I thought they would. <laughs> they really do. They, they, they block most. <laughs> they block. They block most of his attacks. It's just the ones oh, that okay, swing okay. the widest. They can still hit you, and it's just like, Ugh. Uh, yeah. which is the. To be fair, in all of these games, enemies can hit you through walls. You can sometimes hit enemies through walls. Oh, it's always great mm -hmm. when you're like in a narrow corridor and you start fighting someone, and your blade just goes through like a ting. Yeah. And then there's then there's this other guy you're fighting just does like the biggest swing you can imagine through all the walls and hits you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, pretty cool. Yeah. Part of the reason yeah. I, I hate that skin. It. So great. Uh, but yeah, so, so I I agree. Malekith, top tier. I, it sounds like we may as well just get into talking about the bosses. There's no reason not to. Um, yeah. so if we start with, so why is Malekith good? Let's go with that. Unfortunately, on, on my first playthrough, I haven't gotten to him a second time, but on my first playthrough, I actually just... Uh, I got him on my second try, I think, because at that time I was still using summons, and I just shat on him. I staggered I've, him to death. I almost He's wiped him out with my Mimic, him. and someone in chat, whoever you were, you, you I saw it and I was like, hmm. Someone was like, please, try him without a summoning an, an Ash. And I was like, alright, fine. <laughs> Because my mimic almost got him out of phase one on its own, and I was like, "Jesus Christ, this is too good." And a lot of people getting... were complimenting it, so I was like, "All right, I'll try it without." And it was a lot harder and a lot more interesting. I was getting through phase one of Malekith really reliably with no summoning, just like playing playing as honorably as I possibly could. And then the second phase started bothering me, and I hadn't really summoned at all prior to that point. And I summoned the Mimic, and it basically wiped him out. So I kind of feel like I screwed myself on that one by winning, which is why the uh, the method by which you approach these fights will sometimes greatly affect your enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. As for reasons he's good, I think 
I think he's some of the best examples of some of the things Elden Ring is doing in terms of its boss design. He has the best use of, I guess, subtle telegraphing and how he telegraphs. He has the best kind of uh, persistent combos because they do still have definitive endpoints and they don't really fake you out in the same way a lot of other bosses do, where, you know, it's my yeah. strings over. Ooh, no, it isn't. <laughs> I remember being surprised that, like, his first phase went down pretty quick. This, I think I described him as a glass cannon. I was losing um, a lot because that second phase is a fucking nightmare for taking mm. your health. But at the same mm. time, if I got like a couple of blood strikes off, he was pretty much dead. Um, and that's not yeah. even a comment on how OP uh, the bloody slash was before the nerf. It's more so a comment because like other bosses could hang tank a lot more than that. Um, he couldn't, and um, I, I knew at that point I just need to play well enough to survive him for just long enough that I can kill him. And so in a way, I feel like I may have the perspective on him that I do on Maria. I fucking love the fight, but man, she needs more health. And I think yeah. Malekith needs more health. I yeah, can I see think... myself agreeing with that. I think the I think his lack of health is supposed to be counterbalanced by his aggression. Yeah, because he he goes in in second phase. It's especially because he jumps away from you a lot with several of his attacks, so it can be hard to actually punish his openings because he covers them as well with explosions and stuff sometimes. Uh, which is where I think the fight is succeeding on a positional level as well because. Uh, that's a thing that's general with Elden Ring's boss design, is they know that you're going to roll through things. So as a way of increasing the challenge, they've now mandated that to dodge certain strings and certain attacks, you have to dodge through the attack, but in a certain direction, right. or you're still going to get hit. Mm. Uh, so that positional aspect comes through best with Malekith, where several of his attacks, you can roll them in any old direction, but you'll be caught in a bad position for the follow-up, or be unable to punish if you don't roll in the correct direction. Something that I think is worth appreciating is the fact that when he ground pounds in the first phase, it's not an AoE, it's a series of yeah. circles, and so you can avoid... Like, that shit to me is so much more interesting than a simple AoE. Hmm. Yeah. Correctly identify where the rocks are actually coming from, and you can stay right on top of them. Yeah. Um... So, I don't know if I, I was going to say quick tangent, but I don't think that'll be accurate in terms of talking about <laughs> Ashes. I think we'll talk about Ashes next. We'll try and get a bit yeah, more yeah. on bosses in general. I the, um, had the same. Oh, go ahead. But I was just going to say that uh, I was ve the happiest I think I was in the game was after beating Malekith. I felt very good. Um, mm -hmm. Funnily enough, my number two for that was probably Millennia. Is that her name? Millennia, Millennia yeah. 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 Um, so we let's, let's talk about her, shall we? Uh, I don't even remember where my in my playthrough she was. I have six hours of stream for that if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I found her ability to heal a little bit overpowered, particularly because she can still heal herself as you're blocking, which kind of kind of makes using a shield almost entirely useless for her, which sucks a little, I think. Her ability to heal on block, like, when you block her attacks, is one of three, I think, problems I have with the fight. I would... Mm -hmm. I'm fine with the healing, but her ability to heal when you block her attacks anyway, I think that's a bit silly, and no. makes shields a bit more worthless than they already were. They didn't I think, need any help not being good. Like, I think it should have been health steal, right? Because she does heal more the more damage she does. Like, if she gets yeah. you with her grab attack, then she heals, like, a shit ton. And if she does the just does the, the quick swing, she heals for a little. But yeah. I, I really think that if you're blocking and you have 100% block in your shield, it should be 100%. Because, like, it shouldn't heal anything because there's no... No health steal if you have a hundred percent block. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably my well, my second biggest gripe with the fight. It, it's an interesting way to. I, if, I think. First. Sorry. No, you go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, um, I, I say is it is an interesting that mechanic is an interesting way for them to essentially mandate that Millennia is essentially a no hit boss. Like you, you kind of have to learn how to beat her entirely without getting hit or without really taking a lot of damage because you need to still be able to dish out the DPS to to counteract her healing. But I, I think I found for me that I think, again, it was that I was at that point in the game where my tactics started getting cheap. I just was like, okay, the only way I'm doing enough damage to outpace that healing is by playing really cheesy. And I don't know, I think that if, if, if she was healing by about 50% less than she actually does and... 
or as far as like damage she does versus how much she heals and it didn't you were able to tank some hits with your shield i i honestly think that would have been a, a much better boss fight that wouldn't require as many um like, you know like cheesy tactics yeah handicaps I mean, yeah other than other than the healing on block i really want to defend the healing because i think it's it's another good way from soft to figured out to increase the challenge in their fights though you you don't necessarily want this one everywhere uh, because the, the fact that she heals, as you said, means you really have to master the fight. And it's a yeah. difficult fight to master because she's got a very complex moveset that's very modular in how she executes it. Well, yeah, that, and, uh, I assume a... that's why Mark said uh, reduce it by 50%, not get rid of it, right? Uh, just the, yeah, yeah. Because like, I'm on board with that. The only other thing I want to change about her is half the length of her big spin move, if not remove oh, it. <laughs> like, I, I, would, I would remove oh, it. Oh, yeah. I think that attack is very silly. Everything else about it, uh, I was enjoying a lot. Um, yeah, so yeah. I probably had the different experience because I did the mage build on uh, my first playthrough for she once. She does not handle that well. Uh, oh, I had trouble. I mean, I fought her for a long time. Oh, really? oh yeah, I had, to, I had to change my strats multiple times. Because oh. when I fought on my own, she just bum-rushed me all the time, and I couldn't even get my spells out properly. And huh. my, my Moon Veil didn't really do enough damage. Like I, I, I had a bad time alone, so I started using summoning. I couldn't use my Mimic, because the Mimic is not as good for when you're a mage, I found. Because the mage tends to just run in and not use spells that often. Oh, uh, um, I learned so something I about that actually. Once as well, right? If mm -hmm. you unequip, if you unequip your melee weapon and mm -hmm. spawn the mimic just with your catalyst or, or whatever you're using, if it's enchantments or whatnot, mm -hmm. then they only will use the equipment they've spawned with. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's time that I didn't have <laughs> so yeah, to just get everything in and out. So I, I used Oleg most of the time because he did some good good tanking. But also the downside, when she attacked Oleg, she obviously got more health back all the time. So for me, it was a race to out-DPS her all the time. Yes. Uh, um, which kind of worked in the beginning. And I was like, man, this is just not really working. But sometimes Oleg gets killed in the first phase already. And then I'm just bare bones on the second phase. And I was like, damn, what am I going to do here? This so is actually... The the, next. Well, I had I, a thought. Just, just on that thought with, with Oleg, like this is the fight mm -hmm. I think the best in the game represented to me the management of your Mimic slash Ash mm -hmm. more so than just dropping him in to win. This felt Because more... when I did well, yeah. I had like yeah. an Oleg with almost full health in the second phase when I managed it correctly. And I was like, oh man, this That's is what I'm saying, better. yeah. Because we're going to get to the Ashes, but there's just, there was a management aspect with Mil Millennia that, that I felt was... Homer. I wouldn't go as far as saying they deliberately designed it this way. I think it's just the fact that she's so difficult that it ended up mm. being that way. Um, but yeah, you have to keep your Ash alive, because if you don't keep that thing alive, you die. Like, that was mm -hmm. an interesting aspect that could have been deliberately implemented, but I think that's just a, a result of how much they gave her healing, that um, that's how it ended up, but... Uh, yeah. On. I think yeah. an interesting way they could rebalance the fight to combine a way to increase that aspect but also do what i was saying about making her healing feel less like a kick in the balls is if they half the healing she does on you but doubles the healing she does on an ash like on a spirit ash yeah you could do it that way um mm -hmm. uh where was i right so second phase <clears throat> and it was i was pretty consistent on the first phase at some point but the second phase I just couldn't get through that one i was like man what am i gonna do now and then I respect, and I had this sword of flame and whatever the fuck, uh, which was good, did a bunch of damage, but I was much less consistent with that one. So I respect again, back to my old build. And I think the next day I was like, oh wait, isn't there like this stupid Kamehameha spell? I get that for a meme, and that turned out to be really good. <laughs> uh, so when she starts her second phase, she does like a dive immediately. So I could get like quarter of her health down just by her sitting there because uh, it doesn't deal as much damage there because uh, she has like super armor at that point while she's waiting so i basically pretty much combined the the physic flask with unlimited fp for a couple of seconds so i just blasted her while she was there uh and then it still took me like another hour to perfect it to not just get 
yeeted from the fight at the end. Mm -hmm. So that was that was pretty enjoy enjoyable for me just to get the right strategy going for that fight. Uh, really much looking forward to do it solo uh, on my melee build here because that's going to be fun. I'm not looking forward to that triple slashy move because that was still hard to dodge even with a mage. Uh, only only I uh, like thing that I, that was better for me was I I could run away from the first one. And then I figured out how to dodge the second two ones. But every time I was close, it was almost impossible for me to dodge the first one. Uh, I saw a video by now. You can do like some weird movement below her in a circle, and then you kind of don't get hit, apparently. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the triple slash thingy. I think you get that one when you get her weapon as well. Yeah, it's her weapon up. Uh, yeah. Man, this one fucked me off a bunch, because I was... M mailing hit her to shit in the corner and then she just jumps up and it's like, oh, I guess I'm dead now. I'm not even going to move. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any stamina. What am I supposed to... <laughs> exactly, yeah. That was the only attack of hers where I did use my shield because I found that... I, I thought it was four flurries that she does because I remember I would be able to tank the first two and I, I, would, I would run away for the first couple if I could, but if I was right underneath her when she activated it, I was like, okay, if I, if I turn my back, she's just going to slice me up. So uh, with the t plus 25 carrying shield, you can tank the first two without it draining all of your endurance as long as it's not like super low and then just run away and dodge, uh, do a, a roll to the side, like a lateral roll will dodge the second two. Yeah, into her is generally better than away for the last two it's the mistake a lot of people make but yeah my problem yeah. with the attack overall is it's so fucking difficult to tell what is actually happening and yeah. what you're supposed to do about it and i think that's really bad in this sort of game where that's the entire basis of the combat is yeah. knowing what's happening and then what you're supposed to do about it i, I think uh you know her right. little three hit thing uh she does uh rushes at you then does three quick sword hits then a mm -hmm. follow-up i think that's a that's a better example of a similar thing happening where that attacks kind of like it fucks you up the first two times because it always catches you if you roll back but that makes clear okay there's probably an expected response that isn't rolled back i can roll to her side and then you know there's the different timings of the follow-ups that creates a bit more engagement with knowing what's actually going on as opposed to just not even being able to tell what's actually happening as she just spazzes all over your screen with like <laughs> hitboxes everywhere yeah it's weird because i i i figured out the second two like i can dodge those pretty consistently but the first one is just an absolute mystery to me when you're close because the only way mm -hmm. i've been able to dodge it consistently is just running away as soon as i could and if i got lucky and i was close i could and i dodged super late i only got hit like two times but i still got hit so i don't i, I just don't know what to ex what they expect me to do on yeah, if you get hit even a couple times, it means she's getting better. <laughs> like, that, yeah, she's that, that attack is where the lifesteal is a big problem, just because, mm -hmm. yeah, it's so unclear how you're supposed to get away without taking damage. And, of course, she's doing when, so much damage, she's going to heal a bunch. The funny sort of thing that happens that with people who are using ashes to their benefit, if she does that full spinning move and it hits both of you for the whole thing, she can heal like <laughs> half her fucking health bar. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just oh, like, well, got... that was a bad run, I'm out. <laughs> I, every time I saw her, it's like she jumps, jumps up, it's like, oh, I'm far away, that's good. And then she turns around to the ash, and I was like, oh, fuck, she's going to heal so much. S just spam all the spells I could just to get her health back down. Yeah, um, I, that's was... the sole instance where I wouldn't defend the lifesteal, I think. In, yeah. in that case, it's egregious, especially because my response to that attack was pulling out a shield and blocking the first part of it. Mm. Yeah, and, same. yeah. So I just and had to tolerate like, the amount of health she got back. I, I was playing with a uh, like big, slow greatsword, and I, I I figured out that like my best way of getting to second phase consistently when I wasn't using summons at all was to play hyper aggressive. Like, basically get her to stagger more and sometimes even trade with her, even if she does heal, because eventually my damage will outweigh hers. Um, but if I had just swung, even if I had stamina and stuff left, if I had just finished a swing and I was in my recovery animation of picking up my heavy weapon, 
if she jumped up because her AI seemed to be very reactive, like she was very passive unless you did something first. And if I was, if I, the thing I did was a simple swing, just an R1 with a heavy weapon, and she, her response to that was jumping up in the air, I was dead. Because by the yeah. time I had recovered, I couldn't pick up my shield because I, I tried everything with her. I couldn't pick up my shield in time for me to be able to block her attack. And e in the few instances that I did, if you're directly beneath her, she will kind of dead angle your shield because yes, like, her flurry will be all around you. So you, you won't even block the, the attack properly. She will like dead angle it and she will hit you anyway. And so and sometimes if you just finish a combo and you were out of stamina, then your shield won't help because she will she will break your poise. Yeah. So like using a great weapon like a, a great sword in that fight was so so punishing if you tried to play aggressively. What's so crazy um, for me is that I knew that if I was gonna win, it would be a run where she didn't uh, roll that move. The big spin move, yeah. like through luck. Oh. I was just like waiting for the run where she had the limited amount of those. Yeah. So basically, what I ended up doing was I got her to about sixty percent, and then I just ran away and I waited for her AI to finally <laughs> jump up in the air because she seems to have some sort of grace period in between where she won't do it again for a little bit. That's true. And that's the, that was the window where I tried to to get her to second phase. Seems to be like very loosely tied to health thresholds. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And exactly what you're describing with it, because that's how I've heard a few of my friends dealt with it. Is they realized it was about roughly the threshold where she would start doing that move, or it was about time for her to do that move, and they just run the fuck away. Yeah. And I hate that in a boss fight where <laughs> you have to just run the fuck away and wait for them to do the one move, because if yeah. you don't respect that they might do it, you just die on the spot. I think. I think there's a big problem if that's what we've arrived at in terms of our boss fight. No. So so that that move, especially with a great sword and the fact that she heals off of uh one hundred percent blocking shields is my two biggest gripes with the fight. Otherwise I thought it was absolutely amazing. I yeah. personally don't care for phase two because I find it to be pretty much the same thing, but the wings really get in the way of being able to tell what's going on. I was actually going to say that I think that's my issue yeah. with phase two as well. Oh, cool! Um, <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> there's so much. There's so many particle effects and animations and stuff that yeah. it's much harder to see her. Mm. And this, this, this is a boss that like she does really well because her telegraphing is not all that subtle, but she's quick and she's a like I said, her move set is really modular in that she can put it together in a lot of different ways, kind of like yeah. Champion Gun there. Um, so it's really important to be able to see what's going on so that you can actually deal with all of the various possibilities from each move she's just done. And when there's giant wings that are spitting butterflies everywhere constantly, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, and I feel like it's a bit of an issue. Um, Scarlet, Scarlet Rod is just the worst. Yeah. Uh, not worse than the death mechanic, though. Why do they do that? <laughs> Why do they wait, do wait, that wait. mechanic every time? Why? Oh, the the gecko ones that just spit the, the, Those the foggy fog. There's no pretense about it this time. It's yeah, not it's terror like from Sekiro. It's like, not curse. It's the death mechanic. <laughs> they just it's they just want to put it in because it's fucking annoying. It always comes across that way. Um, I thought yeah. it was worth mentioning as well because we seem to, when talking about these bosses, relate to our playthroughs. I had the pizza cutter, which uh, I think it's called Giza's Wheel. Man, yeah. this weapon is like a big old dice throw in terms of its special ability it basically just spins the wheel and puts it on the boss and that can cause bleed as well as staggers and if you have a mimic and both of you use that move by happenstance you can basically just shred bosses like almost instantly there's like a lot of things that i think all of us would have come across uh metals magic rocks theo you said you had like a, a sword was it or something it was uh, my first playthrough i was using moon veil and some magic yeah, and then um, the Horfrost Stomp, I think, Mark, you that said you were using me. that. Yeah, great mm. sword with uh, Horfrost oh. Stomp as the weapon art. It did cold damage. And I think that we're all seasoned enough players that sometimes you're using it and you're like, oh, I'm so like, I'm so resourceful for being able to put thing and thing together to be able to figure out that this is something I can use. But then eventually, sometimes you might just go, 
Man, this doesn't feel good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think the the first time I had that was <laughs> Frontier talked about this without telling me what it was, but it was the fight in the capital, the first one, uh, the first end fight in the capital. Uh, what's his face? It's not. Is it also Godric? Margot. It's Margot. Yeah. Because like this epic build up was like, oh, cutscene, this is going to be great. And then I started throwing stones at the guy and he got staggered. And then I threw more stones, he got staggered, and then he died. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's a shame. But then I fought him again uh, with my melee build here. And I really enjoyed the fight. But this is another fight where I feel like you need more health, my guy. You're, you I, died way too quick. I relate well, that to a problem I think is kind of endemic throughout the game where i think it's very very easy especially around the mid game for you to become over leveled or overpowered otherwise yeah you need to restrict yourself uh if you want a super good boss experience mm. uh because i started steamrolling hard later on in the game oh dude fucking post market uh i don't think i was challenged in until well there was a brief break when and when I did the Black Blade Kindred outside Garanks, but mm. other than that, I wasn't challenged in like multiple tens of hours of playtime, and yeah, that I was, felt really bad. Well, I was just exploring um, a whole bunch. Can we talk about the Elden Beast? Uh, oh, do we have to? I really didn't <laughs> like that. that. That's probably the most disappointing end boss this series has ever had. Yeah, yeah. Like Radagon <laughs> was super fun, and then yeah. Elden Beast was just the fucking worst. I wasn't fond of either of them, really. I I uh, hated Radagon that they fun. were back to back with no no ability to rest or save or anything like that. Because I liked fighting Radagon, but it got to the point that I kept on getting one shot by the AOE attacks that Elden Beast had mm. in the second second phase. It's just the second fight that I was like, ah, oh, I wouldn't mind learning El Elden Beast attacks, but it just kind of it sucks that I have to get through all of Radagon every single time first. It just didn't was, feel very good. I was pretty done with the game by the time I was on the final boss stretch. Like I'd pretty much cashed my check after beating Malekith. I was like, yeah, that's probably the best thing the game's going to throw at me. Uh, let's just get this over with. Um, but Radagon, I probably would have liked him if not for that kind of feeling. This motherfucker, though... <laughs> Uh, to start off, this isn't a mechanical thing, but why did they give it a fucking sword, man? Yeah. <laughs> why? Just have some restraint from soft, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I don't. I don't even it know what. Cool I, though. I don't even know what I was expecting in terms of what I should fight as the final boss to summarize this game, but this wasn't it. And um, no, a cool the... Mononoke ripoff, fucking. Ugh. The the move that's on screen right now, fuck that move. Bullshit. Yeah. Look at yeah. that. If you're close to that, there's yeah. like no way for you to escape. It has a pretty short range, so I was okay with it. It was okay in terms of my mage build, but man, if I got close to that, it was just GG. It's, <laughs> it's another fucking thing where in this game where I look at it, I just wonder what they what they expect a player to do. When it's they played like it Malania. through testing, like, what did you, what, it's, is this be, just what happens? To be clear, yeah. just for people who All aren't little... following, it is a yellow ball that follows you, and it spews off loads of little yellow balls that all yeah. hold on to you. You can't destroy it, you can run, you can roll, but it's going to keep up with you as long as it was in range of you and it started. And, and it don't think the LMBs don't, don't yeah. think yeah, the LMBs It lasts LMBs like 20 seconds it. or something. And don't think the LMB awful. stops attacking while that thing is out. It still no. yeah, shoots other things at you. So you can get caught with, like, fucking frame traps where you're guaranteed to take damage. Yeah, yeah I, I had a yeah. one time There's where board. it was, like, three th different attacks happening while this ball was out. And it was like, I don't... What the fuck am I supposed to do here? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, the and, arena and... is also limited by a thin fog wall that you can't cross. So just all of a sudden you'll be running into a wall and just be like, "What? Wait, what the hell?" Oh, and yeah, then it's like, "Oh, time. oh, I'm at the I'm at the end of the arena." It's mm. just not clear that this is that time and space just decides to end here. It doesn't feel right, does it? The boss arena in the second phase seems like it should go on forever or at least fucking mm -hmm. longer than it does. But also cuz I think I was watching you Bell and uh, you would try to avoid literally this move, and you ran into the wall, and you were like, "Oh fucking hell, what? what yeah. is this? <laughs> this is a wall." As someone in chat said, "All you have to do is run." It's like we tried that. Both me and Metal <laughs> tried that. It doesn't work. Do you, Chad, do you think nobody tried? 
This <laughs> is definitely a trap. Mm, a bull's chasing me. I'm gonna run the, from it. Do you think nobody th tried that? <laughs> the only thing that worked for me was you gotta unlock from the boss. Like you can't focus on him, and you just need to one run in one direction. Like, even don't that, even. Um, and that obviously highlights then the problem of if you don't have any information about the Elden Beast, then you're gonna get hit by something else potentially. Mm -hmm. um, which is not also if you, handy. Also, if you get hit immediately when it, when the fucker casts it and you're close, you can. I don't think you can run away because it staggers you a little bit every hit, doesn't it? I think I can't quite remember, but uh, I remember hating that fucking move. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a great way to cap off the game. I felt very mad about it. Uh. I wonder how it would have been if they just like made Radagon. Do slightly more damage and have like three times the health pool he did. Maybe a few extra moves. That was the end fight. I, I'd be happy with that personally. I'd be much mm -hmm. happier if the game ended on Radagon. They tried to do a neat kind of experiential thing, but they're bad at that now. So, <laughs> just to be clear, Assassin's Creed Two ended with you fist fighting the Pope in a secret yeah. chamber. In Radagon. <laughs> so there, there that's, was. That's, that's that's legendary. Our, our stand, if Elden Ring would have stopped, if Elden Ring would have finished with that, I was like, yeah, this yeah. Is ten out of ten. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was going to be my first suggestion. Instead of Elden Beast, it should have been a fist fight with a Pope. That seems to match yeah. the game a bit better. Like, you know, Demon Rodrigo Borgia just goes up to you and bitch slap him. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Elden Ring was, or Elden Beast was the, the boss where I decided to break my rule of no summoning after I decided to do that. And I, I basically just summoned to get that fight over with. And I basically did what my build allowed me to do with the summon, which is just stagger the boss to death. How useful was the summon in the Elden Beast fight, though? Because when I had Oleg out, he couldn't keep up with the Elden Beast. He was just fucking flying around. <laughs> Dude, that, my th well, my it, it was kind of like problem. an RNG thing, because I, I seemed to be able to get him stuck in some sort of, like, half-stagger thing, where he was, like, mm. he, like recoiled or something from my heavy attack, and then my Mimic would do the same, and he would just, like, stand there for, for a while, and I, I was able to just chomp his health. Um, but then other times he would obviously just fly away and my mimic would walk towards him and I was just like, okay, so you're useless this fight. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure a speedrun has already found a way to break this guy's AI consistently. Oh, so there's so many AI it. breaks. I don't think um, there's one for Elden Beast yet, but... Weird question. Were there any bosses you guys beat first time that you thought that was a pretty damn good boss? Uh, I beat uh, first time. Uh, I don't know if I beat any bosses first time. Like I... Well, because I'm thinking Flintstone about it. Flintstone Dragon for me, but it was the first dragon I, th I fought oh, by, I by the, the academy. Terrible. I think the dragons are all awful. I, I hate mean, the dragon was, fights, yeah. It, it was, I don't know. I, I had a pretty decent time with it, just fighting it on horseback. It was the first one I came across. I like that I actually figured it out and took it down on the first try and I think it was not really... It wasn't the first dragon you come across in Limgrave. It's the one over by the Academy, so I don't mm. know, it gave me a whole shitload of runes, so I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe I, I wasn't supposed to fight that. I wouldn't have much criticism for the dragon fights if there weren't 10,000 of them. I think if they were just yeah. the one, two, maybe five at maximum, I'd probably be like, eh, they're fine. I think I would here. still have a lot to criticize, because it's a fucking dragon, man. Come on. Well, and I think the obvious thing... I think we were talking about this when I was streaming it uh, in chat, but just Calamite and Medea are like mm. really good boss fights that are dragons. And mm -hmm. so, what's uh, what's up? <laughs> what's, what's... Here, here we have here we have <laughs> flying dragon Agheel, and it's it's Medea, but slow, clumsy, and Medea terrible <laughs> in every way. <laughs> the only so as soon as I got rock fling, all the dragon fights were. Null and void, because I knew I cast rock fling three times, stagger, and that every time mm -hmm. as I stood there, let Oleg wail on them for quicker kills, and that's it. The only dragon who killed me, uh, was the one in Caled, I think, because that fucker uh, spawns like a huge cloud of rot. Yeah, that just kills you, and I was like, what? He killed me a bunch because he's one of, I think, two dragons who have an um, attack where Miyazaki bursts into your room and holds you at gunpoint until you get on the horse. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like that and Borealis, hey. they're both not fightable off horseback entirely. 
Check out what I got on the screen. Mel, you did the same thing. Oh, I think. yeah. Oh, yeah, but I used my, my triple. Well, oh, yeah, I don't have your bolts. shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, can I just say, uh, how does this happen? I, this exactly is something the same that... position than my guy. Exactly. As well. yeah. it's, it's practically it's, it's caused thing. by the player. And I think, I don't know how they missed this. It's so. Like, is this like oh, a. Of course, the player is going to do like this. this. Like, there's like a series of platforms, and there's yeah. a boss on a platform, yep. and it can't yeah, leave yeah. a platform. Well, oh, so yeah, that's dumb. It's even you worse, know, I think. So basically. you're going toward it. The game expects you to walk up to him, and you're like, why would I do that? Like, <laughs> it's gonna kill me. I'll just sit here and fucking snipe well, it. It's, it's Dark Souls, it's really hard, right? Well, up to yeah. it. and it's so awkward because it just, it's like the intimidation factor is completely flattened when it looks like he's just stroking the corner of the building. <laughs> like, <laughs> because I didn't even notice him the first. I was still fighting the guys on this platform. It's like, all right, I'll go ahead. And it's like, what is going on with that dragon over there? Is he all right? <laughs> and, and um, it's like, oh, can I reach you with my spells? I can. Well, guess you'll die. Exactly, and, 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 and like the fact that this is like repeatable, and almost everybody experiences this. Like, what are you doing? What are you, what's, what's up? <laughs> like, what's Dude, happening? The way a lot of the dragon bosses fucking spaz out in the open world arenas that they're placed oh, in when yeah. they jump like, back and go into like some mountains they're not supposed yeah, to, and they and go like, oh, oh, oh god. <laughs> A couple of times happened that it just straight up teleported back to the original position because yeah. the game was like, I don't know what yeah. to do. I'm just going to put it back here. Have fun. <laughs> Adula, Adula was the worst one for me with that. The one up on that place you get through Rani's quest line. Because oh, yeah. the, the arena limits for it seem to be really small compared to other ones. So it just sort of vanishes constantly during the fight mm. and resets to where it was. And or either that or it goes and clips and falls off a cliff and it looks horrendous and it's immersion annihilating. <laughs> Shall we discuss the king of the dragons? Dragon Lord. Uh, I don't know what his name is. <laughs> Plachadusax? Or... Yeah, the one of sex in his name. Um, I'll try and find him and play through, give me a sec. But yeah, uh, thoughts. You mean the big sleeping one or the the secret the one, one that you the need? The secret one, I think, yeah. Uh, I mean, my fight didn't take my, my, uh, very long because I think it was already overpowered when I finally get there. Uh, I found it was pretty epic. Like, I really liked how it looked. It was much better than all the other dragon fights because he actually did other stuff and not just ram you and kick you. Um, uh, I, think I don't know how it goes was melee. I don't know how, how it's going to be melee. Sorry? I, I think your experience was way better than mine because like, I just... Okay. Uh, I, I, I think I ran up to him and just... Minced him basically. Just oh, really? Died. Also, I think people were saying he glitched on my playthrough as well. I think he might have. Oh, yeah. Because my guy just fucking flew all over the place, and like I actually really enjoyed 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 that fight. <laughs> yeah, I think I... Uh, that would actually be my answer to your question, your original question, because uh, I thought that fight was really cool and I had a lot of fun in it. But I did actually get him on first try. With zero Estus left, so I, I was pretty close to dying. Um, but I thought that fight was pretty cool. I liked the way he uh, like dissipated into the clouds and stuff. I thought that was mm. epic. Um, but another fight that I did beat first try, which um, made me apply the the restriction on onto myself to not use mimic anymore or summons at all, rather, uh, was Morgoth. Um, before you you uh, get to the the tree, um, because that that fight seemed like it, it was probably good. I I still don't know because I haven't reached it on my second playthrough, but it seemed like it had some you know interesting move sets and stuff that you need to pay attention to dodge. But I absolutely shat on that boss because of the mimic, and I regret it still. Yeah, I think um, the same thing happened for me is that we both did the spinny move on the thing and he just he got flattened and he was like, oh, well, all right. No. I wasn't using summons, but his health, I was so overpowered by that point in the game <laughs> that, I'm, again, this is a problem I want to keep coming back to because I think it's really, really game breaking. Um, but yeah, Morgoth, my experience with him was kind of fucked because I just did so much damage to him that he couldn't really handle it. I don't know. I, I'm oh. excited to fight him again on my second playthrough and see if I like the fight more because I was kind of lukewarm on it despite it being, I could tell it was mechanically sound just from fighting him but mm -hmm. I didn't need to engage with any of it because I had a really good Estus Flask, I had a well upgraded weapon 
and I had a bunch of levels, so I just beat him up and he died. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Can't remember. So what this I is a him. game where everyone, everything in area, like it, everything has a set amount of hit points. Every boss has yeah, no scaling. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it doesn't scale. Okay. Yeah, it only scales when you go to New Game Plus. Yeah. Un unless they change this, but no. But and I then, don't think even then, New Game Plus 1, not by much. I'm running through stuff in yeah, I've my heard, New Game Plus run right now. I've heard New Game Plus 1 does not scale hard enough to be a challenge at really any point. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't started New Game Plus yet. I just started different yeah. playthroughs. Neither have I, so I guess take that as my uninformed opinion from what I've heard. <clears throat> All right. How much... How much okay. stuff outside of the main quest line do you have to do to feel like you're keeping up? If that makes sense, like, do you feel like a lot depends of games your, that are? It kind of depends on your skill level because some people can get through these games at very low levels. So if you're if you're really good at the Souls games, then you really don't have to do anything outside the critical path at all. But if if this is your first Souls game, you should probably do everything you possibly can to get stronger. Jojo, sorry, my dog's growling. That's something i'm worried about because i feel like if you do purely the critical path you could very easily end up feeling too weak in terms of not just levels but upgrade materials as well because early game your damage is not dependent at all upon stat scalings really um it, it's almost all coming from weapon upgrade level uh so if you're not going to the mines if you're not you know going and finding a bunch of upgrade materials to go and get your weapon beefed up and stuff Mm. Uh, I think it could be very easy to end up feeling very weak on the critical path. And if well, you I'm... don't do the mines, you won't be able to purchase upgrade materials from any vendor. Like it'll, yep. or like they'll have a limited amount of like two or three each. But um, Jojo, gosh, this dog is creeping me out. Anyways, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you you basically have to go and do the mine quests, or or your oh god, or your weapons will stay <laughs> at the lowest possible level. <laughs> By the way, on screen right now is just the Morgoth. Like, fight. look at this man. For it's, fuck's uh, sake! God, and this is the thing: you, you could be like, "Well, maybe you shouldn't have been using that way." It's like, no, 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 no. He just this... stumbled into this on his playthrough. The game let him do this. Did they present <laughs> yeah. this weapon to you? I was yeah. just like, okay. And then I was like, oh, that moves kind of fun. And then I, yeah, just look what it did to him. Uh... I'll, I'll show it again now. It's just hard to navigate when it's like five hours. But my fucking responsibility to nerf myself when the game can't properly <laughs> account for my level. Yeah, yeah, that's a big problem in this game. And this, this game is fucked in that regard. Because uh, my mimic uh, gets a hit on him as well, I think. But the problem is, like, I'm dealing so much damage. This is before, by the way, that I respect Look, realizing. Dude. Um, I oh could... wow! Yeah, he just yeah. got what messed the up. Fuck! Yeah, it was pretty pretty much the same for all of those. I feel yeah. like. Well, and something I want to highlight as well about these opening builds in the game. Something that I found out anyway. I chose uh, just a, I think a long sword is what I started with my first playthrough. When I came to Mirgit, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna need to back off. This is this is a tough boy. Though I think if yeah. I was forced to in a hell scenario fight him until death, like, it would probably take me like half a day, I think. But I wouldn't want to do it that way. It's like I, I get the message game. I'll go look other places. But uh, my second playthrough I did just for a bit of fun offline. I chose um. Uh, samurai, you get the Uchi Katana. Um, I killed Mirgo on my first try, or one of the first tries, because um, I procced bleed like three or four times in my fight with him, and like that knocks out like oh. half the health bar on its own. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I was just like, this bleed. is almost unfair, man. Like, how man, come the longsword like... doesn't get this benefit at all? I feel like you shouldn't sure get it. It wasn't game, folded with glorious Nippon steel enough times. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you shouldn't get a strong bleed weapon as your starting weapon. I just, I realized that, like, had I chosen that arbitrarily at the start, just being like, oh, Sabra, that'd be cool. It's like, I would yeah, have yeah. had a much easier time because I know they've, have they nerfed bleed in general or have they only nerfed particular bleed things? They haven't nerfed anything to do with bleed. Well, yeah. they, <laughs> I, I was told they, they did it for blood strike that they've nerfed that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they nerfed for that, that but just the damage on that skill rather than anything to do with bleed. Yeah. C bleed's broken in this game. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's too, too good. Powerful. Way too good. It's not, and, and someone might be like, well, how have you determined that? And it's like, it's just comparative to everything else. It's too good. Everything else K suffers. Katanas in general are too good in this game because they have the bleed, which is insane. There's uh, stamina is not real in this game, so that's not a concern. Um, mm. And they have a really quick weapon art that they get to use in combat mo more often than most other weapons get to use their weapon arts. 
like the Uchikatana's weapon art R2, it hits really fucking hard, and you get to use it so much more often than other equivalent weapon arts. Like uh, the weapon art R2 of the longsword, it takes longer to come out and does about half the damage. Mm. Damn. Um, and that's the damage version, the one that's not supposed to be used for guard breaking. So like, yeah. what? <laughs> I used the Moon Veil with my int build, and that thing shredded. It just rips things apart. Like, if I could, if I wasn't fighting bosses, I was just using that one and just used the weapon arts because it's like slash, slash, slash. Sometimes two people at once, slash, no problem. Um, hopefully we'll do some kind of like a conclusion on bosses, but I would like to submit the worst boss in the game that isn't repeated. That's the uh, way I'll categorize this. This can only God be devouring boss. serpent. <laughs> Fucking this yeah. boss was embarrassing to me, and you'll see why. If you keep an eye on the stream, you'll see why. Um, yeah, this one was funny for you, but uh, watching you. I uh, this makes me remember pleased. you finished that fight, and then you came over to my stream. And was like, you need to show this on stream. <laughs> <laughs> this was like, embarrassing. <laughs> Rikard, yeah, which is a cool name, not a cool yeah. boss. Okay, so the idea they had when they so actually, uh, did anyone get PTSD when they had they picked up a weapon in the opening of the fight? I was like, oh, not Yorm again. <laughs> no. no, I never found this zone, so I never did There's this. Storm, Storm King from Demon Souls, also. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was just like, oh god, but you know, I thought to myself, maybe they, maybe they'll do it right this time somehow, maybe it'll be really fun. And I think when I was initially doing the fight, I was like, this is fine, uh, uh, you know, okay, it's not quite Yorm, this is, there's something, there's more here. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, the idea is he's got a ring of lava around him, so you can't get to him directly, you have to use the range, well, the moves on this weapon they provide you, which has range. And you have to dodge his moves. Obviously, though, I was like, I was a little curious about this because um, I think when you see me in my playthrough, when I first come across lava in the volcano mana area, I was like, ooh, better not go in there. That's probably an insta death. And then I was like, yeah. well, it's not in a lot of the games, actually. I think Dark Souls 1's damage on lava without the lava ring is like pretty intense, if I remember. But uh, I, I, I'd have to fucking look at it again because I can't remember anymore. But anyway, I was surprised to find out in the normal parts of the game. There's a lot of places you get to by running across lava. And I was like, oh, okay. Lava's pretty chill, actually. It's it's not even as damaging as poison. Or at least I think it's close. And I was just like, that's really odd, but okay. It's as hell. And so when it showed up in this fight, I was like, I can stand on this, right? And if you look at my health bar, yes. The answer is <laughs> definitely mm -hmm. fucking yes. The problem is, if you do that, I don't think the devs expected anyone to do that. They were like, well, no, it's lava. Why would you stand on lava, you idiot? It was like, well, it's not, it's not hitting me. And so now, most of his attacks can't get to me. Oh, wow. Can't and, do anything about it. And so the, this happens, and then I was just like, so that was weird, and then it was like, phase two, and I was like, okay, maybe phase two is, like, better. <laughs> phase two is basically the same, he just has like, a couple extra moves, I think. Um, and a big phase. stupid yeah, sword. Another big stupid sword. Yes. And, and yeah, this, this boss was absolutely ruined by me being brain dead and just going, I attack close? <laughs> I attack close. Monkey. <laughs> I, I even think that I misunderstood my weapon. I used all of its, um, the FP move, the special move on it. And when I ran out of FP, I was like, oh, now it's it's ranged only. It's like, no, it's not. Uh, sorry, it's, it's melee only. And I was like, no, 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 it's not. But I thought that. But that thought Same. led me to Same. annihilate this boss in, like, a secret exploit. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't even I try. Actually... I didn't even try the light attacks. I was just confused that all of a sudden I'm not allowed to use that move anymore. It's like, oh, I guess I have to use my FP. But people in chat were like, oh, R1 is buff too. It's like, yeah, I guess melee, but look at all the lava. <laughs> I'm not going in there. Meanwhile, and then later like, on, I figured out. It's pretty fun. <laughs> it's like, it's like a nice look little... at it. It's not doing anything to your health bar. Yeah. It's lava then, game. And then. You know, then it figured out, it's like, oh, wait, the, the, the other attacks are range too, so you can just stand there and. Look. Yeah, and I just chug my ass to everyone once in a while. But then he did a move that I was just like, "Holy mother of hell! What the hell move is this, devs? You're being cunts! Uh, like, yeah. look at this move now." Sword slam. Um. Oh, I, I, it's it's. I don't know if it's given a name or anything, but he's just skull spam. There's just skulls everywhere. Oh yeah, the skull mm -hmm. spam. But then he ends it with like a one hit kill sword slash that has stupid oh. range. It's, well, uh, if you look I, at me right now, I just took an opportunity to drink Estes, and it happened to be the right one. I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't get hit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this one was it's weird cool for me. I, I guess, but like, why? I panicked there when that happened. I was like, oh shit, so I started running around, oh. and it just kind of disappeared on top of me, I think. Mark, look. 
Uh, when he's oh, about yeah, to, to throw the sword down, he staggers yeah. from my mimic. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you got lucky <laughs> really? on that one, for sure. He's about he to bring it down, he gets staggered. That's hilarious, I didn't even know that happened. I was still not summoning at all at that point in the game, and, I, I, like, his, his that sword attack, I was just like, I there's no way around that, because even if you... If you run to the side of it, it will still kill you, even though the hitbox didn't doesn't seem like it's anywhere near you. And I found the trick you have to do is just once he starts throwing those skulls, just run as far away from him as possible. Like 180 degrees from where he is, just run in the opposite direction. And if you get far enough away, the skulls eventually kind of dissipate and he'll whiff on that sword strike. See, and then that, that was another one. You can see it when Maul is just rolling around. It's like, can I please tell what's actually happening game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any respect for a big, like almost cinematic millions of skulls flying into me and exploding. I'm just like, what is this mechanically? What the fuck is happening? The entire thing that makes these games work in the fucking first place is that you're kind of shit in terms of what you're actually actually capable of as a character, but you have your really good role, so if you're paying attention to what's going on and you manage to tell what's going on, you can roll through everything and punish at the correct times. I'd, I'd really love to be able to actually tell what's happening, and we need attacks where you can tell what's happening in order for this system to work. So, um... I throw in a vote for funniest boss. Oh, this is I'm probably excited. going to be more so tied to just everyone's experiences. Um, I'm trying to find it. I definitely I clipped it out to show you, Metal. Um, oh, the, uh, the chunky guy. Uh, no, he was well. So I don't even know if you, I should really be counting this as a boss. If anyone in chat can remember when I killed this guy, I think it was my last stream. Um, I mean, which one? Which one is it? Is it so he was. He was a guy that I think everyone finds kind of amusing because he turns up, and I think he's an actual boss fight. And when you kill him, it's his great enemy felled. Um, oh, <laughs> but he's just—I started calling—I called him the Game of Thrones guy just because he's got a northern uh, type accent. And just, he sounds like he's out of Game of Thrones. Oh, here it is. All right, everyone, just watch and enjoy this. Look at the subtitles as well for his little speech. Like I knew you'd I come to come. stand before the Elden Ring to become Elden Lord. What a sad oh, yeah, state that's of it's Gideon. And he's just like. <laughs> Oh, Which, Gideon, oh, he, fine. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't a, know anybody in this from, game. That's a guy from the round table you talk to. Yeah, he's at, the, at your home base. So, he finishes his speech, the fight begins, I backstab him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, yeah. And then I just do this. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Man. Oh. Oh, oh. man. I fuck is that thing even? Okay. <laughs> I, like, yours was even worse than mine. I was like, oh shit, we're fighting Gideon? Oh shit, he's wow. probably super strong. And then I just fucking shat on him. It's like, why I'm, am I so weak? Dude, I imagine the little ghost boys you see running around are other players. Yeah, they are. Yeah, imagine yeah. someone seeing yours of that. <laughs> and, and they're in the middle of this fight, and they're like, wait, what? What? You're done? <laughs> you just got here. It's so funny, because of the way they introduced this. It's like, are you ready to... T oh. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. And the one move he got was a move that wouldn't hit me because it's a ring around him just outside of his <laughs> close range. It's like, oh. His gimmick, by the way, is he, he does like all the magic. He, do, he yeah. does everything. Yeah. He does uh, Melania's big Scarlet Rock dive thing. He does Black Flame stuff. He, he does it all. But uh, this guy is part of a running trend in this game where the the term, well, the boss health bar and the boss music have never meant less than they mean yeah. now. <laughs> like, good lord. Fucking random ass NPCs getting boss health bars. A big fucking yeah. flower that does nothing. Boss health bar. Regular enemies with boss health bars. Dude, I'd be Phenomenal. more forgiving of that compared to say, it saying great enemy felled. That's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> great enemy felled. <laughs> what were they thinking? But yeah, I had a, had a couple of times I'm just like, why, why do you have a health bar? I killed like 80 of you. W go yeah. away. Why do you have a health bar? Why do you have dramatic boss music? Fuck off. This is, uh, would you say that this is an issue stemming from balance? Or like, uh... It's got to be. Ability to balance it's, because it's an of issue of balance of and presentation. It's, it's balance right. in a lot of cases where, you know, things like Gideon just he can't do anything and yet he's presented like this big deal for some reason why mm -hmm. like i think this this is fine if he doesn't have a fucking big introduction well no it's fine if he doesn't have a fucking boss health bar even if I he's just say. a guy 
Yeah, if he's just a dude, he's because he's not presented as some big threat or anything. Because what I find weird about this fight particularly is... Because uh, you get some of these NPC invades that have the name over his health bar on top of his character model. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, you mean, just, yeah, he's, just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he's also a health bar as a boss. So I don't know why they just didn't put him in as like a normal NPC invader. I don't know why they didn't do that for like every NPC invader who's also a boss mm. for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to clarify, with um, something like Morgoth, you're like, ooh, he needed more health game. But yeah. the, everything in presentation felt like it makes a lot of sense. With uh, with Gideon, you're just like, what was that? What are you doing? You could, yeah, have, just just, you could have been a rat. You need... Like, there's just a rat in the room, and it's just like the great <laughs> the monster of Gerwin, and it's just like all the health by the music, and you just one slash is dead. You're like, why? That was an experience with like <laughs> half of the non critical well, no, half. I'm gonna say ninety nine percent of the non critical path bosses was I walk into it, it's got a boss health bar and music, so it wants to be like all threatening and stuff, and then I blow through it in seconds because it's not mechanically engaging and it's not tough and it's not scaled to me. Oh also he's worth hundred and fifty thousand runes. What the yeah. hell? <laughs> oh the Wait, fucking the I don't, I don't judging know off of his health bar, it seems like he has around seven to eight thousand health. Judging off of how much damage you did to him. So that's not even that's... boss territory. That's what I mean. It's, it's a weird moment in the game, and it, it does. It's a microcosm of a lot of the stuff that they do uh, in terms of making boss fights feel a lot less uh, impactful. Yeah. So what, what's weird also content. is uh, there's like random enemies in the game. They're like super fucking tanky and much more challenging to fight than some bosses. And they give you, and then all of a sudden they give you like two thousand runes. I was like, I just that was a lot yeah, of effort. Man, Can I get some more for that? Like, what is happening? I suppose you can't balance for that very effectively in terms of like, should they give you rune rewards based on how much trouble you had, or should it just be on what they believe to be the difficulty of the boss? Because I found that um, it was almost an indicator of just how well I was doing. If I like mm -hmm. annihilate a boss and it's one hundred fifty k runes, I'm like, oh my god, I am way ahead of this game right now. But if I have trouble at a boss and it's like 25k, I'm like, really? <laughs> Jesus. Oh god, like, I'm not doing so good. Like, but uh, it could also just be because they just didn't quite uh, smooth that out. I don't know. Because, yeah, Gideon should not be worth that. Yeah. None of the, like, not even half of the bosses in this game deserve their fucking boss health bar. Because half <laughs> of them get recycled as regular enemies later on. More than half. Pretty much every boss that isn't not critical path you can find as a fucking regular enemy somewhere for some reason. And this is interesting. It's I don't like... necessarily think that's an issue, though. I just find it frustrating because it's a devaluation of the boss health bar. It doesn't it doesn't mean anything anymore. I mean, in Dark Souls One, you have Capra Demon and uh, what was the other one we talked about before? Taurus Demon Asylum and Taurus. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, not Taurus Asylum, Demon. He's always well. a boss. Sure. And I think but, that's that's okay because at the point where you reach them in the lava land, you're like it's end game time. And I think it's kind of like fun to see that this used to be a boss, but now you're so much stronger to the point where it's no longer a boss, it's just a normal enemy. I could buy that argument if they weren't still throwing it at you as a boss as well. I was gonna say what Theo seems <laughs> yeah, to be highlighting is if you went fair. to Lava Land and you move through into a room, boss walls appear, boss health and his capra demon, you're like, wait. Yeah. yeah. Wait, really? Yeah, no, I get that. That I get, but I don't I don't have an issue with them just being an enemy in the world. I'm down with it if it makes sense, like finding tree sentinels around or whatever, or cruise. Well, I don't think tree sentinels should have boss music or boss health bars in general, but that's a different matter. Um, if finding that kind of enemy around where it makes sense to find it, sure. Uh, so long as it's not spammed and well, no, yeah, I'd still say so long as it's not spammed if it's supposed to be a boss tier enemy. Uh, I'm trying to think of, well, so I was actually going to say Godfrey, for example, as a boss. I, um, I kind of like it was. It was. I think I went through it too quickly, and so I didn't even get to really appreciate him mechanically. But I thought that there's potential with him. How did everyone else find him? Uh, that's the one right before you go to Elden Beasts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. He's pretty I... good. I don't like his stomp spam. Nah, me too. I also didn't like that you fight the spirit version of him earlier in the game. I like don't I... know why. That was weird. Why? Yeah, I that got a little confused. Weird. If I'm honest with you, I was like, so Godric, yeah, and Godfrey. <clears throat> 
What's the, what's the what's going on there? <laughs> like, I think it's that they were really trying to make it so that the initials for the first initial for all of the um, demigods were either G, R, or M. Oh, because well, this is this is the mm. golden lineage, right? So Godric yeah. is a descendant of Godfrey. You have Godric, Godfrey, Godefroy, which is a reskinned Godric in an ever jail. Um, Godefroy, and... that sounds hilarious. It was hilarious. Yeah. I remember coming across him, Godefroy. <laughs> I thought that was a fucking meme. <laughs> like, yeah. it was, it's like a wombo word. He's the mutated version. He's called Godefroy. <laughs> Did we He's need to do okay every boss in the fucking game, <laughs> including one of the demigods? I, I, I don't know, man. Uh... <laughs> No, you know what? I don't think we did. I don't think we needed Golden Spirit God Godfrey in the capital for no real no, reason. I didn't. No fanfare around it. Because it's got its normal boss music as well, from when you encounter him normally. It, it kind of cheapens his final battle, I found. like I it, And it, like the second I saw him as like a golden ghost, I was like, okay, I'm going to fight the real version of this guy later. They did the same thing in Sekiro a few times. It just makes me so confused, because I don't know what's happening. Did he have all of his mechanics? Because that was at the point where I was still using summons, and I basically just killed him. Not he had all of, he had all of his from. phase his phase one mechanics. He had. He doesn't uh, go no. into the Horalu or whatever he calls himself in the last part. He didn't have all mm. of his axe stuff either. Like uh, I think he was limited to his fairly basic axe move set, which made yeah. him feel like a Dark Souls mm. two boss. Oh no! You know who I would like to talk about? Why? Why is it? Revelio. <gasps> Who was that? Is that the name <laughs> of the boss? Oh, oh no. Revelio. Oh, that was. Oh uh, no! I thought Revelio was the name of a boss. I got Dark confused. Gorge Radon. <laughs> yeah. Look I, at this fucking set piece you've stumbled into. I fucking into hate this boss. Cool. <laughs> and this, but it's not even. I think a lot of people are going to be like knee jerking me, but being like, "Oh, you just, we're very good at it." It's like I, since understanding fully how this thing works, I still hate it. It doesn't matter whether or not I figured out exactly what I was supposed to do the whole time. Which, by the way, it seems that you're supposed to summon all of the Randys. I'm not even a fan yeah. of that. Um, they're fucking worthless anyways. I think they are pretty worthless, but they distract them. <laughs> they are, true. I think if this is supposed to be a big, you know, dumb raid boss thing, they should just be here. I don't think you should have to summon yeah, them. Yeah, spawn as a big group and charge yeah. him. That'd be way cooler. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not a fan of this opening, and not a fan of his spazzy nature, and um, I think he That's looks a... absurd. A lot of people think he looks amazing. I, I... I think he looks dumb funny as, as hell. Oh, any... little horse. Well, <laughs> I was gonna say, can we get can we get a good image yeah. of this to show rags? I wonder. Uh, there's, there's a concept. Yeah, I'm looking because I, I can't tell it. yet based on the silhouette. So he's me... he's a he's big a lad. Horse? But as you can see, he's moving pretty fast, and it doesn't quite look like his legs are doing it, and that's because he is sitting on a regular horse. Uh, oh, wow, I didn't even notice that. I thought he was just kind of <laughs> sliding around. Can you see oh, that horse? Yeah. Look at what the fuck? Horse is. is that like one of his legs? Is no, that's his horse. It's that's called Leonard. He learned gravity know? magic so he could ride it. Oh, okay. Well, literally, they wanted to account for yeah. how absurd this is. I'm they not said memeing. He learned <laughs> gravity magic in order to ride this horse efficiently. Yeah. Why would you, you ride? You may also horse notice horse? he doesn't have any. He loves feet. his horse, Rags. He loves his horse. That's. So, you, you, you may notice he doesn't have any feet. <laughs> <laughs> any sense of you know dramatic, tragic grandeur or whatever that this fight mm -hmm. was going for is. Annihilated because I didn't even design. see it. In fact, he's on a little horse. Dude, and then the people in the chat were like, you should he has hear a little the horse." Opening. Like, no, he doesn't. Can you even off. compare this to like Gwyn, <laughs> where you're just like, it's not even. You can't compare it to Artorias. No. Well, so in this, that's is the what thing. most people have been doing. <sighs> I'd go as far as oh, saying like, this stupid this is... motherfucker. <laughs> Looks absurd. Look at the little horse. What is <laughs> <laughs> What were I'm, I'm kind of happy I didn't notice the horse. While I, was I don't know how you did. It's, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think that like there's so many sort of eldritch looking creatures in this game that have all sorts of weird limbs and stuff like that, that I'm more focusing on what his swords are doing. And it sort of seemed like he was skating around around yeah. the desert. And I just thought, OK, so that's that's the way he moves then. Because I had, so, point, had to have it point out to me as well. Because I was the same. I was like, oh, it's just sliding and stuff. And then people were like, do you, do you know this, this small horse? I was like, 
There's no horse, fuck off. <laughs> they open the fight with this really dramatic but kind of solemn music, and then you get to him and he's on this tiny little fucking horse scattered along I, uh, I get the impression looking at chat that this is a controversial perspective that you guys It shouldn't be. This looks stupid. Yeah, I mean, this looks stupid. That's Look really at this. Me. Look at this. It's hey, almost stupid. everyone I've talked to like uh, this you yeah. said that you're looking at a Taurus or whatever. What was it? A Taurus that you're looking at him with rose colored glasses. A Taurus is fantastic. He's one of the best horses. Awesome. 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 What the fuck? Awesome. Awesome. I'm, awesome. I'm awesome. personally Matt, offended. Get over it. <laughs> yeah. I'm also is Artorius, personally is offended Artorius by... the only thing here that we unanimously like? Artorius is <laughs> unsurpassed um, in terms of visual presentation, in terms of mechanically gorgeous. Represents. Oh, Artorius' gorgeous. moves, yeah. beautiful. No. Yeah. Good lore too. I'm personally offended that people compare this boss to Artorius. What the I'm fuck is too. lore between the two? I, I think the only comparisons I've heard to it are from a lore standpoint of this it's being all, sort of a, a tragic, lying. tragic fight against a hero. That tragic for a horse. I, <laughs> well, I, was I mean, say, yeah, is this not a demise by an absurdity? It, How is it yeah, not a demise? The, tra the tragedy I, I, is annihilated <laughs> by the stupid fucking horse and his roller skating around on it. <laughs> I, I didn't 100 percent agree with it before, and I didn't notice the horse until you guys pointed it out to me just now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. It's a distraction. Uh but yeah, like I was gonna bring up, you know, Gwyn was something else in terms of a choice for a for a final thing for a game, especially the boss music. And then Soul of Cinder having what I believe it fair to describe as subtle references to Gwyn. Mwah. Another another just mm. I love that choice, as well as references to everything almost. If Radon is supposed to be an equivalent in any way to those, I'd be like, stop. Put put the well, controller he's... down. He's a good reference to everything in Elden Ring because he's a flailing nutcase who looks stupid and <laughs> is a flailing annoying to fight. Nutcase, he looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. And I need to get this across as well. They just got out of a cutscene describing him as like lost to base instinct. Like he's a fucking animal now. He just mm -hmm. he just fights and kills and eats the corpses of those around him. And then they decide to open the boss fight by having him camp you with a bow. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing? I hate that they decided that to, to, to do that. Ugh, I yeah. hate it. What an awful intro. So you're, so you're basically forced to dodge it's... the first two and then get on your horse and just run up to and him and spam summon the, the other thing. It's a fucking... It's a so design or a Boros where it's fucking eating its own tail because he needs to do that so that you can summon the people. And why do you need to summon the people again? Instead of them just being here? Yeah, everyone came here to fight. Why is why are they not ready to fight? Yeah. I was actually hoping for that. When they when I was talking to them in the festival and they were like, we're gonna fucking take out Radon as a big team. I was, I was fucking like, hype as shit I, for this I, fight. I was like, what are we gonna be getting here? Because this is yeah. a new game from From. They could do anything they want, theoretically. Yeah. I was like, what are we gonna they be doing? Charging all together? cynical and stupid. Oh, God. <laughs> also, do you get more choices of summons if you've done more side quests? Uh, I found that there's at least more people standing there uh, at the festival. Because I mm. realized on my second playthrough when I got there, there was only like three instead of four for me. Uh. So there might be, a, might be, you might be onto something there, yeah. Did anyone have patches? As a yeah. Oh, patches. Is no, really but funny. I heard he fucks off after that. like a minute. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's not even a minute. He he shows up and then it's just like patches left. It's like, oh, <laughs> nice patches. <laughs> Dude, uh, someone just suggested in chat. Wouldn't it have been awesome if you had a selection of an amount and you could take a team in? You have to choose. Yeah. Great. And yeah, they will offer yeah, different yeah. things. It's like there's nothing stopping them from making that a thing. The only yeah, thing it's... stopping them is their own cynicism. Can yeah. I summon fourteen All's... blinds? <laughs> You probably also, could. all game, you can summon your fucking Ash that you leveled up all game, but in this fight, where you can summon everything mm -hmm. except your Ash. We are this almost is... to the Ash conversation. I actually only have one more boss <laughs> I want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple, I guess I'd want to bring oh, up. Oh, fair enough. Cool. Like, however many you guys want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, is, yeah, that yeah. A, is that it for Redon? Uh... Um, let me see. Yeah, I guess so. else. Uh, he affirms to me that FromSoft are not capable of anything like Artorias anymore in terms of presentation. I think he's it's, a victim. It's hollow now. Of, they don't um, know what they're doing. Spectacle. He's the most spectacle destroyed thing in this game, as mm. far as I'm concerned. With a close second being Rikard. His one upside is you don't have to fight him to finish the game. Which is so bizarre to me that he's not necessary. I think um, you only need to, I, need to kill two. Yeah. Right? Only two of the great runes which yeah. comprise the Elden Ring are needed to restore the Elden Ring. 
that's that's yeah, just that's weird. That's weird. It's not intuitive <laughs> at all to me. What the fuck? When people told that to me, I was like, wait, why? But why? He tells me about like five or something, and there's like six you can fight overall. <laughs> um. All right. Well, so the next one I wanted to talk about, and then I, anyone else can choose, is <clears throat> the Godskin duo. Ooh. Uh, uh, so this is funny. the fight that broke while me. While we were, while we were the fight that broke oh. you. Oh no. <laughs> I I wasn't I wasn't summoning or using any weapon arts at all prior to this fight. Every single one of my boss fights is on my well, channel. <laughs> if I <laughs> so, if I could just complain, what the fuck are you doing creating a boss door you can't go through, you idiots? I was. Yeah. I, what the I hell is there. that? Look at this. I died there. <laughs> oh my god! There's <laughs> nothing the more boss? frustrating than that ever. <laughs> like, what I the think fuck? So. Well, they I think what, king. I think what it's happened also here the is the longest boss run in the game, as far as I can remember, at least. I, I so don't you know can walk what, through all the other boss doors except for this one, where you just can't. Else yeah, because the golden fog, you can walk through it. Oh yeah, god, it's so annoying. That's like you're lying to me. Yeah, but the reason I think the reason is the boss is like further down and the boss gate uh, that you can't walk through is like upstairs exactly so yeah that's the same that's room why you can't, can't go through it there but it's that's the... their fucking fault for building the place well, like this yeah, yeah no it's... no i just wanted to point out why why that even happens but it's just so put weird. a fucking door there like a normal door <laughs> that you can yeah, only open well... after the boss fight or whatever yeah that's all you have to do kind easy yeah kind of a door locked from the other side exactly that's not actually the door i entered this boss fight from i don't think i think it's two you can get into it from right yeah that's yeah true. But one of them is a fucking fake. Oh, well, the, yeah. the upper stairs ones are there's, fakes. There's three different. Man. Cool. That's a chunky that's boy. A, that's mean. It's a betrayal as far as I'm concerned. You're not allowed yeah. to do that. You can't give me a betrayal. boss door that throughout every single game in your entire series and this game, they've been mm -hmm. walk throughable and you They're drop this on, on me and there's enemies outside it. So I'm getting They're fucking railed by them. Like, there. Excuse me. Well, <laughs> it looks like They're those enemies are there to take advantage of you thinking that doors work like doors have yeah. worked forever. It feels like You can like imagine way. the conversation, right? This will be really funny one. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they are not beyond doing shit like that. That's come oh, up yeah. before. <laughs> it's just funny to me that they're like, what would make this funnier? What if you can't go through it? Well, that's pretty funny. What if we put a bunch of enemies there? I mean, the ah. reason why we have so many swamp thingies in this game is because Miyazaki because said, I just meme. can't help myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I'm, I'm very surprised we didn't get any mimics in this uh, mimic chest. You yeah, know? yeah. Very yeah. surprised. Yeah. There that's... are a couple chests that teleport you, though, mm -hmm. instead of being To an be item. fit, those are opportunities a lot of the time. Yeah, that's, that's true. Too. That's a really cool um, idea that isn't utilized someone, and can't be because it's kneecapped by the warping. So yeah. someone said Godskin Duo was literally fine. Do you agree? No. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'll do my take first because it's going to be the most positive. When I played this, I've explained this before a couple of you, so sorry about that. But uh, when I played this, I was like, oh, Godskin Apostle, I like you a lot. I really enjoyed the fight with you. Godskin Fat Guy, less so. Less so. Uh, not not a huge fan of him, and mainly because of his second phase, where he just becomes giant and fat and rolls <laughs> around until he gets you. It's um. Look at that guy's back. It's so long. Yeah, he's he's, he's <laughs> definitely the long man of this uh this, this game. <laughs> um, but fat guy, yeah, he goes fat and rolls until he gets you. I heard you guys talking about it briefly on stream. Um, he does stop eventually. Uh, I got him caught on a on a thing, and he rolled at me for about ten seconds and then stopped. Um. I had him roll in circles around me for, I think, 20 seconds. It's one. fucking absurd. I don't know why they do this sometimes. I just, I just wonder. But anyway, I was like, I don't want Fat Man getting to phase two because um, it'll fuck up my ability to maintain this this area. So I guess I'll just focus on Apostle and we'll see what, what ends up happening in terms of spawns. He's got the Four Kings element. Uh, well, it's not even the Four Kings element, actually. It's, it's a variant, I guess, of... Uh, mm. It's like, you will spawn the one that you've killed... Uh, again and again and again. Watcher and Defender. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so I was like, I can have my boss fight with Apostle and enjoy it, and I'll just keep moving around to avoid the fat guy. And that's essentially how I played the fight, and it was kind of fun, but I just don't know that that's not how I describe why ONS is so well designed. What I'm describing is yeah. essentially trying to ignore what this game is going for and try and fight mm. it my own way. Um, mm. And so I had fun with it, I, can't, I don't think I can confidently say it's very good. 
I think it's pretty terrible. I think it shows a lot of understand a lot of misunderstanding of what makes ONS good in the first place. Because a lot of what makes that fight because there's superficial elements of it here, right? There's the pillars. Because they knew that the pillars helped you out with ONS. Yeah. But with ONS, they had different but complementary movesets, and that was very important to how they played out. Uh Smo was very, very, very slow, but he was huge. And uh, you could you could fairly easily separate him from Ornstein because Ornstein could zip around the arena a lot faster. Ornstein was also the only one who had ranged attacks. They didn't both have ranged attacks that input read your heels. And I <laughs> really uh, and I want to highlight I fucking it's one it's one of my suggestions for the best fight in the whole thing. It's so goddamn good, ONS. Um, if you focus on yeah. Smo, uh, you can move the camera around so that you'll basically they built it so that you'll always have an idea of where Ornstein is. It's, they usually, uh, you can account for his charges while also focusing Smo, but at the same time, if you want to play to focus Ornstein instead, then um, Smo will usually easily be within your field of view when you're focusing him, which is something I genuinely think they gave up on trying to fix anymore. I've complained about it thoroughly in Bloodborne. This game has the same problem. Focus is not fully considered. It can fuck you over all the time. I don't think that's good. People are like, if it's fucking so, you over, turn it off. I don't like that as a counter. That's, yeah. a stup that's not a counter. Uh, especially the more they start to design fights and mechanics around the lock-on system. <laughs> it felt In like... Bloodborne, you lose access to your good dodge by not being locked on. Ornstein and Samoa's moves felt like they were designed knowing the systems in the game and how you play. Mm -hmm. These feel like two bosses they made and then threw together and put in a room. I guess that's probably going to always be the difficulty with uh, dual boss battles mm -hmm. is that you need to... I would imagine that there's the variables if you have two AI-driven... That, that are separate entities but need to cooperate in a way uh, or like they need to synergize in order to work and that's probably incredibly difficult to achieve mm -hmm. and so from what I understand like everybody loves Ornstein and Smo but that there's no boss battles that have two of them that are close to that the is only that like one general sentiment? there is only one other good duo boss I can think of in this series and that's uh, the twin demons in Dark Souls 3's DLC uh, what about uh, what about Lorien and Lothric? Do they count? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really consider that a duo fight. Yeah, I don't. Like the single entity, really. It's only a duo in the sense that it's one entity yeah, with two attacks that are happening at different times, or right. at least which I guess is different than two enemies that are mm. just in acting independently and running around. Yeah, which I think is so much harder to get to the get them to synergize. You need all of their moves set because they'll they'll roll a dice right on what move they'll use, and you need all of them to have some level of fair synergy for the player to account for, which is difficult to design. Yeah. I think I'm sure that's incredibly difficult to design. That's probably why that Ornstein smoke fight why it's so beloved, right? Is because it's, it's um, just like I've always felt if you beat that, then Dark Souls is beatable for you. That's like the last major hurdle before you it means you've probably understood yeah. the game well enough that you can yeah. make it to the end now the okay. thing the thing i'd also like to point out that distinguishes this fight from ornstein and smo uh so distinctly is that ornstein and smo both operate at fairly different ranges yeah uh like ornstein he's quick and he moves a lot but he doesn't have the reach that smo does smo has a shitload of reach and uh he's able to get you from further away but he also has to he has to move around Smo. He can't really hit you through Smo because his reach is so low. Right, uh, so it's almost like a balance in the sense that Smo is slow, which means it's hard for him to keep up with you, but he doesn't need to keep up with you because he's got long reach, whereas Ornstein yeah. is has super to keep up quick, with you. But he needs, he needs to get close. That's why he goes so quick. And his telegraphs uh, tend to be longer Smo's. Meanwhile yeah. So I wonder if this is I know this is a discussion. Maybe this is something worth bringing up. I know that uh, Matthew Matosis has talked about it. <laughs> telegraphing. Um, what, what? I would like to say. How do you feel about telegraphing? Oh, I wonder okay. if that's a subject sure. for later. Uh, that's just, just watching. Phone that I would like to save. Just watching Mahler's right. playthrough. As someone who plays, because I've played a lot of Vermintide One and Two. I've played a lot of yeah. Mordhau. And granted, these are not these are these are melee combat focused games. Great I'm movie. very big into the how can you tell something is about to attack you, and how do you distinguish that from it's just normal moving around? So I'm, I'm definitely in, interested to see how you guys talk about it here. 
I don't want to open up that discussion yet because we'll get to it, but like telegraphing is just uh, tied to, I think, a fundamental aspect of game design, which is communicating clearly to the player what is happening. I think, yes. uh, mm -hmm. communicate, yeah. and of course, communication can take multiple forms because, you know, we were talking about tutorials earlier, right? A tutorial can communicate things to you without the game explicitly saying, this is how this mechanic works. You need to think about this. This is what you need to do. That there's subtle ways of it. Like when I enter into a new level, the framing of this world may tell me where I need to go without telling me where I need to go. Or like, the way that an enemy moves around might indicate to me something about their move set before I even fight them. Like communication is incredibly integral, but also it's kind of a it's it's a it's hard to know how to communicate something that most people, if not everybody, is going to understand. But uh, yeah, let's. Mm -hmm. I, I guess if you want to table that discussion for um, now, we'll. Uh... One thing I just want to mention because it's about to come up as well. Just the way I ended this fight felt so fucking good um it just happened to be that my mimic and the fat guy were fighting where the next one will spawn and i saw that as a huge fuck up i was like oh damn if i could have just focused the fat guy i could have killed them before godskin apostle came back to fuck me up but the fact that they were together meant that my uh blood slash was gonna hit them both if i used it and so i finished the fight with tagging them both oh. twice with that move no oh, nice nice fucking oh, man that damage Feels badass as hell to do something like that, uh, which is you it's know just one of the many highs you can get from a game like this. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I feel when like they felled. Why? Why felled? I okay. <laughs> <laughs> like a tree. I I guess. Guess. Oh, that was a good choice of words. <laughs> to complete the paris the comparison I was making, just really quickly, um, I said the Ornstein and Samoa are very different in the way they operate. They have very different ranges. These guys, they both operate at the same range fairly consistently, or at least are capable of operating at the same range mm -hmm. and at the same kind of speed. Like the Godskin Fatty, he's not actually that slow, and he has yeah, he's fast. He has big thrusts that you can do that carry him mm -hmm. quite a distance forward very quickly with his rapier. And oh stuff. yes, he can. Yeah, he can charge as fast as um, Ornstein. It's fucking ridiculous with yeah. some of those moves if you put it and... next to someone who can't. And the fucking roll, it would be you know like Smo's charge. He like goes, uh, boom, 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 swing. It's all very like that's his charge move. And it's big and heavy, and you can really feel the weight behind it. Um, fucking fat man just goes. <laughs> he's like Sonic. <laughs> yeah, like there's no yeah, rhythm his... to it. There's no. And... There is, but it's it's way faster than you think. Something like that should be able to move, especially that bit. flurry thrust attack that he has. And, and they jam two. you. Um, does it feel like the enemies are weightless in that sense? That things that just seem massive bit, don't yeah. act as if mm -hmm. they just are super fast and they don't act like they have momentum mm -hmm. to themselves. The other big thing contributing to their lack of distinction from one another that hurts this being a two enemy boss fight is that they can both throw fireballs at you and they both yep. input read your heels to throw fireballs. Yeah, at you. that's one of yep. the things I was going to bring up because well, I was like, the, the element of the, the fireballs, A, almost automatically firing off every time you heal, and B, the only cover you have from them getting destroyed as the fight goes on. It doesn't really work for me. I'm just like, man, yeah, this imagine is... Imagine you're fighting Ornstein and Smo, and then you go to heal because you just dodged an attack from Ornstein, and then Smo just throws a fireball at you. Like... What do you guys think about that mechanic in general? What, input reading? Input read healing, heal punishes. Yeah. I'm I don't not like a it. fan. I'm not a fan of it as often as it is, and I don't think it should be on every boss. I think it feels I like something that would be like a, a gimmick for a game. boss. I think it's the kind of thing that yeah you you can use for certain bosses uh, because it can help it can help make them feel a certain way. Um, Not every boss can be Psycho Mantis. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Remind me, of, so, I think that spoils Gwyn, Psycho Mantis. Yeah. What if I think Gwyn has it in Dark Souls One. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. Margit has it in this. Everyone These guys has do it. In it. This. I was gonna like, say I thought everyone had it in this. When Margit yeah. did, uh, he kept doing the charge move every time I healed. I was like, okay, okay, I get it. But then, like, later on, I found that if ever I did heal, the boss, like, it would always do something. Like, look at me, move, start up. So that I was just like, you know, don't you? <laughs> you know I'm doing this. Somebody's watching Because, again, me. they're running into the limitations of what they can do within this framework. So they're trying to find new ways to actually make things punishing. And one of those ways kind of ends up having to be, well, 
I guess they need to be able to heal punish you. So I guess they just know. I, dude, I hate the fact that they can walk across the pillar breakages. That it's almost like, as if that's also something that wasn't was that a the troll? case in ONS. Like, yeah, because that's it's genuinely the pillars are so important in the ONS fight. Yeah, yeah. It's all of this that I'm talking about when I say they just don't understand what made that fight good because everything in this fight is the same on the most superficial of levels. It's the way like, to subvert your expectations in that regard is because I, I have some understanding, I guess, is that in the ONS fight, the pillars break and they become like barriers or like part of the terrain, right? They um they are a, t a barrier. They break in such a way that they no longer are tall pillars. They're like you know, broken, shorter ones, but they are the exact same level of obstacle for the enemies. Like, they don't change. It's just a cool sort of environmental breakage. Or I think... Okay. Yeah, these ones get eliminated. Yeah, they, they, I think, they may as well uh, not be Bornstein, there, unfortunately. They, if, although if you, you can... can go to second phase, I think his lightning can hit you over the pillar. I think so, because it's coming from so high up. I was going to say, yeah. that would be, I think, fair, because he's, he's on his own at that point. Yeah. I have the the pillars though you can still stun or not stun lock exactly but trap the noble the fat guy when he's doing that ball attack you can trap him on the low remains of the pillar still but it's it, hey. because you're dealing with two enemies you can't really stay at the angle that traps them there very easily because you also have to be dodging the the noble oh not the noble sorry the apostle Kind of funny the positioning it. is pretty tight for it as well because if he's, I think it's if he's too close, he'll just clip over it. Did you see my um? Yeah. My effort was to make it so that he never does the fat roll because I fucking hate that move, and he's about yeah, to sucks. begin it when I kill him. I was just <laughs> like, oof, I hate that move. Uh, it seems to trigger when he's at half health, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 sec it's, it's a his second phase, phase move. Yeah. Oh. So he absurd, he can do yeah. it more than the one time though, so it's it's not yeah. just his transition. It's just he can fire it off in phase two, and I found he usually alternated it with the other attack he does, where he floats up in the air and becomes super fat. Where uh, he'll just do like the asylum demon type butt slam, and that one's pretty easy to get a few hits on him afterwards. But if he does the roll, it's like ah oh, shit, <laughs> time I, I just to, time to start the, running. I just fought the the solo version of the fat guy. And I think, I'm not entirely sure about this because I killed him like two pulls after I noticed it, but I think he does the, the slam down if you're close and the roll if you're far away. Um, after, uh, he starts by doing the belly flop and he becomes fat. And if you're close, like trying to punish like the belly, belly flop, he does the, the slam down. And if you're far away, he starts rolling. Hmm, neat. Uh, Maybe I'm I'm not a hundred percent because I kill him pretty soon after, but but I think he does that. What uh, what boss is next? Um, I guess I, this one's a decent segue for me. Uh, it, on the topic of input read heal punishes, how do you guys feel about Crucible Knight? Oh, I was about to bring them up too. <laughs> oh, sick. <laughs> there are too many of them. Uh... Well, I would say that for most bosses. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. I have kind of a hate relationship with them. I feel like every time I encountered them, they just got like triple the health. Mm. And then they, no matter what I did, they just punished me for every move. Yeah. I, I don't know. They, they're like super aggressive. Well, and, and I don't know how to say it. They're like super aggressive. You heal, and they come, come forward with some dash or with like a slash or whatever and then they have like these these tail whips the scorpion tail whip or whatever it's called yeah uh, god i felt like i was just really bad at fighting them i wasn't sure of what i thought design wise no even even with mage like they're so tanky i had a hard time keeping them at, at range even because they see you and it's like oh i'm gonna fuck Shit. your day up i'm just gonna mm -hmm. fuck you up I... and obviously because the devs hate us. There's a <laughs> boss fight where you have to fight two of them at once. Yeah, they love that deal. Well, you, and you have to fight and, the fight with Misbegotten shit. Warrior and the Crucible Knight, where the only way I was getting through this fight is if I could kill Misbegotten Warrior before the Crucible Knight can get to me. I fucking hate Misbegotten Warrior, dude. Fucking I don't like him. little stupid ass cringe. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I think in, in, in general, I think their attacks are pretty well telegraphed, I think. 
but it just takes yeah. so long to kill every single one of them, and they respawn in certain areas later on, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So I I yeah. actually, as bosses, as single bosses, <laughs> I thought Crucible Knights were actually really good. Um, because <laughs> I, I fought one really early uh, in one of the, the jails. Yeah. Um, and I actually enjoy that fight a lot. Like I struggled a lot with it, and uh, like I had to learn how to counter his, all of his moves, his tail whip, and all that jazz. Um, so as as bosses, when there's just one of them, and you know there's a boss room, and you know that the, like because it's a boss room, it's supposed to be slightly harder. Mm -hmm. All that's fine, but when you start encounter them in the just open world, and they have all of their moves still like it's basically like an absolutely overtuned wild enemy like they shouldn't have their entire move sets when they're out in the world i feel like because they can do the the fly up and dash they can yeah. do the the tail they can do the fucking uber <clears throat> stab move that they have like they can do all that stuff and i don't think a repeated enemy in the world should be able to do all that because I think that's a bit too much unless it's like a world boss type of thing where they will eventually go away if you do kill them. Um, but like, is it Nokron, I think, where there's like two of them? And then I think yeah, there's the a couple of them aqueduct, in the capital. Yeah, uh, there's like a bunch of them. And then in the capital, there's a couple of them hiding around corners and shit as well. Um... But yeah, as a single boss, I actually enjoy them quite a bit. I thought they were uh, a pretty so, good early boss for one. I've I had a sort of love hate relationship with this boss as well because I spent a long time grinding out that one in the Ever Jail in Stormhill uh, because mm -hmm. I was actually pretty much enjoying the fight. I was having a pretty good time with it. Uh, I liked Crucible Knight for a good long while, and only on my second playthrough. And some of the later ones in my first playthrough, did I start to really have quite a few problems with him? Because I think the concept of the fight, at the very least, is he's this big defensive powerhouse. He doesn't have that many openings. He's got the big shield that can get in your way. Uh, he doesn't go on very long, uh, but you know, he he doesn't have leave the strongest openings for you to punish. And he's also got a lot of HP. Uh, however. This is all coming combined with a boss that has some of the most insane heal punishes this game has ever seen. Because mm -hmm. he has a stab, mm -hmm. he can chain into a thrust, which he can chain into the stab again. He can cross an insane amount of ground in order to heal punish you, while also being this insane defensive powerhouse that you cannot openly challenge. Yeah. So with... what I found... Sorry, go. I was just going to say, with him more than a lot of people, I found I was like, where is my opportunity? Because I feel like every time I go for it, he's starting up another chain that's a part of the move he was just doing, but it didn't look like it was, but it did, you know, like, that confusion. Yeah. I I fought him in, in my second playthrough, I'm using a greatsword, uh, and I found fighting him with any weapon larger than approximately katana-sized to be miserable in terms of finding openings, and I imagine it only gets worse as you get bigger from greatsword. Because, especially in second phase, his tail swipe covers his openings, which is a cool way to escalate the fight. I think that's neat in concept. However, the recovery time on the tail and the recovery time on his moves is so low that the ambiguity as to whether or not he's going to do the tail swipe means you miss a shitload of opportunities to punish. And he's also very prone to just wandering around for upwards of like five seconds doing nothing with his shield oh, yeah, yeah. like this on screen right now. Um, and it just makes the fight so fucking boring and it takes forever because he's not doing anything. I'm never safe to heal unless he does one of two moves. I'm never really safe to attack unless he does one of like two moves. Can you parry him? Does he's anyone parryable, else? yeah. Okay. Because I, I never you, you could the parry the oh, fat guy as well. The noble skin fat guy you can parry. Yeah, that's how I beat him in the one-on-one -on -one fight for the god skin noble. I, I just parried a bunch of his attacks. But you can't really parry in the duo fight because then Apostle gets you while you're trying to parry the noble. Mm. And a lot of his attacks, even if even if there is an opportunity to punish, he often just flies out of reach of you. Like the big wing dive thing, you can't get to him before he's finished. Yeah, covering. it's easy to dodge, but he's like all the way on the yeah. other side of where were you fighting. 
Because I, 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 sorry, I first found them as a normal enemy, and I was really confused why they're so tanky. Because <laughs> I never fought, fought the one in the Evergel or Evergel or whatever the fuck. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Who cares? Uh, but yeah, I was like, man, these guys are tanky. What is going on? And I think the first time I fought them as a boss is when you get the two of them in one of the heroes dungeons or whatever it is. And I was like, man, those are tough. So, oh, um, who's next? I th if I, I want to add one more thing quickly. Uh, this uh, the Crucible Knights to me, I'm not certain on this thought, but it's something that occurred to me once I started to sour on them is... I think they're a pretty decent case study as to why Black Knights don't have boss health bars. And there's a lot of similarities to them in that they're big, tough, poise monsters with swords with relatively simple movesets, but, you know, you have to be careful with what you're actually doing against them. But Crucible Knight having the enormous health bar that he does and alongside all of his defensive options means that you're stuck fighting him for so fucking long as opposed to a Black Knight, which... Once you know how to deal with a Black Knight, you can take them down pretty quick. Especially if you can get behind them and backstab them. Yeah, if you them. just circle and backstab. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, who else? Hmm, Senor Norris in particular. If you uh, brought the one up I wanted to bring up, so I got nothing anymore in bosses. <laughs> Did oh, you guys fight... Um, oh, sorry, guys. Magic Lady. We talk about that. Oh, Renala? Oh, uh, yeah, Renala. Beyonce? <laughs> um, Renala, I guess, yeah, is her name. Um, should we, should we take it in turns describing our experiences, Mel? You first. Annoying. <laughs> Very annoying. <laughs> Specifically because I was doing a magic build. All my magic basically didn't do shit. So I had to go and, I don't know, get a, get any weapon that deals damage to her. Because at this point, I haven't found any in scaling weapon, like a melee weapon. So I was like, man, this little short sword I'm using is like 50 damage. That's not going to cut it. Nah. And so, yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. So uh, I think that's when I got the moon veil or I got another one. No, I got the, uh, I know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. It's like a short sword with inscaling. Uh, has like blue stuff on it. Carry like, night sword? Might be. Yeah, I think that's the one. You you so, fight the carrion knight just before her, but I think I think he drops the shield there. Yeah, but I'm, I I think I got that caravan, that sword, yeah, because that had had some in had some in scaling, so I could actually deal a little bit more damage. Uh, so first phase is just like okay, just kill children, which is always <laughs> a good thing, obviously. Yes. <laughs> I want to play like, Anakin now. mode. It's pretty cool. So obviously this can go fast or less fast, depending on your RNG, because sometimes the glowy child is somewhere behind some corner and you have to follow the singing and find them. Uh, if you're lucky, you can already kill three of the glowing children before she even can start the next attacks. Yeah. Uh, so that's just whatever. You can just do that quickly. That's fine. With my build, it took like four cycles every time, I think, to actually kill her first phase. So it was very annoying. And then the second phase, ugh, it's just, oh, finally, I can get close to attack you. No, I'm going to summon now, and that's going to stagger you back, and I'm going to fuck off. And she did that so She can do that, like, so many times. Yeah, and she can summon, like, dragons and, and stuff, summon a too, fucking right? dragon! <laughs> Absolute mad lass. And uh, so now, just because just, just I was at the stage a little bit, I'm playing yeah. my experience of this. Um, let me fast forward a little bit. Um, I didn't really understand what the fuck was happening in the first phase at all. Uh, it was only until <laughs> later that I understood, like, I had to kill the particular children. I, I was just trying to slaughter children. I was like, this is surely the way I win. <laughs> um, this is the way. And, yeah, uh, fuck's sake. I'm trying to, eh. So fine-tuned. So this is what happened in the phase two, which I was worried about, because I was like, my resources are very low right now. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then I was just like, alright, let's just try attacking her. Turns out she's very, um... Easy to stagger, and uh, he is, yeah. me and Oleg were like, "All right, if we just if we just keep hitting her, um, <laughs> we smack her with our swords. swords. That should work. That'll yeah. not it. Huh? 
I, I didn't have too tough a time with her with my my great sword build on, on my first playthrough, but I was I was fighting her with a confessor last night where I'm kind of doing like almost like a pyromancy build, and my my fire spells were doing nothing to her. Like it was uh, it was pretty rough. Um, but I yeah I went through her almost instantly, and I was just like, well mm -hmm. that's that, and it was just funny because like if you build magic, this is like a nightmare fight, or it can yep. be. Um, <laughs> Obviously, with just melee, I was just like, "Well, she's dead. Moving on." <laughs> like, yeah. just, I I have like nothing to say on this boss because in both playthroughs I've run Ooh, into boss her arena. And I just I just blasted her immediately. Yeah, but they've done this before. It's just Rom again. It is Rom again. Concerned yeah. Rom is going to spawn. It's like every every single, Rom. Almost every single cool vista in this game they've done before. I don't know if I'd go that far. Um, Certainly, a lot of them. I, I actually, I mean, we haven't gone to that as a topic, but I think this is one of the best of the lot for uh, different places. Whether or not they've been done before, I don't know if that's a decent enough criticism compared to what we should say about how they look, how well they did the thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know, I don't I have anything else. Well, as for the fight, yeah, just she just kind of dies. I don't know. <laughs> I wish that would have been true for my play, bro. <laughs> I actually... That I was like one of the roadblocks her. I hit. I had to go somewhere else and do stuff. I actually got to her pretty uh, pretty early in my first playthrough, and I didn't have a proper weapon yet, so <laughs> her her fight to me was actually like, I mean, not, not really a struggle, because I, I guess I killed her in like maybe 10 or so tries, but like her summons and stuff, like I, I after a couple pulls, I realized that you don't have to kill the summons, they go away eventually. So anytime yeah. she summoned, I basically just ran. <laughs> uh, especially when she summoned the fucking dragon. She didn't summon anything for me. I didn't see anything. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I well, didn't even know there was something you could do. Shit. <laughs> Nothing you can do. Because what happens when, when you get close and she summons something, she staggers you. So every time I finally get close to her, when the last summon went away, she's just like, nah, you're going to stop attack now. I'm just going to oh. stagger you. That was yeah. a good one. In my first playthrough... Uh... I got, well, in the second phase, uh, I killed her, but then as she died, her dragon killed me. Um, <laughs> there was a dragon there, who knew? That um, happened to me with, like, three bosses. It's, and it's hilarious, but it's so it's so relieving when you find out that you don't have to do the fight again. I, yeah. I'm wondering now if I didn't look thoroughly enough, but I swear I did, because my souls, I think, got trapped in the fucking mirror dimension she created. Oh, no. <laughs> and I couldn't get them, because I, I swear I... But I'm not sure about that, because I died in phase two on my second playthrough, and I was able to pick them back up. Uh, hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering if I just didn't look hard enough, but I swear I stood right on the spot where they were. But yeah, th that was my experience with the boss. I traded with it and lost all of the souls for it, and then she was just sitting in the room. So uh, that happened okay. to me in... Uh, have, have any of you gotten teleported to uh, Volcano Manor by getting grabbed by the Iron Maiden? Yep. Nope. No, so the, I was always a, killed. She never teleported me. The, the, there's a boss fight there that you... I don't know if you can access it otherwise, but there is a boss fight there at least with where you fight double Iron Maidens. And that yeah. was annoying. I can imagine that was pretty <laughs> fucking annoying. I never saw uh, it. It's in a really cramped room that's shaped weirdly too. Yeah, oh, so that was really fucking fight. annoying. And once I finally got them down, and I was pretty low level at this point as well. Uh, this was all my second playthrough though. Um... I finally got them down, and my game crashed as the boss was falling to the floor, and I fucking panicked because I was at stuck <laughs> at these fuckers for like two hours and just like screaming out of rage. And I spawned back in, and I spawned outside of the boss room, so as if I would have quit out, as you can do. But my souls were dropped inside of the boss room. So I must have died as I crashed or something. But I could walk into the boss room, pick up my souls, which also contained the, the boss reward souls. So that was really <laughs> strange for me. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> happened there. but. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, who's next? I, I, I just remembered a boss, but I don't know if anyone wanted to go first with whatever they were looking for. My only other thing to say is just, a, I guess, a general topic rather than a specific boss. Well, uh, what about the fire giant? <laughs> uh, I'll let you guys go first on that. 
kind of exists as a big hitbox, and then he dies. I don't know. Didn't <laughs> didn't like his second phase very much personally. It was kind of freaky. I don't know. I don't have much of it. I, it's just whatever. He was kind of yeah, whatever I, to me. I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't really have any strong feelings about him. Like, he, he wasn't good, but I n didn't necessarily think he was terrible either. He was just kind of there, and I died a couple of times. I went back in, and then eventually I won. Uh, I, I mean, for a boss that's that fucking big i guess he's a lot better than some of his uh some like comparisons that exist in in the soul series um but it, it wasn't amazing definitely not I, I guess this is just confirming that my opinions are fucking weird because i quite liked fire giant <laughs> i mean uh, I, I think the first phase I, I remember i think i killed him too quickly to have an opinion i I'm quite bad at these games, I think, overall. So I got stuck on him for a little bit, just because I wanted to experience the fight a little bit more. I like it for reasons that aren't limited to the mechanics, though I think the mechanics are pretty good in that fight. I feel like with Fire Giant, it was one of the first times in the game they had a really well-presented spectacle to me. Uh, in terms of going through the fog door, the combination of the music, his placement, his design, and his moves tells you a lot about him and his role in this world uh, without them needing to say a word about it. Because he's, he's all damaged around his uh, wrists and his ankles and stuff. He's got the splint and thing to keep his leg together. You can tell he's like fucking ancient and powerful, and his placement right close to this big important thing adds to that gravitas, as well as just the general vista around him and his size. Uh... And his mechanics are, like, they're fine. They're, they're pretty okay. And it's a rare case of them rewarding you for... I don't even want to necessarily say thinking about something, but just identifying, oh, one of his legs is fucked. Maybe if I target that, then, you know, I'll get an advantage. And yeah, the fight revolves around you breaking down his leg and then that stuff. I mean, I don't necessarily think about all that stuff too much whenever I do my first playthrough. But, I, I mean, I, I would probably agree with what you said there. Um, That's the kind yeah. of stuff... Sorry, go. But yeah, as you said, in terms of mechanics, it, it's it's okay. Like, yeah. I, I don't really necessarily have anything to bash on. Like, he has a couple of big hitboxes, but they aren't, like... I never f felt like it was like, oh, man, that's bullshit. Like, how, how the fuck am I supposed to dodge that? Because a lot of them actually did have proper iframe windows. Where yeah, you, I was like, surprised with how well I was dodging some of it when I was like, it's an enormous mm -hmm. shield, he's slamming to the ground, one dodge, yeah. and I managed mm -hmm. to get through it, nice. Because usually, like, the reason why I say that he's better than other bosses that are, like, his size is that usually they have, like, big lingering hitboxes. Like, for example, if he slammed down his shield and I dodged away from it, because it's so big, as I come out of my dodge, I would have usually gotten hit, or I expected to get hit, because that's what I'm used to when it comes to these uh, these games. But for some reason, I didn't here. So I, I, I thought it was actually pretty good. Hmm. Uh, or it, better did than you I guys, Did you guys fight him on horseback or on, on foot? On Completely foot. on foot. On foot. Oh, I, I fought him on horseback, so my experience was a bit different. I just went back to my, my roots, like, oh, there's a big enemy. I'll just stand between his legs and hope for the best. <laughs> 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 All of Bloodborne. But, That's how you fight giants. Just the, stuff, the stuff I mentioned about like the more experiential side of things is what I've really felt like I was missing with this game for a large part of it. Because it wasn't giving me that same feeling or anything like that feeling I got when going through Dark Souls 1 or Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3 even for the same time. Nothing that kind of accessed my brain on a level that wasn't wow cool boss you know mm. uh, so when i got to this it was quite refreshing in that regard no that mm. makes sense surely melania must have been that to a degree as well well melania to me was just wow cool boss <laughs> oh it, okay. it funneled <laughs> into the cool boss side of things because you know it, it's the humanoid with the katana and it has the big move set yeah that's fair what would you say? Idea. What? Who? Who is? Have, have we talked about who your least favorite boss is in uh in this game? In this game, I think we've. Huh. 
My, mine we, was the one that we started off the boss discussions with, Godskin Duo. I, I really did not like that fight. Right. It's probably Godskin. Well, hmm. I think right. mine is probably also Tree Spirit. Yeah. Actually, maybe Elden Beast. Yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah there's game, an argument right? there. Yeah. It or might the be. Second last I, I don't think. It... for me. I don't think I would have hated Elden Beast as much if it wasn't preceded by the whole Radagon fight. Yeah, I, I just didn't it's... like the, the fact that you had to chase him. Like, he teleported yeah, yeah. five so billion light lot, years away. And I'm running. Is it? And I'm Someone running. mentioned in chat that the, there's a lot of that in the bosses in this game as a whole. Even Fire Giant, you have to do a bit of chasing. Yeah. He rolls around. But that's... Isn't that really cool though? Because bosses don't typically run away from you. So. <laughs> That's the thing. You, you, oh fuck! We haven't talked about um. Me, 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 me. Malou, Malim, Millis, Mel, Min, Wizard it's Girl. Melania? No. Smells? The one in the upside down place. Oh, oh Miriam. To Miriam. She's she's that the worst. Fucking horror. She's the worst. It's the worst. There's no I competition. I don't think I caught her. She's the wow. absolute worst thing in the whole game. She's horrible. It, it's oh my the list of worst things I've run into in a Souls game. And I was she? so this is, angry. This is not. <laughs> look at chat. This is not controversial. This is just like she's the worst. <laughs> she's just a random NPC in in a tower, and yeah. you you hit her a couple of times, and then she teleports away. Which in the beginning is like okay, that's annoying. But when she gets to her last place, which is like a basically like a roundabout. Like on a catwalk, I would almost say, if that makes sense. Uh, and if you get close to her, she teleports away. But here's the kicker. She can still charge her, mo her spells while she's teleporting around. So it happened to me like twice. She charged her big ass magic arrow thingy, teleported back. I was like, oh, I can just <laughs> walk on. And she teleported back to me and just hit me in the face and I died. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Dude, I am so glad I did that part of the quest line really late. Like, I basically did that before I killed Elden Beast. So I was at my peak power. <laughs> and I basically broke... I mean, I don't know. I was worried that I was going to break her AI. Because I killed the first version of her. Uh, like, the, on the second place where she teleported to. So I wasn't even halfway up the fucking upside down tower before I, I killed her. And then, like, uh, I, I was in, on call with Metal, and he was, like, talking about all the time she teleported. And basically what he told you guys right now and how much he hated her. I'm just like, she's gone. Did I break the quest? And I was, like, getting really <laughs> anxious. <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Because <laughs> she died on the second uh, appearance for me because I'm, I just did that much damage with my greatsword. I hate her. <laughs> well, mm, what area of the glad. world is she in? Because I, I didn't fight her at all. Uh, the Divine Tower um, for Leonia. Oh, Have you ever okay. come across a Divine Tower where you need to place something in a pedestal? Yes. Uh, no, I don't think I did. I might just have that is the one. That that's one. the tower we were just talking about. That's the exact tower. No. Um, I definitely didn't see it. <laughs> we haven't. It's like when about... you get in, there's like a little pedestal, and if you go up there, it's like something might fit here. And that's all I get. Just yet another case <laughs> of uh, a I Resident can't... Evil puzzle clue. Mm -hmm. Miriam's just yet another case of I can't understand what they were expecting or what they wanted that to be. Dude, she reminds me of Mikalash so much. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's Mikalash, but like ten times worse. Yeah, it's much worse. It's the. It might be my take for the worst thing in all the Soulsborne, which is quite an achievement. Uh... I don't think it quite beats out Bed of Chaos for me, but I'm not <laughs> sure. It's it's fair. You can I think you can make the argument. But I was gonna say that someone I forgot about, uh, the Blood Lord man, Lord, King of Blood. Oh, whatever. Moog. Oh Moog. god, Moog. that was a rough one. I didn't find or fight Moog, and I'm kind of sad about it. Cause he Damn, there's two cool. of him, and you didn't fight him. <laughs> yeah, it's Moog. Oh, I forgot there's two of him. For fuck. There shouldn't be two of a boss like this. It feels weird. Yeah, he's ultra powerful. Well, it's not so even just. It's just boring. narratively when you're playing this, you're like, this is a big dude. He's an important dude. He's got this stuff is about him. The boss. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, he's also here. You're like, what? No, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Gazooks. You, you kill it, Malachis in fucking Faramazula, then you teleport to Lanedale, capital of Ash, and he's just walking around. <laughs> it's like, hey. It, it seems like 
this guy and Melania seems to be like the two big optional end yeah. game bosses that you can yeah. fight because this guy drops like 380k souls and Melania drops 480k souls. Which and is a lot. no other boss really. I think the closest is like 200k, which I think is like fire giants at the the giant area. But but yeah, so I don't know. This guy should not be repeated. Like imagine finding Melania someplace else. That would just be I strange. I think it's a fight him in the Parthenon. Mm. Yeah. Double the health. This I, I only the fought him the one time and my shadow play wasn't on. Like, I don't know if you guys use the GeForce capture software, but I normally just hit Alt F10 at the end of a boss fight and it just didn't do anything. I'm like, what? No, no. And then I hit Alt Z and it's like instant replay off. I was just like, oh, no, <laughs> oh. no. <laughs> Moog's arena looks great, by the way. That's, uh, yeah, I, I, think, I, like... I think he was pretty cool. I can't quite remember what I have to say about him because there's another fight that went too quick. Um, I've my, I, 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 I need my to issue look with the okay. fight from what I've seen of it is uh, Nihil, <laughs> but uh, other than that, the fight looks pretty cool. I, I don't like his his AOEs. They're really hard to figure out where exactly you should be moving because he, he has that blood flame stuff that just kind of spews out of him, and it lands in very bizarre patterns. So every time it happens, you got to just kind of roll in a direction and hope for the best. I mean, there's probably a better way around it, but that's that's all I was able to figure out. Um, yeah, I uh, I actually fought him quite a bit, and I mm. died him a lot. And I like think about it now. I actually think he he was pretty good. I was a little bit annoyed at the time because um, I didn't have the uh, sacred tier that allows you to immune his uh, face transition. So I was kind of like getting annoyed by that, and then I started getting annoyed by the smaller things that he did. Um, so I basically just like I have to waste like four Estus every time he face transitions. Yeah, and I was getting annoyed yeah. by that. That's what but I ended up doing. I didn't have that. The I had it, but I just, either. I just didn't think to use it. <laughs> <Just> I, like... <laughs> Yeah, because, I, I mean, I even tried to use my physics stuff, because there's, like, one that gives you more I immunity to bleeds and stuff, and I tried using that, that didn't work, and one that makes you take less damage, but that didn't work against the bleed, and, but yeah, so I just didn't have um, the, the proper secrets here. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I felt it was weird that bleed works really well on the Lord of Blood. Yeah, that shouldn't <laughs> yeah, be that's... very... Just help you like counterintuitive, like, oh, wouldn't you... Okay, all right. <laughs> Like it, it, rever it heals him. You're like, oh, like, well, he's you, Lord of Blood. You set I the fire monster on fire. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Metal's I, looking at his Renala fight, just like, yeah, you, you didn't, you didn't forget <laughs> to make her magic immunity on that one, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Assholes. I, um, I can't Lord help but feel like bastards. they could have done better with the design on the Nihil thing because I didn't, like I said, I didn't fight this boss, but when I first saw it, I saw that he has the, you know, tres duo unus kind of things that he does, and they put rings around you if they hit you. I thought, mm. oh, that's kind of neat. That's probably going to play into something later. But when I saw that it was just at the phase transition, he's just going to do a shitload of damage to you unless yeah. you have an item. I don't know. I feel like that's a, that's a lame way to pay that out. I think they could have done a lot better. Yeah, you have to heal through it, because I, I mean, even with yeah. that big health bar... Yeah. Mauler has is like oh can't tank through it. Um, yeah, uh, no, yeah, yeah. Because I just said it was like, oh, I guess I'm just gonna chuck all these, uh, mm. all these S's real quick, so I don't that die. Death you, that death you showed on screen just now was kind of comical. It was like, uh, I'll save you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this guy. I wish I had fought him, and I'm tempted to go back to my first character just to go and find him and fight him because he looks pretty rad. He's pretty easy to get to, actually, because there, there's a quest line, uh, like a PvP quest line that takes you to his yeah. area almost immediately. Like as soon as you reach the uh, the magic lake, you uh, you can get there pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did that on my current playthrough because I needed levels. <laughs> I missed. <laughs> I missed the entirety of Mount Gelmir on my first playthrough. Oh boy, my mm. game crashed. But that's another issue we can talk about later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so maybe it's my idea now to say, what are your closing statements on the bosses? Uh, a lot of mid, a bunch of stinkers, and a handful of good bosses. More bad than good. I would most, say. most of them are shit. Uh, 
and kind of a disgrace to the boss health bar. They have, no, <laughs> they have no rhyme or reason behind them. They're just there because we need a boss at the end of the catacomb. Uh, a lot of them are ill thought out duo fights as well. The enemies themselves aren't mechanically engaging. However, when they're actually making a boss, like a real boss, FromSoft have still got it for the most part. They, there's some issues in this game in terms of ha things I think about boss design, but on the whole, they, they've they still got it. <laughs> they can still make really good bosses. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty much my stance as well. Like, even though it's unfair, like, in my head, I kind of want to, like, ignore... Like, if you put a troll as a boss after you've already fought, like, ten of them out in the wild, it doesn't really feel like a boss. It's just, like, a hurdle you need to get through to be able to finish whatever dungeon you're in. And if, mm -hmm. if you put whatever, like, a, a, what are those... I don't know what they're called, but it's like a big hairy dude that sometimes he has an axe and sometimes he has like a halberd. Uh, you the, find them pretty early on in, in the castle, I think. Duelist people? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like a random enemy that you find all, all over the place. And he's at the end of a dungeon as well. And you're kind of like, yeah, I mean, not boss, hurdle. Uh, so, like, I, I don't really want to want to categorize them together with like Melania and, and Moog and whatever the fuck. But, but yeah, like basically what Theo said, like the, the bosses that are main bosses, like big bosses are pretty fucking good. Uh, with obvious exceptions like, uh, uh, Rodan. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as, as much as I like him. Uh, well, I don't, I, yeah, to bring him up quickly, how do you guys feel about Godric? I oh, him. well, I think yeah, we mentioned I think it, I right? I was just like, oh no, wait, sorry, Godric, yeah, uh, I remember him. <laughs> 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 That's a long ago, boy. Oh, goodness. Yeah, it's the guy in Stormvale, right? The, yeah. the yeah, main boss. Main boss. Uh, yeah, I think it was pretty good. Uh, he was... He's a bit too easy for my taste. Yeah, like I was about to say, he probably could use some more health as well. <laughs> He's not he even has close a little... to as difficult as Margit. Yeah. <laughs> he has... Oh, really? I, I found him harder than Margit. But, uh, I mean, I was also fighting them both at a pretty low level. Yeah, same. He has a little bit of Ludwigness in his, uh, in his like, floompy arms moves. He's got a like lot some... of it in his music as well. <laughs> But yeah, so, I don't know. I, I thought it was a pretty okay fight, but uh, not the best. I found myself about to shit on him as a main boss, and I wasn't sure if that was entirely fair, because I think he's okay. He's just uh, not particularly balanced, I think, is the problem. Mm. He's he's a bit too weak. He leaves himself too open for how weak he is. Like This is the kind of boss, because he leaves openings everywhere constantly. This is the kind of thing where I think more health is an easy fix. Mm -hmm. I also like how hard the voice actor goes during the edition <laughs> cast. scream. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> I love the voice acting throughout these, uh, these games, typically. Yeah. It's almost like an unsung part of them, because most people want to talk about the mechanics. Yeah, um, <laughs> this one in particular jumped out at me the way he fucking screams forefathers one and all. Bell witness, I ah, I like that a lot. <laughs> the only one, me. the only voice acting that stood out to me was the fucking Riker one, where he's like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you, I'm gonna get you." Felt kind of silly to me, to be honest. Stupid but, fucking yeah. voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> yeah, um, still, overall, got a bit of a sad face for the bosses myself. Uh, yeah. I liked, I liked a lot of the fights, but I was hoping face. to get more experiences that I loved instead of very few. Pretty much all of the bosses that I would want to fight again are right at the late, late game or end game as well. Yeah. Which is, uh, Miserable in terms of the amount of time that there is Dude, this between. Is basically, and... a blood board. I'm like, I like Gascoigne. All right, now I gotta wait. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, it's I have mixed feelings on Margit. Overall, probably positive, but 
you know? Uh, and then after that, it's just a drought all the way until I think more got. And then after that, it's another drought until I can get all the way down the fucking Halig tree to Melania and all the way to Faramazula. Mm -hmm. By the way, just a random thought. Um, it seems like, like once, like we've nerded the game enough, and you start to understand, like, okay, this is this boss's weakness. I just need to do this, and I win. I think a lot of that is going to be parries. A lot of bosses seem to be parryable. Like, some bosses, like Radagon and Melania, you need to parry three times before it gives you the repost. But a lot of bosses just seems to uh, be weak to parries, which is interesting. You don't really see that a lot in uh, Souls games. Like, you'll have some bosses that are like, oh, wow, I can actually parry this guy. Yeah. Parry, parry was bosses. how I was able to kill. Did you guys fight uh, Commander Nial? Nial? Yeah, I'm actually on that fight right now. I I found that it was uh, I actually kind of liked that fight because it was the only one where I had to switch my weapon configuration because for each of the three enemies I found different tactics worked. So the first the first ghost knight thing that I engaged, I just two-handed my greatsword. Then for the shield knight, I had was running sword and shield. And then I switched my shield to the buckler so that I could parry the, the main guy that you fight at the end. Because I found that I w his AoE attacks were just making it so that I had no window to punish him. So mm. I found parrying parrying his standard spear attacks was, was the way to do it. Interesting. I remember when I fought him or where the, the fight even is. I think I got him my first try again. I was just like, because of just stuff I was using... Um, which, by the way, I was going to say, I'm, I'm totally ready to talk about um, Ashes now. Is, is everyone else? <laughs> sure. Um, You're... I, I, yeah. I guess so? I'm huh? going to call a parrying point, I guess. Oh, well, you can do that first if you want. Oh, um... I don't know how much I want to get into this, because it, it, it's all of the games, but I don't think parrying is a very good mechanic. I, I think it's quite bad, especially in boss fights. So I would be discheesed if the best way to beat all bosses was, you know, parrying. Anyone have any thoughts on that? I don't use parry very often. I I'm really don't it, so use I... it at all myself. So I, just, like, I don't really I, have yeah, anything on I, it. I, don't I only saw it like because... a lot of videos where they even kind of uh, cheat. I don't know if it's cheese because it's actually pretty hard still. Uh, they use it on Millennia. I think for Tia Terminate video, actually. <laughs> Mm. Just no hitting uh, millennia almost, and just parry, parry, parry. Oh, which is yeah. still pretty hard, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't use it myself. Too yeah, you're much, gonna have to fight chat on useful. this one, apparently. Oh, I'm very upset with you because I, <laughs> I'm I so can't sorry, really. Leo. Yeah, I can't talk about parry that much because I just don't use it. I don't use it because I think it ruins boss fights. It ruins the experience with them because you boil it down to one timing, one timing, and you win. As opposed to having to deal with an entire boss's move set, like you don't even have to find correct punish timings when you're parrying because you get a repost. So you just hit them, or rather, you repost them. They fall to the ground. They get back up. They do anything. You parry them again. They fall over. You repost them, and then they get back up again. And it takes any sense of back and forth or flow out of the fight, and boils it down to something that's really mechanically uninteresting. Well, that's not entirely true because not all attacks are parryable. Yeah, bosses. that's something I think. I think that's more in this game, which is probably a positive because I have more positive to say about the parry in this game. I'd probably say uh, mm. some attacks aren't parryable. Though, is there a consistent rule set for finding out which ones are and are not, or is it a, is uh, it a matter of guesswork? I think there's a set of rules like you can't parry things like Melania's kick because it's a kick, not a weapon swing. Yeah, and I think, like, usually, like, overhead attacks seem to not be parable. Like, it, it seems to be whenever you, it's, it's a swing from either left to right or right to left uh, in any capacity. Like, whether it's semi-overhead or if it's just, like, a straight-up slash, it seems to be parable. But if it's just straight-up overhead or a jump attack or sometimes power attacks, uh, also stab attacks are kind of... 
50 50 sometimes I've, you can sometimes you can i've not been able to verify it myself but something i've seen people say is that when the enemy is holding their weapon with both hands you can't parry them um which uh, if that's that true that's that's a decent way of signifying that in fact i'd say that's a good way of signifying that but i don't know if mm. that's actually true or not um something i found is that when you stagger an enemy and obviously you get that when you parry um and you've got the option the, the opportunity and option, I want to say at the same time, so the I said the option. The option of uh, getting the, the, let's call it the visceral, whatever. Um, it's funny that I think in my playthrough I started to realize I was doing less damage if I took the visceral instead of just attacking. Yeah, I was going yeah. to mention that too. The visceral but, and oh, repost not like Bloodborne. seem to deal not as much damage. Because I found myself just hitting people in the meantime instead of doing the repost. It's Even though I still did it a lot Sorry. because I just like doing it. <laughs> it's especially the case because enemies, or a lot of enemies and a lot of bosses, I think mostly just bosses, are invulnerable while getting up in this yeah. game. As opposed to before when you could still damage them as they were standing up from the uh, repost. So the repost no. is even less worth it against things like Magma Worm or whatever the fuck because you can't get the charged R2 that you used to be able to get as they were standing. Well, you can if you time it right. Yeah, it comes later, but for some, their recovery is quick enough that there's mm. no time. Like, for example, Crucible Knight, you're not getting anything if anything more than like an R1 is unsafe. Mm. Um, I've always liked the Good. assessment, though, that it's like low risk, low reward is to just roll back or roll and then try and attack. Uh, mid risk, mid reward is like when you're moving around or away, so you're ready to attack, but you're still risking getting hit. And then high risk, high reward is the parry repost. The only problem with it is that I think people got really good at parry repost. So it wasn't really high risk, high reward. It was just low risk, high reward almost. I would, I'd argue the risk isn't all that high because the timings on parries are generally pretty generous. Because the problem comes in then of just. Is that assessed from the average skill level or people who know these games? very well, I mean, you know? And who should it be? Even if parries were super difficult, I think I would have the same problem, mm -hmm. because you know, like, it, it takes any sense of flow out of the fight because they're just getting up repeatedly and then getting reposted back down to the floor. Like, Pontiff yeah. Sullivan's a fight that's ruined by that. I just appreciate the, uh, what? the, the mini arc someone just had in chat. Risk isn't that high? Okay. <laughs> 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 what do you what do you guys think about the guard countering? Because that that's sort of like a parry, but not really. I, I found that that was actually oh, like, that, that was oh, God, uh, that I, exists. I, I'd never really used the shield in a Souls game before this one because I found guard countering was something that was it was too useful to pass up, and it it kind of changed my play style. So I, I, personally, I enjoyed it. I like how they do a lot of stagger damage too. Yeah, I didn't use it a lot, but I thought it was really interesting. Uh, I kind of, like Metal did, like, I kind of forgot about it until I was reminded, like, at, when I was at 90% done with my playthrough. Um, but it, 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 it's a pretty cool thing, and I think <sighs> I'm going to mess around with it more on, uh, on my future playthroughs. I would, I think it's a good system, and it's a good way of increasing, I guess, the depth of the combat in these games, because that's needed the more they focus on being action games. So big thumbs up to Guard Counter for me. <laughs> However, for a lot of the specific animations, I noticed that they really lack reach. So I've seen Guard Counters whiffing like all over the place, where you block an attack and then Guard Counter and your sword just slams into the ground in front of the guy. I wonder yeah, if that it was on purpose because it's so easy to do. Like, is it supposed to and be the... Of the extra stamina damage? Yeah, maybe. The maybe. big thing I found with it was the timing, because I, I figured, I mean, granted, this isn't going to be down to the, the number on the math, but I found that it was like launching one of your heavy attacks with about 70% of the speed, so like, say 30% faster than it normally is. So it is still a valuable thing to be able to use, but it's not fast enough that it's a guaranteed hit that you can throw into the first hit of a combo like like a boss starts a five hit combo and on hit two you try to throw in a guard counter it's probably not going to work so you had to almost learn okay i can guard counter this move and then get some good stagger damage on him or i could roll behind him and just do a standard attack and mm -hmm. i found that it gave you more options to figure out hey what's the, what's the best thing for me to do right here i think the 
stance system they've got going on in general is a big thumbs up. Uh, the idea, because it, it encourages you to use more of your moveset, and it gives you more reason to use more of your moveset, because R2s don't really exist in Dark Souls 3, unless they are a specific move that you might want, like a poke. And even then, a lot of the time, it's too slow. Um, in this, you have active incentive to use your charged R2s, to use your weapon arts, to use guard counters and stuff, because you will get jump extra attacks rewards. Too. Yeah, yeah, jump Ooh, attacks yeah. too. So you get extra rewards out of it. And I think it's... Uh, a good expansion on the system. So, can I mention the boss real quick because I'm just fighting it and I want to kill myself? <laughs> Do it. Who thought it was a good idea to make the Urtree avatar split into two Urtree avatars? <laughs> well, it's harder because it's more. <laughs> I didn't do that one. I, I did that one with ma magic and it was like, whatever. I'm fighting with melee now. Like, what the fuck? Like, the one guy pushes me over and then the other one just crashes me on the ground and I'm dead. <laughs> Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be cooler if you fought, like, two asylum demons at once, though? No. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I mean, if one... they were actually asylum demons, it would probably be better. We maybe. Keep doing, but, but one Jesus. more tiny thing with those guys, the Erdry avatars. You know the putrid avatars? The fucking Scarlet Rot ones? Yeah. Oh, yeah, those are great. Those if guys you are... melee, you can't detect them while they did that, so you just yeah. walk away and wait. Those are fucking stupid, because the rot they throw out is, like, in a big cone in front of them but it doesn't hit behind or to the side of them, so you just roll around them, and then of course, because you're slightly off to their side and behind them, that encourages them to do the butt slam again. Uh, so they just spam it over and over and over and over again. I had yeah. one do it seven times in a row for me. <laughs> Leave it to me, Izaki, to say, yeah, we need poison and super poison. I think that's been in all the games, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I mean, in this game, you have super duper poison. Because you have you have what actual poison. Levels? I then... think you have actual poison, right? And then you have yeah, rot, yeah. and then you have scarlet. Scarlet rot. rot. Yeah. Oh wait, there, there's I didn't know there was a, a rot that wasn't scarlet rot. I thought it was yeah. just scarlet rot. Oh. And there's different tiers to the scarlet rot to make it better for you. Yes, uh, like, there is. Yeah, yeah. The scarlet yeah. rot from wandering around in Lake of Rot is stronger than the stuff that normal enemies will hit and give you. Oh my god. Also, um, the, the, the dust that makes you poisonous or rot already deals damage to you while you're getting the thing. And after that, yeah. you get like a chunk of more damage. And then you get the actual dot. I, I found also that both for the poison and the scarlet rot, there wasn't a lot of the materials for crafting the antidotes to them. So it was pretty much just if you I, like I found 90 percent of the time I had to just heal my way through them. As opposed to, oh, okay, I'm I'm poisoned now. I'll take antidote, and it, it just found um, that you I couldn't wanna... buy them anywhere. The or the completed ones and finding the crafting materials was it, unclear. I guess would be the best way to put it. I want to come back to that when we get to. I was going to say crafting stuff. Crafting the yeah, whole sorry. thing as well. I have um, a lot to say on that. Well, so you know, since we're at a, a clean three hours for the first topic, do you guys want to go to the, the next one? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, sorry, okay. Nobody needs to apologize. This is EFAB. Uh, so anyway, the, the I want to talk about Ashes. And it's going to make... So specifically, I don't know, what, what name are they given? The Ash Summons or something like that? Uh, Spirit yeah. Ashes. Spirit Ashes. Now, the game introduces them to you as like a fun little mechanic of, hey, you can summon this and you don't even have to do like a magic build. This is just an additional sort of weapon to take advantage of in the same way as jump attacks are like a new thing or the horse and horse combat that's a new thing it's like you've got these and when i first got them i think i got the wolves like most people and i was like oh that's kind of neat and um they uh, i was saying this to theo i i thought that the idea was going to be it's like a one-time summon and wolves will appear and scratch at the enemy and then disappear i thought that's what we mm. were going to be getting and that I was kind of excited by the idea because I was like, oh, I want to do it like Lord of the Rings the Third Age. Yes, I'm referencing that. Where <laughs> the spirit summony things you get in that game, the best one is like, I think the one of the birds coming in and doing shit or you summon the banner of a land deal or something like that. But I was just like, I wonder what the best one will be. Um, one of my favorite ones in that was just uh, the end that throws a boulder at whatever you're fighting and you can summon that on Sauron, which is really funny. Just... Uh... <laughs> Throw it a boulder. No more rock in. And so I was like, that would be cool if, uh, as the game progresses, instead it like spawns an actual thing that, that can help you in the fight. And wolves, you know, they're, they're okay. They're fine as a starting thing. 
jellyfish a lot of people ended up getting because yeah. I think you get that as sort of like a part of the campaign when you talk to the girl in the little cabin next to the one of the initial mm -hmm. um, grace points. And so everyone usually has played with the jellyfish. Jellyfish isn't great damage, but it's a pretty great distraction. And so already it's like, hmm, this is, um, this changes the gameplay quite a bit, actually. And then uh, I ended up grabbing Oleg early by happenstance. I just happened to go to the place that he was at. And uh, Oleg is, like, really good for damage, distraction, and health. Yeah, he's all good with everything. <laughs> and then... Later on in the game, I found Tish and the Mimic, and the Mimic has been nerfed already because it is fucking broken. That is yeah, the intro. Yeah. Say whatever you want to say, everybody. I, I like posted some. a meme in the Discord that I found very funny. Very well. That's my only opinion on Spirit Ashes. Which opinion? Every that, I, I was I was kidding. Uh, just that that meme was my only opinion. But um, no, I I think that it, they definitely break the Do combat in that? some pretty serious. No, well, no, I was I, I was joking. Um, I, oh, so it is your opinion. <laughs> I, I meant my opinion was that I posted a, a meme. It, it was a joke that didn't land up. Sorry. But uh, uh -huh. my my opinion on Spirit Ashes is I do think they they sort of break the the boss design in general. And um, I have I've mixed feeling on whether they should be in the game at all. So I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at what happened on. on yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think much in the same way as summoning a player, the summons are very prone to violating the experience with a boss because enemies in these games are just not capable of handling multiple foes. Because they're not designed to. They're designed for one guy. You'd hope they'd be designed for more guys because, you know, you have access to spirits and they're upgradable, making them appear more as, like, a main part of your kit in this game. But from what I have seen, I didn't use any of them myself because that's I, I'm, I just wasn't interested in that as part of my experience and I wanted my FP for other things. But from what I have seen, they are still just as good as they ever were at really kind of fucking with the experience bosses and even basic enemies can present. Yeah. So my I didn't get Oleg uh, but I did get the, the Mimic once I reached that part of the game. Uh, before that I, I didn't really use them that much. I used the wolves every now and then. I think I leveled up my wolves just a little bit. Uh because I thought it was like a neat little extra damage. Sometimes the wolves would even help you get a stagger off, which was nice. Um, but they had like fuck all health, so they died pretty quickly. So I thought it was like pretty cool. But then I got the mimic. <laughs> and with a big chonky greatsword, the mimic breaks what I felt like 90% of bosses. Even Melania. Yeah, that's how I beat her. Like, I, I, at the point where I reached Melania, I, I told myself that, I, okay, I'm not going to summon anymore because it's fucking stupid. And I fought her for a couple of hours on stream. <clears throat> and then I, then I was like, uh, I think I was talking about it with the people in chat. And I was like, okay, let, let me show you. Let me show you what summons do. Hmm. And I, I summoned the mimic. And I basically got the second phase, and uh, I, I don't know, wait, this might not have been on stream, but I got the second phase, and the boss had 5% health left, at which point I quit out of the game, because I didn't want to beat the boss that way. So I, I basically could have just killed Melania then and there, the first time I used the summon. And I, I think it's just too gr game-breaking. The fact that it allows me to ignore boss mechanics and just spam R1. It's, it's game-breaking to me because that's... Like, there's no way the, the devs intended you to just ignore all of the mechanics they pumped into a boss fight and just, you know, press one button and then another just spam the, another button and then you win. Like, it's so fucking broken. 
I'm seeing it already in chat. People saying, don't use it. That's not the point, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to totally every game, ignore. Every game's balanced, then. Yeah, every yeah. game is balanced. Yeah. Every game's yeah. balanced. Just don't use the unbalanced things. Shit, fucking hell, we saw. I was gonna say, it. why does anyone complain about noob tube? Just don't use it. And it's like, well, other people use, use it. it. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, well, well that, that's what makes it a self-imposed challenge. Exactly. You'd be fine. Yeah. It, it it's also it's the having that tool in your toolkit to be able to grab if you're getting frustrated is you can't really argue that the game's balanced around you deciding to resist that urge like that it's a mm -hmm. weird argument to make it's well i mean if the game should be played as a one-on-one -on -one fight between you and these bosses and if you're having tons of trouble you can summon another player that's one thing but if it's like eh, i want to play this single player i'm just not going to use one of my most powerful weapons it's i don't know it's a it puts you in a weird spot to argue from and it's not like there's like two of them like there's probably 40 yeah and you get like a fuck ton of them easily with exploring i think that's the important part is there's a shitload of them and they upgrade like your weapon does they yep. are a part of your toolkit they're not something separate like summons which still exist and are hidden further away now even because you have to tap a thing in order to see summon signs uh, yeah we which is interesting, right? Like the uh, the summons for the lot of us, I think we we are much more happy to consider them. A um, it's like additional that you have the game, and then it's like you can summon, and you don't even know necessarily what you're gonna get because you can summon um, people, like real people, and yeah. then they can come in and just annihilate, or they can get killed easily because they could be a new bit yeah. or whatever. And um, it feels it feels like an alternative feature of the game. This is introduced to you as a mechanic that you should take advantage of. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. it's not the same as summons uh, in any way in terms of like I don't, because like, this is the thing someone might be like, well are you condemning people for choosing to, it's like, well, so I use them the problem yep. is I realize way too late that I'm like I don't think I've really played this game properly uh, unfortunately because a lot of these bosses are annihilated by my mimic summons in terms of presentation are very different in that they're, if you want help you can bring in some other guy and you can feel however you want about that, but at the end of the day, who cares what some idiot on the internet thinks about your willingness to use some other players or whatever to beat the game? Go crazy if you want to. Uh, but the Mimic tier, the Ashes, they are they are a part of your toolkit. They're given to you as an upgradable uh, resource that you have at your disposal, and they're just a thing you have that it seems like the game is expecting to account for. Because of the way they're given to you, and yeah, but, uh, I, I think initially I thought they'd be chill because the wolves died pretty quick, and they were just yeah. these little guys that ran yeah. around for a little bit. I was like, "Yeah, it's pretty chill," but like yeah. Oleg really enjoyed it first. That I was like, "Oh wait, hang on." And then the fact that people were like, um, "I'm pretty sure Mimic is better," and it's like, "Yeah, Mimic is better than like a summon because it's it's health is insane. It's, it, it, has it has so much health. health, and it can heal, especially on the." on the build that I had because it, it like since it adapts your stats, it basically took because I was wearing Lionel's armor, like the big chunky guy's armor. And so my mimic had a shit ton of armor. And then on top of the fact that I had 50 vigor, so I had a shit ton of health. And then that is like multiplied by like a bajillion for some reason. So the mimic just never died for me. And they can use potions, the mimics. They yeah. Can yeah. Use your, use they can use your L twos. They can, yeah, they can do everything. Oh, so, so someone said you're only c criticizing the mimics. So it's like, so this is applicable to all the late game ashes, basically. Yeah. yeah. I say late I game. You can Oleg find some of these. As well. I was about to say Oleg is actually really early game. You can get him. Oh, yeah. it's like in the beginning. Just yeah, get the stone um, sword key gift, and, and you can go there right away. And you someone else saying yeah. this is, these are elitism talking points. I'd be curious what you think. What we've said so far is an elitism talking point. You haven't actually said you, can't, you shouldn't be, use them. I would them. Be too, yeah. yeah. yeah for the record, I'm a cripple. Well, for the, for the fucking record, we, I used them throughout my whole yeah. playthrough. So what, what's going on? Like, stop being so, the, like, it's just sounds like, automatically just, defensive of a thing that we haven't even think, said. The, 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 I think they found point, out that please. they seem super unbalanced. They the are definitely is, unbalanced. There's no way about that. Yeah. One, one of the ashes that you mentioned, Tish, can actually... So I've, I've seen... There's, there's a video on YouTube where... Uh, a f fully leveled Tish. I don't know what his, his like full name is, but he can solo a couple of endgame bosses on New Game Plus. 
Jesus. Yes. You, uh, like you literally just summon him, step back, and he will win the fight for you. Tell me that is not like you're literally not even playing the game. Like I, I was being yeah, hyperbolic when I said that I wasn't playing the game because I was just spamming R1. That summon literally makes it not m makes you not play the game. You can literally win the fight without even touching the boss. I think that uh, Tish is the reason I won the game, ultimately, because uh, I tried out the Mimic, and it was, like, fine in the endgame bosses, but Tish, the, 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 I'm assuming everyone here may or may not know, well, not everyone, but Tish has a projectile move that when it hits an enemy, it deals, like, 10% of their total health no matter what. What? Yeah, it's I didn't the, even know that. The, the, flat damage nonsense. Ah. Which is burn. insane when you fight something like the Elder, Elden Beast. Yeah, you just like Tish can take care of it because uh, Tish's health isn't as good as the mimic, I don't think. But Tish's damage is absolutely fucked. Like I don't know why they allowed this to happen. It's that okay. uh, see that dot? Look yeah, at that. That dot is fucking funny. insane. Melting the boss. And, and another one. Tish can just keep throwing him. And he just spams it. He just throws those fucking. Dashes of fire, or whatever the fuck they L are. Like, you have to appreciate how much this wow. completely changes the boss. Like, it's... Wow. <laughs> it's just like, live you, until you... he hits the boss enough. Yeah, you hit the boss three times, and it's at half health. Yeah, and I'm playing pretty piss poorly right now. <laughs> but, like, Tish is <laughs> making up for it completely. Anyone could be confused as to, like, oh, wow, you do really well. I'm like, yeah, sure. Look it's like somebody you ordered a second God damn! Damage. This is the final you boss did well in the game. by deciding to summon Tish. Look! That's how you did well. Yeah, so, so please, someone in chat, use the just don't use them argument again, okay? Because you can literally just win the fight without touching the boss and summon by summoning. Oh yeah, I thing. could totally have chosen to armor up, health up, like respec, and just keep healing and running around until Tish kills it. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah, and yeah, and the experience for me. the way that players only sometimes can when you summon them. So just don't use it. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's like the don't use it argument. It, it, there's not technically a hole in it because you're right. You don't technically have to use them. But if we're going to like be talking about how well this game's designed there and might how be. it could be designed better, there can be a balance point there. Well, I think um, able... the problem with just don't use it is it's like you're asking me to handicap myself. Like well, you're, well, you're well, telling me well, I've been yeah, presented you... with an option that's going to help me tremendously, and you're telling me not to use it. Which well, um, is kind of the point of the the Spider Man meme I posted there. Like it's like saying, yeah, no, that's it's a tool that's thrown in the game. So saying like just don't use it is it's not so, really thing. Like there, it's, it's I just, think I think bleed is broken. Commentary. Does that mean I shouldn't use any bleed items? It's it's just vapid commentary. It doesn't mean anything because this is about criticizing what's going on in the game. Just don't use it as meaningless in that discussion well i mean yeah. it. uh just I mean, don't it, use it as it's like um yeah I, I i'm not sure what is to be said about that because then what happens when we start thinking about a whole bunch of things that are like just make it easier for you and it's just, just don't use it you know i don't like, understand I don't how we can ever talk about balance ever what yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like just just make it harder for yourself. If ever anything's too easy, let yourself get hit a couple of times. Give yourself a challenge. Don't use any of the flasks. You yeah, know, don't just heal. Yeah, just, that's yourself. a good one. Yeah, don't chat. heal. The music, is, the music yeah, is bad. Don't just heal. don't listen to it. One when, when <laughs> something like this, in in terms of game design, it brings up two kind of issues. Even if like the the whole don't use it thing still has problems. One being. I don't know the mindset of the developers in terms of was this game balanced with the assumption that I will use these or that it's always an emergency button that I can press. I don't know. I don't know how this game is balanced around it, knowing that it's super unbalanced. And well, guess, even uh, if we go and say that, yes, it is super unbalanced and the game maybe takes that into account or maybe if it doesn't either way, if you know or if you don't, it puts a it puts a doubt in your mind for everything else you find in the game that I have to constantly be essentially doing the developers work for them as I'm playing the game, discovering if something is not balanced and then telling myself that I don't need to be using it until ever. Can I, can I just not, it's, it's the developers Whoa. part of their job. I think in terms of game qualities to balance something. 
Yes. I don't know that it's the gamer's job to identify which tools they ought to use and they ought not use in order to have a challenge. I don't Just, know that that's the, the gamer's yeah, that responsibility can, to answer That can happen questions. as an... Um, that can become an, an emergent piece of knowledge based off of playing a game enough. Like, I'm going to play Risk of Rain and only use this one item and see how good I could do, or something like that. I'm going to make, like, self-imposed challenges exist, oh, but yeah. it yeah. should, but those are different than, this is a blatantly overpowered mechanic that the game seems to really encourage, have established yeah. and encouraged, and it's really yeah. fleshed out. How does somebody figure out that they, they, they're they still allowed to use the flask to heal, but then not allowed to use the summon? Just or look at like it from that well, I don't understand, like, kind of does everyone in chat disagree with me when I said that the healing is broken in Dark Souls 2? Because it's only broken just if you choose it. to use it. Just don't use it, yeah. <laughs> just don't heal. Just don't use any life gems, dude. I spent, like, a whole hour going through how fucked that whole system is, but yeah, the solution is just don't use life gems. And then the question is, are the levels and the boss fights balanced around the fact that you are likely going to be using both your Estus and your life gems or the answer is are no. they designing it around it <laughs> yeah, are they designing it around Estus and then just saying well if you really want you can use a life gem but just so you know that's the easy mode button that's kind of a weird thing with this game actually because I feel like it's half and half balanced around the ashes there are some encounters yeah. mostly like the duo things where it feels like this had ashes in mind mm. but then there's other things where like Malekith and well half the other bosses, where the Mimic just completely violates the experience, or any other summon, really, would probably do the same thing if well upgraded. What One thing that's kind of interesting, too, is there there's that little icon that's above your, your inventory in the bottom left corner that basically says, yeah, you can summon here, or you can summon one of your ashes, but there's plenty of areas where you can't. So it's a bit strange that in boss yes. fights like Theo was referring to, it's not like, okay, Malekith, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have, like, your your bell can't be heard by the heavens or wherever the hell you're summoning <laughs> your spirit ashes. <laughs> <laughs> You're so fucking right. That's a really important yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. They have handcrafted yeah. where and when you can and cannot use this mechanic. Why would they do that if it means nothing in terms of just, you know, if you want to just play the game without playing it, summon? Like what? They knew that there are places you shouldn't use it, or they didn't want you to use it, so that implies all those other places are places they're oh fine God. with me using That's it. That's such an important observation. Of, uh, yeah. yeah, there was a, deli right, was guys, a it's deliberate been great talking choice. To you. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Very deliberate oh choice God. from the developers on where you're allowed to use it, and there are some fights where you pulling out Tish can make it so that I'm not even playing the game anymore. This is the difference. I want people to understand, this isn't easy, normal, hard difficulty differences. Some of this is you don't even have to play the game. That cannot yeah. be intentional, right? Especially not I don't when see how it could be. I don't like to go outside the game, but FromSoft have said many times that challenge is an important part of the world to yes, create. Yes, they have. And so, um, yeah. Uh, I guess just don't use it, though. Like, there is a level helpful. in which I'm willing to accept this as an idea, but uh, we're broken well beyond just Mimic, Tish, Oleg. There's, there's a lot of them. All of the, the better Ashes, basically. Mm. They got a cool Marionettes factor. Marionettes are actually pretty decent too. They uh, they basically hang back and just launch arrows at anyone. And I, it's kind of sad because I think it's a neat idea in concept. Um, I especially because when I first saw the system, I identified it kind of similar to the way Mola was looking at it. I thought it would be like Renala's summons, where they come in, they do their thing, and then they're gone. Yeah, I yeah. I was actually going to suggest that a time limit, I think, would be a good way to balance them. So, so then it, it's more like using a magic attack than summoning a a, a helpline. <laughs> and the most I'd want to see is like you can get the you know the Tish one, and it'll last about five seconds. And what it'll do is it'll launch one of those attacks. It'll take ten percent of the health off the enemy. It's like whoa, that's that's a pretty useful one. Or you it's can get useful as fuck. Yeah, yeah, just that then disappears. The, imagine it's like you can summon the turtle and this is like a meme one, you're like, well, what does it do? It's like, it doesn't attack, but it can, it lasts for maybe 30 seconds and it distract. the boss goes nuts on the fucking mm. turtle it'll just keep attacking the turtle, so it's like it gives you 30 seconds yeah. of a window You can summon some magic users and they'll cast a buff on you, or something like that That would be way better That's Honestly, what, I, it's, it's what it's I, really... I really wanted out of the system when I saw some of the various uses of it it's really kind of sounding like they should, they would probably be more fun if they were, or more, um, I guess, balanced if they worked more like the summons in Final Fantasy games, where it's just, it's more like a super powerful spell that shows mm. up, does one thing, costs a ton of mana, 
but then that's it. That's it. It's not like the the best summons are in a Final Fantasy or Bahamut shows up and then fights with you for the rest of the boss battle or whatever. And it's kind of weird as well to me that most of them cost FP because it seems with the way that they're designed, uh, I don't know because it feels almost cruel to mage builds or people relying a lot on magic who really have a lot of other things they want to do with their FP. Because that was the reason I never gave spirits a chance. I was fairly set on, yeah, I'm not interested in using this, but I considered a few times, maybe I'll give them a go, but I didn't want to because I wanted all of my FP for doing other things. So I guess like it, that saves me from never having my experience violated by summoning a mimic, but it also, like, I guess if if I wanted to summon something, it's kind of just a fuck you. Is there well, you, any other the than the mimic? My, my oh, no, the mimic costs health. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Oops. Is it is it anything else but the mimic that costs health? Or is it everything else? Aware. Someone in chat said rats are free. Um, free rats. Rats, free rats. Rats are free on the street. Free <laughs> take them home. Oh, cool, nice. I guess. I have 326 rats at home. Oh, no. OP. But, um, uh, yeah, I would just go as far as saying... I think it's bad, and you'd be like, whoa, 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 bad, and it's like, well, mechanically, I guess it works, but it's, uh, it's damaging other portions of the game, um, and it needs heavy balancing, that. Uh, yeah, but I don't think they're gonna do that, though, because they just no, nerfed so. what they thought was appropriate for the Mimic, and apparently it's still just as broken as it used to be. No. Like, they nerfed the damage a little bit and the behavioral patterns, which I'm not really sure what that means, but um, someone in Metal's chat said earlier that they're just as broken now as they used to be, so GG's. I mean, yeah, just GGs. to clarify, it's the same logic I used to call a couple of things bad and lots of different things we talk about too with gaming. It's just like, if you, anything can be outbalanced... Um, when pushed to an extreme, and then just damages the whole experience as far as I'm concerned. I feel like this this absolutely qualifies. I know a lot of you like it. I liked it. Oh, Not yeah. very good, though. <laughs> I feel like it's, uh... Oh, man, how can I bring up Tetris? Well, I can. <laughs> um, you can't really, like, break Tetris. You know, like, there is no, there is no mechanic that allows you to, like, break that game. Um, and you could say that it's because the mechanics are simple, but that's not really a counter-argument, is it? Like, the complexity only explains, uh, I guess, the presence of an issue. That being, when pushed to its extreme, does the game begin to break? I think that's, um, that feels like a broader topic. But yeah, when you play a game and you test it, whether by playing at an incredibly hard difficulty or um, messing around with the mechanics, that's when some of the issues with the design that just don't appear because of the difficulty settings sort of are laid bare. And, it, you know, it's opposite ways around, right? Like, something can be so difficult that it becomes bullshit. Like, Halo 2 Legendary Sniper Jackals is bullshit. <laughs> mm. It's just bullshit. It's not fair. Well, um, yeah. And then, conversely, the other way around, when, it, when you play a game on the hardest difficulty, and then you realize, oh, damn, this is how the difficulty essentially works. Like, it's, uh, you know, fake art. There's it, a whole bunch of different examples. Yeah, I'm trying to explain that, like, mechanically it functions, and in the same way that if every boss in this game were a one-hit kill for whatever build you have, it's like, well, I guess it all functions, but that game is fucked now. Like, there's... Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine how many people would just be like, what, what, is, yeah. what is the deal with this? Like, you just run in every room and you just tap them and they're dead. What's... Is it... Like, is, this, is it broken? Is it some kind of glitch? And they feel like, no, 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 I think that's... It makes for a better experience. It'd be like... Okay. And I think it's okay. also important to recognize that people buy certain games looking for certain kinds of experience. Not to say that developers should pigeonhole themselves into what people tend to expect out of them, but people buying FromSoft games are generally looking for a challenge, and that challenge is violated by a core mechanic in this game being the summons. Which you can self-impose a restriction on, but if we're talking about what is present in this game, and I would go as far as saying encouraged and explained to you as part of the game, like this is a mm -hmm. big portion of it and you should be taking advantage of it, when it makes it so that in certain instances you don't even have to play, yeah, I think that's a mistake. Yeah. I honestly think an interesting way to incentivize it at a meta level would just be to make an achievement that's finished the game with no spirit ash summons. Like that, that I think would make it so that everyone who wants to summon spirit ashes would, but the people who kind of, 
you know, I, like want an incentive to be like, what, what's a reason I should not summon them beyond I just want to self-impose difficulty on myself? If you can say, oh, well, there's that digital achievement that I can go for that says, hey, you did that thing. Was it violated? Only a handful of them are unbalanced. Only a handful of them are unbalanced. Only a handful? Oh, okay. Mm. Only. Oh, I just, wow. All right. That is a bit awkward, That's, isn't it? Stop Only fucking sidestepping the issue. <laughs> fucking stop it. <laughs> stop fucking wiggling all around the goddamn issue and just address the goddamn point. Like if someone said, why do you have an issue with noob tube? It's only one gun attachment. So fucking tiresome. I always like use Modern Warfare 2 is such a great example. You are disadvantaging yourself if you're not got like martyrdom, or you're disadvantaging if you don't have grenade launcher. It costs you like basically nothing. It's one slot, and it's just incredibly useful. By choosing not to have it, you are just imposing a challenge on yourself. And when you're in multiplayer, why do that? You you <laughs> handicap your ability to score compared to everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Else is, it's, it's, why would you not use commando? It's it's so good. Like by not using commando, you're just making it so much harder on yourself. Why would you not um, call in your kill streak rewards? Oh, why yeah. would you not? Yeah. Why would you not call it? Yeah. And if you're using kill streaks, why are you not going to have like a UAV or a? Uh, I, maybe that's the. Well, no. You always have UAV. UAV is incredibly useful. There's no reason never to have like UAV there. It's so helpful. But like, if you choose all of these, if you choose that's an um. That's an online game against other players, of course, that's bull. Well, so I would agree that there is a difference when we're talking about a competitive game versus a PvE game. But nevertheless, what, what like what is the distinction that you are drawing in terms of the effect that it has on you? Why don't you just not use it? Why don't they just not use it? It's been addressed multiple times already throughout this entire fucking section that yes, you can just not use it. And most people who identify something like this is going to be bad for their experience, they will stop using it. That doesn't detract from the system having issues. There's a reason why you have to ban Meta Knight at Brawl matches instead of just asking people well, yeah, to no. not use it, all right? What if like, we were... It's developer-minded. It's, it's if, towards if, the developer. So if we were having a LAN party, playing Modern Warfare 2, and then I was like, alright lads, like, do whatever build you want, but can we... We not use any new tube. Can can nobody use noob tube? And then someone is just like, you cannot use it. I'd be like, all right, look, I, w I I think it's a broken part of this game. If we all agree to just not use it, it improves the game. The acknowledgement there is, it's bad. There are things we can do to it circumvent has to be. it. Yeah, it's the same for and this the, game. It is bad, but it's something we and can I think circumvent. The, the important part to mention is, it is bad, but. I, well, the reason why it is bad is because I can look at other examples where it is balanced to where we don't have to make these decisions to not use... Exactly, and is there's a difference between a game Mola, that took this that... This is a false equivalence. I, I the player think is capable I, of doing that, but it shouldn't be their responsibility at all times. I think I can bring up an equivalence that wouldn't be false. Sekiro. Well, Sekiro I, is a From Software game. <laughs> well, Life Gems are right there. We've already... <laughs> yeah, the Life Gems already killed this argument. They got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, I, I think Sekiro, though, is a really good example of a From Software game that is very difficult, but one of the reasons it's difficult is that your toolkit is very limited. And I, it's one of the reasons I would say it's not the best of the From Software games, or at least objectively, because you have zero build diversity at all. You're just a ninja, and that's your only choice. But it's designed in a way that the challenge, every tool that's in your toolkit is not not none of them will break the game it, it will always be challenging and you have to actually get good at the mechanics well. and i i think that um the spirit ashes if they were implemented in a more balanced way they wouldn't shatter that but they, they sort of do in this game and like honestly yeah, they they i i hated that they were there and the like towards the end of the game when i kind of felt like i started needing them because I sort of think that those last few bosses that I did end up using my mimic on, I would have been able to beat if I just was was a little bit more limited or even limited myself. But you know, the the tool was there, so I grabbed it when I was someone uh, to kill someone. 
someone said grinding is overpowered too. Then uh, yes, what, you what have to go out of your way to grind. So this is how, this is how they got the natural balance in the game. First of all, you have to spend a lot of time to grind. So that's your mm -hmm. loss at that point. It's what's costing you. It's like an offer from the game to do that. Uh, these things are handed to you, and upgrades are just findable throughout the world. So and they scale with the game. So like you know, a level one Oleg against early bosses is fine. Level ten Oleg against late bosses is fine. Um, and then secondly. Even with grinding, you still have to fight the boss. Mm-hmm. So, still no, bad it, comparison. Unless you're, unless you're grinding to beyond the pale, at which point you're investing multiple hours. Well, even, more. I think if we're, if we're talking about someone who, like, levels themselves to 200 in Dark Souls before even, like, going past Undead Berg, I'd just be like, um... Yeah. I don't yeah. even know. How much time did you... How much time did that take? Like, yeah, I think there's a reasonable... Time. It's yeah. killed a lot of rats. <laughs> And that I, I find that that's the easy... Bores. This is the thing. How could I highlight that in a video? Like, this is... The the game is broken. It's like, how long does that take? And it's like... I've... It, uh, one of the, well, because uh, one of the requirements for the life gems being broken, as far as I was concerned, is if you unlocked infinite life gems after you killed the final boss, I don't think that's a problem. When you get Often, it um, from the fucking tutorial boss... Muller, uh, are we moving the goalposts? How? Someone... So, so EFAP chat can move the goalpost, but not chat. I've just seen. This is this is me today. It's just looking at things this that people are to say and then throwing them to you just to see what your answer is. And someone's we're, making we're, the argument that Sekiro is a samurai, not a ninja. That that is no, false. He's a ninja. He's, a ninja. he's, he's an absolutely a ninja. A ninja. What he's, ninja. he's called a shinobi throughout the game. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> also, just to address which, as we know, is Japanese thing. for weeb. Yes. Yeah. One of the problems with the idea is like chat can't really like move the goalpost because people in chat are all, not everybody's going to be making the same arguments, so it may seem like chat, you know, like questions. Yeah, I I don't uh, wait. Hold on. So okay, so do do do. Uh, apparently, the grind argument was moving the goalpost. Someone said that in chat. That was though. their argument. Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> A large part of it was addressed argument. because it was brought up. That was not yeah. the goalpost being moved. That was just a question being answered. A large part of what makes the distinction there to me as well is the fact is how hard you have to try to try and ruin your experience. If you've really, really put your mind to it and commit a shitload of hours, you can, in fact, trivialize all of Dark Souls and be level 200 before the Bell Gargoyles. But you had to work super hard and your wife left you, so yeah. it's fine if you do that. Which is what I was it's trying to insane. highlight. Both the ashes and the life gems, they're all handed to you. Yeah, free, almost free of charge. Um, getting to level 200 in Dark Souls is fucking... Yeah. Try and do that in the opening... I don't even know how many hours that takes, honestly. That's gonna be intense. You, you have to do nothing to ruin your experience in uh, with those sorts of things. And there has to be a on. difference between those two things. It can't be considered the same thing. That's ridiculous. Hmm. Yes, magic is broken in DS1, Chatter. Yeah. Magic's enemies often broken. Can't from it. Enemies can't account for it. Because all of the enemies weren't designed. Was that, a, uh, was that a gotcha? <laughs> well, no, because they probably think that we think Dark Souls 1 is perfect, when that means they just haven't listened to our opinions on Dark Souls 1 well, before. So, but what about oh, something no. I have about... noticed is there have been some people who are like, well, wait, I thought you guys said that you like this game. But I maybe, love yeah. this game. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Yeah, no. I hate this game. Honestly, one of the best discussion. games I've played in years. I'm making myself <laughs> angry talking about it. <laughs> we all, we'll see, we all have different perspectives on this. I know it's terrifying, but that's okay. Uh, that's, that's, that's okay. And so. conversely, I love Dark Souls 1. There's a shitload to criticize in that game. Um, ashes are not an issue, you just don't like them. I feel like they definitely <laughs> okay, like and them, they just don't like right. them. You life need to, yeah, you need to go back an hour to when we started this discussion. Or yeah, maybe, life maybe gems on an issue, you just don't like them. Know. We can safely call the discourse over. Yeah, I can, I'm, Every I'm game is balanced, you just don't like it. Well, it's it's yeah. Like, what what are we saying at this point on the nature of balance in video games? If we're saying that all of the criticisms that were just levied at this system <laughs> are, I just don't like them. Like, it the uh, games are meant to be balanced. Like, the the idea is that the game is going to present you with some sort of experience that is fair, but also ask something of you. But if you have to deliberately choose not to, if you have to choose not to use something that's incredibly helpful, that's just present in the game as a mechanic in order to make it challenging. I don't know how you can say that that's, like, neutral. Like, that that is a neutral thing. That is neither good nor bad. That just is... 
Um, and then it's incumbent on you to make the call on whether you ought to use that in order to have a challenge. Like, I, it feels like the challenges ought to be presented by the developer, that they're like, well, this is the challenge, these are the systems that you need to grapple with, and then go do that. And if it's, again, with difficulty options, here's how it's going to be harder, or here's how it's going to be made easier, it's your call. Um, I'm just done engaging with this. It's... Why don't people use magic if it makes it easier? Well, people may well make the decision to go for something that's harder, but, but I mean, you think ideally a game will present you with... Unbalanced? Is that what is being said here? I think why would people I, I'm not use sure unbalanced if the point being made is that completely different. people make the choice not to use these mechanics. So what is the like if people are making this choice consciously, then then what's the problem? I maybe I but I don't I don't that feels like a nonsense. I don't understand answer. why it doesn't apply to everything that's unbalanced. I just why is anyone well, ever complaining about anything yeah. balanced? I don't understand. I don't know why this game is getting a free pass where other games wouldn't. Because it's a FromSoft game. Hmm. Gonna say like Sorry, this. that's just me trying to gaslight. Uh, so then they choose not to use magic, and they can choose not to use ashes. We've you. I feel like you haven't been here for this conversation. Like that's been brought up, hasn't I it? I think. I think we're just done. I, isn't that like the crux? That's yeah. No, actually, yeah. No, I. I think <laughs> like it feels like you haven't heard the the things that have been raised. Also, in choosing not to use magic, it means you're probably building your character more towards melee weapons or, like, bows and things like that. So you, there's a trade-off. By choosing to not use spirit ashes, it's not like you there's get no access. Yeah. To, yeah, like, your your sword doesn't get stronger if you just I guess you can argue there's less FP being used, but, I mean, it's an incredibly low cost compared to a whole different build. Yep. We done? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, very unimpressed with this mechanic, more so for its implementation, not for the idea. I would consider yeah. myself disappointed in it. I think there's the nugget of a good idea in there, and I would like to see them do more with it. However, kind of black pilled on FromSoft in terms of innovation. But considering, like, they seem to want it to be this strong, though, since they nerfed only the mimic. And it was just like a, the tiniest nerf. Mm. Look, Fortier, they created Bed of Chaos. We don't understand their decisions. <laughs> <in time. laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. Like, do you think that this is actually like a play the game on easy mode to have have it be more accessible to I think more it is. people out there? I think they've overcompensated. They've tried to satisfy, uh, have the cake and eat it. They've given an easy mode without giving an easy mode. Yeah. Even though yeah. summons are already right there. I, 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 I felt like we had it taken care of with them, but apparently not. We already have the easy mode. Summons exist. Um, yeah, and I look forward to playing the, through the game without using ashes. Uh, yeah? Yeah, I'm doing a dex playthrough now. now. I, my rule is that if it's just a Tism boss, like one of the millions we've mentioned already, where it's just like a hurdle to get from point A to point B, I'm, I might use summons just because I don't want, really want to fight those systems. But if it's a you know, big boy, good boss, then I will definitely not be using summons. So does it really expect better from EFAP? That just reminds me of when I was playing The Last of Us 2, and someone was like, <laughs> I'm so disappointed in you. You've fallen so far. Your critiques are poor. Uh, your critiques are poor. I was like, all right. <laughs> I, just, I love all the I arguments, just, man. They're really yeah, good. Yeah, nice response to the point. Uh, I, I feel like we've had that conversation before. When you make the broad sweeping statement about how someone on the stream is like wrong and stupid, include the criticism as part of the message. Otherwise, it just comes across as did. like kind of hollow. They said wrong. Ah, wrong. That's helpful. Wrong. <laughs> you know, it's like when you when that's... you're getting feedback on an assignment. It's like, what did you do? Just wrong. Fuck you. <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> It was just wrong. How? And just it can was. be hard sometimes to tell whether or not we've fully explained it or if we're getting fucking trolled. Like, by people who are just like, I just disagree. And you're like, why? I just disagree. Why? You're wrong. And nice, I disagree. Nice, tautological thinking. And then you just take that as concession. Because, Pretty much. You know, There's not else. That's what it is. Point, yeah. Which uh, makes me think we should probably talk about difficulty, because it feels like we've almost talked about it. This is difficulty uh -huh. adjacent, certainly. Yeah, yeah, we've been brushing up you, on it this entire topic. Brushy, brushy. Do you want to talk now, Theo, about uh, about um, 
telegraphing, this might be an mm, opportunity. Sure, yeah. Hmm. Does anyone Sorry, else have what? anything to say on that point, I guess, before I... No, we'd be... Um, no, telegraphing, telegraphing or... On, on the I point mean, of I... telegraphing in this game. <clears throat> I have... Like, there are some bosses where... Uh, like, the, the fat guy, the... The uh, Apostle? No, wait, not the Apostle. Noble. The Noble. Noble. He, he has a few attacks where it's like, he lifts his arm... And then it can either go into a quick stab or it's like a really, really delayed attack where you can literally get like two or three rolls off before he actually does anything. Um, and I mean, there might be some other stuff that I'm missing, but I feel like a lot or not. I wouldn't say a lot, but there are a decent chunk of enemies where it's really hard to tell certain attacks apart. And if you miss time the dodge, they seem they seem to be designed to roll catch you. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's my my I sense of telegraphy. Before I go any further, it is worth saying that this is not new to the Souls series. Even as back even as far back as Dark Souls One, there have been attacks that are specifically delayed to an extent that you might not expect in order to catch you for rolling too early. Yeah, and, well, uh, I'm I'm actually kind of fine with that. It's just the fact that yeah. it's hard to tell that attack apart from the one that is instant. That's usually kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm I'm okay with the delayed attacks. Where and I know there's people that aren't okay with that. They think that it's stupid and annoying, but I'm okay with that because I, I find that's just a part of the learning experience of the boss. That okay, I need to wait a little bit before I press the dodge button here. By the way, that um, death I just had from. <laughs> Jungus. That's wow, why I fucking hate him. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool yeah I'm, I'm more okay with the delays and stuff, but the fact that they're hard to tell apart from the, the insta, like, stabby moves and stuff that exist is is my, my bigger issue with, with, the, with the fact. One thing I've been noticing now on my current playthrough with Melee, uh, there's a bunch of attacks where you know, oh, he's gonna do a slash forward. And it's like, oh, I'm just going to circle around him because I know he's doing that. But then all of a sudden, he does like a little attack backwards. If you guys uh, notice those ones. Because mm. I, had, I had that just now with uh, Commander Neil. So he does like an attack. He charges it. And it's like, oh, I'm going to circle backwards. But then he does an attack backwards. Like he stabs you in the, in the gut or something and staggers you. And then does a follow-up attack. And there's yeah. a bunch of those where I'm not actually sure when they apply because I feel like they don't do it all the time. Mm. So I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, I don't think all a lot of bosses do it, but I caught it here and there. I'm just like, oh, that's weird. Don't really understand how this works. Throw into the mix as well with this. Um, the this cat statue bosses have this type of move. Uh, Margit had one of them where um, really fucking quick. They just sort of at you, and then it goes, and you're just like, whoa, and it's like, yep, that was a slice, just a quick one, and it's usually one, and it's specifically, I think, designed so that you don't, like, assume that every single move in this game is gonna be a, I lift my arm, is it gonna be one second, two, three, four, who knows, like, there are some moves that some characters have that just go, boom, and you're just like, oh, that, oh, that, that, that wasn't, I wouldn't want to confidently say there's no telegraphing on them, but it certainly fucking feels that way, because of how much you're trained in this game to be like, don't just roll whenever you see the move. Well, and then there are moves where it's like, maybe, no, sometimes you need to roll when you see the move. Maybe it uh, might be worthwhile to make a definitive statement on this. Ought you be able to dodge every attack ever, like, theoretically? As in, assuming no run. you know... Yeah, as in, um, is, should it be possible to no damage run the game? Is that the question? Uh... Yes, but maybe, maybe barring if we if we take it as a game where you encounter enemies one at a time rather than getting mobbed, that you ought to be able to dodge every single attack. I would say in a Souls game, absolutely, you ought to be able to dodge any attack an enemy yeah, throws at you. I'd imagine, yeah, because the if the so. idea of an enemy um, that just gets free damage against you is frustrating in yeah. pretty much every game. There might be exceptions, but generally, if the, you just well, feel like you're cheated if you if it's like oh I just take damage because what well, because I just take damage and it doesn't have anything to do with me. Specific scenarios I just want to account for like if it starts doing a big old charge up spell 
this AoE and you decide to commit to hitting it over and over and over and over and over again, knowing this spell's gonna hit me because I can't escape it after a certain amount of time, but I want to eat the damage. It's like, as long as you have the capacity to have evaded it in some way, shape, or form, then that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the thing, because that's part of the decision-making that's at the core of these games, because, like I said, the combat mechanics are not deep. So they rely heavily on this idea of correct decision making and mistake allowance by being punishing. That's why damage is going up with like every uh, game. Ah, shush, Springy, you haven't even played it yet. You don't have to Shut play again to ask chat. a question. Come on. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> it's Springy and Rags have been asking I haven't, very... I haven't played it. I, I, I've literally the only one, I think I'm the only one here who hasn't even purchased the game and he yells at you. So <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> Well, I, I guess to make the point clear, you're allowed to ask questions about a game you haven't played yet. Right? No, Just, you can certainly no. talk about general future. game mechanics. Oh, so this is a one. general topic at this point. Yeah, yeah. totally is. Um, Telegraphing? Yeah, that's absolutely. Just, yeah. Also, I, I have played the game for three hours. Yeah, yeah boy. Yeah, that's right. Right. Mm -hmm. Get absolutely wrecked, chatter. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like the sentiment is, yes, you ought to be able to dodge every attack. I think well, so, yeah. I, I guess, I, broadly, broadly speaking. Yeah, yeah. I would jump to saying you should be able to, but I guess I'm open to the idea that someone could convince me otherwise. I guess it would depend on semantics at that point of the... If they said, like, well, should you be able to dodge a giant laser that opens up a grand entrance that is guaranteed not to kill you, but it's more so just about, I don't know, something to do with the story or whatever, I'd be like, oh, maybe. Maybe. I, well, I guess if you're trying I think to it's use it as... Yeah. I kind of but... want to focus the question down. Um, I guess... Uh... In terms of what what my criticism of this game would be, uh, do you think it should be well? Hmm, do you think it should be reasonable to expect a player to be able to dodge an attack on their first time seeing it? Yeah, right. That's I would. I think that's that's kind of where the question was heading. For the, I would say for the most part, yeah. That's where I tend to lean, which is why I have a mm -hmm. problem with this game. Because no enemies, or at least very few of them, behave in a manner that can be considered anything remotely regular. Well, Everyone. Um, Sorry, is the point, just to give, a, I guess, an example of what I assume you're going for. So when you first play it, and let's say a character lifts this sword up to swing, and you're like, ah, oh, so when he comes down, I'm going to roll. And then he digs it into the ground, and it does an explosion all around, and you get hit by it. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, okay, that's an AoE attack, right. Because um, you, you're talking about that, where you just you can't know a lot of what these moves are even going to do, and so you have to get hit by them in order to kind of learn what they're going to do. Yeah, along those lines. I guess the thing is, in other... I, ideally, you don't want it to be, reach... You don't want people to see your game for what it is, which is mechanics, I think. I think, like, ideally, when, when a game is happening... You don't want the player to go, well, this is a boss with set moves, so I'm going to memorize the moves, and then I'm going to beat this computer program. Like you, kind Yeah, of what's the lore reason the, like, why I can't game. stand in this spot? Um, well, I, I guess what I mean by that is you don't want people to see it for what it is, which is a challenge that is designed in a specific way with specific moves that need to be dodged. And the reason why you know Maybe, to dodge yeah. those attacks is because you recognize the animation. It's like, oh, that's the animation that means he's going to do this attack. Better do this. Yeah, they, so you want to dress prefer... up those animations as being believable and immersive. Like, oh, he's raising up his axe over his head. I better not stay yeah. in front of him because he's about to hit me mm -hmm. with it. Because that's what yeah. people do when they want to hit people with an axe. That's kind of where my, my issue is, I guess, uh, twofold, at least. Um, in On the first... On the first hand, the way enemies behave is at this point so far beyond the pale of regularity in terms of uh, like normalness, I, because this isn't the greatest. This isn't the greatest consideration in any given player's mind. But you like to try and think that the thing you are fighting is fighting you, right? And yeah. for yeah. me, at least, I, I can't really speak for anyone else, but for me, that is a bit damaged when they're doing attacks that take five seconds to wind up because they know I'm going to try and roll. Yeah, this is the yeah. opposite of what someone would actually do if they wanted to hit me with a weapon. Because they're just it's letting like, me what, smack what them like three times. Yeah, this yeah. yeah, like if this was in a movie, if, if Shad was watching a movie, he'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you standing there like a lemon? What, what's going yeah. on here? And, it's too well, meta. I think that's the thing. It is when you're fighting like um, the dancer of the Boreal Valley. Yes, yes. It's like you're you're 
attacking me weird because you know that I want to roll a torture but attack. You, because you know that I'm a player playing a video game, yeah. not a knight you know fighting that a, game. That's why you're moving in a way that but I don't understand. <laughs> that's why it works for Dancer and why it works in limited use because Dancer is this really weird alien thing that's entire combat premise that's... is its strange movement. Yeah. Everything but then when it's uh, some other regular dude and he's just like, I'm gonna hold it, I'm just stretching. Yep. Oh, I got you. Yep. Yeah, like when it's literally God, everyone you run into, like uh, in, in Dark Souls 3, this shit isn't really it is there, like Pontiff Sullivan's overhead, he holds that like a beat longer, yeah, than yeah, you would expect. Um, but other well, than so that. His 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 sword swings are just sword swings, man. He just swings his sword. Like <laughs> I guess that's that's kind of what's happening here when we're talking about uh, telegraphing. You know that they play tested it, and on average, players reacted at X times, so they just give an extra second. Well, to um, punish it's you the reality of for... the cultural impact that from software games have had. Dark Souls One, you you didn't even though this is present in all of them, right? I just think it's the most present in Elden Ring. Um. Dark Souls 1, it's just like, it was it was of a popularity. Dark Souls 2, of a popularity. 3 was where I remember thinking, like, man, I'm seeing a lot of people play Dark Souls 3. Like, Dark Souls 3 is pretty well known as well. I was like, this, uh, yeah. this shit is getting to be pretty mainstream. And then um, Bloodborne was adored. I don't know anybody who typically mm -hmm. says, like, anything negative about Bloodborne that much. Sekiro was, it's again, people were just like, from software, yeah. yeah. Um... And we finally get to this one, and it really feels like they're like, okay, everybody knows that you dodge when the sword's coming down, but do they, they know, know when thing. the sword's coming down? <laughs> that's that's where my issue is kind of coming from on the mechanical side, because uh, in terms of being able to reasonably expect to dodge an attack the first time I see it, often that's not going to be the case, uh, even when enemies are behaving normally, because the exact swing timing or whatnot, or exactly what they're doing, isn't apparent to me, or I don't yeah. know when to react. It gets However, really awkward when you see an attack, like, oh, he's having his arm up, and then you dodge, like, oh, that was too early. Oh, I guess I still have time. I dodge a second time, and then he still doesn't doesn't <laughs> yeah. do the attack. Yeah. You dodge like four times. Strikes. <laughs> then you do dodge like three times, and the fourth time he hits you or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can even just still dodge on the third one, so I dodge. I dodge roll three times, and the third one was the only one I needed. Yeah. But at, we're at the point with Elden Ring where the enemy's behavior is giving me no clues as to what their intentions are. I see hey, them, yeah, they the raise issue. their arm. That could just... mean fucking anything, dude. The result of the I just yeah. didn't know what he was doing. I was like, I, I don't even understand how I'm supposed to fight that thing. And uh, to, sadly, to I had discovered Horde Frost uh, Stomp at that point, so. I, I feel I robbed myself of the proper experience of Malekith. It is very um, much. Because I've noticed some people are saying, like, well, does this actually make it bad, this telegraphing thing? I think it's a little nah, not exactly. It's complicated. Yeah. I think it's complicated, yeah. Cause, I don't cause know if I'm ready to say our... it makes it bad, but I know that I don't like it. <laughs> I imagine it would annoy me. <laughs> I, One of the I things guess... that I like about... You go ahead. Uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm interested. What, what are you about to say? So one of the things, like, when I was watching uh, Mahler, he was in a, a Catacombs, and he was, it was the one with the, the, the rolly thing going up and down the ramps. Oh, yeah. And um, you fought that weird, slimy monster, right? In, in that Oh, that the ulcerated like, tree spirit. Ulcerated tree spirit, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, man, watching you fight this, this doesn't look fun at all. Because I, I just, because I was, like, watching it, and I'm like, I can't tell its attacks from its just normal movement. That, and the camera being pressed up around. It's um, harsh, but I described that I think as a bloodboard boss. I was like, "This is yeah. <laughs> yeah, it totally is." This um, the but, the pasta and the hair and the 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 water effects, the particles. Eventually, a whole screen is filled with garbage, and you're just like, "I guess I'll just attack and roll and attack and roll." And it's just yeah, thrashing um, everywhere. And... Try to get to wherever behind it is. <laughs> so there is an aspect of let's. I, I mentioned Mordhau, right? The way that Mordhau works is you have a certain... Every melee attack is in two phases. You have the wind-up, and then you have the release. Now, when you're winding up, you can choose to... And when you wind up, your, your character will make an appropriate movement based on what direction you'll be attacking from, whether it's a slash, whether it's a stab, and you can do all sorts of things. You can cancel it and then just go back to being neutral. 
in order to maybe draw your opponent out to blocking early. You can morph from a slash to a stab, or vice versa, or from one direction to the other. But regardless of what you choose to do, there's always the wind up in the release. And once you hit that release phase, because you can only wind up for so long, you hit that release point. Your character will always make a noise. You'll go, ah, and then you have to commit to it, right? So you know that when you're watching someone who's trying to kill you, that you watch them wind up and there's a set amount of things that they can do and they're all intuitive and you know what can be done. It all makes sense based on what the character model's doing. And if you see them wind up and you, and you just instinctively block, that's your fault. Because it's a game about discipline in melee combat, not panicking and blocking. It's about staying calm and paying attention. And from watching some of the bosses in this game, granted, of course, I haven't played it. I would be very confused as to the cause and effect of a motion that something does and the result of what that motion is in terms of an attack. The, yeah, absolutely. The combat in the From games is generally based on fixed animation timing. And once you initiate an action, you are committed to it unless you're staggered out of it or something like that happens. So it, it's not too far off, but there are some bosses like the Ulcerated Tree Spirit, I think would actually be a really good example of one where it's it's difficult to really tell exactly what you're trying to avoid because you're fighting this like John Carpenter's The Thing mutation or like a Resident Evil end game boss that's just mutated to something crazy looking. I um, think it's... I th sorry, go. Well, anyway, go ahead. Uh, I think it's like everyone. Very... It's so many enemies in this game where it's almost impossible to tell what their intentions are until you've actually seen the attack for yourself. There's... I, I feel like you have almost no hope of being able to reliably dodge something on first time seeing it in this game, especially since... Not not only are there these incredibly delayed attacks with the fake out like animations and the fake out timings and stuff, but there's also, like Mola mentioned, the really fucking quick ones to keep you on your toes, which means you cannot fully like relax and go into disciplined mode because you still do have to reaction dodge a lot. Uh Margit being a great example of this. Everything he does is slow as balls except for his dagger and his sword moves, which come out lightning fast, and you have to react to them incredibly quickly. Yeah. I think that's, so you're left in a position where sometimes you have to reaction dodge, but sometimes you have to play disciplined, and it's impossible to kind of really get any kind of rhythm going or any understanding of how you need to tackle that particular challenge. He's got a, a move that I think illustrates this pretty well. When I was first fighting him, right, it's like this first time you see it, he lifts up his big stick, yeah. and you're like, okay... So I, I roll back, roll back, roll back. Then he starts walking forward with it. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he <laughs> slams it down. I was like, okay, I dodged that. And then if you do dodge that, and you are successfully just that, he'll just do a spin after it. I think if he hits you with it, he doesn't do the spin. I remember just being like, this is all, this all feels very yeah. unpredictable. <laughs> like, there's, mm -hmm. there's several attacks like that that are really obnoxious with Margit that he uses the daggers for. Like in phase two, do you know his weird sword combo where he does a thrust with it, then a slash, and then he stabs his staff into the ground? Yeah. That's a string, and it looks like he's done. If you approach him, he'll do a quick dagger swing just because, haha, you thought my combo was over. He and likes um, tossing his fucking face. daggers at you as well whenever you heal. While jumping oh, yeah. away. While jumping away, yeah. Yep. So, uh, hmm. Before any, but if I, I do have to go. Uh, it is six and something happened uh, yesterday and I was made notified of the thing I need to be at. Uh, so I need to head on out so you guys can talk about the Elden Ring game and I will catch back up on this EFAP later on. Very well. Oh, good good yeah. talking to you, Rags. You, you bet. Bye. Forever. I will see all dude. of you later. Toodaloo. Bye bye. See ya. Ciao. Blah, blah, blah. Bye bye. So I actually don't mind the delayed attack as much as I said before. Like I don't mind the like having to uh like pull a boss like ten or whatever something times before you start to realize or before you fully learn that okay, so this attack is delayed like basically you you pick up on the patterns and the telegraphs and, and stuff like that um like for example dancer i know Mahler knows this is my favorite fight in Arkham 3 
Um, I absolutely love that fight because it it took me a lot of time before I actually like learned how to perfect that fight because I played it once uh, when I did like a, a no no health leveling playthrough. And I had to perfect that fight and know all of the timings perfectly. Otherwise, because basically any attack that Dancer did except for one would one-shot me. And like the satisfaction I got from finally beating Dancer after having perfected all of her moves, or his, or whatever it is, <laughs> um, was incredible. Like it, it was the most fun I've had in a Souls game hmm. for a long time at that point. I, I, I absolutely adore that fight. For me, uh, I think I'm. I, I want to be clear that this issue is mostly a case of how prolific and how extensive and how frequent these sorts of attacks are, because mm. I think it's fine. I, in fact, I think it is good when it is done when it is fitting and in a very limited sort of sense. I think just like drugs. Uh, yes, <laughs> I think dance is one of the best fights in DS3. Because she moves in such an alien way compared yeah. to most other things you run really into, cool. and like, it really throws you off and gives the fight its, mm. its own unique feel. However, in Elden Ring, everyone's doing it, and there's a specific comparison that I fucking love. You know, dancers, uh, you know her spin slash thing. Uh, I don't know. It's the phase one attack where she does a big step around, and it looks like she's going to bring the sword down, but then it turns into a swipe that's a bit more delayed than you might expect. Yeah. No. That attack. Um fucking magma worm has that. <laughs> <laughs> Why does a big stupid lizard dragon have some the same sort of graceful but alien kind of maneuver that the dancer of the Boreal Valley has? <laughs> but within its same moveset, it also has attacks like it has a it does the big machete slam that every enemy with that kind of weapon in these games does, where it grabs the thing with both hands and presses it into yeah. the ground. But th this is in the phase when it's still crawling on its belly. But that stuff, that one, it, he lifts it up and like, you know, uh, telegraphs the attack for a second, and then snaps right back down in an instant, which is uh, another variation that they love in this game. Which is, it looks like it's going to be a long telegraph, and then it comes out, you know, immediately. Margit has a few of those, like his the hammer slam he can mix into his combos. He winds that yeah. up for a good long while, and then in like the course of a couple of frames, suddenly the hammer hits you. And His staff attack where he like uppercuts you. Yeah, that it one. It looks like it's going to be a wind-up, and then he's like... <laughs> yeah, I like... still can't dodge that one. I yeah, still have no really idea how to dodge that one. Because <laughs> 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 it goes like... <clears throat> and it's like, ah, oh, hey! <laughs> I guess... I don't know how... Again, I'm, I'm not sure how far I'm willing to be definitive with this. I just wish it wasn't every enemy all the time, because it, to me it just gets a bit nauseating and obnoxious. Mm. And it's like, oh look, another boss who's winding up. How long is he going to wind up for this time? And how long yeah. is it going to take him to actually swing? And what even is the swing going to actually look like when he does it? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm... Like, I probably wouldn't even be bothered by the frequency of it as long as it wasn't baited. Like, like you said it before with Margit, like, she has, where he, whatever, I don't know, <laughs> has, like, the really quick, like, uh, magic daggers that they do. And you're, so you have to be on your toes at all times because any movement can mean that you're about to take some damage. Yeah, precisely. So but then at the same time, they also have the move that's... And I swear to God, it, it has to be this. Because it seems like it's perfectly timed so that if you react, like, react, like as a uh, reflex, then it will 100% hit you as you come out of the roll. Like, they have so many attacks, especially Margit, that are, like, perfect roll catches. So yeah. many of them. His uh, his horizontal staff swings are the best example of that. They're timed just after you would roll for a delayed attack. Even they're a delayed delay to catch you because you rolled yeah. for a delay. <laughs> and one thing that Margaret did as well, and I don't know if this is something that we want to get into more later or whatever, but one thing that Margaret had as well was that uh, if you were too late with dodging an attack. You get staggered, and then it cues your roll, so you mm -hmm. would 
roll after you get got staggered, and then they would have an attack where they hit you like it was perfectly timed to hit you as you come out of the stagger and then the roll. Mm -hmm. Like I, that was another thing that really bothered me with that fight. I think, I think the input buffering because it's it's usually severe in Souls games. It feels more severe in this game to me. I don't know if that's just. Uh my impression yeah. but no you're uh, right i think in this game i think it's like extra damaging because of that sort of stuff because i've had it happen so many times where i hit the roll button just a second too late to dodge an attack get clipped it stores my roll i roll and i get roll catched no it's like what the f i tapped the button once game come on uh one too many. a theory that went around in my chat at the time uh was that maybe it's because the uh, the action you do happens at release of the button and not when you press it. Hmm. So maybe that makes it feel artificially longer when you fuck up a dodge. So you get hit and then you release the button and right then it buffers the thing because you just pressed it in the game's hmm. mind. Has it not always been that way for Souls games though? Because Circle's always been Sprint as well, so... Yeah, it's, yeah you're right. So, so that's another thing about that. that. Makes it... <laughs> <laughs> that's I'll take it back. That makes it difficult to uh, deal with the quicker stuff, though, because your dash yeah. is coming out on release. So, you know, your timing has to be even better. But um, I was just going to say, hello, Das. <laughs> hello, oh, Das. Hey. Uh, we lost a doggo and gained a... Well, I guess he's just like a guy. I'm just a guy. Yeah, he's just a guy. But, uh... I assume it would be fair to, oh, if, if you've been listening, what have you got? Um, things to say about past subjects or future ones? I don't know. What do you want to say about um, Elden Ring? Well, let me see. Um, I'm trying to, like, because I didn't, like, you know, sit down and write notes or nothing on, like, what was discussed because I've just been doing shit. Um, in terms of, I guess in terms of bosses, um, yeah, um, I don't know if you mentioned it or not. I liked the... Um, I liked the uh, skinny cultist guy in terms of bosses. I don't remember his name. I think he was the, the, the skinny skin cultist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was honestly kind of surprised by him because, like, you, I first met him over at the uh, top of the windmill city or the windmill village. Oh, um, and oh that's, me too. That's where I, yeah, yeah. That's where I first ran into him, and it's like <clears> at first it was it looked just like some just dude at the top of the hill. I'm like, what the fuck is your deal? And all of a sudden, the boss music kicks in. It's unique boss fight music, and it's a unique uh -oh. boss. And it's like it, it was funky in its second form. And like, I got to be honest, like the 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 eco friendliness of this game is wearing on me really bad. I'm I'm really tired of the copy pasted bosses. So him oh, coming along is like a breath of fresh air, and he wasn't even behind a fog wall. So I dug him. The apostle was pretty cool. Not so great about Wait, his. Uh... I could just. Hmm? Should I tell you something what? about that boss? Well, about uh, the wait. So game? are you you haven't completed the game, right? No, I'm oh. playing it right now. Actually, it's just. All I, I mean, I got... it's okay. I'm kind of <laughs> at the point where I'm over well, the spoilers. Well, okay. Well, so. Everyone right now who's completed this game is very baffled by you saying, I don't like repeated bosses. Love the one time I fought the Apostle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now, like, I'm, I understand he probably does come back later. And it, it's like, I've come to expect that. But when I first came across him, it was like, oh, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's it, nice like, do they abuse new. him often in this one? Like, they do the fucking tree sentinel? Fuck the tree sentinel. No, but <laughs> you, you game, definitely. Just him. There, there is one more critical path fight with him. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I figured they were gonna they they've recycled everyone else too, like in a, a nauseating degree. So there I expect I expect I'm going to sour on him pretty soon, but for now, he's a pretty cool guy. There are I I think have twelve feeling. bosses in this game that do not appear anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Well, you mm -hmm. know, there's the main main um uh, you know, main story path type bosses like the uh, fire giant. I uh fire giant was pretty cool, uh although I kind of I have a problem <laughs> one of his attacks where he like uses his shield as like a shovel and like, you know, swings at you like all with a shoveling motion. Yeah, it's a, um, that's a jump dodge one. It. Yeah, oh, okay. but didn't I work. Just, I just rolled through that. <laughs> oh, really? Well, the I problem is I was trying to roll. Was the only thing I... Well, the problem was I was trying to roll through that as well. But the problem comes from the fact that his it's not only a hitbox. It's just a 
big old collision box too. So a lot of the times he'll, when you're dodging through, the iframes will kick in and work, but then he'll scoop you, and then basically you'll you'll just be scooped into his attack as soon as your iframes wear off. And huh. so it's like that's really irritating. That's something that uh, the uh, daughter of the cosmos and Bloodborne pissed me off on. Oh um, God, that out of me. Jeez, Pass, that's yeah, a pass the yeah, monster, yeah. right? The the charge attack where she flies forward is like, oops, I'm going to carry you out of your iframes. Wee! <laughs> no, don't do that. Never. Yeah. <laughs> it happened to me. <laughs> Am I getting that right? Is the the one you just described from Bloodborne? Is that the pasta monster, or is that someone else? Pastor monster. No, daughter of the cosmos uh, is that fucking Cthulhu uh, bastard with the big pasta monster. Face. Yeah, oh, it's got time. loads of pasta in its face, and the, the reason why I know it as pasta monster is because I always get behind it and just dig in, and oh, it kills it. Pasta yeah. monster. I thought you said pastor monster, like oh. he's from church. <laughs> <laughs> Vicar Amelia? No, not her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's a hairball monster, Amelia. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming hairball. Yeah, the re um, from her is kind of funny. That's the thing about Bloodborne. <laughs> Whenever I stream it, it's like when I get into a boss, if I'm going to call with someone, I'm like, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> like, <'cause laughs> I like the re <laughs> I like it a lot. Ibritas. That's her name. Ebr She's funny. Ebritas, Ebritas, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure if I pronounced it, but it's still... She's... Yeah, but it was it was the same phenomenon, and it was kind of irritating. But overall, pretty cool. Uh, very s big spectacle. It was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it was pretty cool. Um ripping his leg off and I always dig that shit whenever they 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 they're so angry they don't even care if that they have to cringe. use their own body parts as weapons. Yeah. Well, I knew he was going to do it to him. I'm like, "Oh no, here it comes. I've seen this Dude, before from soft." And then he yeah, ripped it, it broke, right off. Will. That initial break, <laughs> that me on stream, I was like, "Ooh." <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they've really started to like that one, the pull off the body part and get Yeah, rip stronger. off the arms and use it as a weapon sort of thing, yeah. Pulling <laughs> swords out of goo and flesh and stuff. Sort of the weird yeah. one they do. Yeah. I got texted by pretty much every single one of my friends who got to the second phase of the Flame Giant whenever they did. They're like, hey, you know what boss you're like? And I'm like, Flame Giant? <laughs> like, oh, so you got there. <laughs> uh... uh. I don't know if we've gotten to like regular monsters yet, so I'll just abstain. No, funnily enough, there. no. We are four hours in. We have done um, ashes, bosses, difficulty telegraphing, summoning. That's about it. Oh yes, <laughs> so uh, we kind of telegraphs. I'm, too. Yeah, telegraphs. I'm fine with. Um, I think they work for this type of game because the combat is like really kind of unremarkable, as Matthew Matosa said. So it's like you really <gasps> ah. got to kind of got to mix things up a bit. Um, and so it's all like the telegraphs are kind of necessary because if they didn't telegraph, it would be, I, I feel it would be actually an easier game. It's, it's the way in which they telegraph that, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, because the delayed telegraph. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, what the enemy is doing by and large in this game, no longer gives me any information as to what its intentions are. And mm -hmm. there's always, there's always the extra follow up that you wouldn't expect. Like, aha, the combo is still going. I feel yes. like I can go back to Margit with this again. Uh, <laughs> he has he has that one combo that mixes up between the staff swings and the dagger swings. Uh, so I think it's like he swings his staff twice, then there's a couple of dagger things, and then there's a big staff slam, and then right after that, when it looks like he's just standing there, it, he like snaps into an attack animation and lunges at you for another couple of dagger swings. <laughs> and, uh, mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too big on it. Yeah. I don't like how things like the Leonine Misbegotten flail either. Yeah. Ashes. Um, my first uh, Ash that I really wanted to put points into was actually Loodle the Headless. Because um, she can teleport and not get like, you know, stuck in a corner or nothing like that. Throw her spear and it. She kind of has a little of everything. I think the only issue was when she teleports, she wipes aggro. So it's like, OK, well, in terms of a distraction, you're not great. Right. But, uh, okay. it's pretty cool. but I, I don't use the summons very much at all. Um, I will use summons whenever I go to Mr. Hands, um, which, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But like when it comes to like areas where there's just a big old spam bush lined up for you, I'll use like okay. ashes because I'm really fucking tired of the spam bushes at this point. There's a lot of them. 
Got some um, DS2 level DS2 design. DS2 DNA, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm noticing they didn't fire the DS2 DS... guy that came up with the controls. <laughs> DS2 D, control was D. the blueprint. Yeah, the, the, uh, the copy oh, paste no. guy. Why is he not fired? Because apparently he's he's make, come back with a vengeance. And it's I'm actually at a part right now where the most like annoying enemy in the game has been copy pasted about 12 times. And I'm Ooh. kind of fucking Ooh, over Are it. you in a room that... Where are I'm you? I'm not in a room. Oh, okay. Um... <laughs> I'm outside. So we could we could move into talking about instead of bosses now just enemies. Um, I would like to open the discussion on finding. Uh, it's going to be difficult for me to find. Maybe I can get a picture of him actually. Um, basically the the enemy oh, I hate yeah. the fucking most in the entire game. There's a couple of really Revenant good choices. Thing. I forget what his name. Well, and to be fair, I don't have a clue what his Teleports name is. Teleports and spits poison and uh, There flames. he is! All right. yeah. You know what? Oh, good. That, this is useful. I just most hate That was hated. exactly... When I said Mr. Hands, that's what I was referring to. Mr. Hands is the one. Uh, yeah, the so... The fucking worst Oh, the one on bottom right. Yeah, bottom I right. Oh. I despise that fucking thing. <laughs> I hate him so God. much. He's Whoever worst. designed this guy, you need to have a word with yourself, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You might want to settle down on the drugs. It's funny to me, like, they've got... This is an example of, like, most hated enemies in the game, I guess. Like, the other three don't even come close to him, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah. It's yeah, those, those guys those and three the are nothing. people who are... There are consistent ways to people. counter the other three. Him? Ooh. Ooh. I do not... I do not like those little gecko things in Man's the Man's just right gonna now. fucking flail all Oh, you don't like... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the, the the petrify toads or whatever they're called now. Yeah, surprise, you're dead now, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you walk into a room you didn't know they were in there, and then four of them do the attack, and you just go D -d 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 dead. And you're like, oh, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh -huh, we got you. And it's like if you craft those things that undo the, it's like shut up, just shut. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Mr. Hands, if you want to call him Mr. that. Hands. Um, when he does like a sprint toward you, going like hit, 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 and you roll back, roll back, and then he does another one, you get tagged by it, and then another one, and then another, and you're like, you're not serious. You cannot keep mm. fucking doing this. And he then just doesn't he, stop. he stops, and you're like, finally a hit, and you go to hit him, and then he teleports because he goes into the fucking floor, <laughs> appears behind you, and spits poison. You're like, all right, yep. okay. <laughs> just the absolute worst. What? He's such yeah, a he's got a rocket engine on his ass, and it's pissing and me like off. there's like five or six in the Helictree area. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was already down there. That's one of the instances where I had to summon my Mimic Tear, because I was not putting up with this anymore. A lot of them escaped from the first Evil Within game. <laughs> <laughs> Can I highlight uh, no. one of the worst portions for random enemy encounter? I'm going to put it on screen and see if you guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, I hoped you would bring that up. I'm oh, actually very cool. close to that. Oh, ah, yeah. so fun. This, so this fucking place. What else can you say about this wow. other than, guys, what are you doing? What are you <laughs> doing? You're not a stealth game. Stop trying. Like, what is this crap where there's invisible enemies that do a backstab grab on me? Why? And they have like... a mountain of health. And poise. It's just, what the fuck is this? I, I don't think they're even designed to be fought. I think you're, that, you're supposed to kind of run around and just light the, the four. Is it four? Yeah, four candles. It's a dumb yeah. stealth section. It's fucking stupid as shit. That's like... what it is. <laughs> is it? Is it stealth? Because, I mean... No, it's not really stealth. There's nothing because... stealthy about it. You run around and suddenly, bam, backstabs. Like, what? Look at that. Oh, God, yeah. this is going to be great. I've got all the footage ready for this. Yeah, oh, yeah perfect. Maybe, maybe, was just maybe when you're going to do something like this, don't give them a lunging grab attack when I can't see them. You know? Yeah. There's a torch that you can use to reveal them. The problem is uh, you okay. need to have that torch in your hands. If you switch to a shield, she will go invisible again. So you have to, oh, you have to sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to hold this torch in your left hand. You can you can switch to like um one-handed mode for your like right hand and it'll be okay. But if you dare switch to anything else, she's gone again. So what you have to that? hold that torch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me find the torch. That's in my I was going to say, where's the torch? I didn't come across the torch, unfortunately. Uh, oh, really? It's all it's the... torches in this game. Oh, just uh, any the, torch? Uh... Oh, no, no, no. It's a sentry torch. It's I don't know what that one is. It's a sentry that torch. One. That's what it is. Uh, of the kinds of moves I would give enemies like this, a lunging grab is not one of them. <laughs> it's just cruel. <laughs> Why would you do this? It's so mean. <laughs> That is really mean. Yeah, Sentry's torch, so you have to hold this thing. So you're essentially handicapping yourself to hold a stupid torch in your hand so you can fight this health-inflated poise monster. Tomb of the is Giants this worth complaining back. about? Fucking yes, it is. Did you see this? <laughs> yes, you of see course the footage? it is. <laughs> uh, 
And there's five of them. There is five of these fuckers in this area. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't even opt to try and kill they them. I was running yeah, away from them. Yeah, they are honestly. Not, I, dude, <laughs> I killed out of spite. Killed. I couldn't. I killed them like, yeah, it was <laughs> slow. You it was told me slow, there was only it was one. lame, it wasn't know. fun, but they're all dead. And they and thank God they don't ever come back when they're dead. You know, been a cool thing to do. You can just, see that just happy to, in the snow or something. Just happy to think it's short. Hmm? Just a one and done thing, and then you're out of there. Oh, thank fuck it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an ever jail. It's just one with no actual combat boss. And the archers fucking annihilate your health as well. They do yeah. obscene amounts of damage. Oh god, they were really funny, yeah. Ooh, having lots of fun. Just fun, fun, fun. It just makes you wonder, what fun do you think people are getting out of this? It's like, it's a challenge. Like, I, yeah. How yeah. many? <laughs> More than any other Souls game, and I usually ask this a decent amount with Souls games, I just keep asking with this game, what were they thinking? What did they <laughs> hope was going to happen? What did they hope that gameplay of this zone would look like? Running around. Right oh yeah, this. this part for me, I was like, am I... I, I can't get over there, and I don't... Yeah, uh, idiot. Hmm. Oh yeah, they have kind of a mountain of health too. Those, yeah. those little cloth boys, that those crippled little cloth boys take like a ton of hits to kill them too. They're also, while you're on they also one, the other one's beat, got a beat on you. They also shoot too fast to spell cast something on them. Which is mm -hmm. also fun. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. like, so you I'm need a light gonna, weapon. Just gonna rock fling them. It's like, nah, I'm just gonna shoot three arrows this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally spamming me. I'm just like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. 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 I, so I think my strategy was run and roll. Game. Ah, I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> I do adore this game. <laughs> but there are, this is the thing when you're dealing with a game that's 100 <laughs> fucking hours long, there are gonna be parts of it where I'm like, oh, look what. Well, it, I yeah. guess, uh, more central would be that I think that it's easier to identify what isn't working and it's harder to, and it takes longer to explain what is working. Um, do that for you. What? Oh, no, I didn't actually. <laughs> Hold on. I saw, I saw the backstab. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you meant to do to counter this? I'm not sure. <laughs> Apparently you're supposed to have a torch. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Hold a torch. <laughs> and then it's going to take a fucking age to kill them. They fly forward in most of their attacks. That grab is actually harder to dodge than you think, because she doesn't have like well, a grab animation. You know? she, yeah, well, she she's got a grab animation, but instead of like the grab happening when she squeezes her arms in, no, 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 she just holds her hand out in front of you and flies forward. And if she bumps into you, you are grabbed. For for me, it was just attrition of surviving long enough to find the four candles and then executing a run where I just didn't engage a single one of those assassins. Wow, that's thankfully uh, those that's candles not, stay that's lit. Not ideal, yeah. right? Like, you feel oh, like yeah. when you stay lit, once they're lit. Oh, it, well, but I mean, it's kind of there's sort of like a route. I guess the mm -hmm. last one you can, or I mean, the last one oh. I got was kind of at the other end, and you had to climb it up. But the first three, I think. Or, I mean, the two that are on rooftops, those ones you kind of get to one and then the path to the next one is, is along the same route. So you, you kind of end up running the same circuit either way and just hoping that you don't get killed. Um. Yeah, these, these things are awful. That was no fun at all. I just don't get it. <laughs> I just don't get it. Yeah, someone chat hasn't mentioned. Right? Remember Painted World, Invisible Boss with footprints. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. footprints. <laughs> and it didn't command grab you out of stealth. Yeah. Uh, so a boss I would like to mention for this portion because of the fact that it started to appear so fucking much, I wasn't even sure if I could refer to it as a normal enemy anymore. Was the the fox? Um, yeah, the yeah. I think it's a red wolf, but yeah, red, red wolf. Yeah, the shameless Sif reference. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh oh, is that a spicy take? Well, I hope not. I fought him. Dog with a sword in its mouth. Only this time it's anime and it does spells. It's an energy sword, yeah. And it runs away from you constantly. Yeah, it's, it's that's not really as fun. big. No, but it's faster. Dare I say? I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, oh it's definitely faster and more aggressive. Eh, I, I, I think it's faster. It run from it. you like a fucking it's, pussy. It's, 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 it's in Elden. <laughs> it is in Elden Ring. Therefore, it is faster and more aggressive than Sif. Like it's <laughs> uh, when I first fought him, I was like, "Oh, bye," because it was really easy. He was in the the <laughs> magic place, and then every yeah. like subsequent time, I was just like, "Oh, it's you again." What? But why? Like, yeah. okay, and, and just each time, uh, the most annoying was in the Winter Wonderland area. Um, 
don't know if you fought him there. I think I may have fought him off stream because I was just walking around and I bumped into him and I was like, oh, this should be pretty easy. He was the hardest there than throughout the whole game. Um, and yeah, I just started to be like, why do they just, they just drop you in if they don't have anything else to do, don't they? And it's like, what, you mean the well, ulcerated that's... tree spirits? And I'm like, no, those tend to have locations that are set with the, uh, the earth trees, right? Sometimes they pop you kinda up You kind of need anyway. a more room for them. <laughs> um, it felt so out of place the first time I fought him, like, in, in the magic area. Like, sure, yeah. he does magic, but what the fuck, it's a wolf. <laughs> Yeah. Just have him have the fucking sword in his mouth and place him somewhere else, not in a fucking school, whatever the fuck that was. His some, boss arena. some lecture hall, see somebody's pet. Yeah, it was the, the debate, the debate oh, hall. Yeah. It was like, oh, here's <laughs> the wolf. It is debate just hall. Just like Sif. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the bitterness. I can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, dude. Uh, I hate it. Uh. So what can, what can we, to better, I don't know, it's like, what do you say about the, the average enemy in this game? Well, you've got your hollows, when I don't know if there should be hollows in this universe. You've got your knights, when they all look the same despite serving different people, which, you know, that's whatever. They, they have different coloration, but the styling of their armor is the same. Maybe I'm asking too much, but... I found that a bit disappointing, that the Lanedale Knights look the same as the Raya Lucaria Knights, look the same as the... Godric Knights look the same as whatever the hell else. Mm -hmm. In terms of actual cool. moveset, um, a fair few of the basic enemies do fine, but so many of them have the inane flailing plus heavy delay combination that <laughs> makes them just a pain to deal with. Do you think that there's a lack what? of variety in saying that, or...? Yes, probably. Everything seems to behave in a pretty similar way. I guess that's, um, because it it's it's comp it I guess it gets complicated because there might be isn't one of the big criticisms of Dark Souls two that a lot of the enemies are knights with swords, but like uh, dudes in armor. Bosses, yeah, People level armor. that yeah. criticism of the bosses. I, I think okay. The the real criticism is beneath that. They just don't realize it. But well, that's yeah. that's that's why I brought it up because the aesthetics is one thing, but it, really what matters is how do they affect gameplay? Yeah. How do you fight each person? The problem and, uh, with DS2's dudes in armor is they all behave the same way. They all yeah. Not that they are all dudes in armor, because you could have all dudes in armor and... Had the unique fucking position of having bosses that killed themselves. <laughs> like, <laughs> not to say like, that not all of the games have that to some degree, but DS2's ones were much more commonly killing themselves. It was funny as fuck. <laughs> F what do you mean, Chad for Dragon Rider? What, what is that? <laughs> so, um, the, the dudes in armor <laughs> falling into water pits. Yeah, oh. Walking off a bridge. <laughs> the, yeah. Oh, God. I, it was in my video. Like, I had several examples of... I forget the name of him, but he's a big knight, and he just fucking commits suicide. Dragon like, Rider. Yeah, yeah, several times. He just... Play a little fart sound every time they lift. Lift. Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> one every time... Like equals one, one prayer. prayer. Yeah. Niche, it was just a case of oh boy i can't wait for it to do a three hit combo ending in either a slam or a stab and i can't wait for it to have its one magic attack its jumping attack and its attack when i'm next to it and that was all of them they all had the same moveset it was pretty impressive but actually you would say elden ring has more more variety than that yes yeah it has a lot more variety but than does that. it have as much variety as dark souls one more so, but also a little, several more enemies. So I guess that's. Uh, are you talking percentages? Uh, <laughs> like, or, um, well, or individual more, fights. Maybe that's. Ah, uh, well, I guess maybe it's both, right? It's it's probably not fair to downplay how big Elden Ring is compared to the other games. You know, that is a part of it. Yeah, Elden Ring's For sure. probably here, ought to be considered. Dude. Yeah, in, in that sense, I'd say it's actually a tricky question to answer because, uh, mm -hmm. like, I'm willing to bet that Elden Ring definitely has more unique enemy types than DS1, but uh, the ratio the, of yeah, the unique exactly. enemy type to the yeah. amount of to time it takes ones that are similar, game. yeah. Like the Lane yeah. Dell Knights are technically distinct from the Godric Knights, however, they behave, they they look nearly identical, and they have a lot of the same moves. It's like a variation on the same enemy. This lad was pretty funny. Ugh, the ball oh, the balls, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I just point out that the, the... That's another. I shouldn't be here. Just... I should be in Bloodborne. Where am I? <laughs> flail, 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 flail. A screwball of damage. <laughs> and then his, his, 
weak spot is his hardest part on his body. Yeah. Just wanted to point that out. Because yeah. he has a beak yeah, it's true, that's harder beak. than everything else, but that's you know what? Spot. I saw it just there. I appreciate the fact that they made the critical hit location glow. Yes, yeah, that was yeah. a good Oh, that that's something I wanted to bring up. Especially related to the ulcerated tree spirit. Uh, so sometimes you can proc the, uh, the, the like, stagger where they, they glow yeah. and you can hit them. Fuck me, so many enemies in this game will do, are so bulbous and nonsense that by the time you can even get to the place that they've got the weak spot on, it's too late. Like, yeah. Plus, in the, many yeah. cases, in many, many cases, depending on the size of the boss, the weak spot falls into the floor, and you can't have, actually hit it. Yeah. Do the or into a wall. Or into golems, a wall too. whatever. Yeah. I hate yeah, the yeah, golems, because the way they fall oh. down, you can get tangled into them, and then you can no longer reach the weak spot. It's like, fuck you, game. Like, I'm trying to... <laughs> I yeah, if a... you drop a dragon and you get stuck behind his wings, fuck you, you're not getting that weak spot now. You can't jump those wings. You, Your horse you could sure almost can. argue that that has something to do mm. with budget and development time, because I, I'm willing to bet they probably would want to take the time to have different animals, like, almost like the glory kills in Doom, where depending on the angle you approach it, you get a different animation, and it's a, sort of a different attack. But um, I imagine that would be very difficult to do for every enemy. Not impossible, though. Did any of you guys take the transporter trap that takes you up to Lanedell and uh, there's a there's a golem up there that you fight? Uh, yeah. I think so. Well, Sorry, I, say that again? Uh, the transporter trap that takes you up to Lanedell and there's a big golem that you fight and that's where you find the uh, talisman that slowly restores HP? Uh, I definitely yeah. did that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I had a distinct moment of, I guess, longing when I did that, because I had him standing with his back to the fucking sheer drop behind him, doing his attack that carries him backwards, and then I knocked him over and he fell backwards and he didn't fall off the bridge. And I, could, I couldn't help but think of Iron Golem, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, hey, we have a mechanic where this boss falls over and it's on an actual platform. Maybe we should make that a thing that's part of the fight, that he can just fall off. And then yeah, this guy was just like, no, you know, I guess, I guess we're just going to ignore that as a possibility and break my immersion. Re, <laughs> re, re, <laughs> re. <laughs> oh, hey, quick mention: uh, the ashes of Oleg. I saw this happen to you as well, Bell. Uh, sometimes he gets confused, tries to attack things outside the fucking boss room. Oh yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. I need your help here. I was squishy like, mage. I need you to aggro. Let me at him. <laughs> He was like, I, I no, no, you, there's, a, there's a severe threat on the other side of this fog door. <laughs> Trust me, buddy. I can't um, let them ambush us. <laughs> also, said, like, the golem was easy as hell. It's just like, well, they're all different amounts of health and damage and stuff, but the way I saw it, when he, ever, he got staggered, I was like, just keep hitting the feet. Don't even go for the weak spot, because yeah. it's just going to get fucked. Yeah. Eh. Yeah, if you, do, if you do two charge strong attacks to his, their feet, and they have, like, the exposed lava feet, uh, you'll knock him down way quicker, and then you can just go for that crit attack, provided the torso doesn't fall into the floor again. Mm-hmm. Um. Yumbo. What about the vampires slash? Oh, do you guys? What do you think of the um the eagles with the blade feet? Fuck them. Oh fuck. Flying <laughs> enemies, Flying I hate enemies them. in this game in general are just really them. obnoxious. In in my mage build, they didn't bother me at all because I could shoot them down. But when I started my melee build, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, I want these enemies to be gone forever because I, I just can't hit them. I just, them. I just don't understand. They have everything. They, they're they quick, they're agile, they're hard to hit, they fly, they do a shit ton of damage. Yeah, they hit hard too. That's what I was about like, to say. They literally have everything. They're so much stronger than any enemy in the surrounding area to where they're at. And then they um, appear like later on in the game, and the, it's just, it's just the same thing. They just do so much more damage than anything in the surrounding area. They also get flame breath later on. Yeah, yeah. like um, stop they it. Throw yeah, they can, they deal more yeah, damage. Yeah, I was about to say they can chuck explosive barrels at you. <laughs> <laughs> they deal more damage than something. the knights in the in the castles. It's like, yeah, it's why true. is this bird stronger than them? Help me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I didn't, didn't have too bullies. bad a time. Um, I, I forgot to use guard counter all the goddamn time, but whenever it came to the birds, guard counter actually helped a lot for them. So as long as there weren't like more than one, I had an okay time. But if there were like two, I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> I, I found I'm... a jump and jump and light attack with the great sword was pretty good for them because it was a really big arc and it kind of angles up. 
and uh, that that of helped. A, of another really fun enemy type I encountered that flies because I hate flying enemies in this game. Uh, it was down in down in that castle in the southern area of Limgrave across the bridge. Uh, I think it was there. Uh, you run into a couple of flying beastmen people with bows. Oh and yeah, they just, and they just hover oh, above you, out of your reach, and they're just yeah, Castle Morn. That's mm-hmm. it. Thanks. <clears throat> and and they just hover above you, shooting you. And none of my swing arcs were high enough to reach <laughs> them, and they just hovered there, shooting me. Um, oh, that was pretty cool. My jump attacks couldn't tag them either because of the particular swing arcs of the weapon I was using. Yeah, uh, uh... I have an enemy that is in <clears throat> like basically tied with Mr. Hands for like the worst enemy that I hate fighting in the world. Uh, and that's the shrimp people. Oh, yeah, fuck those guys. Ooh, the shrimp uh, people. Yeah. yeah, they're annoying. Uh, shrimp people can go <laughs> shrimp, fuck dude. themselves because they have so much annoying about them. First of all, they don't disappear when you've killed them. Obviously they won't, but every single time you hit them, they do a retreating attack. Um, that has a ton of poise on it. So if you try to follow it up with a second combo attack, it's not going to stagger them. Right. And you're mid swing. Now you're open. They're going to stab you in the face. Um, <laughs> they... people. Yeah. yeah, yeah they're like prawns. <laughs> they're like prawns. Yeah. They, yeah. So we we're just a step away from crab people, really. Yeah, so <laughs> oh, there are also crab people. There's sure. also there crab are crabs. Also, they're not crab too bad. People? Oh god. It, it's a, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Prawn. There are crab under people. the ground. Not crab, crab, people. <laughs> crab people. Crab <laughs> people. Also, also, fuck the shrimp people's projectile attack. Yeah, they, it hits you so, from cover. It, yeah. If they fall into a pit, they can still hit you. They can hit like you from anywhere. Enemy. Like, yeah, they really are spider webs that they what, shoot what a, that track yeah. you. We have a mm-hmm. prawn Crazy enemy man. with a halberd that shoots missiles. Huh. Yeah, and they can, <laughs> whenever they flee from you too, you're most much more likely to clump together a bunch more enemies along with them. Their attacks are numerous, and they stuff yours if you're using a large weapon. And worse yet, yeah. these fuckers know that they're full of shit because they can stab <laughs> you through a wall, and yep. they know it. They you know. Can be- <laughs> Yes, because while you're hiding, where you're sitting like behind a full wall, they don't care. They'll still stab you through it and they'll keep yeah. trying too. They just go the fuck on forever. Yeah, they just keep going. They know they can stab through walls, so they do. <laughs> and I, I, I hate them. And, and that place that I had, um, I was talking about where there were like 12 enemies that I hate, it was them. It was yeah. 12 <laughs> of them. And they had little baby shrimp men along with them. To, they also shoot projectiles. It took me like forever the, to clear the that area The underground area? The, you guys the um, cavern with the... No, uh, Helic, tree Helic land. Tree, um, Helic tree area, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helic tree. Oh, Metal okay. already knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. I fucking <laughs> rage at these motherfuckers on stream. Yeah. I was like, fuck <laughs> off. Do you guys yeah. know the clay men? The clay men underground? Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 really they're tanks. And they yeah, they, they take and like stuff. a million hits. Yeah. yeah. There's a room underground with I counted no less than twenty six of them. Yeah. Somebody they, told me you not can very summon. Aggressive them. though, you can just walk past them. I think. Well, they, yeah. Somebody I, said I don't you understand summon the shrimp why man. they made a room full of like yeah, just walk past the enemies. <laughs> the lore, Theo. The lore. The fucking clay people. Don't you disrespect the clay people? Kill you them fucking all racist. Because... Oh my god, you killed them all. No. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said oh, you can summon the oh, shrimp no. man. How much <laughs> you want to bet summon shrimp man actually suck ass? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess since a lot of complaining is being done, does anyone have any enemy types they like? Honestly, I never even think about the normal enemies. I just kill them. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's um, more of a just position. if if I'm fighting them and I feel like the fight was fine, I don't register that as like a compliment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's a regular enemy, and it did what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's another enemy type I hate, though. The fucking frosty anime dual-wielding swordsmen up in Castle Sol. The sp- uh... You know? There is one of those in the fight with Nial. Yeah, yeah. The, uh... Oh, yeah, the, the enemy Oleg. Oh, they're yeah. frosty? I kind of thought of them <laughs> as ghosts. I think Banished Knights is what they are called. Yeah, they are horrendous, and I hate them. They're as <laughs> strong as Oleg, and now if you, um, I know why Oleg is so strong. That's why, <laughs> that's why in the Niall fight, I'm telling you, it's a two-hand your weapon and kill that one before the fight even really begins. Just yeah. <laughs> but I, I, one-on-one, I don't think they're a big problem. I think they're fine. For me, they were like a huge issue because they just go on and on and on and on. <laughs> they never fucking stop, and they can chase you forever because they have all sorts of variations on their weird windy you know stomping move thing. Little that never sits down to any enemy. 
Well, you know, <laughs> you've got a point, but they go even more on. <laughs> yeah, no, I like I the you. enemies that <laughs> don't fight back. <laughs> Yeah, why can't the enemy just let me kill it? What the fuck? Yeah, just stand there <laughs> and be my swing you over. Just be a Lothric knight and let me R1 you to death. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you be more challenging than the other ones, you prick. Um, shall we bite into another subject, perhaps? Perchance? Fine. I saw some people in chat mentioning, how come you haven't talked about the, uh, the Ashes of War, which are, dare I say, weapon arts? Yeah. Oh, out. yeah. I haven't used a lot of them, but there's a few that I like. I was just using bloody slash throughout the whole game, pretty much. <laughs> it's pretty I, cool. I heard. I heard I, that got a bit of a nerf. I don't know how substantial it was. Did you ever find out? Or well, um, to show just how powerful it was, in a sense, I was stuck on a Crucible Knight plus other guy for a while, and I think the run I won was the the run where I was like, I can keep using bloody slash. <laughs> like it's like. It's pretty good. I should keep using it. That his health started to get, like, absolutely just flattened, and, uh... Yeah, like, I, I like it a lot, but I haven't played with it since, um... The thing is, I was planning on my next run to not use it. I was gonna try other things, and, um... You know, along with not using, uh, the summon spirit things, but... Uh, yeah, that one was really good. I tested out a whole bunch of them. I thought they were kind of neat. I'm okay with them. I think they just have a bit of a balancing issue, which apparently they're sorting out, because yeah. Horfrost Stomp has been fixed as well, apparently. Yeah, see, the Horfrost Stomp was really the first one I used, because the what I initially had on my, my greatsword, it was still a cold damage greatsword that scaled on strength, but my weapon art was just... Like this little tornado that formed around me for a split second and did almost nothing. So for <laughs> the vast majority of the game, I was just like, okay, whatever. I'm a melee build. I'm just not going to use any spells, whether they're part of my sword or not. And then it was Godskin Duo that I was stuck on. And someone said, yeah, Horfrost Stomp's really good for that. I was like, what's that? And they're like, it's a weapon art. They're like, you could probably use it on your greatsword. Just go, I don't know, to this place and find it. So I did, came back and beat Godskin Duo and then found I was kind of relying on it. I did start a Confessor and I got this spear that has a, a frenzy attack on it on the weapon art. And I'm starting to think that that one might also be broken. So my conclusion is that the weapon arts I've used are either useless or so strong they're broken. So I like the idea. <laughs> oh there is no in between. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure that uh, I'm not sure that I've found one that that suits my playstyle and doesn't feel like okay, well now this is the only attack I'm using for the rest of the game. I had um spinning slash for a little bit in my first like three parts I think, and I liked it. It was a very chill weapon art of just. You do like two attacks quickly. It's like it's like worth two light attacks or even three for the cost of time of two. It's like that, and it's just like that's yeah, right. I think an issue the Ashes of War start to showcase about Souls games is that it, it's a fairly long running one, and it's part of the DNA of why they didn't focus on the combat in the first place. Uh, attacks don't provoke any response from the enemies, and there's no <laughs> difference in how they affect the enemy. Mm -hmm. So the properties on attacks are often completely void, other than their speed and uh, their damage, or maybe a status effect if they apply them. And there are Reach other games sometimes but... that uh, you Sorry, have comparisons for for this. Um, I know it's, it sounds ridiculous, but Killing Floor is like one of the things they really took care with in that game was how enemies will react to where you hit them on the body, and it'll do something to them as a result. Mm and they always react to the impact of your weaponry. I think Monster Hunter is probably a closer Monster example. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. In that regard. Yeah. Monster Hunter and uh, Vermintide as well is a lot like that. Rags was talking about that I, earlier. I just compared to other action games in general, because other action games, they are tackling this sort of thing, but their attacks, the attacks in them, allow you to do different things generally, which that doesn't... As Matthew Matosis put it again, this doesn't necessarily mean you should be able to juggle hollows. I don't know. I don't know that anyone's arguing that. It's just that <laughs> with the way things currently are, the more action elements are leaned upon, the more it becomes clear that a lot of your options don't really mean much beyond how it feels to swing your weapon, which is more important than you might think. But it's it's not making a substantial difference in how things play out. So I found a lot of my weapon art selections were eh. I'll take the one that does a lot of damage, I or the one say, that gives me a dash. Seem to me like it really fits in with the idea that we're trying to get more 
spectacular and cinematic, these these sword art yes. things. Like, how cool is that spin that I do? And I'm like, it is pretty cool. It's like the the stomp, that's pretty awesome. The blood slash, so they're all really like, ooh. Flashing. Yes. Any okay. sense of a grounded aesthetic for the Soul series is like long dead by now. It's actually really <laughs> funny that you mentioned that because I was just about to say one of the weapon arts I had the most fun using was in the broadsword that you spawn with when you start a confessor. The weapon art there is you, you hold like the, the left trigger and you assume square a up? stance. Yeah, yeah, square up. Oh, square up's and then, good. <laughs> well, then that's the thing. And then the, the R2 attack, once you're in that stance, is you can, you kind of can charge it to a degree and release it when you want. And it just does insane posture damage. So yeah, if somebody's kind of blocking feels like, that, yeah. they're fucked. Yeah, and it's like okay, this is kind of cool because it's like it's not a very crazy attack. It's basically just like a different heavy attack, and it's one that's a little bit hard to land, but it also is really good at staggering enemies. So it's I don't know. I found that I was I was using it quite a bit until I started because I was making a confessor, investing more in faith stuff. So scaling strength didn't really make any more sense. So, but but I did like that weapon art quite a bit. I feel like a lot of weapon arts seem to be more for PvP builds. Kind of like, seems that way. It does feel that way. A lot of the like um the twin blade ones, you do like a spinny spinny, and they don't really do that much poise damage to regular enemies, but in PvP they actually stagger you. So you can actually get your entire spinny spinny move off. Mm. But regular enemies in the game are just like oh, now I'm gonna stab you and I'm gonna stagger you yeah. out of your move instead ha <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was cool and all what you did but I'm gonna stab you now I played yeah, with a few um there was the um <laughs> barricade shield was great for whenever the bullshit bear showed up <laughs> um yeah. cause like you know you could just press it and then for like 8 seconds your shield is basically like indestructible and like they can't get through to your stamina uh so it's it's great for enemies that just spam attacks a whole lot i used that for a little while um until i got a little bored with it uh the other one the one i'm currently using right now is the golden parry for my brass shield it's basically like the parry strength of like a buckler shield but like long distance so you don't even have to be close to the enemy to parry them whoa yeah, it's 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 pretty nuts. Uh, Bloodhound step is great. I like using that for yeah. uh, my. I, I like the claw weapons, and it actually comes with the Bloodhound step. So I like you like using the Bloodhound step for like a nice little close in bleed type. That's pretty great. Um, <laughs> seppuku. Who doesn't like seppuku? Mm -hmm. I no annoyingly, one alive. Annoyingly, <laughs> a lot of the weapons I used had hard baked in ashes of war, which were pretty alright, but. Well, I guess I was frustrated that some of the ones that had, you know, locked in Ashes of War, it was just the same as another Ash of War, but with a slightly different effect. Like Moonveil is just the katana's unsheath, but it fires projectiles, mm -hmm. which in effect just means it's the same thing, but it deals a billion damage. I experimented <laughs> with a few of them. Like I liked Spinning Slash, which is, or not Spinning Slash, Sword Dance. Uh, it's one where you like dash forward with the weapon, do a quick couple of swings, and then you can do a third follow up. It was nice to have that kind of dash in effect. But the problem I ran into with most of them is probably to do with how broken katanas are, actually, um, or their weapon art being too good, because all of them were just slower and did less damage. So I had no real reason to want them. So I was just getting less damage, and on a slower animation, for no real gain in any direction. For a really long time, I was using a uh, Bloodhound's Fang. It's a. I used a, that a lot early game as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that really was. Cool it's an extremely good weapon, and its weapon art does a ton of damage. It's got like a do inerrant dodge in it. I used that for a really long time, so I didn't get to use Ashes of War too much until later on when I decided to mix things up. That's so a, that's a really good weapon art. Um, <laughs> that's a thing, actually. That's worth pointing out. They pumped the damage that weapon arts do in this game. Yeah, they I, did. I, I say the katana one does a lot, but all of them do a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the katana one just has the advantage of being super quick. Uh, and I'm I'm not certain how I feel about that, because it feels like it makes it very possible to 
not really cheese bosses, but you know, you just you spam your weapon at them and it does a billion damage per hit. <laughs> Staggers and, them. Uh, well, yeah. the the risk with that isn't so much making it so that you have a tool that's that powerful, but it it makes you not want to use your standard attacks as much. Yeah, because that's my... kind of what I was thinking with the hoarfrost stomp. It it it's not so much that it was there, and it's like, ah, well, if I want a better experience, I should just not use this. It's like, well, if I've got a minute to launch a heavy attack at an enemy, I can either swing my sword by pressing R2 or the right trigger or press the left trigger and do twice as much damage for a little mm -hmm. bit of mana. I think related to that is part of the problem with them being so powerful is it doesn't feel, it's not a good kind of powerful to me because it doesn't feel like they're enabling me to do anything that I couldn't do before. They're, they're not giving me access to a new kind of tool. They're giving me access to a bigger damage button. I mean the the current speed runs or the the one I guess they won't really be used anymore now since, since the nerf but the speed runs right now literally just have a, an offhand with royal knights resolve so yeah. you buff yourself and then in your main hand you have the icicle thingy that gives you horfrost stomp yep and so you, you buff yourself, and then you stomp, and then you buff yourself, and then you stomp, and you can like three shot most bosses. It's okay. Now the speed runs are all about abusing mimic tier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, it's funny uh, because he got nerfed, but nope. I I've been mimic watching someone good. try and route the all remembrances speed run and figure out wow. what the fuck is good after everything gets nerfed, and he, he reckons it is just it's just the mimic tier abusing a spell. Because he has infinite Probably. FP. Which is... Apparently, uh, Predator said earlier that the the behavioral changes that they did is apparently that they won't use the L2 as often anymore. So they will be That's more of a swinging. A yeah. So they'll be more swinging now, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's true, I don't know what his source for that was, but that's what he said. Yeah, um, I um, I uh, exploited a bit of a uh, imbalance with the Erd Tree Shield. Did you? Are you aware of the uh, the imbalance that was in the Erd Tree Shield that got mega nerfed? Nope. nope. Oh, so, the exploit. Um, yeah. Yeah, there was an Ur so there's an Erd Tree Shield that you can get from one of the twenty fucking tree sentinel bosses. There's the two up top of that golden ramp. Uh, one of them will drop the Erd Tree Shield. And mm -hmm. so what this sucker does is it's supposed to be used to counter spells that hit you. So it's like a reflector. Oh, it turns sure, whatever yeah. hits the shield into like this golden blast of death. It's oh, really right. cool. Is, is, is that the machine gun thing that, that people were talking <laughs> yeah, about? I think, that's what, I think that's what they're calling it. Yeah, okay. I discovered it by accident when I got poisoned uh, <laughs> trying to fight some flowers. I was trying to reflect. I was trying to see what happens if I could like reflect maybe some Scarlet Rot. And then I realized... I fired off a blast before I even uh, before that thing even hit me. So I kept hitting it, and apparently being poisoned was enough to just fire this thing off whenever I wanted. Oh, damn. <laughs> so it's all like this thing does massive damage, and while you're doing the uh, while you're doing the blast, you still count as blocking. So even if you, you could sit there and you could blast this thing over and over again, and if something tries tries to hit you, nope, you've just blocked it too. So there would be instances where there would be like spam bushes because I'm so fucking tired of the spam bushes at some point. It's like, oh, look, there's 20 gargoyles just up this hill. Screw this. I'll light myself on fire and shoot these things. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a spell to, there's a spell to literally light yourself on fire, and that counts too. So I would do that whenever I see the spam bush, but I, I restricted myself. I didn't use it on bosses. Too cheap. Too cheap. Didn't use it on bosses. But spam bushes, I didn't have any quarrel. I just want to address something I saw in chat, uh, which was someone saying they thought like doing more damage with a weapon art was like the point, so don't really get the criticism. The point is that there's this system in place that allows you to swap between all of the different weapon arts to, you know, pick whichever one you might you most want to use or whatever. Uh the problem with this being the choice doesn't actually impact a lot because they're so similar in how they actually play out in gameplay because there's no real new properties on many attacks in this game. So the actual choice doesn't really mean a whole lot beyond, I guess I'll just slap on whichever one does the most damage quick, uh, the quickest. 
Well, I mean, they also changed the the scaling of your weapon, like depending on which ash you would you attach to your weapon. So I I mean I actually I learned this the hard way. I was handicapping myself because I had a holy ash of war on my greatsword that was kind of the only one I had. Like it was the only one I could attach to it. So I was like, okay, I might as well make it a holy greatsword. Why not? And then didn't realize until later that I'd, I'd been handicapping my sword because then it started scaling on faith and I was doing a strength build. So that, that's actually <laughs> that's actually kind of why I ended up switching to the cold great sword because it scales on strength still. But hmm. Well, the, what's cool, what's kind of weird is the game does, like, if you're first into the game and you're not familiar with the ashes, you'll realize if you try to put an ash on, you notice it, like, screws the scaling up. So you think that putting mm-hmm. the ash will inherently screw the weapon up. But what it doesn't tell you is you could just set it to standard and it won't do that. <clears throat> so it's like it doesn't communicate itself too particularly well in this regard until you've tried it out. Also, I don't think did it ever tell you that ashes were an equip unequip thing? I don't remember how that was communicated because it was because for so a while I thought you once you used them, they were lost. So I was like afraid to use any. I remember having that inclination. I can't remember if it was well founded or if it was me just being paranoid or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, well, I think when when you understand Souls games for a while and you know that the, certain items are like limited, you start to think, well, that's probably the direction they're going, right? Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until like I watched, like I decided to just watch somebody <laughs> else like put on that ash and see what it does before I realized, oh wait a minute, he just unequipped the fucking thing. God damn it! I was afraid for nothing. <laughs> I was actually going to say a possible segue there into um, just a general topic of handholding or lack thereof hmm. in the in the game. Thoughts on because uh, obviously that's a big topic surrounding the game. I like how hands off a lot of it is. Um, maybe systems like that though, having not not necessarily a tutorial, but um, an in like a codex that you could go into in the menu to be like, hey, how does weapon scaling work and Things like that, I think, would be handy. But I sort of like that stuff like the quest logs are not really present. It's more just this is a world that you you can go explore and you can kind of remember where people are and go talk to them. And if you've got a, an, an option for dialogue other than buy or sell something from this person, that's probably something you can click to advance a side story and the, or a, a side quest and then investigate it further from there. And I think it, it suits really well in this open world format, more so than in the other souls games for the most part, because you can, you can fast travel around pretty easily and it's not like, okay, well I see the onion Knight guy here. And if I might not ever see him again, or I might see him around that corner, who knows? But um, I, I do like that. It's the anti Ubisoft game. Actually, it's funny. Fringy had earlier brought up uh, breath of the wild and, I, I used to actually think it was always kind of cringe that every time a new open world game came out, all the mainstream game journalists would, uh, you'd know in their preview coverage, the words like Breath of the Wild would be written at least once. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is this is one of those games that it actually, it's impossible to kind of not compare it to Breath of the Wild because they're both the inversion of the Ubisoft cluttered map format of the, like the Ubisoft map or like an Assassin's Creed game, a Far, Far Cry game, those it's the maps loaded with icons that are things for you to do. Whereas the map screen in both Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild are the inverse of that. They're empty and you need to explore to fill them with stuff. And I, I really like that design for an open world because I think it actually justifies it as opposed to just being, hey, this game's huge and it'll take you 60 hours, even though there's probably about six hours of story content and then a bunch of busy work, which is what I find most open world games boil down to. Well, this I, meme got made, and I assume that I have to bring it is up it now. Is it the Ubisoft HUD meme? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was great. <laughs> I want to ask, best. how far does hand-holding extend? Also, because I think that these games have a definite idea on what they think should be and shouldn't be handheld uh, for, the, for the player. We all know this. They have overt tutorials on some stuff, and then some mm-hmm. things that seem pretty important, that they just don't give a fuck if you figured it out or not. Um, uh-huh. Something that I... Don't know if this counts as within this uh, sort of uh, topic is something that I'm not a fan of. Is like you pick up a thing and it's like it will increase your attack. It's like, okay, but how much? It's <laughs> like, well, you're gonna have to look at your stats before you equip it and then after you equip it. And it's like that's fucking annoying. But okay, 
<laughs> and that pretty much goes for everything. And so it's just like, why do they do it, make it that way? And it's like, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Do they, want the, <laughs> do they want the flavor text to be shorter on these items that you equip instead of just saying increases attack stat or increases, you know, strength stat by plus five or it will increase right hand weapon by blah, 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 if it blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, I don't know. Um, stuff like that annoys me, like how non-specific a lot of the stat increases are when mm -hmm. they are super important. As well as, I'm pretty sure there are vaguer ones, like um, making you I mean, good at you something. You have all the talismans, right? Yeah. Like the, I think I, I looked up one talisman because I thought it, it sounded super interesting, and I was like, hmm, maybe I should do a build around this. Oh, I know what you mean. The poison yeah, it one. was like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, if something is affected by poison or rot in the vicinity, then you gain a damage buff. And I was like, ooh, wow, maybe I can do something with daggers or some shit. And I looked it up, and you get a 15-second buff of 10 AR. Like, at, <laughs> 10 at AR? Yeah. Not I'm even, just like, not 10%, just 10. No, just 10. 10. Like, you, your damage goes <laughs> up by 10 points per what? attack. <laughs> wow. And I'm like, what? That's garbage. You can't even have the equivalent of an extra hit in the time that that would run out. That yeah, and the, and the thing is, like, it, you have to reapply oh. it for you to get the buff. Do so you get the buff for 15 seconds and poison lasts for what, like two minutes? Yeah, so it's what? like you better hope there's another enemy that's got enough health to withstand your blows, right? Yeah. So, so that went from being like, ooh, wow, how interesting to, well, no, nope, that's shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, not to put us off topic, I, sh I should have brought this one up earlier. Uh, we were talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate it, man. I hate it. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> That's a good one. Step forward, do a half swing, then freeze for half a second. Actually, swing. Um, I yeah. like Theo's idea of there being a codex of systems. I think it'd be it'd be nice to like Mark's oh, that, idea, wasn't it? Me. Was... Oh, was it? I'm yeah, sorry. It's, I, I... I, it's okay. I wasn't going to. Okay, I've already <laughs> patented the idea. <laughs> but uh, no, the codex would be a good idea for things like um, I, I think a lot of people would did have trouble with understanding scaling, like what heavy meant, what decks, you know, what this and that meant. So it's like that'd be nice uh, incantations like what the hell are bestial incantations, you know, uh, how to how to cast spells in the first place. But don't do it in like uh, menus that pause the game or nothing like that. Just yeah, have a codex. Yeah. That's, yeah, so just if you're work. at a if you're at a point of grace and it's like, hey, what I, I don't really understand how this spell I just got works. Like, mm -hmm. hey, it, it basically just uh, things that can go into more depth than just the item descriptions. Yeah, but, um, according to chat, there is a codex. No, yeah. is there? Um, is there? Let me. Check. They're not talking about the wiki. There's a bunch of stuff in I, the. I, I, I doubt they're talking I mean, about the wiki. But you're not. Yeah, I was about to say you're not just talking about no, no, there, extra there's, life's there's wiki stuff. or something. There's that stuff is. in the inventory. Uh, hang something. on. So if you go all the way to the right, you get like, I don't even know, it's just info. It just says info on, on the right. And then you have like a bunch of stuff like about Guidance of Grace, about the map, about round hole table, sorceries, oh, really? all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was my bad then. I just didn't notice. I forgot. So I'm happy someone brought it up in chat because I completely <laughs> forgot about that because I never looked at it. Cool. And I was like, oh, right. Yeah, you can actually look at this. My assessment is game's pretty good in this regard. There's just a couple of tweaks I would like them to make, and they haven't made them yeah. since all the way back in their first attempt. They mm. just refuse to tell... They way prefer to tell me, attack increase. And I'm like, fucking troll. Just, uh, <laughs> exactly. just, just save me the time of unequipping and equipping the things all the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> also, make sure the fucking PC release can actually uh, run well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's have, awesome. you, yeah have any of you had the invisible, like, invisible enemy glitch where the enemy <laughs> no. don't appear? No, that's new. What happens? So they just, oh, you can't see them well, at all? When I was playing, uh, whenever I jumped on my horse, that seemed to cause the problem. My horse would disappear and the enemies would disappear too. What? Like, they're still there and they can still Wait, hit me. What? Yeah, yeah dude. Like, cause, mine yeah. was a different problem. My horse, I would mount my horse, and then my horse would run off without me. I'd freeze in the air and die. Yeah, you freeze hard. in the air. You'd be <laughs> there for like ten that. seconds. <laughs> and then... Yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. that the issue that I had was something to do with like draw distances, or I don't know what it was, but it was specifically if I jumped on my horse and then I like went running, the enemies and the horse would disappear. So it would just be my guy sitting on air. <laughs> and I couldn't see the enemies, and I think I nearly died once. That was kind of annoying. So hopefully, mm. it's not a persistent 
problem though it sounds like i'm the only person who had that issue here yeah that's, I really, that's pretty um, unique i came across like zero bugs except a couple graphical glitches and i had about 10 freezes in total something like that which yeah, made, I, I, I think I, someone I, would be like wow that's a lot and i'd be like I had a hundred hours, so no. <laughs> no matter... I had a micro stuttering issue. PC, I, I don't know why it would be my computer's fault that the enemies disappear, but maybe it is. <laughs> no, that's that's probably a glitch. Have you uh, considered getting good? Yeah. 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 yeah, you would have good. Yeah. <laughs> less bugs in your game. Well, I know that I know that the performance <laughs> issues were worse when I was streaming it because once I stopped, oh my, it yes. running better. But mm. I don't know that that has any I... bearing on the enemies disappearing. <laughs> I'm still getting no. a, a decent chunk of micro stuttering, if we're calling it that, um, throughout yeah, and both I've streaming a, and non-streaming. Mm -hmm. And I've had a crash once per session. It doesn't ever do it again. Whenever I relaunch the game, it never happens again. But I can always expect at least one crash per session. The game takes for fucking ever to actually close as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that is a bit of a weird thing. I've Since that blasting that. menu yeah. music at me. Fucking... <laughs> I, like I I'm trying that... to use Microsoft Word. Damn, how did we get into this? We were talking about hand-holding. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'd like to come back to hand-holding quickly. Let's do it. There's, there's a I, would say it's, I would say it's fine. I say, like, the hand-holding becomes uh, an issue because games have been doing that for so fucking long that I think people have become, like, attached to hand-holding. It was really weird how, like, a friend um, of mine was playing, and they're like, I don't want to progress the story, so where should I go? I'm like, well, just... I don't just know, dude, explore. <laughs> like, just yeah. go, explore. Uh, I mean, hand-holding is by degrees. I'm sure we would all agree that there's like... Yeah, very there's hand-holding in this game. Hand yeah, there's a specific in, there's a specific uh, thing where perhaps you might argue they could use more, and FromSoft would maybe agree with that assessment, and that's character quests, because of the way Souls character quests work and interact with an open world. Because, you know, you talk to them at a place, you do a thing, and then they go somewhere else in the world, right? Yeah. That's, now, fine. that's fine in a world like Dark Souls, usually, because, you know, it's small enough that they can reliably expect that you'll probably run back into them, or they're relatively easy to find. That's a bit less okay in a game as fucking enormous as Elden Ring, especially mm -hmm. when NPCs are not giving any any like indication of what their intentions are. You speak to them, and then they're going to go somewhere, but maybe I like yeah, they I have, right. in, in the in the new patch though they have added something to facilitate yeah. making that more easy because now when you highlight a site of grace on the map it will say which NPCs are there or like in that area it, mm. it, so you can just if you know it, who you're looking for map, you can yeah. yeah I think it's Millicent that just says oh I'm gonna go off to my quest now bye. <laughs> Bye. Like, okay. Goodbye. I'm, nice. I'm such a like, hey, that's pretty immersive, right? Because you like, wouldn't know where they're going. The, the, a, this, yeah, that's true. I'm such a bad at housewife with these sorts of games that I just never. With this one, I was like, I ain't gonna even bother learning people's names. Whatever. If I see you, I see you. I'll talk You're to you. If I talk to you, but yeah, I'm I'm just running yeah. through killing stuff. That, all right. That's how I tend to treat it. Uh, and it was fine with Solaire because you know Solaire just follows your progression. It's fine to an extent with Siegmeier because Siegmeier. He, well, he's fine up to a point, and then he disappears down to Blight Town after Anna Londo, and you wonder what the fuck he's doing down there. Really? No, I didn't yeah. know that's where he went. <laughs> yeah, after I think it's after Anna Londo. It's certainly after Sen's Fortress. He goes back to Firelink, and then after Firelink, he goes down to Blight Town because he's heading to the Demon Ruins, and then he dies in Ash Lake, which is a secret zone. So I know, know that. Yeah. Yeah. But the, and, that isn't doesn't he join a fight too? Or is it dark? Uh, no, that's yeah. the darkest three. No, there's the fight with the chaos eaters, which is like the the, the critical point in his quest line. Where if you talk to him, he, he's gonna jump down there, and he can either die. What in the fight you were or... supposed to wait for me? Oh well, <laughs> here I go. <laughs> you should have uh, waited. Found a similar <laughs> thing. Well, meanwhile, my comparison point, I guess, would be Alexander in this game. Because uh, he's just Siegmeier again, shamelessly. Uh, <laughs> he he's talking about I'm gonna go to the Festival of Combat. It's gonna be so cool. And then you go to the Festival of Combat because his progression leads him there. You find him in Gale Tunnel because he's he's looking for a way to uh, Radan Castle or whatever. Um, and he goes down there. He's like, oh no, the door's shut. And then you let him through and you have summon him to fight Radan or whatever. You have a chat with him and then he vanishes off to fucking Leonia. Yep. <laughs> Why the fuck am I going to be in Liania if I've done Kaled? Well, I have no reason to be there. 
So Apparently, they, his <laughs> quest line ends really strangely as well. I've heard they, it is they, they might have fixed that now since they added a bunch of stuff to NPC yeah. quests, but I don't know if he was a part of that. Um, I find a lot of the discussion cringeworthy when you have people who are just like, I've been playing the game for 20 hours and I haven't even found a boss. I'm like, okay. <laughs> how how nah, no, actively no avoiding content. <laughs> That's, that there's no way. <laughs> no, there are right. really? too many bosses somebody, in this game. Somebody shared that on like uh, there was this huge paragraph talking about how broken the open world is, how it makes no sense at all, and the one of the many complaints involved twenty hours of gameplay, and they hadn't come across any bosses outside of the initial one. And like the person just like I disregard everything you're saying after you said that. I'm just done. I, <laughs> I, uh, I played I mean... for like three hours and I encountered this like wolf dungeon. But there were a bunch of wolves in there, and then a wolf boss, and then the guy in the bridge. That was like after two hours. Yeah. Well, so yeah, this is the funny thing. Um, the bosses. If you watched my playthrough, if anyone did, I could totally have expected people would assume I would have been critical of it, but I really wasn't. I spent the first like four hours walking around the world without having talked to Tutorial Man. And so I didn't, oh, even, yeah. I, I didn't even get my horse. But like some people were like, what a fucking disaster, idiot. How do you miss blah blah? And I was like, no, guy, you don't understand. I'm, I'm having Why? fun. Sorry, help. I'm having fun. Please <laughs> let me have fun. I got my horse when I went to a dun. Uh, I sat down, and then the lady was like, "Oh, well, hey, yeah, I'm so gonna help you." I think what they intend you. is for you to walk forward, and you see the guy, and he tells you the basic idea of where you're going, which is the castle. On your way to the castle, you'll get to the the church, sit there, and then she gives you your horse, and then further up, you get your ashes before you get to the castle. I think, and then they want you kind of to kill a few things on the way, get to Murgit, he fucking annihilates you, and then you go open world. I think that's what they were looking for people to do. I immediately okay. got out of the opening building, was curious about the building itself. I was like, I wonder what's behind it, just in case. What are they hiding? Yeah, I went then, in the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I saw yeah, the I landscape, the and I was like, I'm just gonna go wander. Here I go. I think, yeah, what happened with me was I walked out and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go the opposite way that I think you want me to go. I'm going to go backward and see what's that way. And that felt fun. See, I I pretty much moved right towards Stormvale and fought Margit. I think by the time I got there, I was level 17. And then I, I had one of those. I don't know if you guys ever have this happen to you in the Souls games, but the first time you fight a boss, you do better than your next 20 yep. attempts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, every time, so every I had time. against Margaret, I had that beginner's <laughs> luck one where I got him down to about 30% health. And I'm like, OK, I can do this. And uh, yeah, I was there for about three hours, I'd say. <laughs> Just like I got him though, and then felt like I was way over leveled because the runes I got from him, I think, boosted me from level 17 to level 26 or something like I was like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> it, it's nice though that he's designed in a way that it's it was possible for me to beat him even if it wasn't easy but uh, yeah it is interesting though what having an open world game as compared to like the, oh. the closed world of, of Dark Souls what I just highlighted about what I think the pathway they wanted players to typically go for through a little bit of pushing, I really don't have much of reference outside of that, that kind of direction in the game. Outside of that, I feel like they really were just like, you can fucking go anywhere and do anything you want in any order, really. We'll make it so that there is technically a pathway, I'd imagine someone could probably build one in terms Graces, of... Graces, point you. Yeah, oh, well, um... yeah, you, yeah, you've got... Well, so what I'm saying is like... Some of them aren't even, you don't want to, like, you don't want to go to Murgit, is it Murgit? Margit. Margit. First. The Feld um, Omen, right? Was yeah, like, I say you don't want to. You totally Feld can if, if you think you can take him, of course, but, like, they direct you to him first, and it's like, you, you don't want to go there, you want to go elsewhere, wherever that may entail, like, a couple of catacombs <laughs> or caves or whatever else, to build up some levels. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say is, yes, they have the, the vague idea, because well, we, we got a general direction if you need to collect the shards. Right, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I I don't think this game has, and I think this is just a consequence of the open world. It doesn't feel like it has the same direction as a lot of the other Souls games in terms of a linear world of Undead Burg is the first place you're supposed to go to in Dark Souls. At least that's the way it comes across. It's like you could go other yeah. places, but that's going to be very fucking dangerous for you. In this, I think it's the initial continent you're on, um, and then you're supposed to go. The, yeah, Limgrave, then Leonia, then... I don't know if you're supposed to go to Altus or Kaelid first. 
I and don't know. You can kind of find the quote unquote intended path, I guess, because uh, Metal and I uh, were messing around with like a, this interactive map that they have on the wiki, I think, mm-hmm. um, where you can you can see where literally any item in the game is placed on the map. And then you can search for the, the smithing stones. And by searching like by the tiers, you can kind of see like, oh, so the tier four is this like at this part of the map right. and at this part of the map so you can kind of get a sense of okay so this is what they yeah that theme is the natural progression that's kind of what i was trying to say in terms of i think someone could build what there is like the thing that the developers were would be aware of by li- like mapping all that out but even to the point of mapping out boss health or boss rune counts you could probably mm. see where they're expecting a, a vague idea of where you'd go and I, and yeah. you know it's cool in the sense that it's like you could fight something that's a bit above you and then fight something that's way below you later, or you could fight them in the in quote unquote the correct order and face them all as you're growing as a strength of character. And there's nothing wrong with either of those experiences necessarily. The only thing is, when magnified to this level, and I'm almost turning this conversation into open world versus linear right now, um the the dramatic nature of like I just fought seventeen things in a row that I was out over leveled for, and then two guys in a row that were just so beyond me I had no chance. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That, that that's an issue, I suppose. It always came across to me in the opposite direction. You were under leveled. Nat- well, just by naturally playing the game, I was finding myself over leveled for things. That's why I was dissatisfied with Morgoth, and it's basically why the entire middle section of the game was ruined for me because nothing could even. I, I obliterated everything I ran into, and nothing could really cause any kind of trouble for me apart from an optional super boss that I fought. The Black Blade. I felt King. like that was a. You gotta similar... get less good. Get, get less good. Less good. <laughs> well, you wanna? You wanna? Oh yeah. We'll stop using it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Your skills, stop using it. Um, I had had a similar situation. It actually got to the point where I thought, maybe I'll just stop leveling at 110. And then I got to Snowland, where everything was bullshit. I'm like, okay, never mind, this game's um, not over yet. I guess that's (laughs) worth asking. What level did you guys beat the game at? 174, Uh, I think I was at, something like that. Like 126? Give me one second, I'll tell you. I'm currently 137. I'm not done yet. I'm. I don't know how far I am from done, but I, I can't imagine there's too much left. But I kind of I, like. I, I've kind of set a challenge for myself where I'm going to see as much of this game as I can before I play it, or before I beat it, because I don't think I'm going to pick it up again afterward. So it's all like enjoy it while it lasts. One. I don't have my game open, but I think okay. I'm like one forty ish or one thirty ish. Okay, I was about one twenty, one ten, I think, when I finished the game just curious about that in terms of how well they managed to get people to a roughly equivalent point or how mm. over leveled yeah or i had originally said that you can get i had originally said 110 because i wasn't um it looked like i was about to win and then i was far from it it's like okay <laughs> mm-hmm. never mind i think i think i was at about 106 when i got to millennia and then decided it was time to grind for a bit because Wow, I think I was about was... <laughs> I think I was about ninety for Melania, and then I I got like massive soul infusions from the next few bosses that took me <laughs> to the end. Yeah, I didn't grind per se, like you know, farming or anything like that. Yeah, it's just that I kept getting a whole bunch of souls, but rather than just blow it on like stones or shit I didn't need or whatever, to keep myself at one ten, I decided, nah, fuck it, I'll just keep leveling then. I I ask because I have kind of i guess weird relationship with open world games in that the it sounds like i'm complete opposite to most of you guys where the act of exploring without any directional purpose given to me to go in that direction beyond maybe find stuff is very taxing to me and i lose patience for it incredibly quickly like, i can see uh, where you're like coming it. from on yeah. that because i would say like having explored for this long I am very fatigued of the eco-friendliness going on. There is too yeah. much recycling going on, and it's wearing on me. It's it's actually to the point where I thought of saying, just fuck it, I'm going to complete the game now, I'm over this. But then, you know, I come back later, and I keep exploring, and now I'm stuck. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not going to complete it. I'm... So it's like, I can see exactly where you're coming from, because, you know, take too long, you can see a little too much recycling, and it can get boring. It's 
It's the recycling among uh, a bunch of other things. Because for me, by the time I was in Altus, I I couldn't do it anymore. I I just ran straight to Lanedale. I oh, I couldn't well, make well. myself. I couldn't make myself just run around on the vague promises of stuff to find anymore. Because make no mistake, there is always stuff to find, but it, it wasn't things that were engaging me, and I, I couldn't handle it anymore. I I knew I was missing Gelmir. I seen a pathway up there but i just i just wanted i wanted it to end i wanted to go feel like i had a reason to go in the directions i was going <laughs> it might seem like kind of a strange point but i sort of like that almost everything you find is not that big of a deal like 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 no reward in any one of the like mini dungeons that that you're around is like oh man this is this is the thing that's going to turn the game around for me or this is going to make me twice as strong as i was it's like oh here's a weapon that, I don't know, I can maybe use if I respec or something. Or, yeah, I just got some smithing stones. It's cool. And yeah, I, I, I kind of like that it's not like, oh, you, you have to do this one because it has the real valuable weapon. And well, da -da -da. I think you're right. You're right, but you're also mm. incorrect because sometimes it does have the real valuable one because Gale Tunnel, some random yeah. dungeon in the middle of nowhere, has Moonvale. <laughs> I, and to be fair, I don't. I never got Moonvale and didn't yeah. use any katanas, so... And Fuck it's me. not as if you need those things to like break the game wide open. That's mm. far from necessary. It, it's a Souls game. You just can use them if you want them. Um, it's oh, go ahead. Yeah, as, as I was just saying, like sometimes there is like a big cool weapon to find. Sometimes it's just smithing stones. And I do agree that it shouldn't be dramatically important in the grand scheme of things if I'm just going around doing a catacomb. Um. I think then it is probably time, since we're already almost there, to just talk about how does it fare as an open world game. For me, I, I normally don't really like open world games in same. the sense that we know them. Same. So I was pretty happy with this one because I didn't really want it to end. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm to that. Like, I how was... long have I been playing? 117 hours, and I'm not even. I don't think I'm even close to done yet. 150 for me started a new game plus run on PC and I've been streaming it on PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was just like, ooh, where's this going? It's like, oh shit, there's like a whole nother area I'm exploring. It's like, okay, but after this, I'm I'm done, right? Like I can go through oh, there's another area. Okay. Okay, <laughs> now for this um, main boss. Oh, I'm just gonna get teleported just, to this completely different area as well. It's like, oh Jesus. Okay. Just real quick. <laughs> so someone said, Are you not gonna talk about the horse then? It's like, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 subjects I've got left listed. So, oh <laughs> okay. Um, and we oh are boy. five hours uh, and 20 minutes in. The horse, the horse uh, nice, nice way to get around. I hate fighting on it. Well, we're on open world for now. We'll come back to the horse. Okay. <laughs> well, that's all I'm saying. I don't uh, have much to say at all about the horse. Oh, I have plenty to say about it. So, anyway, the hope of will. <laughs> I, uh, I'm world. pretty much lined up entirely with metal, and I think the this is going to be a big old subjectism for me because I just love. The way everything looks in this world, I, I yeah. really get a good sense of exploring places rather than just repeated assets. Um, yeah. Though I think if I were more cynical, or if someone were to show me how much everything is similar, maybe I could be changed on that. But I was just enjoying my time, especially mm -hmm. with the vista changes. Uh, oh yeah. There are some areas that are so impactful to me stylistically that I was just like, man, I'm just happy to be here. I don't care what loot <laughs> there is or what enemies there are. I'm just happy to be here. I like uh, it. <laughs> on that point, there are some like really cinematic, almost like you, you'll turn a corner and it seems like they they've just upped the render distance for that particular area where you'll see like a big fucking uh, building etched into a mountain or something, and you're just like, holy fuck, this looks actually cinematic, as if they pre-recorded but they didn't because you literally just turned the corner yourself for any shit i might give the open world which is mostly a personal thing i i cannot deny that the way they use their space is very impressive in places mm -hmm. they they do really well with the sense of scale because you can tell it's you know you know the view from firelink shrine where you've got these giant walls rising up all around you yeah. it felt like it felt like with that, it's like they want to make the full world, but they can't. And here, they're finally allowed. Okay, we can we can take the scale of Lordran, and we can just make that. We can make the entire thing. I was 
blown away by how there wasn't really anything I ever saw in the distance that I couldn't just walk over to. Yeah, mm -hmm. the uh, divine towers are the most impressive one. Of that for me, yeah, like, which is, which has always been, stuff. yeah, that's always been a staple of Souls, and then they like upped it to the nth degree on this well, one, Seth. So Dark Souls 1 gets appreciated for the fact that there are some areas where logistically you should be able to see other areas from there, and you can see they've attempted to recreate it as a background. And it's like, that's really cool, nice, but it's not actually there, it hasn't been loaded. Um, no. This game was like, matters, nah, we're going full chat on this. That, yeah. You see this yeah. over there? You can jump on this. The funny part <laughs> being uh, Dark Souls it. 2's, like... It can't, because there are places that are inside the current places that it can't make any fucking sense at all, so it's just like, oh. But it's complete go in its incompleteness. Oh. The, the first time, the hey, you first go time to that I went tower? into the underworld, I was like, oh no, is this some Dark Souls 2 shit where I went down into an elevator and somehow there's like a big world with a night sky under here, and then I was like, well, nope, it's not that. <laughs> And it quickly turned into like one of my favorite areas, just aesthetically. It looks I loved, so fucking um, cool down there. Nocron. It's just like, oh, yeah. like a death city, Christy. basically. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a creepy one. <laughs> I I thought what was crazy is when I realized that the shooting star after the Rodan fight actually just blew a crater yeah. into the world that revealed yeah. an entire other map underground. I was like, oh. Okay, this is this is what I'm doing today then. <laughs> oh, that was a really. I mean, we're kind of drifting into just talking about how much stuff there is in this game. But uh, I had started up a stream with the intention to just carry on with. Uh, I was talking to Ronnie, and she was like, "I need a thing," and I was like, "Yeah, I guess we can go get yeah. that thing." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "It's gonna be at that crash site," and I was like, "Yeah, okay." I went there, and then I was just like, "Wait." And it's just like, welcome to a whole city. And, and you're going to have to... I spent the whole stream just doing that. I was just like, well, side quests in this, or little tangential moments, or even just a small doorway can lead to enormous pieces of content. And you're just like, whoa. Um, <laughs> you can which, just miss it. You can just miss huge amounts of content if you don't Yeah, explore. I've missed yeah, so much give just by getting minor sidetracked. Mm -hmm. This game couldn't give less of a fuck if you didn't play all of it. It's just like, you do whatever the fuck you want. And you're like, wow. No. <laughs> hey, thanks, man. That's if you ever see a coffin up. by a cliff, check to see if it's an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, okay? <laughs> yeah, and Nocron, by the way, a... uh, reminded me of the DLC city in DS2. I was like, please don't be that shit. Just be good. <laughs> <laughs> remember that place, yeah. guys? Do you remember the torment? Never played the DLC in Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 didn't deserve that much attention. I'm DLC. pretty sure hmm. I did is that the one where is it um the fume night at the end of it um i can't remember no i think it's, no, the, it's like the queen of poison right. or whatever whatever she is well so it's the place funnily enough where fortia found the safety square <laughs> <laughs> did you guys know that i'm pr i'm pretty sure dark souls 2 had the highest metacritic score of every FromSoft game until elden ring came out did you know that Higher than Dark Souls 1 and 3 Beautiful. and Sekiro. Let's, let's talk and about Bloodborne let's talk about and the Demon Souls. Side. Let's, and let's talk about how games journalists don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Oh, we already yeah, know? Like okay. Elder, uh, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Demon Souls had an 89. I'm pretty sure Dark Souls had a 90. And then Dark Souls 2 had a 91. Dark Souls how? 2's biggest achievement is being Dark Souls' son. No. Yeah, no, no, no. Actually, Dark, yeah, Dark Souls had eighty nine, and then Dark Souls two got a ninety one, and then Dark Souls three, I think, got an eighty nine. That yeah. fucking game rides Dark Souls coattails hardcore. Yeah, what's Did you like get? the Ornstein fight? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we need to not start talking about the horrors of Dark Souls two because it'll, no. it'll be here for so long. Send Wait, H what bomber guy the one get. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bloodborne did better than Dark Souls 2. There you go. All right. Well, see, saying. Bloodborne... It got one point higher. Success, I think Bloodborne's success is kind of interesting because I will... I think I could almost entirely knock that down to the time it was released on, and being a PS4 exclusive at a time when there are hardly any games on PlayStation. So I honestly think that Bloodborne got a lot of people who never would have tried Dark Souls 3 <laughs> To be like, okay, well, this is the new big You might be thing. right about that, yeah. <laughs> I will also go as far as saying Bloodborne is just like, 
eldritch plus Victorian, like yeah. two, two so biggest. First, schools, first half, me first half's a Bram Stoker's I mean, book. Second half's a Lovecraft like it, book. It, it, yeah, it's just it's just the style of that game. Oh, so gorgeous. It's wonderful. But I mean, the biggest thing with that game was that it shields suck, right? So they took it away, and that was like there's, only, there's, there's two happen. shields in it. One of them's pretty much useless. One of them's a magic shield. Like it's not proof mm -hmm. of fucking anything. <laughs> yeah, but passivity, Mauler, no. engenders uh, passivity. There were people I, who were telling us in chat, like, you know, shield play, like, a gameplay could fuck Melania up. And I was just like, I, I, I don't use, I wasn't, I didn't shut up. <laughs> like, but, <laughs> but also, good that there's shield builds, because that's fine. It's not engendering passivity. I, I, all, I still kind of wonder, though, where Bloodborne would be on my, my hierarchy of which of the From games I like the most if it ran at like a proper frame rate because I, yeah. it still makes me sad that that one's stuck at struggling to sometimes hit 30 and it would like, definitely uh, be higher it. for me because that's yeah. one of my yeah. major yeah uh, it's on, honestly it's my biggest problem with it <laughs> i was yeah. like yeah i was like bloodborne's great but it kind of runs like trash oh, dude, amelia we'll plays a release. fucking five fps <laughs> like yeah G yeah give us a pc release and we'll talk I, I follow a Twitter account called uh, Bloodborne on PC, and just every day it posts as of uh, like March 19th, 2022, Bloodborne has not been announced for PC. And it's, <laughs> it's every, yeah. every single day. One day. It's, it's not okay. The frame rate is not okay. That's not okay. Some, some guy made like a, like a patch for it himself where yeah. he, he made it. Yeah, so Lance McDonald. Yeah, it might be yeah. him. He made it so he, you could play at 720 instead of 1080, and that unlocked the, the frame rate. Or uh, ma he managed to get the frame rate up to 60 FPS. Yeah, uh, with with a PS4 Pro running it at 720, and you need to like jailbreak or have like a dev kit PS4 yeah. and Pro in order to do it. But um, I got to admit, I, like, there was part of me that was like, should I go through what it takes to do this? Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, I never did, but I don't know. I'm like, kind of just he, hoping it he, comes out he on PC. Yeah, he, he shows some gameplay of the Amelia fight w when he makes her bleed, and it's just like, oh my god, that looks so good. <laughs> Dude, the game, <laughs> honestly, will look so much better if the frame rate was stable. Damn. And yeah. it'll, it'll play it's better, not even a, too. Like, yeah, exactly. I was about to say, it's all like it's not even just about looks. It's just that there's there's so much delay in the game, and I think that's because of the frame rate. That's what I always say to people. But like, there's kind of a meme on like the geeks and gamers streams that I'm like obsessed with frame rate. I'm just like, guys, you can't make the argument that you um, care about gameplay and not graphics, and then don't care about frame rate. I was about to say, how can, you, is... how can you not be obsessed with frame rate when you're a gamer? Uh, right. <laughs> big gamer got exposed. Big big gamer <laughs> words. You need your frame uh, oh, you can say gamer words in stream. I will frame, frame rate is a gamer like, word. Oh my god, you said it again. I will oh. happily sacrifice like graphics for FPS any mm -hmm. day. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I do too because I remember there. <laughs> in fact, I remember uh, in Neo when it came out on the PlayStation Four, uh, it had a graphics mode and a performance oh, yeah. mode. Yeah, and uh, it was, a lot it of was great to have the option. On, uh... A lot of the games that are coming out now on like PS5 and Xbox have that option performance and like fidelity, which is good yeah. that that exists. Yeah, it, it is good. I worry though that as this generation plugs along, that, that they'll the get Lord, rid of it. Yeah, Lord to be like, oh, okay, well, we're releasing The Last of Us Part Three, and it needs to look super real. We need to see the mm -hmm. the testosterone leaking out of Abby's well, cheeks. And... <laughs> I remember, uh, I remember when Uncharted Four was. God damn, that was a while ago. Actually, when Uncharted Four yeah. was coming out, there was a talk of aiming for sixty FPS across the board. Uh, and then when the game eventually came out, they went 30 FPS for cam, like, you know, single player and then 60 FPS for console. And it's just like, yeah, the reason why that happens Multiplayer? is because graphics, graphics sells. You you need them fancy schmancy graphics. And you want to know uh, what the reasons yeah. why that is? Because when you do television commercials like Celestial TV. Yeah, that's always going to be. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's they, they say, OK, better. we need the commercials because the normies don't understand frame rate, but they'll see really realistic looking high fidelity graphics and be Which like, oh, that must be a good video game. It's super interesting to me because Call of Duty was pretty consistently going for higher frame rates on consoles yep. back in the day. And I don't know that it's, Yeah, and I don't know that it's a surprise 
that Call of Duty ended up being so successful, perhaps in part because all of the games heavily prioritized running well uh, over graphics. At Did the I time. say Celestial TV? I, I, I meant Terrestrial. Sorry, I just saw sure on the chat. That. I think I'm right. about to say <laughs> Celestial, celestial TV. TV. Celestial I meant terrestrial yeah. TV. I'm just welcome, uh, welcome I'm to sitting. God TV. It's me, yeah. God. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, no, I, I frame rate super important, but it does feel like as each generation presses on, we just kind of give up. Yeah. Um, I remember that at the end of the PS3 360 gen, holy shit. Grand Theft yeah, Auto 5 runs rough. like utter dog shit on PS3. It, honestly, it's awful. It's, one of the points I made in the, the God of War video that I made, I made a video just going over every game in the God of War series, is that that is a series that seems like it is designed for the generation after the game's release. Because God of War 1 and 2 play better in the, the PS3 HD version that came out. Like the, the performance is much more consistent. The controls feel more responsive. It's just overall better. God of War 3 plays better in its PS4 remaster. And God of War 2018 played a lot better on PS5. And I mean, now it's on PC and you could run it at whatever you want. But I was like, man, it always seems like they're, they're making this series so that it looks absolutely incredible, but they're pushing the hardware that they're releasing it on like a generation ahead wow. of where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the problem <clears throat> is that for a, here's the the awkward truth is people care about graphics more than performance. They do because if they didn't, games wouldn't be made this way. They would all prioritize performance over graphics. Mm -hmm. There used to be a time when performance did matter more than graphics. PlayStation 2 generation, the amount of games that ran at like 60 frames per second, it's it would surprise you how many games were running, like Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Devil May Cry. A whole bunch of games were going for um, better performance over graphics. Something changed with the PS3 360 generation, though. I don't know what happened. Something changed. We uh, we pushed hardcore for graphics that were, like, beyond what uh, the hardware was ever capable of. Um, oh, this is why it's kind of nuts if you right go on. back and fire up games from the PS3 360 era on a decent PC now, if you get the Steam versions or GOG versions of them, they they look and play incredibly. Like, you're just like, wow. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember Spec Ops The Line being this awesome. Like, I, I thought Spe it was... Spec Ops The Line yeah, had, like, a good story, but, like, no, it actually looks pretty good in motion if you're running it on hardware that well, can handle it. So someone said lots of N64 catalog runs at 60, was something that became very I, apparent during the sixth... Yeah, that was the sixth. The sixth generation I, PS2, N64, Xbox. N64 only has one 60 FPS game. It's uh, f That's what I... Yeah. yeah, like, I actually didn't think that that was the case because it was, it was the gen after that that it was like, okay, we passed, like, the very beginnings of 3D. We're now into, like, proper 3D and we can try and push that there was a uh, there were a lot of innovations at that time in terms of hiding loading screens and um just real yeah like really pushing performance but then something changed. Do you guys remember that Killzone two pre rendered uh that like might have been that actually might have been the thing the, the thing that did it because everyone was like oh my god that looks like real life. well it was that it was Motor Storm and the thing is you look at those now it's still kind of beyond what can be achieved in real time um. But it's like, shit, you put that into people's minds that that's what we're going for in terms of graphics well beyond what even the PS4 can do. Mm. Um, you just end up in this problem where you have to push so hard for graphics that um, it's just beyond what the console can do. When and, and the reality is that like most people are pretty chill with that because if they weren't, it wouldn't happen. Um, I think people, people like graphics. I don't necessarily think that people are okay with it. I think it's just easier for companies to sell their game if it looks amazing when yeah, they're you advertising. Can't have a, well, well, we can't you have can't really like screen go screen go screen and rates. say like, oh, this game plays at 120 FPS perfectly. Like that doesn't really sell as well as showing like a really I mean, high graphic picture. I think that's video. still indicative of a bottom up problem that it is easier to convince people to buy a game because of how good it looks without any consideration for how well it plays. I would also or go as far as saying there are plenty of Bloodborne players that are like, oh, it's such a good game. You're like, what about the FPS? And they'll be like, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They <laughs> yeah. don't even know what, what you're what, talking about. What, what does that matter? Human beings can only see in 30 oh, wow. FPS. Wow. And then you deep brain uh, out. I, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but instantly me, me, when I hear that. 
Miyazaki actually, when he was talking about Bloodborne, I think he he uh tried to defend the 30 FPS option, saying that it was like better for action. Fuck, I don't want to miss. I just remember that there was a quote from him about Bloodborne. Bloodborne frame rate. Let me see if I can find it. This um, is gonna be back for Miyazaki. <laughs> well, well. So I guess the thing is, is that I don't even know if it was like a decision that he gets to make. Ah, uh, all right. Okay, so. He hopes that you will be kind with Bloodborne's frame rate. <laughs> okay, that's uh, so me kind. kind. So, so uh, obviously, whatever we can do within the technical limitations, while making sure we deliver the best thing possibly uh, we possibly can for Bloodborne. And I understand that there are many voices uh, saying, "Why aren't you running at sixty FPS?" And I get it, but at the same time, we're not here to make excuses for why we can't do it. This is where we are. The reality is it's running and it's the best of what uh what can offer for Bloodborne today. Uh I ooh, let me see if I can find the Oh, here it is. So um <clears throat> Oh no, it wasn't him, it was a producer. A Bloodborne <laughs> producer said um said uh Oh god. Holy <laughs> shit. There was some so he said there was some miscommunication in that particular QA in which the subtle nuance was misunderstood. Um. Well, oh no, no, no! The original story. So this is what was said. We we'll get there. We we'll get there. I sorry. It's <laughs> getting just, closer. Um, he, he's uh, I, the the producer said uh, that from the beginning. Quote: We weren't targeting sixty FPS because it's not first person shooting. It's an action game. Oh, that was the original mm. quote. Whoa. Um, how do you yeah, develop games and say that? I don't know that there is any game except maybe South Park, the stick of truth and the fractured <laughs> butthole that has ever benefited from having a lower frame rate. I don't know that it's, I don't know what that means for it, that it's better that you've got less information coming to you. <laughs> I, well, I think is, you can um, even probably make the argument the South Park games, if they were running at 60, they might actually end up looking better than the show. Well, that's the thing. What, oh, Stick of Truth yeah. is running at 60. It's just the animations The animations. Aren't. Are, yeah, right, right. Yeah. That's so right. it's still 60. Are... But they just well, kept just... it down to low animations on the ass animation assets to make it look like the show. The, uh... The, there, something that I found really frustrating about the discussion, I remember last... I don't know if it happens anymore because of performance options and stuff, but, um... The PlayStation 4... And the PlayStation 3, like the PlayStation 2, were more than capable of running games at 60 FPS, just at lower graphics. That's mm. it. Like there there is no there is there is no console that is going to become incapable of achieving something. Um you know, like post PS2. You can you can achieve a level of fidelity that will give you 60 FPS. The, the question targets. is whether you feel like it, whether you want to make that decision um for it's a game the, it's the priorities of the fidelity targets and i think Absolutely. that nintendo's first party games for the most part are pretty decent with this nintendo with the, uh, the, the, right sad, this. the sad exception being breath of the wild which like i think has the yeah. bloodborne problem of this mm. game's really good but <clears throat> man does it run like crap and but <laughs> when you have things like mario kart and uh, smash brothers even mario odyssey they all run at 60 even though they're on the switch which is significantly less powerful than my phone so like yeah I it's, mean, it's it's about your priorities nintendo tends to prioritize a higher frame rate for the sake of like uh gameplay it's super important uh, and it is important because when people say that i can't see it, it's like well that's not true but even if that <laughs> was true you can you can <laughs> feel the difference yeah, you, um, you're getting twice the amount of visual information to react to, and the input exactly. lag is half as long. So mm -hmm. no matter what, it will make the gameplay better, whether you're perceiving it or not. And, you know, I, I suppose the important point to address would be, well, why don't we always push for then like 120? But at that point, it's just about feasibility. Most people's TVs only display 60, uh, 60 hertz refresh yeah. rate. Mm -hmm. you know, like <laughs> my my answer to that would be why indeed. Let's let's well, do why, it. Let's go for one twenty. Push even further. Go for one twenty. I guess it's just because like there's very few films or television shows that are uh, that are more than twenty four frames per second. So yeah, well, and I mean, and for live action, that's the it's always the debate well, that comes for something up. We might get watched, yeah. you know for something yeah. you watch it doesn't matter because I'm not interacting with it. When I watch it, it's fine. When I'm playing it, 
you definitely feel it. Like, it's definitely something you feel when you play games on PC. It's like, I want to play Uncharted 4. Holy shit. Like, god al- damn. Also, when you see live action footage above 24 frames a second, it looks it looks fake. Like, it kind of ends up looking it like a reality show. Serious. Like, yeah. It's Well, I think it's because reality shows do, uh, do yeah, display yeah. it higher rates. Uh, and uh, sports often do as well. But there's, there's just an element that it pulls you out of, say, like a, a cinematic experience. Did anyone ever wow. see the the hobbit in uh in the the high frame rate modes in the in the theaters i don't think they ever released them with that but what i found with that is it made any dialogue scene look ridiculous but then when it like in the second one when you'd see smaug he'd look really good because it, it kind of removes a layer of uncanny valley and one layer of uncanny valley between you and live action actors, I think makes things look more cinematic and a little, a little more dreamy, a little more like a movie. But when, then you see a, a computer animated character there and they have that little bit of unrealism to it. So if you remove that layer of uncanny valley from that and, and up the frame rate on it, computer animated characters can end up looking more real than they did at a lower frame rate. And that's kind of why I think video games tend to look a lot better in, um, higher frame rate modes than not. So there's something interesting in chat. Someone said, I worked on Need for Speed for PlayStation 1. We shipped at 30 FPS, but we all played Dotona and love 60 FPS. Yeah, I imagine that a lot of the time the decision is like beyond... Marketing, the, probably, there are, there publishers. Are like broader, well, yeah, broader objectives that need to be achieved. Um, like with uh, with Battlefield, graphics is always a big push. With like Naughty mm-hmm. Dog games, it's always a big push. Um, in fact, pretty much all of Sony's first party games make a big push for graphics. Nintendo, I guess, has an advantage in that their games are never trying to be cutting edge. So like there is no yeah. expectation there of delivering. Um But I mean, I do want we will end this tangent shortly, but just one more thought I had was uh I wonder how long it's gonna be before it just becomes increasingly unfeasible for uh developers to push graphics uh further. You know, like, it's going to be so my, costly. My, yeah, my thought is soon because of costs, and I think things like the launch of Battlefield 2042 is a, a good indicator that maybe the ultra AAA, super big budget Hollywood blockbuster games are, are hitting a bit of a ceiling as far as how much money they're costing well, versus yeah, how much they're making back. Because the thing is, is that we can do a lot better with, gr- like, video game graphics are not close to what you can achieve with, like, pre-rendered uh, CGI stuff, but it's 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 not about that it's a matter of feasibility how many people do you need to make all of this stuff how long is it going to take um yeah who knows sorry that was a long tangent no well, that's just alien to this show I, I <laughs> never have tangents. long long Ever. tangent bad um <laughs> long tangent bad i suppose uh can we round off the open world discussion if that's possible uh uh, it's, it, it is definitely jam packed with, uh, shit to do and not in the, uh, annoying sense where you got to go do time trial races or collect flags. I was about it's to actually, say, collect it's like flags, so all that stupid, like busy work that's clearly in there to break your experience apart. It's like, no, the game is still grounded in, you know, the story and the world and everything like that. And all of the side paths usually lead to sweet loot or a boss fight or both and it's just kind of fun to find all the cool shit that you can use as a tangible reward later for all kinds of crazy experiences so rather than just you know concept art so it's it's good as an open world game i like it it's refreshing are we just an open world or open world versus the the prior yeah the approach they've had in their other games, which, funnily enough, there are differences in each of the Souls games for how they've done it, but um, this one feels like the broadest departure compared to the rest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if you had to make me choose between the two, I would go with the older format, to be honest with you. Like, I like this open world, but not more than, like, the Dark Souls 3 type of world. Because one thing that that I know we've discussed a bit before is that... If you if you know the game, like you know where things are and where to find them, or you know you have access to Google, you can get <laughs> super empowered immediately as you start your playthrough. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Vati Vidya made like a thirty-minute video on how to become uber powerful before the first boss or something. 
Yeah. I, I made a video on um, on Gaming with Geeks that showing people how to, from the tutorial, like from once you exit into Limgrave, how to get the Sword of Night and Flame and go to a place where you could level yourself up to the stats to use it within 90 minutes. Yeah. So like less than two hours, you can have what was at least one of the most powerful weapons in the game. I actually got it for X-Ray Girl, my wife. Uh, she's never played a FromSoft game before and still <laughs> still summons me during boss fights, but we have a good time. Because <laughs> in the older games, the areas were usually you know blocked off by behind bosses and stuff, so you, you couldn't really go and get whatever weapon you wanted and then go and farm or find the upgrade materials that you needed the, the same way you can in, in Elden Ring. Because, mm -hmm. again, like getting a really OP upgrade material was usually tied to being behind a pretty strong boss most of the time. So it's, it's easier to get overpowered in this game than it is in, in the other ones. I think it might be actually the easiest to get powerful as a mage early on because... You can just go to Kate, not to Kayla, to the Rotten Swamp, which I think you can go to almost immediately if you just right there. Uh, and you can get the Meteorite Staff, which is super powerful. You can't upgrade that thing, but it's already powerful. And mm. basically right next to it is the Rock Fling spell, which is arguably the best spell in the game, if you, if you ask me. Because uh, it staggers like crazy, deals good amount of damage, has incredible range. Uh, yeah, from what I saw, go play through that. That seemed like the move. That that thing is just a stagger machine, like dragons three cast stagger, no problem. Uh, yeah, you can get that pretty early on. Uh, but yeah, L later on you you want something else, obviously. But for like early to probably mid early late game even, you can use that thing. No problem, because that's an incredible sorcery scaling, like over 200, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So it's like incredibly good. Um, so I feel as though the open world is really neat in that I can run around anywhere and basically be entertained with whatever I'm finding and get a good sense of, oh, I shouldn't be here yet, or, hey, this seems like kind of a place I should be. Um, mm -hmm. However, I think this, this is where I'm going with this conversation, has the effect of allowing me to snowball through the entire game. We mentioned this a couple of times, but I just want to be more specific with this. Basically, like, you can build a momentum, and that is that if you are, like, over-leveled for, let's say, Margit, Mar Margit, um, the... kill him, and then his souls push you up... Oh, Echoes, no, fuck. Runes. runes. His, <laughs> his juice Blood. pushes I'll you... Set them all. You're already I too much even... for him, and it pushes you past that, and then everything in the area following him, you're just gonna make it through with mostly not dying, and that means you basically eat everything, like, rune-wise, and that just can keep going and going and going to the point where, as Theo was describing, and I do think that that's more of a consequence of having it be open world. sometimes. You can mm -hmm. spend some time running around, and then you go back to playing, like, Dark Souls-designed dungeons or castles, and you just fucking slaughter everything in them. Meanwhile, and Dark Souls 1 seems to me to be the, just the best example of this, like it feels so much more handcrafted to the point where that it, as a problem is mitigated to a significant degree. You can still cause it to happen, but it seems much less likely to happen. They can yeah, control the you kind of have to really it. push through. They, they, very, they do a really good job of controlling what you have access to and when is the big thing that makes it distinct. Not to mention, when it's a much more crafted uh, experience like that, it feels like a lot of the places feel more special in terms of like enemy design, aesthetic, and bosses especially, because I feel like this game, having as many bosses as it was, was like, let the experience down later. Cause they started to become the, um, the recycle like lollipops. Uh, hmm. you, go, you go through an area yep. and you're like, here's your boss. What is it? It's like, it's this guy. You remember him? You're like, okay. Yeah. I just yeah, had I that could... one. Okay. I don't want to. I, I can't relate my experience to your guys, so I don't want to spend too long on it. But that was basically my experience of interacting with the open world. Was I'd I'd see a path that I have a narrative reason to go down, and then I'd feel a compulsion to just run off in some other direction because I don't know, maybe there's stuff that way. 
and I'd stumble into catacombs or ruins full of haphazardly placed enemies that were like easy to get past and had no real thought into how they were positioned relative to one another. Then maybe I'd go down through uninspired level design to find a boss that's terrible and dies in like two or three hits. <laughs> and that was that was all of it. Damn. That was everything yeah. I did. It and seems I, like that, that is hollowing. kind of a story with the catacombs and stuff. But, the, but I think you actually hit the nail on the head earlier, Theo, when you compared them to the Chalice Dungeons from Bloodborne. That's that's mm-hmm. basically what a lot of the catacombs are. No, I, well. I guess they're, they're more designed, like, though, because... Oh, sorry, because the, the Chalice Dungeons were procedural, right? Like, they yeah. weren't... Yeah, mm-hmm. and they were tile-based, so it looked like a lot of swappables kept showing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which... To, I was actually saying this to Theo the other day, but it felt like um, the catacombs were procedurally generated and then taken by the dev to look at and be like, this is good enough. Or, uh, we need to move this here and this here, otherwise it's broken. I um, guess, to round off from my perspective, it just I never felt like my time was being respected unless I was doing critical path content or something constructed in that way. And then it felt like I was just playing Dark Souls 3, which is level design wise worse than Dark Souls 1, and I get sad again. I think it's honestly hard for them to make strong level design when you've got this much game yeah. Uh, eventually, yeah. and it does seem like it's like places were designed and then they were placed in the big map that some guy was working on with some other people, and it's like, alright, we got, you know, Thornvale is done, it's like, alright, put it here, that should probably work out just fine. And it's like, that really works, that's great, this is everything. It's like, I've done my castle, what one's yours? It's like, Castle Wumbo, and you're like, oh, fuck. Uh, put oh, it, I need to change that name. Put it there. <laughs> it's like, okay, there it goes. It's like, alright, what are we going to put in this? It's like, I don't know, put a fucking ultra tree spirit in there. <laughs> I don't know, I, whatever. Uh, another one. I guess I'd want to be sympathetic in that, yeah, with this much space to cover, put, having, like, rigorously designed content throughout all of it that is rewarding to engage with, as opposed to gives you rewards, um, is, like, that's an incredible, incredibly difficult thing to do. But that's why I think the ambition of filling all of that space might be misguided in the first place. I well, don't... So you're, say, so you're kind of with me in the sense that you think the game would benefit from being a little smaller? Either smaller or unironically emptier Mm. actually that that might be kind of what i was going to bring up is that i i think that if you if you focus in on stuff like the catacombs and mines and the the things that seem similar to each other it's easy to forget that a lot of the stuff like just the way the land and the mountains and the rocks and stuff are are formed where there's just like little structures or bombed out villages or not bombed out but you know like dragon (laughs) burnt or whatever and I, I actually think that the the just outside in the game is is pretty cool a lot of the times, and there there is some interesting stuff to engage in outside as opposed to uh, like this just open space until I find my next dungeon to go into. You know, this is maybe me being too poisoned against the game, but I never felt the same degree of atmosphere and atmospheric storytelling that Dark Souls was able to pull off, where the way the place looks that. and I, I guess an easy comparison is Blight Town. Blight Town, yeah. the, that area <laughs> is like a masterclass. <laughs> that area is a masterclass in visual storytelling with the enormous, huge structures that have this bit of a, this shanty town built around them, which then creates a really engaging level in and of itself. I never really, never really got that in this game, except maybe with Nokron, and maybe some of the legacy dungeons. But even then, they're just. Ah, it was missing something. It felt... Yeah. I don't know how to put it. Well, that's the thing. I think it's a super controversial thing to say, but, you know, imagine take half of the dungeons out of this game and use that time to be spent on refining the current ones in all different yeah. ways. Yeah. The, the like, capital, for example. I really enjoyed the capital because that I thought felt the like... Was pretty a, cool. That was the like... Are... You got all these shortcuts and... It was like one of the only places where it's like, oh man, I could really use like a grace right now because I'm running out of resources. I need I need a safe spot or a shortcut, please. Oh yeah, Caleb does quite well in terms of visual storytelling as well. Yeah. You can tell stuff happened there. It was like a scarred but, landscape, basically. Yeah, the the rest of the world I found really. I don't want to use the word hollow because then I sound like a fucking video essayist. Uh... <laughs> oh, chilling. Hmm. 
And yeah, uh, someone was just highlighting as well. It's like you may encounter a problem if you start emptying the world in the some of these caves are literally very tiny caves at the side of a mountain. Very easy to miss as openings yeah. to dungeons. And then it's like, so wait, are we saying we should implement some kind of system that's like, it, you know, I've got the dungeon horn. When I blow it, it takes me to any dungeon I haven't been to. It's like, <laughs> a oh. dungeon horn. <laughs> the thing I, it's not the same kind of experience at all. So the comparison isn't fully apt, but I guess just as a display that this sort of thing is possible, I want to point at Shadow of the Colossus. Oh and yeah, game. that is a very awesome empty games. open world in a sense. Yeah. That's not a criticism. That game is not full of stuff. It doesn't need to be full of stuff to do what it's trying to do with its space. And I don't know that Elden Ring needs to be full of stuff for its space to have the effect that it needs. I feel like they should have just had less space, honestly. Like, I like the amount of stuff going on, but maybe they should have done, like, less space. I'm, I'm hesitant to say that because they use the scale to good effect. You know? Well, yeah, sure, but maybe just lessen the scale a little bit, and you'd still have a good game. Sure, but I'm trying to I'm trying to piece together what they were trying to do, I guess, and how I think would be a better way of representing what they were aiming for. Of course, this is me not being cynical and saying they wanted to make an open world game because that shit sells like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> this dude sounds like this isn't this this is Theo who was on EFAP. Jeez, who's who's this duding me? This dude feels like he just wants Dark Souls 1. It's like, well... I am mad it's not Dark Souls, actually. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> well, this is kind of, I was going to say, for... if anyone pushed back on that, I'd be like, well, I mean, wouldn't that make sense if you thought Dark Souls 1 was superior? Not just superior. I think it is something special in and of its own right. I think that there is a lot about Dark Souls 1 that makes it good outside of it just being le hard action game or whatever. And I think that all of that has been lost as FromSoft have gone forward. And that's why I'm annoyed. Yeah, I think it's impossible not to compare these games to their predecessors because it's all being built on itself and they're making decisions to change certain ideas when I think... All of us can agree. There are some ideas. It's like, oh, you shouldn't have changed that one. That one was a, yeah, that was a neat one. The easy um, one is, uh, why did they change the healing system? Again, they they change it every <laughs> single time, and they'll <laughs> never be as good as Dark Souls One. For the, yeah. a quick, I don't mind the healing system. It's uh, so Dark Souls. Well, yeah, let's just do a quick version, right? Dark Souls One's healing system was. We're going to build these landscapes and enemies based around the fact that we assume everyone's pretty much going to have five, but they might have ten Estus if they sacrifice uh, some humanities. And then the pro players will have unlocked twenty. But at that point, you know, it's nothing to worry about. That's just something they're using to benefit themselves. So most places will be balanced around the fact that you can make a certain amount of mistakes, which are tied to how much you can heal. Um, that's how Dark Souls 1 ran. It was really fucking cool, really simple, and it just creates a very balanced way of dictating difficulty. PS2 fucked everything. It gave you loads of health. <laughs> it has no idea what it's doing. It's a spazzing out game. It's just like, oh, health me! Dark Souls 3 was like, we're kind of going with a different idea now. We're gonna give you, you can find resources in the world that can increase the amount you get and the potency of them. And to the point where I'm, pre I'm pretty sure most people who played Dark Souls up to that point was like, man, this is a lot of health. You're mm -hmm. giving me a lot of health. Uh, Bloodborne God has boy. its own mistakes, but there's some there's things I like and things I don't like about that health system. Um, the Having fact that, to farm it is a big problem. Yeah, that should have just been removed. There's just no reason for that yeah. to be there. Um, <laughs> Why is there no minimum amount? I don't understand. Exactly. Or even mm -hmm. past a certain point, like um, if they say, okay, if you get past Vicar Amelia, you just, you fill up to 20 blood vials after every yeah, rest. Yeah. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and a big thing as well is the, the vials in that game, they just get upgraded automatically if you if you level health by the nature of the fact that their percentage heals, uh, which yeah. I don't even know that they recognized how significant that is in terms of changing how difficult the game is. I don't know. Um, because in this game, I remember I got a lot of flasks at one point, but I hadn't gone past plus six, and I realized, like, man, it takes like four of these to heal my health part of full when it got absurd. And I was just like, yeah, I need to actually get the quality upgrades, sort of. But Bloodborne doesn't have that problem. Then... Even at max quality, I'm still using two flasks to, to heal from, from almost dead, which uh, I think is a little on the strange side. 
I don't know if that's okay. That might be okay because of the amount of flasks you have. This is the thing. I, um, maybe, but I guess if you're also using magic, then like you're, those, those same charges are going towards your mana also. True. Um, but yeah, so this game, it's like a variation on DS3 systems. Um, so that's the quick version. Do you want to open with what you hate about it, Theo? <laughs> Presumably. About what specifically? Healing. Oh, healing. Um... I, it's, it, I don't know where to start really, because it just lets you get so overpowered and there's no reason for it to ever have changed from how it was in Dark Souls 1. Like by the um, end of this game, you end up with such, it's not as bad as DS3, so I guess credit there, but you end up with such an insane Estus flask by the end of these last few games. The, it's much easier to just trade and steamroll your way through whatever challenging endgame content there is, unless it has something like lifesteal going on. Which is interesting, right? Because we combo that up with the other things we've been highlighting about the lack of balance. Mm -hmm. So if my uh, Mimic, for any reason, should not be able to tank something, or if, if it dies, I'm like, well, I've still got all of this, so I should be all right. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember I did actually, it was mostly a subconscious thing, but I did have to handicap myself a bit when fighting Malekith, so I didn't just blast him. Because I had so much damage and so much healing by that point in the game, because I'd snowballed and gotten overpowered and had a well-upgraded Estus Flask. Um, yeah, and this one's just a little bit complicated, I suppose. Um, we, we, the criticism is coming in with balance, I, uh, but... The, I know a lot of people will just be like, isn't this going to depend on how good you are? And pretty yeah. much, yeah. Yeah, it is. But... Nearly every balance factor in a From game can be chalked up to, well, ah, if you're good enough, you don't you need say to worry that. about that. My criticism of the Ashes is that you don't even need to fucking swing your sword sometimes, so at that point, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> at least with healing, it's like, alright, but what if you're really bad? It's just like, well... I guess that just comes into talking about the challenging nature of the games as a whole, right? Like, if you can you can only land one hit per ten hours, if you have ten trillion Estus flasks, I guess you'll make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But nobody would play that game. <laughs> like, if that, was the, if that was the parameters of it. It's like, so what's the right decision then? It's like, well, we know that DS2 is definitely not the fucking way. A hundred heals, plus your Estus, plus all those other items you can find. It's like, that is a fucking bloated mess, so definitely not that. I just um, like to reference the, the thing after my second playthrough where I just go all the healing items in my inventory. Uh, like a million in there after I beat the game. And you never get past using life gems because you yeah. restock them with leftover souls. Yeah, it's <laughs> so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not really even a, it's not even a risk reward or, or offset with, you know, you spend it on your levels or your health. You know, it's none of that. Sorry, anyway. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, um... I think the healing's probably a bit much in this game, but it's lower down on my list of complaints, I would yeah. uh, say. How do we I would agree. how do we put in the reallocation of flasks in this regard? Because with my mage build I had to sacrifice a bunch of my health for FP. That's a, that's an opinion I've been cooking, and I wonder if FP is the way to go or if the memory system yeah, because I remember. Maybe they shouldn't be allocating system. them that way. Maybe it should be that health, estus, and then pots for restoring mana are just their own things. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it seems like an interesting trade-off at one, like at first glance. But then you realize that certain builds just use their FP more. And, well, and, and there's, this, there's almost this implication that melee builds need more health restore because that's ju that's just the nature of what we expect is going to happen with our players, I guess. Mm. It's just like, okay, I, I guess so. I don't know. What if they just made it so that there were separate there were separate charges for each one, so you didn't really have to worry about, oh man, like I, I have, I don't know, four charges for my healing and four charges for my FP. I, why, I think putting it on the player to decide the allocation makes it trickier, but if they just made it so that the golden seeds could then be invested to add an additional charge and that's when you had to make the decision as opposed to being at your your point of grace and deciding for any given encounter okay i'm gonna lean more towards healing or lean more towards recovering mana and or just make the mana like something that slowly recharges so that that's yeah. 
That's why I wonder about going back to the memory system, because something I ran into in my first playthrough where I was using magic, I wasn't using really ranged magic, I was just using the carry-in spells that give you basically extra sword move sets mm. in your offhand, because I found that a lot of fun to pair with uh, my katana. Uh, by the way, the magic in this game is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like my magic playthrough. <laughs> a concern I ran into later on was I had this one really good spell called Adula's Moonblade, and it did a mm. shit fucking zillion damage compared yeah, to anything else I could do with my FP. When you're so close I... enough, it hits twice. Yeah, you fire it's it upwards through good. an Earth Tree Avatar or something, and it hits him like three times and does <laughs> 4k damage. So the reason that's a problem to me is I start... The, the, the thought started occurring to me, why do I spend my FP on anything else? And I think that's a problem. I don't know if that's necessarily a balance problem inherently with the things, because the bigger spell should have the more powerful effect, right? Mm -hmm. But it should also conversely cost well, more. Well, I, I would probably argue that it, you need to be close for this, and normally as a mage you're pretty squishy. So there's like a risk-reward kind of deal, because I tended to not use that one, because I had to get close and then I got killed. Mm. So I opted for the rock spell. But then I had this, the problem you just said with the rock spell, because the rock fling is just so fucking good. I just that that, that just became my main mainstay mm -hmm. for most of the things, and I I didn't really run into that because I wasn't so much a mage character. I was just using magic. My okay. main go to was still I'm I'm using Moon Veil. I'm running at people and I'm hitting them with a weapon. Because I just went full mage on the, my first playthrough. Yeah, fair enough. Which and... was weird to me because normally first playthrough I'm melee as always, but this one was like, you know what? I'm gonna mix it up this time. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I got tempted to try out the magic because I'd heard from people it was a bit cooler in this game, and I was happy to see they were right. Um, uh, I enjoyed playing with the magic, but yeah, I was very concerned towards the end of my playthrough that all of my FP probably should just go to Moon Veil Weapon R R twos mm. or to uh, Adula's Moonblade. Because carry and slice is nice and all, but it doesn't. Well, the, its benefits don't do anything for me in PVE, really, because mm, properties aren't real. What's so funny about that to me is like, oh yes, I wouldn't want to spend my FP on, on an Ash, and someone could be like, ah, so there is a balance there, isn't there? And I'd be like, well, you know, are there any that cost health? It's like, oh, just one. <laughs> Which one is that? <laughs> The best strongest one. one. <laughs> the best one. the best one in the game. Ah! Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if... Asking me, Jed, did you get a flask shot that gave you infinite magic for 10 seconds? I did get that one. It was very helpful, uh, <laughs> combined with the Kamehameha spell uh, <laughs> while I was fighting Melenia, because that gave me a nice little push for getting a bunch of health off of her. I needed that for the rest of summoning throughout the game, so I respected and lost all my upgrades for the FP, and I was just like, well, oh, I'll yeah. just use that every time I summon. Mm. Yeah, you can do some some crazy combo with the Azura Combat spell and the FP thingy. It's like, damn. I guess to round out the thought, that's the thing that makes me wonder if maybe the uh, memory system would be better, so that my usage of Adula's Mo Moonblade is not infringing on my usage of Carrion Slicer. Mm -hmm. In the I, same I vein, um, both. just... Yeah, balancing. It seems like mages are going to be more likely to think that the healing system is pretty fair. Yeah. Uh, while melee builds will just be like, I didn't even allocate one. I didn't need it. Maybe. You know, it depends mm -hmm. on what you're building. I kept myself at one, um, one mana flask the entire way through, and I, I actually kind of balanced out towards the end game because my flask wasn't too overpowered because I stopped exploring. So... I, I wasn't just able to fully face tank my way through everything I ran into, and I was yeah. having to double chug for a lot of attacks. Um, we kind of have partially covered it, so I was thinking of just rounding it out as well through having talked about other things, but I had a subject of world design. So mm -hmm. I guess that would entail, like, what do you think of the world of, and I was about to name it, and I don't even know what the name of it is. What is the world the of The lands it? between. Lands, lands between. between. Yeah. Well, there you go. What do you think of the I mean, lands between? The Visually, fucking great. Like, I'm yep. just looking around right now, and it's like, I would screenshot that and put that on my desktop. And yeah. when I look the other direction, yeah, I would put that on my desktop too. <laughs> yeah. Visually, some zones uh, great, some zones meh. Uh, I guess design-wise, I might lean towards not so great. 
Any map with falling snow is all like super pretty. And then I realized any map with falling snow is also where the design of enemies fall apart. <laughs> it um, kind of seems to me like every map that has snow falling in it, usually you can expect to have enemies in like with a lot of health are that are in clumps or they range attack you from all directions. I hated the parts of that area that were in blizzards. I fucking hate that yeah. shit. Yeah. I... Sorry, in a game where a, a small drop can kill me, I need to not have that happening, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. I so nearly had a moment where I was like, oh, the game's doing something kind of neat when, you know, the fog swept in and then Borealis, the, the ice dragon, showed up. And then the ice dragon, called the Freezing Fog, landed, shouted <laughs> at me, and the fog went away, and it was just a normal dragon fight. Yeah, yeah. I had the exact <laughs> same thoughts. I did it offline, and I was like, oh, so the blizzard's being caused by this... No? I no. fucking died inside, nope, dude. Nope, put it away. Oh. That's I was nice so ready for the game to give me something kind of interesting, and then it didn't. It backpedaled out. <laughs> um, Chickened out. One of the I mean, dragons yeah, used a sword on me. That was in pretty terms fucking of sick. World design. Uh, any sense of well, interconnectedness is kind of a rough one to talk about, considering you know the zones are so huge and they're just open fields a lot of yeah. the time, as opposed to anything. Yeah, I don't else. think there's much to celebrate on that. I, I completely disregard this, even talking about it, because it's kind of pointless in the open world, because, well, it is all available to walk to. It's a you can walk no, it's everywhere. Not. But, uh, yeah, I, with that, I'm more focused on the smaller areas, like the capital or uh, all the other things that I can't think the names of. I was like, oh, yeah, those are kind of neat. Can we have more of those in the, on the map? Like, more, more of those? Mm -hmm. Or, no? You may okay. not. But yeah, I would like to have more of those, uh, well, Dark Soulsy areas where you go around, get your little shortcuts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you have like the Halic Tree area, which you can just completely miss on your playthrough, which is a huge area which has yeah. that. It's really big. Yeah, there's a, that. That is a really interesting element of this. Like one of the biggest payoffs for me, and I'm assuming similar for you guys, was the uh, connecting, uh, filing shrine to the. Uh, the, is it a chapel? Undead parish. Undead, Undead parish. parish. Dude, when you first come fucking down that elevator, dude. It's, it's, yeah. it's, like, it's pretty oh, mind-blowing. That's, that's part of why I adore that game so much. What a way to implement a payoff. It's a mechanical understanding of how the world reconnects to itself because it's all there. It's not nonsense levels that just mm. teleport you. Like I said, another Dark Souls game. <laughs> um, it's, you're like, holy <laughs> shit, I'm back home. And now I can get to the like <laughs> latest place I was at directly from my home. That's so fucking cool. Um, and also, I can get all these these healing things down there because this is by default 10. This is good. Yep. This is great. And you connect all these different shortcuts in all different areas because like, it's been compared to a flower, Dark Souls 1, where as you progress through the game, the shortcuts are longer and the areas connect to fewer places. But that initial set, because the game is small, it's like the perfect size to be able to do those sorts of payoffs, does them a lot. In this game, I think it was like five times, I was like, oh, that's, a, yeah, that's a shortcut. Okay. And, the shortcuts yeah. are, the Dark Souls 3 shortcuts, they, they exist for the sake of your convenience and to get you to where you want to go after you've done a zone. Which is fine. It's okay, I guess. But it feels like that one in Dark Souls 1, and there's a couple of them, were almost crafted for that moment of realizing that, and it's just like, oh, yeah. The world, world design. Mm. <laughs> the world in this game feels, uh, I'm going to say linear. Mm. Because you start in Limgrave, you can go to Kaled. You can. You probably don't. Uh, <laughs> but Kaled being the main exception, then it's, you know, a path up to Leonia. Leonia doesn't connect to Kaled. Uh, oh. Then Leonia <laughs> leads into Altus. Teleporting Cheshire does. <laughs> yeah. Leonia takes you to Altus, and then Altus takes you to Mountain Tops, and yeah, then you're in the end game, and you teleport to Landell again and do the, do the final boss with Galmir off to the left. You could probably argue that Weeping Peninsula is the actual like beginner area. Yeah, the misbegotten um, warrior, misbegotten warrior, Leonin, whatever his name is. Um, they he's a lot easier than Margit and is the boss of um I keep forgetting the name of that castle. Something with the name. Morn, yeah, yeah. Me. Um I'm not sure how I feel about that calling it linear as a result of that. 
Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, it's, it's funny too because you just mentioned you can go to Kalid, but it's like a big path. It's like, well, yeah, there's a there's a little chest in the rat cave that'll bring you straight there, whether you like it or not. Sure, but then you so walk it's back. Like, oh. <laughs> you can you you mm. could once you get out of that cave. Yeah, you can do it right away. I I agree. It's a good moment though. Uh, my concern is it's in the way the world is built. Like, I mean, the physical geographic masses is. is None of them really connect to each other, other than to one other, which inform which is informed by the game's progression generally. You know, I just got a notification that says Disney is laying the perfect groundwork for its Buffy reboot. No, oh. Oh, no. Can, can they just not go away. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that hits particularly it's, close to home for you, Mahler. It's a dis disgusting rat creature that's poking its tendrils into all these nice things in our nice room of nice things. <laughs> Get out! Get out! You... <laughs> you know, has, it's just like, has Love it just me. Sweden gone through enough? <laughs> <laughs> Let him rest. They're coming for a shoe! <laughs> like, stupid <laughs> creature. Okay. Uh, where should we go next? Um, graphics? One, one blue. Very pretty. Tying into how many locations in the world that I thought were pretty damn schmicky schmexy. Um, I think yeah. these graphics are more than acceptable and that the style makes up for any shortcomings for the most part in the graphics. I don't have a huge amount to say. I think I'll pass this over to anybody else who has more stuff to say. There's no peach fuzz on Millennia's cheek, so two out of ten. No. Oh. <laughs> What is she a man? I'm, kidding. I'm 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 kidding. I think it's it's a beautiful game, uh, but I it's yeah. beautiful because of its art direction, and I think that that uh, tends to tends to be the kind of good looking video game that sticks around longer than oh my god, this is so awesome looking for this current point in history. It's just for me, just randomly standing around like just now. It's like goddamn, this looks great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Yeah. I've got. I just. I I don't know, man. But there's there's a lot of gorgeousness in this game. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of little details. I mean, Blyde's dick looks beautiful. Oh, nobody else. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I I like how I like the looks a uh, a lot. I think yeah. Um, I think we're all good on. Uh... Yeah. I mean, I don't have anything else to say really. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. To say. It's it's a pretty ass game. I mean, I guess there's people who say the graphics are. Bad, maybe? I don't know. That's the thing. I, I, I was thinking like in my head, this. like, what are things people say about this? Like, I don't think there's many people saying the graphics aren't very good, right? That's not really... It, 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 the people who are saying the graphics are bad tend to be the community, at least at the, what I've seen on Twitter and Facebook, of PlayStation fanboys who are upset that this game has kind of stolen a bit of Horizon Forbidden West Thunder. That was kind okay. of the reference I was making with the Peach Fuzz, because... Uh, like, well, oh, you can even see God. the peach no, fuzz on Aloy's no, cheeks. Yeah, for a second there, I was lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Well, yeah, I just love the meme of the guy being like, what is she, a guy? Or something like that. It's like, because it's a beard. It's like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> what? It's not, not exactly it, but when I'm playing an open world action game, the last thing I'm thinking is like, well, can I see the peach fuzz on my character's cheeks or not? Because if not, terrible game. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Big mm. poop. Well, you know what? Let's go to crafting. It shouldn't take too long. Oh, crafting! Craft in this uh, game? Oh, really? <laughs> it's to me. If I can, you'd be uh, forgiven. For... My take will be: I thought I'd be a fan of the idea that you collect these little cookbooks, and then you would further unlock a lot of little things, and you can take advantage of them. So, thus, exploring gives you more access to more things to. Read. I didn't fucking craft anything, and. To be honest with you, there was a couple of things I was looking to craft throughout the whole game, and I never seemed to pick up the right fucking cookbooks. And I, to be honest, with you, I think that they should have been default stuff like, um, you know, uh, slow down or cure poison. It's just like if you want to put that in a fucking book, and I miss that book, dude, not cool. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's pretty damaging because later not in the game it seems to expect that you have found certain cookbooks. In terms of your Not ability enough. to cure certain things. I was thinking, yeah, is this a solution to make it so that the cookbook pages don't have definitive locations? Instead, they're all, like, they all have the same location in that all of them are everywhere, but you pick the first one up, wherever it may be, and it'll be page one. 
And then whenever you pick up the next one, it'll be page two. And then they can craft it so that the, the things that you're gonna desperately need, they're the first couple things you pick up. By the time you get to page yeah. 100, you unlock something that's pretty fucking cool, let's say. Is that better yeah. or worse? Because I know people like to have locations so that they can just pick up the direct one they need. As so as you mm. lose that. But, um, I don't know, man. The fact that they had a crafting system at all surprised me, and then the fact that I realized, like, halfway through, I was like, I'm not using that ever. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, I crafted a just, couple of There weren't a lot of thingies. useful shit, really. Crafting I is crafted... a reward for exploring? Cra reward <sighs> rewarding you with what? You need, you need so much to make most things, too. Like, and you, honestly, to make arrows, which is a, should be a pretty simple thing to craft, you have to be killing just the NPC animals that aren't enemies. Like, you have to be getting, taking out, like, sheep and stuff Ooh, to get the fire bones. papers I can't put on my weapon because it's magic. Great. Oh my god. Yeah, Blood, I, dude, I hated Blood, that too. Bloodborne wins for this one. Just having the, they cost insight. Insight can be valuable for other things. You can store insight boosts mm -hmm. and you get them from bosses and then you can just stock up on fire papers and bolt papers and, oh, I love you, Bloodborne. Some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very cool game. I love you, cool. Bloodborne, for everything except your frame rate. I love you, Bloodborne. <laughs> Can you please come think... to PC? I will love you forever. You'll find a home here. Very yeah, seriously, we all will. I think it does actually get damaging, though, when the game is expecting, or seems to be expecting you to have ways to deal with certain things, either through crafting or through spells. Like the Lake of Rot being my main example. It's, it's a big lake of Scarlet Rot that does more damage than the normal Scarlet Rot. It seems yeah. to me that that zone is designed expecting that you will have either a shitload of the boluses that cure it, or the ability to make them. That's when I realized I don't have those ones. I had all of or, them except that one. I had neither of those things. <laughs> I had so, uh, I had a, a faith spell that cured rotten poison, so it was like, okay, yeah. easy. Ooh, someone Game said this meanwhile. is the worst defab they've ever heard. At least we've got it out of the way now. There <laughs> 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 was one. Right? Only it goes up from here! Well, I guess it keeps getting worse. <laughs> <one. laughs> It was so just good to know we got the one that's the worst. Like, we know what it is. I, it, it always feels like there is no clear, identifiable metric by which we can judge how good these episodes are. People would just say it's the worst one if they disagree with the perspective. <laughs> yeah. like, now, not to say that we've never been wrong, but you got to qualify it a little bit. So who said that, and specifically what is wrong with this episode? Man, was probably the bringing, answer is the something. cyborg guy. Just, uh, just keep it to yourself. Yeah, 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 I'm assuming it's because of the changed. fact that we're making fun of the crafting system and they don't like that. Ah. <laughs> well, so, I mean, we it's, have a it's look. not what a is great crafting, crafting system. I don't. I haven't seen anyone complimenting the graf crafting system. I'm surprised yeah. this is a bit hard for people to take. Most people don't I mean, acknowledge Theo it's there. fiery hot takes. That's the fun part of this episode, my dude. <laughs> I'm all for it. Anyone uh, saying that it's the worst EFF has not seen the debates. <laughs> 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 The debates are loved. What do you mean? <laughs> uh, guess I, so. I guess on the note of um, the cookbooks, if I might make a comparison real quick. Do it. Uh, Do it. Yeah, notice how in Dark Souls 1, uh, you can very easily end up just stumbling into Dark Root Garden thinking, you know, this is the next zone. I'm in. And you get a lot of these weird purple moss clump things there you that do. might be helpful in a future zone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's how this is nowhere present in Elden Ring's design, because they have this cookbook, I think, and they expect that you'll probably just find that, or you'll have the Flame Cleanse Me spell. Neither of which is necessarily the most likely thing ever, because it's an item in an open world. It's a single item in a location. I think we shouldn't really underestimate how easy a single item out in the open world's overworld is to miss. Oh yeah, you just run past that shit easily. This place is giant, so the that game is not as good boy. as making sure you have the things necessary to handle where you're going next, as Dark Souls One was, which is a side effect of the open world stuff. Yeah, uh, so. that's also that's also kind of what makes it so that you you'll often have to outpace status anomalies with just overhealing them. Like, yeah. oh, I got bleed damage. Okay, I guess I'm using two flasks now. Okay, it looks like Scarlet Rod. Okay, I gotta remember every four seconds to drink a flask, and <laughs> that uh, kind of sucks. It, for um, me, every trip through the Lake of Rot was a one-way trip. Uh, <laughs> Thunder said, I crafted mainly food for Torrent, stuff that gets rid of Scarlet Rot and, uh, I think, bone darts and stuff. I oh, never, yeah, I, I, only, I only made horse food. That's all I made. I made it. <laughs> 
tried it out, decided, fuck it. It's just not something I give a shit about. Yeah. Like, and you'd be like, what do you mean? It's like, well, the one time, the few times I can give it to Torrent is when I'm exploring for a long while, and I, Torrent's taking some damage that I can heal. Most of the time when Torrent is taking damage and I'm like, oh, you're close to death, I could shove five berries down his throat or just be like, no, just die and I'll resurrect you with an Esther. <laughs> just die. And other than that, Hold it up. gets healed. Like, I f Maybe we could transition into talking about the horse now. <laughs> like, you, you can, you can, you can, okay, 150 hours in this game and I'm asking this question. You can heal Torrent? You can. Yeah, you, with you your can make Estus? horse food. No, no, okay, I, know, I, know, I know you can like respawn him with an ex Estus. I just, I didn't know there was another option for healing. Yeah. Torrent also gets health back when Torrent. you chuck Estus on horseback. Oh, okay. No, uh, but like there are these berries that you can craft with extremely yeah. common flowers, and then like it's Isn't really easy fruit? to make. Isn't and then, oh, yeah, something like that. And then I just bound them to my uh, pouch up, and then that was it. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> I, I never knew that. So. I knew it's a thing, but I never used it because I just, just no need. I just, I tried to use it and just gave up. I got bored. I was like, I don't need to. It's fine. I'll just. I crafted, <laughs> I crafted a the few only time papers, and I was like, wow, I cra I can just craft whatever papers I need. That's uh, it's pretty grease. Cool. And then I never used them. Oh well, Royce. Yeah, I guess it is. Why is it grease in this game? That's... I don't know. <laughs> they just changed all the names. Dude, there's this not fucking meme I saw getting shared. Uh, if Free is here, he would appreciate it. But basically, some of you may. I don't know if you know this reference. But basically, um, Dark Souls players, especially when they're introduced to this, a lot of the time you're like, oh man, this is a good item. Should I use it here? It's like, well, no, because if I use it here, I might not be able to use it later. <laughs> and then you eventually just hoard everything. And, and, and the yeah. game with 500 of them. <laughs> and yeah, like they had... Um, the idea of you, you've you collected all these different greases and you still just don't want to use them. She's like, what if I need them for a later fight? And then they had a uh, groundskeeper willy from uh, Simpsons. They're like, yeah, the second you, grease. you say you use your grease for the first time, and it just shows him saying, my retirement grease! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, but even, I can't remember what he says. But grease I know bandits, I think. Right. Yeah, and then he's um, like, he's, oh, oh, what was it? When he started punching him, it's like, Oh, that really hurts. It's like, oh, it's okay. I'll strangle you for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the point being that, like, there were there were things to hold precious a little bit because uh, for me at least, I was like, I have so few materials to be able to make a lot of them. Though I should be careful with them. Um, yeah, make sure you hold on to that retirement grace. You know, the future exactly. is uncertain. Uh, true. <laughs> Never use an elixir in a Final Fantasy game unless it's the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> It's everything. It's so useful. Um, but yeah, oh, I don't know. The I, ammo, uh, ammo at the end of a Resident Evil game, too. <laughs> I tried to understand the system, and I tried to use it, but I just found I slipped into not caring that I could even craft it all. I just, yeah. Poorly yeah. integrated, I want to say. I'm not going to push back on that. I'm not going to do it. I don't know if anyone else <laughs> wants like, to. Not, not enormously poorly. It's just kind of esoteric and pointless. So, let's talk about Torrent. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mewshly, how did you like to double jump? Um, so, I don't know if this is like an alien experience for a lot of people, but if you watch my playthrough, when I discover that I can double jump on the horse, I'm like laughing my ass off. I think it's the stupidest shit. I'm like, I just, what in the world am I fucking that? doing? This is my horse. Like, why can it double I jump? I kind of loved it. Uh, well, so, I have to like, pass this out a little for people. It's just like, what the fuck's wrong with that? The game's filled with magic. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It just seems out of the fucking <laughs> blue that my horse can double <laughs> jump. That's just... Your reaction, that was so funny to me. It feels like I'm in like, a Mario I'm game. Taken. Like, what's happening? What, I thought this was uh, grounded. You, do you have a problem with uh, double jump as a thing for a horsey? No. I think it's absurd. So, like, what, what about, what about lots of video games in general? It's fucking well, so, stupid that the double jump can't be used to negate dam uh, fall damage, though. Oh yeah, I yeah, agree yeah, um, yeah. Everything that that damage. I remember, I that was uh, I was playing and I <coughs> saw a cliff and I'm like, I want to go down there. I'll just jump with the double jump for my horsey, and then we yep. both die. Nope. Splat. That was very like, sad. Fall damage. It's a mechanic. It's straightforward. It functions, and it, I know why it's there. I just thought it was hilarious, and I think I'd find it as hilarious as your character being able to double jump. Uh, mm -hmm. It just, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't come into my realm of th how this world works at all. And there's a I, couple of things that are like that in Dark Souls, and I, I honestly think of them as just really funny moments, like the big fat guy doing his big roll. That's so. <laughs> 
like what? <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, that's the thing that he does. What? Hmm. You're like, no, yeah, fine, okay. There's just some things that here and there that are. What just... you mean? Uh, you mean a fire giant doing his little roll? No, no, no. Roll. His Fat rolls guy. are really funny as well. His rolls are funny. Yeah. Um... Big dark souls roll. <laughs> I was like, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I even like ripping yeah. someone's own head off and pulling a sword out of its mouth. I'm just like, what are we? What? <laughs> 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 Makes sense, sure. Yeah, the people will be like, there are magic things in this game. I'm like, yeah, I know. I just, this is, this, they can't you help just think that this is silly magic, do you? It is, you know, everyone would have a different line for this. I think the, the, the horse double jump thing, it just took me off guard completely. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I, I could grumble about, you know, grounded aesthetic or whatever, but that's like long gone, so... This is the thing, I, <laughs> I, if someone was like, so you wouldn't have it? It's like, no, 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 I'm just saying it was funny for me, that's all. Um... I, Mechanically, not, like, it worked I, I, relatively well. The problem I have with the horse is the uh, something that's a feature, which is its awkward control. Um, it's supposed to have awkward control. It's a horse, and it's just like, e yeah, but like, <laughs> you demand a lot of platforming from me on my horse. So. Yeah, maybe, maybe mm. that if you're gonna make it control weirdly. There's, no. there's a good level of uh, bosses that kind of ask you to hop on the horse, and fighting on the horse is a pain in the ass, considering <laughs> a little torchman. Can just kind of stick the fucking torch up the oh. horse's nose and the horse explodes. Dude, I... it doesn't help that the sound effects, it's like. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Your horse exploded! <laughs> Is he dead? <laughs> no! No, he's fine! No, oh, hey. <laughs> probably... Just hop back on! I'd question the idea there's a lot of bosses that like mandate horse usage. What would you be. I guess which ones. I don't feel any mandated it, but some several may have been made with that in mind. I imagine a lot were, but I found pretty much everything that didn't force me to use the horse was a lot easier to fight on foot and a lot mm. less clumsy. By the way, yeah, on screen right now. On horse is bad. Look on screen right now, you're about to see a uh... Oh, go cruise night. About to fly off the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so jealous. I tried, I tried to make those guys do that so many times and never worked. <laughs> See you at the party, Richter. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> nice. What were we talking about? Uh, talking about <laughs> the horse. Total Recall. Oh, horse. Think. It's not fun. Uh, horse combat is... It's not the worst horse combat I've played, but unfortunately it's horse combat, so... <laughs> I feel like it's designed deliberately to have a level of awkwardness to offset the efficiency of speed, and I'm just like, yeah, I just... It's not that fun, though. All, all that means you're doing is I'm just not going to interact with enemies I run past at all. Pretty much. Or you do a pass, hit, pass, hit, pass, hit, so it's mm -hmm. much more straightforward instead of awkwardly shlubbling around and trying to get... And then someone with a torch goes... Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> God, that shit was in Bloodborne, too. The fucking torch people. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. Away! 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 <laughs> there was a, there was a Twitter post the other day that was like... Uh, Bloodborne was very radical in having you fight such a varied uh, amount of bosses, including like anything from eldritch monsters to rats to English people. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bold. Truly bold. Most fearsome of enemy types. <laughs> English people. <laughs> Hoodlums. Um, oh, disgusting. What else can you be? What can be said about the horse? Um, uh, the horse kind of fucks any idea of encounter design in the open world, but I don't know if there ever was an idea of encounter design. Enemies are just sort of around, and like, you can deal with them if you want, I guess. It does. I'm take... bummed that you can't get other mounts. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, uh, or edit like some to some degree mounts. the appearance. You'd think that'd be a neat little bonus, but yeah, something um... like that, like. That big ass, uh, what's that? that? There's this big ass like lion with an eye patch on. I thought that'd be a riding mount. Mm -hmm. yeah, on the cover, awesome. there's like this. Oh, the, the way yeah. Naruto lion in Stormvale. I, I, I guess so. I thought that was a mount on the cover. I'm like, yeah, I want to unlock that mount. It looks awesome. Nope. Uh, nope. I was just going to mention, yeah, like, and I think that does take away from the game a little bit when it's like you're running around and just goes. Welcome, great dragon Argonor of Philibon, and then it's fucking lightning strikes everywhere, just like, ah, oh, oh, he's disappeared, I've ran past him. Yeah, I'm good, <laughs> whatever. It's a little awkward, and, and it's like, well, what's the solution to that? And I'm like, I don't know, 
Uh... There's a bunch of fortifications <laughs> here leading up to uh, Stormvale or leading up to Castle Morn or whatever, leading up to Redmain Castle. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. Now nah, I'm just going to ride past. Whatever. Yeah, and, and you know, a lot of great enemies, even boss fights. Like one of the magma worms is one that's in the open world. It's a, there's more than one, actually. Um, and, like, I remember seeing it when I was playing offline, and I was like, oh, shit, I should probably kill that online. So, like, he had this grand entrance, lava spewed everywhere, and he's like, da, 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 da. Oh, music stopped. <laughs> anyway. <Bye>. Okay, bye. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm not sure how they can account for that, but it can create a bit of an awkward experience that could affect the overall immersion. Yeah, because they, the, they put the academy key, like, behind a dragon. And you're like, oh, shit, I need to fight the dragon. It's like, nah, actually, you can just go on Tauron and just grab the key and fuck off. <laughs> I think I did that. I, I'm pretty I thought sure it was my second play for us. Like, oh, I'm here now. I oh, might as well grab the key real quick. I'm just yeah. not fond of fighting dragons. So it's like The yeah. dragons in this game suck. They're fucking awful. I, I kind of like, I liked fighting that one. Like, uh... Is that a hot take? No, I, I, I think mine is the hot take for liking fighting the dragons because I'm the only one who seemed to enjoy it. Well, I, I just used a massive Kat. sword and. Cat might might like the dragons. I don't know. I didn't find them particularly. Cat likes the dragons. Gonna lose any faith I might have had left in them. Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like aside from I guess a Monster Hunter game, I, I can't think of a lot of games where we're fighting dragons. Oh, in like, it Skyrim, it's, it's pretty much just like okay, so. Use a bow Calumny. and just constantly shoot arrows at it, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think. Can't Hunter... say that Wyvern's chat. They have fucking dragon in their name. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's just gonna. I remember fighting with chat about this. Oh, before. to be fair, I haven't like, played Dragon's Dogma. I see a bunch of people saying Dragon's and Dogma, but I don't know why. But everyone feels the need to definitively be like, make sure you don't call a dragon a wyvern and a wyvern a dragon. And I'm just sitting here like, look. Fucking... Flying dragon <laughs> grail, and it's not a dragon. What it wait? So what? What is meant to be the difference between? So a wyvern like a, has two legs instead of four. Yeah, yeah. yeah supposedly think, a wyvern. they're yeah. both they're both winged like reptiles yeah. that breathe fire, right? And so you're realizing, Fringy, that the oh, the substance <laughs> of what we're talking about, the encounters with those creatures, that's what matters. But there's people getting hung up on whether or not that's the correct fucking labeling. <laughs> I don't. I don't. So uh, apparently Wikipedia matter. says it's a wyvern is a legendary dragon, so it sounds like dragon <laughs> is the more of uh -oh. a thing. Well... It does sound... According to Wikipedia... I mean, um... don't, don't a lot of the dragons, I guess, do they get on all fours? Or I guess, yeah, no, they have legs and, and hands, don't they? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if I... Well, I I'm I, sure it doesn't matter. The, the difference really. is present. I was, I'm just waiting for the part where it's like, so... We go back to what we were talking about, which is that the fights suck. Not whether or not they're yeah. called fucking dragons. <laughs> they're slow and clumsy, and they don't really do anything. And focus is just out, pretty much, because of the way yeah. they fly around. The camera just spins around, being like, oh, no, I don't know what you're looking at. From I, I, I found that it's, focusing uh, on its uh, on its legs helped target my sword, and just switching the leg if they were going to do that stomp strike. So, do you remember? Like, um, you have to kinda... uh, I can't remember if I'm insane or not. When you get to Ludwig's second phase and you focus on him, the camera like goes out further than normal. Yes, that's a thing. Yes, yes it does. definitely. Much yes. of bosses in the Souls game. I fucking wish they did more effort into. It's like that's evidence right, right there that they are aware that focus can get fucked sometimes, and then they were like, "Let's try and account for that this time." And it's like, let's not most of the time. And it's like, hey. Count this for it is more. from soft. Every game must be three steps forward, two steps back, five to the side, another one back, maybe two more forward, because they they cannot consistently learn lessons. It's really fucking weird. Yeah. What's um, that one? Uh, what's that one? Ubisoft uh, melee based PvP game. Uh, for Honor. For Honor. Yeah. Was it For Honor? They did. Uh, I loved how y the camera would phase into the world. Rather than have the camera ram into it and fuck up, it phased into the world, but you could still see your character. So even if you were backed against the wall, you could see your character perfectly. I really wish that FromSoft would eventually do that. I'm reminded of a fun Don't instance they? of bad camera in this game where uh, you guys know the big gargoyle outside of the Bestial Sanctuary? Yes. The boss. Uh, I was fighting him just a couple of days ago, 
and he fought on the stairs, which is, of course, horrible. I hate it when he fights on the stairs. Enemies <laughs> in these games still don't know how to handle elevation. Um, but more importantly, sometimes when I was like hor- uh, on like next to him on the stairs, my camera would po- clip back to the staircase to my side, uh, but there was foliage on it. So the foliage would just obscure my entire screen, so I couldn't see anything because for some reason that stuff needs to, you know, be able to persist in front of the camera. Yeah, that was really good. There are ways around these things, and From just refused to do anything about it, especially considering they've shown evidence that they're interested in doing something about it. Sometimes it's like, ugh, because <laughs> that Ludwig second phase is so good, and it would be much yeah. worse if not for that zoom out of the camera. Mm-hmm. Oh, and his music is fucking the best in the game. There's a lot of better action games that know that the camera needs to do some work on its own in order for you to be able to see what the fuck is happening, and so you're not wrestling well, suppose, with it. Do we just say then, we just did the camera segment, it's like, what do you mean? It's like, it's the same fucking thing in all of the games. It's a problem, but it's also yeah. fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, <laughs> it's, it's fine. It bugs me when people complain about camera too much in reference to the idea as, as though this is the only one that has this problem it's like a lot of games have this problem camera's tough to nail yeah but this hasn't I, improved it at all i i honestly think it's a way bigger problem than god of war like the newest one i, I just recently played it on the highest difficulty and that especially on that difficulty not knowing that there's an enemy behind you about to attack is a serious problem to the point that the cam- the target focus is essentially useless at that difficulty mode. I you they have, like, need to be spinning the it. camera around you've all the time. Tiny little arrows. They, you've got like a little arrow, but uh, like on um, Give Me God of War difficulty, they attack so fast and hit so hard that you can't really rely on that. And so what arrow. you have to end up doing is kind of kiting yourself into a corner and then being able to see all the enemies that are currently attacking you. And I mean, I, I got through the game, but it was uh, mm-hmm. it was a constant struggle against the camera. And I find that the field of view in the From Software games tends to be more comfortable than that at the very well, least. Well, there are yo one back. Like I said, most of the time I think it works as intended and it's kind of okay, but sometimes it just fucks you up. And I don't know about you guys, you ever just jammed in enemies or into a wall, and the camera is actually the reason you die sometimes because you're like, yes, I'm stuck, but if I could just see where I am, where they am, and maybe I can make a mm-hmm. move, but it's just like the camera's fucked. It's gone up, it's gone down, it has no idea where anything is anymore. It's buried in the gargoyle. Like, I can't yeah. I can't see. It's a shame that it happens, but it do. Um, so many better action games have better cameras. Not all of them are perfect <laughs> cameras. Very few of them do, because camera's incredibly hard to nail, but we can do a lot better than this, FromSoft. Neo got it half right. Um, it doesn't like phase through the. Um... Wait, did I just disconnect? What the hell? Huh? Oh, uh, Fortier has fallen Fortier. asleep, so he's. Uh... Oh, <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I heard the disconnect that normally. Anyway, um, Neo had it uh, half right. Um, through like buildings and like houses and stuff, the camera would clip through the house. Um, but not so much in like solid mountains and stuff. So I got it half right. Mm-hmm. I mean. It's it's almost hard to compare, but I'd compare to good action games like Devil May Cry, Bayonetta, where the camera is doing a lot of work on its own without needing to be micromanaged by me to keep enemies on the screen. God of War 2 and 3 did that. You didn't even yep. have camera yeah. controls in that game, and it was great. Yeah, I think I've always felt yeah. 3 was the one that like finally figured everything out about God of War 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Um... So anyway, uh, that's it for camera, and because Das vaguely alluded to it in Bloodborne, I'm going to open with saying, I fucking adore Bloodborne soundtrack. This game's soundtrack's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, that's alright. Okay. It's okay, I guess. <clears throat> like, my, I love the menu theme. The my love theme for Bloodborne great. soundtrack is like an anger. I love it that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I have problems with this game's soundtrack but oh, goddamn it Theo <laughs> <laughs> god damn it Theo well, this sorry. could have been the okay. one where Theo's like no. yeah you know what the music perfect let me Spot finish on. that <laughs> a lot of the music's really good <clears throat> I was too harsh on it in my first impression because I was overexposed to the bad tracks because they're the ones that are constantly playing yeah I mean the uh okay so is it the uh the tree tree sentinel tree sentinel's and the, music and Dragon the music. one 
dragon music. Oh, dragon music and um, the the uh, tree, the, the the asylum demon. I mean the the tree monster. Uh, yeah. Is it oh. or, or is that is that the same track? Do the uh, dragons no, and the, the asylum track. demon share the same fucking track? No, they're, no. they're different tracks. Oh, okay. The uh, the problem I have with a lot of the game's music is it feels like someone took Dark Souls 3's entire soundtrack and fed it into an algorithm and then had that <laughs> algorithm make new songs, and this is what we got. It's the most incredibly generic, epic music that you ever did here. <laughs> However, a lot of the more designed boss themes specific to particular bosses are really well done. Uh, Malekith's is fantastic. Uh, Godric's is great in the first phase. Melania's is pretty good in the first phase. I actually uh, really like the Godskin lads' music. Oh, yeah, I yeah, about, I was about yeah. to say. Godskin yeah. man's music. And I felt it was a unique so, How's this for a double-edged sort of fucking commentary? I was like, I got stuck on Godskin Apostle for a little while uh, uh, in my third or fourth stream, I think. And I and I remember once I completed it, I was like, oh, thank God, one of the bosses I got stuck on had a really good track. And in my head, I was like, ooh, that's a bit bad <laughs> to say, isn't it? <laughs> mm. Uh, yeah, I um, I wasn't as impacted by the soundtrack in this game as I would very much like to be, though there were plenty of soundtrack parts that I was like, oh, my ears, they're oh, orgasm. The same. Cool. The theme is great. The theme's. I know. don't like the main theme. What well, do, I do. What don't you? I like do. About it's it? just that you know you can get. It's easy to get tired of because you've heard it, it too many times. Sure. It feels like well, I said. It feels very generically epic to me in a way that I find uninspiring. What do you think of the uh, Dark Souls Three main theme by comparison? It's okay. I see now. I I actually <laughs> really like Dark Souls Three. <laughs> better watch like your fucking mouth, lot. Theo. Well, it's, the thing is, is that I, for me. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of adore the soundtrack to Dark Souls 3. I think it's so There's a lot of really good, good tracks. Laurie and Lothric is awesome. I like Soul of Cinder, and I like both phases of Soul of Cinder, not just mm -hmm. the second half. Abyss Watchers is cool as fuck. Uh, oh, Abyss Watchers! I, Lord, I really yeah. like... Uh, I like the first phase of Dragon Slayer armor. It's really cool. Yeah, before the uh, poop monster. The second it. stage, I don't yeah, like as much. Yeah, the poop monster ruins it. Like, um, <laughs> well, it does. Just and uh, I, I really like. Um, but I guess music it's is embarrassing for him because it's one of the most insanely grandiose tracks you ever. I was going to say, I adore Vort's track. <laughs> Something that's uh, dude, board, board of the Boreal, Boreal Valley. Valley is amazing. I love that one. Something that is interesting about the FromSoft game. This is coming from someone who hasn't even played a lot of these ones, but uh, Demon Souls has a very uh, understated soundtrack by comparison. Yes. Um, like too. I think I think the clear. I don't know about that. It, Flame Lurker's theme <laughs> in uh, Demon Souls is really understated. But in the Demon Souls remake, it's this big, epic, bombastic song, they and I like it. The music, I think. But Flame Lurker is super, you know, it's dialed down, um, and it just sort of. Feel, I guess is that like? Would you say that your issue with the music in this game is that a lot of it is very loud and, and dramatic, over, right? Yeah, with loud, not much bombastic. variety. It yeah. feels unstructured, kind of like you're, like, yeah. I, I would no, go in the opposite like... direction. I'd say it's too formulaic. Well, I think um, I think it's contrast is interesting when you think about soundtracks because um, is the reason why Gwyn's theme is probably so impactful is because you don't expect the final boss of this game to have a really melancholic piano. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, you, uh, you, you would expect solo. something more. Yeah, and and like and uh, Sif is uh, there's kind of a sadness to that one. It's like, oh, I don't that's, like this. <laughs> that's what I, I like really... this song. I think it's fucking great, but <laughs> it makes you sad, what, doesn't it? What I when really it comes like to melody Sponge soundtrack for it's got a lot of that. It's got a lot of quieter tracks, and it's got a lot more melancholy to it. It feels like it has mm -hmm. a lot more character to it. And well, it, it, even when it's being more aggressive and you know uptoned, it's nowhere near as dramatic with how it takes itself. I say I think it's, as if I know anything about music. <laughs> well, I, I think I, that's, that was what I was about to call. I, I think it is difficult to say how good a soundtrack is in its totality because 
is it really good enough to say that there was a lack of variety in a soundtrack? What you know is that is mm. that necessarily a bad thing that a lot of the music is falling into a I guess a broad archetype, uh, or is it better when a soundtrack in its whole has more variety? Um, I I don't know. I I'm not yeah. sure how you and also the problem as well is the context of where it's placed. Yeah, in a game think... makes a big difference too. That's how I would try and connect it back, is how the track is used within the game and what each track yeah. represents. And thereby, uh, if there's lots of similar tracks, that means the game is playing a lot of similar notes, the same, like, over and over again. Mm -hmm. Which is I think, something uh, I would accuse this game of. Yeah, right. you, you, there's not a lot of hummable melodies in this game. It all sounds like a, a bucket of mud. Well, I guess yeah. uh, it's it's it's... <laughs> It's hard to. I think. Uh, I think one of the strengths that a lot of video game music had, uh, especially back in the eight bit and sixteen bit uh, era, was that the lack of instruments meant that there needed to be strong melodies are like pretty clearly identifiable in a lot of the like most iconic songs of that time because they really needed to lean in on those melodies. Now mm -hmm. we don't really have those limitations, but it feels like a lot of video games still lean into strong melodies. And I think you can see mm -hmm. that in um I think you can see that in even like the grand orchestral music that you have in like Dark Souls 3, that there are strong melodies for a lot of them. Yeah. Um, I mean if you want if you want to if you want a, rem a memorable soundtrack, those melodies do gotta have to stick. You need to be able to hum that shit. Well, I think a big part of it is that because video games often repeat the music over and over and over again, that music needs to be good. You you need you don't want to get bored of that music because you're going to be yeah, hearing huh? it a lot. That's what, part um, of why I'm like, always happy to fight Ludwig, even in his first phase. I get the track. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and that that's quite an accomplishment, isn't it? When you're so excited. To, I mean, Lady Maria. Holy shit! This song is so good. Also, the yeah, I, I, is I, German. I was literally German's humming to beautiful. the Godskin soundtrack, by the way, or whatever you want to call it, the track thing. So <laughs> it's, that's maybe the it's maybe my favorite one in the game. Probably not as good as Malekith's for me, but it's um, really good when I listen to it. I went and listened to a bunch of Elden Ring music the other day because. There was a conversation about it in the Discord, and yeah, I gave that sound. The ga I gave the game soundtrack a much worse rep than it really deserved because I was overexposed to the tracks I hated. Well, yeah. so I, I yeah, I guess I I guess I don't know how you would. It might be worthwhile to qualify for chat. By the way, I'm not really talking about Elden Ring soundtrack because I don't know it much. <laughs> I know the main theme, and I like the the uh, the ambient music in the first area that you go to. I guess that mm. might be a difference, though. This game has ambient music more so than um, How do you the other games. Feel about that choice, I I found Bloodborne to have a fair amount of ambient music. Like, in fact, well, Bloodborne I, I found was quiet. quiet. So so when I say uh, when I mean ambient music, I mean we're not counting boss areas, and we're not counting like a safe zone. Um, when you're out in the open world when the music is just playing uh or like when the music plays when you have an encounter um which i don't think the other games have right i think sekiro no. has ambient sekiro music. has ambient and combat uh, it does yes but yeah. i've uh there, there's i don't think i don't know i think it's just the time era or the the theme or or not theme the style. yeah the style i guess like when it, when you get into like that really japanese or samurai type style that i i I guess I just personally really do not like that type of music. Have you played just... uh, Ghost of Tsushima? Um, yes, a little well, bit. Ghost of Tsushima has a banger soundtrack, and it Does leads it? heavily into. I yeah, I think um, I think I think that song, "The Way of the Ghost," is fucking awesome. Uh, okay, that's a, um, that's a real strong melody as well that p throughout the whole game. Yeah, because like um, Sekiro uh, and uh, Sifu uh, both are very similar uh, in the regards of like their songs. They seem really simple with very minimal instruments, and they don't. And the 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 songs aren't very strong. It's just kind of weird and distorted flutes and shit. I don't really like that. Um, so I, uh, I didn't really like. I really like. Uh, is it is it called the wind flute? That's uh the the wind. It's it is right. The wind flute. That's the uh, that's like the. Some sort of recognizable jet. I need to double check if that's what it's called. I know that that's, uh, <laughs> I really like the way that, uh, I don't, yeah, I think, yes, I think it is, or uh, am I mixing up with something else? 
No, they're just giving me flutes. I need the the wind flute. This, what's it? Oh, there we go. There it is. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> that's uh, but I really love the sound that that instrument makes, and that's kind of one of the ones that you associate a lot with, I guess, like feudal Japanese kind of. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's not my thing. I didn't so for that. I didn't really dig Sekiro's soundtrack, but we're not talking about Sekiro, are we? <laughs> No, well, we're you is old and wrong. I am um, sorry. Well, so so uh, I guess for my reference, the the guy that you find in the bridge, what the Feld, what's his name again? Margaret, um, the Fellowman. Yeah, I like the music for him. <laughs> in the first phase is that Fellowman. similar to what it is throughout the game, or? Uh, yeah, most of the music is along yeah? that style, or the dragon, okay. or the skin um, flute. No. <laughs> I guess Ew. the thing is, is that I don't. Hmm. I'm not. I. I. Well, yeah. I guess I can't say anything. I haven't played. Uh. I haven't played enough of this game to it's, get a grasp on the soundtrack. It's a position for me of too much of the same thing. I'm okay with grandiose, bombastic tracks where they are warranted, but uh, I feel like this game has them everywhere, and oftentimes they feel kind of mismatched to what I've run into. Like the Tree well, Sentinel's so. kind of just a guy when his soundtrack goes harder than ONS. I like, guess um the thing is is uh now I'm thinking about Metal Gear Rising because I'm thinking about oh, yes. music and I'm thinking about <laughs> context as well because Metal Gear Rising has dynamic music where depending on which stage you're in the battle the music will change mm -hmm. to uh, the vocals kick in emphasize. halfway through. Well, yeah, the vocals will kick in usually when you like about to initiate you know the quick time event to end the battle. But uh, that's an interesting one because I mean, all of the music is loud and aggressive and in your face, but it still feels it's like so a variety so there. good. There's I, different... well, I love that soundtrack. Yeah, it's one of the best gaming has to offer. I feel probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's funny too and is I... like I think wasn't the art didn't the artist say that um, he'd never tried that type of music before? Really? Yeah, I think uh, I think I heard somewhere that that was the first time he'd ever attempted that kind of music. Oh, like, damn! <laughs> blew it away. Really great. <laughs> That game does so many cool things with its soundtrack, from yeah, different stylings of each track to the lyrics giving insight into different characters' motivations and stories. That's mm -hmm. it's like more games need to do that shit, as well as just the yeah, dynamic, dynamic stuff going on in it. Well, I mean, the Dark Souls games, I guess, kind of have it in that there are multiple phases for the boss battles and the music yeah. changes, but uh, there's not. Yeah, a lot but it's of hard to classify that as dynamic. I've noticed. No, no, no I, I get you. On that note, I've noticed in this game there seems to be a lot less phase transition music and a lot more the music cuts and then the second phase music starts playing. Mm -hmm. Just from uh, listening to tracks like Margaret the okay. Fellowman, for example, uh, he doesn't have. There is no transition from phase one to phase two. Uh, in terms of the track, as it is on YouTube, it's just there's the phase one music, then there's the phase two music. Is that? And, a, I wonder if, if if that's like an issue of technical. Because I, I mean, if you've done it before, right, you figure that you'd be able to do it again. Yeah. Um, I guess it is. You know that you need to try and musically justify the transition and find a way to make it work, and that can be a bit complicated. But I mean, if they've done it before, <laughs> I figure that they can. Is it the same composer as the other games? Uh, yeah, this game is mainly Yuka Kitamura, who's been in charge okay. of games from like dark souls 3 you can tell as an extremely similar sound to dark souls 3 okay well it says that there are five composers who worked on elden ring yeah this game hmm. big old team <laughs> and some of them uh what's the guy's name uh he made my yeah shoi miyazawa uh, first time working as a composer in on this game and made some of the best tracks for it. He's responsible for Godric the Grafted and he's responsible for Malekith's theme. It's like insane work for first time as a composer on a project. It's really Oh uh, really yeah. Cool. Right. Uh well so hmm. it's it sounds like the general sentiment is that uh that you all generally seem to like it, but you don't think that it's as strong as like Bloodborne or no, not, not even close, really. It, it doesn't come close to Dark Souls 1, 3, or Bloodborne to me, um, but I yeah. do like it. Right. One has so yeah. much character, dude, that mm -hmm. none of the others ever really... It had that really somber so. quietness about it at times, and none of the others ever recaptured that. Um, I mean, Bloodborne has some, uh, some chill. Well, not chill, but like... Bloodborne, <laughs> when, it, when Bloodborne's getting quiet, it tends to be unsettling. In yeah, the whole idea of that right. is just scary. It's I like love Hailed the soundtrack Nightmare. for that. Yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. 
Hail the Nightmare, the one playing in the Hippogian Jail, and it being fucking diegetic as well. That's <laughs> yeah. thumbs up for me. I really love that uh, that little like viola or cello melody that plays in the Hunter's Dream. Like, yeah. Um... Oh, that's very cozy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, I was about to ask, what is what is everybody's favorite track from the whole Soulsborn series? Gem and the First oh, Hunter. It's gotta be. It's gotta go to. Easy. Um, it it's gotta go to. Um, shit. Pa pass for a minute. Uh, yeah, no worries. I have a long list of honorable mentions, but it's pretty easily Gem and the First it Hunter. It might be me. Ludwig's track for me. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Ludwig's second half. It's right there. I like Hard Day's Night. That's a solid song. <laughs> mm -hmm. Metal. <clears throat> I'm just really bad at rem remembering does that play songs and video games. Oh, you're uh, a bad really, person. But I, but I really like Vort's theme. I really love that one. Vort's so, theme's great. I love it. Yeah. So fucking Intense powerful. as fuck, yeah. I yeah. know, they're like just, the second head. I love how it just matches the second phase, like <laughs> I'm grumpy man, but then all of a sudden he becomes a fucking bull rush and then the <laughs> music just kicks in. The You're intro gonna with die. those huge fucking pounding drums and the grass <laughs> going fucking crazy. It's like, this is Vort, man. He's shit. By the way, what a screenshot right there. <laughs> yeah. Poor man. That's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> One <laughs> HP. The sliver One problem. HP in a dream. I, uh,. Is anybody's favorite the Filing Shrine from Dark Souls 1? That track is excellent. I love it so much. It's not I, my I favorite. But I mean, I love Gwyn's yeah. theme a lot. Yeah, like Gwyn's I said, is great. Like I said, I have a very long list of honorable mentions. And I love Lauren and Lothric. Uh, what's it? That's their names, right? Am I, I'm yeah. going to mix them yeah. up. Am I, yeah, that one's really great. The transition. Oh, this is so mm -hmm. good. When you get um, a phase transition just right, it's yeah. some of the most pa like Ludwig's is so powerful for that reason as well, because the phase transition is so well executed, and <laughs> that's actually something Sekiro does quite wrong. Um, mostly Sekiro. I can't think of any other games. Uh, Someone said, there, "Come on, games. guys, Majula's the." A couple. Fuck off. A couple, off. Of, people chatted, uh, <laughs> a couple of people in chat have said "Nameless Song." Now, Nameless Song is, is that that made me like Ooh. deeply emotional when I beat the game for the first time, and that played. Is na nameless song sounds similar to the one from Demon Souls, right? The uh, the the credits, the Demon Souls. I, I can't heard Demon Souls called. credits song in a long time, but I uh, yeah, it's just reminded me of that one. Opens um, with really Demon lonely Souls vocals. One is, is really great. Yes, it does have the vocals. No Father Gascoigne. His is pretty cool. I like. Yeah, that his one. is great. I like Gascoigne. How many times does Theo need to say there would be a lot of honorable mentions? A lot that. of honorable. Yeah. I guess we're going uh, through them all like, now. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Would you say that Bloodborne has the best soundtrack of all? Theo, it's my favorite. Uh, I don't know if it's the best. Uh, well, I guess the problem is, what are we saying when we say best? That's the problem. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't have enough arguments for the music. Okay. Number of tracks, the like the number of tracks that you like, the one that you like the most wins. I guess. So just say favorite, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, if you've my got more tracks that you probably... like among the games than the most, I'd say it's your favorite. Hmm. Mine's Bloodborne with Dark Souls 1 story, just coming Bloodborne. behind it. Really? Overall, Blood... I probably like more tracks in Dark Souls 1 and maybe 3 than Bloodborne, but Bloodborne has higher highs. Yeah. Well, Orphan of Cost first that. phase... I think it's fantastic. I really like the second um, phase as well. Uh, I like the second phase too. Um, I, I like the first it. phase is sweet. It, it goes. It really is, especially because you can't hear it over the fucking screaming. <laughs> I like the second phase a lot because it goes really above and beyond a lot of what the game has been doing in terms of bombast, and it gives mm -hmm. off this very strong impression. It's very unsettling. Of, yeah, it's this is really strong impression of. Good God, this thing needs to die now. <laughs> that matches really well with a player's position when they're in that point, because usually, if you're not like a, a Dark Souls god, you get to Orphan Phase 2 and suddenly you're chugging through blood vials. You're getting tagged as he flies all over your fucking screen. I'm gonna love that fight, is... man. He is I'm so far beyond beat your... I still He's... haven't beaten that fight. Oh no, you He's must do it! So far beyond your control at that point, and it's an incredible experience with the music going as crazy as it does.
I'm so sure yeah, the Elden Ring soundtrack is not as yeah. great. I would say it's the weakest I, I, of the whole series. I just, I wasn't as impacted by it. Um, yeah. That's the best I can say. I wouldn't want to claim anything stronger than that. They do some really right. good things in terms of fitting a track to a boss. For example, uh, Godfrey, not Godfrey, uh, Godric's track has a lot of really random dramatic flourishes in among this. It uses the same uh, sinister waltz kind of thing that uh, Ludwig's track had going and uh, the first and second, well, the second phase, not the first phase. Uh, and then this, with Godric's track, it's like he's just making it up as he goes along. There's just, you know, random musical flourishes just here and there scattered, like whatever, because he's just doing whatever he wants, which is very fitting to the boss, I think, narratively. And I really like it when soundtracks are made to fit like that. I, just, I guess I should just, I just want it said, it's like, loads of people will adore this one more than any other, and they'll be like confused, just like, for me, I'm just like, I mean, it's, I can't really do anything to explain more. I mean, it's, <laughs> they're wrong. I don't, I don't know that you can talk somebody into or out of a perspective on a on like music and music, of, especially I guess, the impact on them. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I, I don't like nobody. Nobody can come up to me and be like, "Well, no, you see, this is the reason why like filing shrine is actually terribly composed." First of all, I wouldn't believe that. But second of all, even if you could prove it mathematically, it's like, well, I still like it a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you can't know. retroactively change someone's experience when it comes to listening to a song. Firelink is so somber but sad, and but you I know, adore peaceful Firelink. It's it is it is a weird mix of uh, peaceful and sad, and um, yeah. yeah, and it's like ah, home, such it is, such as it is, kind of thing. Ah, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, home, this sucks. I'm sad. <laughs> well. <laughs> I think I think that is the the great thing about that track is it does actually make you feel a little bit safe, <laughs> like at least a little bit. It's kind of um like Resident Evil save room music. Yes, Resident. I was just, I, <laughs> yes. it's fucking uncanny <laughs> that you were thinking about that because I was literally thinking about it and having it play in my head as you were talking about <laughs> that weird sort of neutral, unsettling but safe at the same time music. Dum dum. Yeah, dun, Resident dun, Evil two is dun, really great for dun, that because. Um, it feels it's sad, but it's like, but you are safe here, you know. You you feel yeah, you're safe, safe. and it's For just now. like you're you're For now. yeah, it's like you're safe. Mm -hmm. The song, All right? Best Res uh, Resident Evil with the best save room. Uh, oh, one go. I can't remember <laughs> enough of them. I, I, I was going to default the four. Uh, two is pretty safe. fucking good. The one the one regs was humming in in my head is the only one. I don't know if I just play it in my head whenever I get to a save room in other Resident Evil games or what, but I immediately like the second thing he said Resident Evil other. save rooms. Doom doom doom. <laughs> like instantly. Doom, doom, doom. It's like a reflex. I really like the Resident Evil 2 one. Because there's sort I of really, two really in like Resident Evil 4. Yeah, RE2 is pretty... Yeah, I'd say that's my favorite. RE2. It's so good! <laughs> <laughs> it's really fantastic. I'm I'm almost certain that Resident Evil Village had a soundtrack. It, it <laughs> definitely had one, sure? I think, but I can't remember any of it. Might need to confirm later. Yeah, we'll find out. We'll get science on it. <laughs> um. Well... What is next? Um, it's a bit of a broad topic, I suppose, but it's something to address, as as with all of their games. The the RPG side of everything. What what's, what are we thinking? Well, there is a lot of shit you can do in this. Dark Souls Three in it. Basically, yes. <laughs> 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 well, there was a funny thing about that. Uh, some people, I guess, square it as a criticism, but it's just something to be discussed. They're like. This is just Dark Souls or Dark Souls 3 in an open world. It's like, that's why I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, just... I know. There, there was some asshole on Discord that said like, Whoa, you guys got suckered into buying the Dark Souls 3 again. It's like, um, no, Everyone that's why I'm here. You know, uh, let's let's, let's be honest for a second. Really right. <laughs> if they yeah. released a Dark Souls 3 expansion that was as big as Dark Souls 3 again, and it, <laughs> they charged $60 or whatever, I think we'd just be like, I'd, all right. Yeah, I'd yeah. Be sure. Sweet, I'm in. I'd be in. I probably would have liked that more than this. <laughs> Theo, you always find a way to dampen any statement being made. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just 
the thought occurred to me, and it was really outrageous. <laughs> I had to say. Well, we, we, we've talked about this. Elderry's kind of funny. It's like, no, these aren't Titanite shards. They're somber smithing stones. You're like, smithing oh, stones. okay. No, no these, these aren't, aren't stones. stones. They're runes. It's not Estus. It's flasks of crimson tears. You're like, what? <laughs> well, I think even... Did anyone ever see the interview with George R. R. Martin where he's he's talking about this game and it, it almost sounds like he doesn't really know anything about it? Like, no. because people he's are asking... Boomer talking about a video game? Yeah, but well, like in, in that in that interview, he's like, "Oh yeah, it's um it's a sequel to a, a game called called Dark Souls. Uh, this one's called The Elden Ring." Ooh. So like he actually Ooh. said it's a sequel. Well, to be fair, I don't know what he, I don't even know what he did in the in, in the game. So I guess it's just like a back and forth relationship. It, it, <laughs> it sounds like his work on it was done like four years ago, and hmm. I they said he he helped with the world building. So my guess. Is he Miyazaki and a translator went out for coffee and talked for a few hours? And that's yeah, probably. And then, it. and then George R. R. Martin said he was going to do it, and then didn't. And um, yeah, Miyazaki finished. I think it. they were like, <laughs> yeah, yeah a, Miyazaki eventually his, just wrote it for him. Imagine his contribution was like, make it about a ring, and it's like, has that ever done before? It's like, no, no, oh, really, oh, a fan it, yeah, world. a fantasy series centering around. And whenever the, ring. The, the enemies die, they're felled. All right. Fell. Like a fell. tree? Yeah, 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 like a tree. Yeah, like a lumberjack. Down knight. like a tree. And make a big snake man who says together in a stupid voice. <laughs> there, uh, there are some dragons in there too. People love dragons. Make them <laughs> shit though. <laughs> but yeah, Do we have a lot of dragons? No, just one copy pasted. <laughs> I would go as far as saying that um, whatever commentary you have for the RPG system in Dark Souls 3, it's going to be very similar for what you have to say in this game, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah mega similar. Yeah, I don't know that we need weapons to go up to plus 25, but I don't know. They certainly whatever. made that the case, though. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Bigger, like well, better, plus more! Plus 15 was fine, I thought, but... I don't know. Maybe it's a Unless way to keep a special weapon, new or old weapons 10. more viable longer. No, sure, but you don't need to go to twenty-five to do that. You don't the need prevailing. to do a lot of things. Because well, there's a problem, right? Because uh, to upgrade normal weapons that don't upgrade using somber stones, you need vastly more quantities of uh, normal smith. Yeah, for stones. reference, the somber ones they go up to a plus ten on the weapons. These are plus twenty-five. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and the plus and, the and you need about up. twelve stones per. Yeah. I think it was three levels. Yeah, yep. and, and the solar ones, six. they need one. They need one of each type. Yep. <laughs> and it, I don't really know why that's the case. It feels, it feels weirdly punishing. Maybe it's to encourage... I, I guess with so much content in this game, it gives you another reason to keep looking for them. Uh, eventually you can buy a lot of the somber stones even too. So it's uh, like, I actually, th- I, I was expecting the, like once I figured out the, the weapon leveling system and knowing that the legendary weapons are only upgraded with the somber stones, I kind of figured though, those would be items that you can only find, but you get bell bearings for the somber ones too. And once you get the bell bearings for the, the standard ones, it, it kind of trivializes the like, well, we need to, up these by 25 levels because all it means is if you want to totally switch to a new weapon and it'll get it up to level 24 you can do that by buying the the shards that you need or not shards but you know the stones that you need for it um it's only the the ancient dragon stones that will be for the level 25 upgrade and those ones i believe you have to get by killing one of the ancient dragons that it's it's like slabs in the old games that's just like yeah getting yeah, this yeah. is a big deal you got the big upgrade material, but uh, the 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 fact that uh, it takes normal non somber stone weapons so long to scale up compared to somber stone weapons has a knock on effect of making them feel a lot weaker in moment to moment gameplay. Because I don't know if anyone else had the same experience, but I found it a lot easier actually to scrounge together the materials to upgrade my somber stone weapons. Yes, and each upgrade yeah. mattered a lot more. Like a plus mm-hmm. four Bloodhound's Fang versus my plus four Uchigatana. The plus four Bloodhound's Fang is like miles ahead. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> so it, it feels like I, I don't know why it is this way, I guess. Yeah, I was um, I really wanted to start using Ashes of War on a um, on a great sword. 
And so I thought, okay, well, what if this? we got this great sword that's got bleed on it, so I don't have to keep on using the beast fang, right? But then when I got um, the, the other bleed sword to, like, level 20, beast fang level 9 was still, like, leagues above it. It's like, damn, mm -hmm. dude. I was just wondering when my Uchi Katana would catch up, if ever, and then I just found a somber stone katana, and then, you know, it was over. <laughs> um, yeah, the general statement, I guess, would just be that you can pursue many different stats, and uh, it seems to be have, it has, like, a general sense of a strong balance, as far as I'm concerned. It seems to work pretty well. Like, uh, there's a lot of different options you can go for. I, I, obviously, it can always be stronger. I still think that all of the Soulsborne things have problems with how exactly it can work and how you can exploit it, but I'm not sure what else we should say about it, basically. I'm wondering mm. what, other, what other commentary I can offer, because mm. I noticed this game is kind of like Bloodborne, early game, in the sense that you don't really get much out of putting points into damage stats because your weapon scalings scale up with upgrade level so your scalings kind of suck when you first get the weapons you want to use uh so there's no real point in investing into damage stats and because the damage in this game is so high you're pretty much just better off pumping health and you don't need stamina like you do not, not need to really level no. stamina in this game i think I, the only time i really needed stamina was when i got to millennia i i did a test with a friend and it's fucking bonkers uh, I, I started Dark Souls 1 again recently because I wanted to, you know, cleanse the palette. Uh, and that game, I started as the Banditman with the Scimitar. You can, mm. with your starting stamina and your starting equipment on, you can roll four times or swing four times. The last swing or roll coming out with, like, a tiny sliver of stamina. In, in this game, in Elden Ring, with your starting stamina, you can swing an Ultra Greatsword six times. And you're good. <laughs> I'll say this. I love that running when you're not in combat does not consume stamina. Oh, with the yeah. distances you have to travel? That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is a good one. I think, it it, didn't very... DS3 was like the one that started that big change for how stamina worked? Or was it DS2? It, uh, I think it was DS3. Stamina has been trending down in importance for yeah, Sekiro, ever. there's Dark no Souls stamina one. at all. Is seriously important. Dark Souls 1 becomes a very deliberate game in all your choices when your stamina is that limited. Mm -hmm. I am, I am, especially with how Your quickly it regenerates as well, because in this game it regenerates a shitload faster as well. I am this close to saying this game may as well not actually have stamina. Well, it's funny because, like, um, I think Dark Souls 1 trained people to level stamina. And I remember in Dark Souls 3, the, the people, when I was playing it online, would be like, why aren't you leveling stamina? And I was like, I still really need to. And in this game, I didn't even consider it, really. Uh, I, I, I did level a fair amount in endurance. I think part of that was so I could carry my shield in addition to my greatsword oh. and not that roll. To be yeah. fair, that was the only time I considered it was equip load. It wasn't stamina. I was about to yeah. say, you, you yeah. level endurance when you want equip load. Because I, I got, like, this big, big, chunky armor, the goat one. And that needs like a fuck ton of endurance if you also want to equip a weapon later on. At that on. point, though, and... it's like the equip load stat and stat stamina just doesn't even... Stamina should be much more important. I don't know why it's not. Because they want to do action combat. Ooh. And they need you to be able to actually move. And I don't know. Then they should... Maybe they should have it tied to... If they want to strike that balance where you don't, like, need it, I guess... Then maybe the compromises you need it for like heavy attacks, or you need it for particular. Like if there was two different, like you know how The Witcher Three had two dodges, right? You had the short one, and then you had the long roll. Uh, maybe something like that. But there's I, there's got to be a way to strike I, that balance. I'm sure there is. I do feel like if they're going to keep going in this direction, their time with the stamina mechanic is probably done. Because in this game, in 90% of cases, uh, the limiting factor on my ability to do things was not my stamina. It was what the enemy was doing. Yeah. Like, I'm never going to be able to exhaust my stamina unless I get a really lucky sequence of boss attacks or I'm just flailing at an enemy way too hard. 
what about blocking though cuz cuz blocking that, that hits your concern. hits your stamina and and like i mean that's kind of the factor of how many hits you can tank before getting knocked off balance so what if it I, was i don't a, know i'm um, not i'm not sure what the answer is you'd have to jury rig something together yeah mm. cuz you also maybe need blocking could stamina. deplete your stamina and then after that it starts depleting health well, I mean, actually, I, I answered my own question by saying Sekiro has no stamina bar. In Sekiro, it's your your posture. So you have yeah. a posture bar that fills, and as if you're just doing standard blocks, every single hit will add to your posture bar, and when it's full, you get knocked off balance. But if you're deflecting, so if you're timing your blocks with the actual hits landing on your sword then you deflect you basically like parry the enemy just several tiny parries as opposed to the single big ones that you do in in the souls games it adds to instead of adding to your posture bar it adds to your enemy's posture bar so that is one thing i really liked about sekiro that you can actually hurt your enemy by being good at defense and that i, I thought was a, a pretty cool mechanic People are. I've seen someone say that great sword is still reliant on stamina. I'm using a great sword in my second playthrough. No, they're not. <laughs> Gonna run out of stamina. Yeah, no, not not really for attacking. I, I yeah, used a great sword in my playthrough. I suppose worth mentioning it's like we all will hit zero on stamina, but it's about really noticing that as opposed yeah. to it simply mm -hmm. happening. Because DS one, like you have to be aware of your stamina. Uh, in this I, game, I, I was I, rarely I, having to be concerned about it. I have enough stamina right now with all the endurance I had to level for this armor. I can swing my my, my hellbird two-handed. All like full combo twice before I run out of stamina. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I I cuz I like I said I've been playing a little bit of Dark Souls 1 again uh, as a comparison and Jesus Christ, you really have to be aware of your stamina in that game because oh, yeah. it runs out really quick and it's not coming back that fast as compared to the newer games. Also, your dodge roll only uh, goes in four directions and that's really off-putting. Yeah, could have fixed that yeah. with the remaster, but then they decided, yeah, nah. Oh, they could have yeah. fixed so much they, with they, the remaster. They did. That was the only <laughs> thing they changed for the gameplay in the Blue Point's Demon's Souls remake that they, they made it omnidirectional rolling. And I, I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a good change. <laughs> I wish I could play that. I also wish I cared about PS5. Yeah, I, I don't use mine very often, to be honest, so uh, I wouldn't it, recommend it needs... the financial investment. Yeah, it needs more games. <laughs> Why is game not other game? Gah. I mean, for a second there, I was like, are you saying that <laughs> about our commentary for how Dark Same Souls does me. not have the mechanic? No, I know. But the funny thing is they said it right after we were saying, like, oh, four directions, not cool. Omnidirection, cool. It's like, why is this game not the other game? It's like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. Um, the four directions in Dark Souls 1, I think, is only complemented in the fact that Dark Souls 1, compared to the rest of them, has enemies that are much more predictable because that was before a lot more of the attitudes of making them fast and unpredictable had come in. Um, yeah. So the four directions is you know, not as hampering at this point. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, I would prefer omnidirectional for sure. Yeah, it's still annoying. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. still change it. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I'm playing right now. Um, I had to take care of an invader <laughs> named DS2 is bad. <laughs> <laughs> he is not wrong. I, I am ashamed that I had to kill him. Um, well, there's two options here. We've kind of covered them briefly. I don't know if there's anything else that wish to be said about encounter and level design. Uh, sorry, say again. I've Encounter completed. and level design. Basically, how they've constructed the game for you to complete it. Uh, how much thought do you believe has gone into it versus not? And do you think there are problems or praises? I think they just wanted you to give you this whole big area. And I'm just like, go wild. I any, don't think that was any such world? consideration as to that's, the placement of enemies it. in terms of how <laughs> the player is going to approach them. I don't yeah, think there was it, any, really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, any world that is easy to distract me in like a good way that makes me want to see like what's in there, what's in there, is uh, it's 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 good in my book. Well, yeah, actually, uh, I liked it. 
any is not correct, uh, sorry, uh, because there are cases where there's clearly an effort put into the level design, things like Stormvale. I don't mm -hmm. think Stormvale is like a fantastic level. I think it's probably pretty good, maybe a bit less than pretty good, thereabouts. It's about on the level of a DS3 level, I suppose. I was much more um, excited by entering castles than I was by entering catacombs or whatever, because I was like, at least the castle... No, God. Yeah. The castle will likely have started as someone trying to design a real castle and then match it to be mechanically satisfying in some way. And so I was always like, here we go. With catacombs, it's just like, all right, got to find the lever, wherever that may be. And then... <sighs> the, the capital sewers made me want to kill myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Going God, around in tubes area. and pipes. I'm like, oh, please don't. Storm I'm bail. better than this. I'm better than this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only went into the sewers at all because I thought that that's where you had to go to fight the final boss. Because it, it seemed like <laughs> you get you get done at Fair Missoula, you respawn, and then the first thing ahead of you is a big hole into the sewer. So I'm like, all right, down we go. And then <laughs> got through the entire dungeon. It was like, wait, I just I just leave now? Well, know. you do got to go down <laughs> to the sewers to uh, take care of the Poop Man quest. Stormvale yeah. had a pretty neat thing going on in that it was approachable from two directions because of the do you want to take the front gate or you know clamber around the side thing. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, that was reasonably interesting. But would I be right in saying the level is pretty like tiny? Feels pretty tiny thinking about it. Stormvale. Stormvale. Yeah, Stormvale Storm isn't so. very. I mean, the capital bigger. is much bigger, but I guess it is actually yeah. much bigger. So you know. Yeah, which. You know, using scale appropriately, so whatever. <laughs> Maybe Stormvale should be small, but... I didn't find I as much to be impressed by with when I was approaching each thing in the world. I was more so just like, alright, who's next? Alright, what's next? Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah. as opposed to, oh, they want me to try and, okay, or ooh, this, that, oh, this is yeah. a challenge, or oh, this is going to take advantage of what I've learned recently, the blah, blah, blah. Like, nah, not really. Um, which Doesn't I can forgive like to some degree because of how enormous this fucking game is. Yeah. At Somebody that point, said uh, it's small but complex. Priorities. I like that. I don't yeah. know if I'd call Stormvale all that complex. It's small, certainly, and it's a pretty good level, but I don't think it's complex. Uh, also, question is if I go into the Forge of Giants, am I headed toward the end game? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't so, still a bit then. to go. Still a bit to Are go. Are you worried about like, I mean, like... locking yourself off from something or. I don't want to like go straight to the end boss just yet. Uh, but it no, looks, there are two areas. There's a couple areas where I thought I was going end bossy, and I'm, I, I don't want to go there yet. You've got two more areas, with one being significantly bigger than the other, and the other one being a variation of something you visited before. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I I'm tried to say that with as few spoilers as possible. <laughs> That's fine. I'm in the Halig tree. It looked kind of end gamey up here, so I wasn't sure. No, I like Ooh. Oh, fuck no. Have you, have you got to the bottom of the Halig tree? Uh, I think so. Oh, well, it I might have. I, I, I had to kill another pain in the ass uh, tree worm guy in Scarlet Rot. That was great. Uh, how do you feel? About, how do you feel about redheads? <laughs> redheads? Yeah. Are you talking about Millicent? Mill? <laughs> no. Yeah, you know. Well, when it when it happens, Millicent you'll know. By, Millicent went bye bye, and so. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but I've already helped Millicent out. Oh, you will. <laughs> How do you guys feel about the Raya Lucaria Academy? I I really don't like the fact that the whole big network of rooftops and everything with all the marionette soldiers and gargoyles and everything is is sort of an area that you don't even have to go to at all. And um, I've played the I've played that area three times, and I keep on forgetting that to to get to the boss, you just have to go right instead of left once you get to that courtyard after the first boss. Mm -hmm. That's actually another enemy I fucking hate. Is those weird dudes with like a million bows and arrows and when they spaz out and just go Very <laughs> nuts, yeah. I hate them it's like oh, why yeah. did you do this to me because <laughs> if the enemy flails then it's difficult yeah, that's, not, yeah, not maybe, a bad that's summon, Bloodborne's though. fault by the way yeah <laughs> they learned that one from Bloodborne and they haven't been able to let go of it and at least in Bloodborne they were like right your character's really fast and the gameplay's really fast so we need some enemies that are real fast you know like I see how yeah. that happened but then you just put it in everything and the things that are flailing at you are literal beasts. Like, they're at least huge that, yeah. monsters. Like, you know, we can get something out of this. I like the marionette guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> That's an opinion. That's fine. Uh, it is fine. I like them when I can one-hit kill them finally. What about <laughs> opinions on the academy, though? I do enjoy. You just, you just best not miss. I, I enjoy the way it loops back in on itself with the rooftop segment, but the enemies in it are. Blech. And yeah. the encounters in it. They decided. I... You know Shrine of Amana? Shrine of Amana was cool. Let's do that. It looked uh, cool. Uh, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I was like, oh, oh boy. You know that room that has three different magic caster guys who are just going to spam spells at you the moment you get around the <laughs> Meanwhile, the floor may fall out from under you because oh, your torch God, wasn't holding yeah. down. Don't. Anyone attempting yeah, to defend Shrine of Amana, I feel sorry for them. <laughs> yeah. That's even an uphill battle. Remember, <laughs> H Bomber guy was desperate when defending that place to the point where he was like, "Some people say it's hard when you don't have people to help you through it." And it's like, "Well, I guess it sucks for anybody who doesn't have friends." H <laughs> <laughs> Bomber guy has entered on, the chat. Dude. <laughs> is it... <laughs> Just, uh, DS2. This is the thing, by the way. I'm just gonna say it now in case there was any confusion. This game is leagues ahead of DS2. It's like a yeah. Yeah. different realm of existence, okay? Oh, god, yeah. It, I, I think it did pull some things from DS2, but l luckily, uh, uh, Name three. is probably gonna agree. <laughs> they have three things that it pulled from it um, power stancing, uh, repeated enemies that are out in the open world, and, um, Oh, I guess, yeah, maybe getting a third one might be kind of tricky. And oh, I think disgracing the boss health bar. Disgrace. Oh, disgracing the boss health bar, yeah. Well, <laughs> to be I fucking hate the logic that it's got DS2's DNA. It's like DS2 and this have Dark Souls DNA, which has Demon Souls yeah, DNA. Yeah. Yeah. No, like it's a vindication of, do of uh, Dark Souls 2. Which is another I, interesting I, thought. I, I if anything, it's a condemnation of Dark Souls 2, because it tried to do things that that game did, but implement them better, and it still managed to fail yep. in certain regards. <sighs> Look, the most of this game is DS3. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. Oh, yeah. No, no, absolutely. It's not DS2 or 1 or Demon's Souls. It's DS3, this game. But the thing is, you'd be like, well, where does most That's of DS3 fine. come from? And you're like, well, DS1, not DS2. DS1. <laughs> and then where does most of DS1 come from? Demon's Souls. And then where does Demon's Souls come from? It's like Mario. So, you know, it's all the same. <laughs> Mario. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what uh, do you guys think about the scaling of that optional area, the helic tree thingy? Um, I the hate scaling? this place. I kind of hate it a little bit. I didn't want to say. I hate the helic tree. I kind of hate oh, the helic I don't, tree. I don't mind it. Honestly, as as stupid as it sounds, putting a jump button in this game is a game changer for the platforming. It is. It, uh, really it changes is. a lot of how you approach <laughs> everything in this game. It really does. My problem isn't with the platforming. It's just that this place is DS2 written all the I, fuck it's, over It's it. full of the worst <laughs> enemies in the game. I was going to say, oh, God, there's so many poo enemies in that fucking area. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all I'm running all through it right now. Dude, enemies. who the hell thought, hey, how about this upgrade to the ulcerated tree spirit? Put him in a scarlet rot lake. It's like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Why would you? Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was so happy I didn't have to fight that thing. Like, I was just like, I, I, I died grabbing the item that was in the middle look, of that rot. And my pride was challenged. Out. Okay. Hey, man, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Hands, you want to fight like two of him at once? Uh, oh. How about six? You like six? Yeah, I was going to say, if you run through that area, mm -hmm. like, you run to evade one of them, it spawns another one, it spawns another one, you're like, you are <laughs> fucking kidding me right now. Or three three of the crystallines at a time that you got to break their armor before you can really <sighs> the do The crystal dudes damage. are annoying yeah, as hell, yeah. Yeah, I hate them. Oh, the best thing about that zone is a skip that a speedrunner found where you can throw yourself down an elevator shaft to land on the button, killing yourself to bring the elevator back up to skip wow. the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. That's thinking outside the box right there. <laughs> you skip the entire zone. Cause Damn, that's right fucking... I want to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta get, like, you have to get the that. jump awesome. like perfect. I'm assuming. Yeah, you have to get the jump. Yeah, just... you'd have to you'd have to nail the aim. Also, the enemies in here are just like triple the triple the damage from everything else. Like everything just becomes super tanky. Mm -hmm. Like um, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely that kind of area where you're like, oh, I see, I see what we're doing. We'll see what also, we have another Riley recycled Perry. boss here. I just only just noticed this. This the L L L Loretta. Yeah, because you fight her uh, in uh, what's the fucking that's a the place with the hands. Rana's <laughs> class. Uh, uh, carry a manor. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, hey, know, wait, uh, that's another one where you fight a ghost version of her, and I was kind of thinking, oh, well, probably Dude, fight her later, and I got to the Alec tree. The was like, ah, Godfrey there you are. one is baffling. Yeah, uh, I, I really, really don't like that they made Godfrey a spirit, and then what are you he's doing, like the eh? second last boss of the game. Oh, this area I, I like was the carnage. fight. Dude. Trying to fight um, double big boy knights with uh, one of those tree avatar things. Yeah. There were there were ways to cheese this. Fuck no. But I was desperately trying to engage with this on a level that I thought the game wanted me to, and my god, it was absolute cancer. Do you like him spamming the butt slams? He's doing it, and I'm not even Split. near him. Look, you can't, you can't get all out of the plane. You're just not allowed. Ah. And the funny thing is, yeah, the him. mimic managed to survive that with half health. It's fucking insane. It's fucking absurd. Yeah, yeah, look at this absolute carnage of just. This is what I mean. So this is what encounter design I think is, is yeah. definitely being commented on. This is just stuff. There's stuff the game, everywhere. It yep. feels to me like the game does this a lot, where there's just stuff around, and you'll fight the stuff, and in doing so, you'll pull more stuff, and then there's stuff everywhere. Which, yeah, yeah. By the way, was my big criticism of DS2's encounter design. Yeah, that's exactly. When I say DS2 all over the place, this is numero uno right here. Yeah. Now that I'm in the helic tree, I regret my choice to make a tank build because it's worthless <laughs> now. It's just absolutely it's worthless. Worthless like, now. Like, the like all the tankiness the... I had this whole game, just like yeah, you died in three hits. <laughs> well, the, oh, the good okay. news is, if you have two larval tiers, you can completely respec and then spec back. Oh, I have probably like five or so. What do you have, like, hey, ten? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, had, I had to do the first playthrough. I had so many of them. It's like, oh, what do I actually need to respec? It's like, oh, I have... Okay, I can respec lots of times. I accidentally put some points into stamina early on. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well respec real quick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Going back. Do you like the ants gotta that deal, way to the boss for some reason, a billion damage with their, Dude, like, those, goo yeah. attack? Th those what? ants with the big head? Yeah. They're, like, super <laughs> tanky, and when they ram you, they take away half your health. It's like, what is happening? You're ants. I don't know why. How, about the, how about the little ass you that insta-kills you? Yeah, I don't know why the, the, the weird spew attack hits as hard as it does. Oh, mm -hmm. oh it's so it's spew quick. attacks. The fucking big lobsters with their spew oh, attack, they can just shoot across the map. Oh, speaking of fucking... Do you remember the railgun archers in uh, Tsiofra River? The weird minotaur... Oh, oh the, 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 the deer I hated fuck, them. Fucks. What were they oh, thinking? Oh my god, what the fuck <laughs> happened when they made those? I hate the normal versions of those enemies as well, because they just don't stop. Oh, they go on that was a huge and mistake, yeah. and I'm so glad that was like the only place they were at. Holy shit. There is more of them somewhere in Leonia. <clears throat> um, I wish for all of you to see this, okay? So I did a jumping attack right. onto him, yeah. and I was like, it'll land, and then I will walk around him on the, the edge oh, of the banister. No. Unfortunately for <laughs> me, that's not quite how it goes. And boom, I am knocked down. But hey, that's not so bad. I've survived, and ultimately... Where I am is actually safe compared to where I was. Oh. <laughs> fucking vomit falls to the ground. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> pain, 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 pain. It's like a look of like, take this with you. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, those enemies you're talking about, they drove me nuts. Uh, it was the most fear I felt in the entire game because I was actually like trying to keep my 10,000 runes at the time, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so for the sake of people out there who are wondering what we have to say about it, I feel like we must mention story. <laughs> who here uh, knows what happened in this game? I ring. have a vague ring. idea. Ring. You win. There There's was a ring, a ring. that's true. And, um, <laughs> you, and, Guys, and you win. No, I have a very good question. Fellas, what's the it. Elden Ring? It's a big, it's a magical thing. It's like yeah, a and when it, when it broke, everybody got fucked in the face. What does it do? That's the name of an elderly stripper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think the Elden Ring does? Powerful. It, it is the one ring that would ru rule them, them, them all. The Elden mm. Ring is a MacGuffin? <laughs> it's it's... Sev several shards so, of a MacGuffin. Is it not hilarious that I have no fucking clue what the answers are to these questions and I don't even yeah. care? I'm just like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah no, I was, neither do I I'm really. kind of at that point as well. Somebody was asking me, it's like, what's so what's the story? And I'm like, uh, oh shit. This was I just not paying ring, attention? I think. I think there's the more for us to is... all have gained had we read every flavor text of every fucking item, but I just don't 
appear to. And it is, it is funny because it'd be like, oh, have you not played the game for very long? It's like 100 hours, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got the, the a real... who did some explaining of some lore things to me because I just came to him with questions from time to time. Oh. And I had some interest in some of the lore stuff from that because there's some kind of neat concepts going on. But uh, the story, oh, geez. Oh, no. Nothing's like working. there's a, some NPCs and their story quests is all like I can I can recall what happened. You know, Millicent was pretty cool. Ronnie uh, was you know, follow up Ronnie question. Cool. And, and poor poor fucking Blyde and all of his friends. What's an Elden Lord? Blyde. Just like an old person. Yeah. I I think it is the person that holds the Elden Ring, and I, I actually <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that that is that well, he, he puts it on his <laughs> Elden finger. Yeah. <laughs> I have no clue, man. I don't if, know why it's it meaningful will, either. So here's what we'll find out. In like a month, Vati video will yep. put some videos. Yep. <laughs> we'll get, we'll we'll get like, a nice oh, yeah, smooth base. I dug into the game code and I, un <laughs> I uncovered this story. <laughs> what, uh, a, a you have questions like, to... what do you think of the characters? And you're just like, oh. The fucking characters. Everyone really <laughs> likes the, the blue girl. I hate her because everyone likes her. I'll, Theo, you I shouldn't have said that. People are just going to believe that's your kid takes on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it because everyone likes it. I ended the game as the consort of a four-armed waifu, Wait, and I'm not sorry. That can't, mm -hmm. that can't be true of me entirely, Mola, because I like Arcane. I knew you'd like say that. that, and I'm pretty yeah. sure you don't like how mainstream it is. Yes. There you go. Oh <laughs> shit! Oh no! <laughs> Exposed <laughs> immediately. You're very much a person of I like my things, and no one else can like them. Stay away! <laughs> oh my god, Kenneth! Oh. All right, <laughs> Mel is getting really angry at Theo. Jeez. It's just a stupid fucking boss. Just doesn't stop attacking. <laughs> Wait, which one something. are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, Rita, Knight of the Halic Tree. That you like her sad. spamming the magic swords that, you know, zone you out, but then she doesn't really do anything on her own, so you yeah. just have to, you know, sit around. I've just been dodging, like, forever and can't do shit. <laughs> it's just so annoying. Um, I mean, that... Uh, uh, what else do we have to say about the story? I can, I can try and tie it into something that, uh, I guess affected my experience with the game, if that'll get us anywhere. Sure. So, um, for me, I quite value having direction in games. I, I, that may have come across in my experience of interacting with the open world. I, I don't do well in terms of mindlessly just sort of wandering in a direction on the promises that, that there might be something that way. I, I like to have a reason to go in the directions I go in a game that's provided to me, or at least can be justified within the narrative, ideally. Uh, in this game, that means just following the critical path or wherever the grace leads. So I got to Margit, and you know, you might think you can go somewhere else, but I, I couldn't... It was so hard for me to think of a justification for going, going and exploring the other 60% of Limgrave, because I was like, why would I... Margit's here. This is where I'm supposed to go. I don't know. Maybe I'm too much of an NPC or whatever, but the idea of just the story not mattering at all to why I do any of the things I do in the game kind of bums me out. Hmm. I, I think that it does within the world. It's just that it did, it didn't to most of us because, it, like like all the From Software games, really, with the possible exception of Sekiro, the, the story's just not really... It's not on the front burner. Like it, it's there if you want to dive into it, if you want to read a bunch of item descriptions, well, if you want to talk to more NPCs. More. But, but I mean, realistically, it's a it's a video game that you're playing for the gameplay for the most part. Or I find most of their games tend to be. It's got lore and gameplay, less story and plot and characters. I would I would actually fight that a little bit. I would argue Dark Souls One is pretty clear with it actually what's going is. on in it. It is clearer like than this it's game. It's very is. explicit. It's really explicit. Yeah, like, uh, and I think it's understandable I mean, in terms of what they're actually going for in that game and what meaning you can pull out of it, even yep. in the surface level Vegas sense. In this game, I don't know what the Elden Ring is. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. That's fair. <laughs> I don't know what I, I anything guess... I'm doing is or means or the context of any of it. 
from from a guidance standpoint though as far as like how the plot directs the player to do the thing in, in dark souls one it's kind of just oscar's like hey yeah i gotta go ring that bell you want to take care of that for me and then you're <laughs> off i gave you a flask it's it's a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty simple trajectory go and ring escape from the asylum go and ring the bell to find the fate of the undead okay there's two bells go and ring them you ring both the bells Framps tells you your fate is to succeed lord Gwyn. cool let's go and do that it's essentially ob obfuscated from me what that actually means i just know cool i'm gonna succeed Gwyn. uh then it, i go and do but i mean they don't do tell that. you where the bells are and you don't really have to do one and does one. he says does crestfallen tell yeah, he tells and the bell you tower, and then he tells you the ones at the bottom of Blight Town. At, yeah, at the ruins at the depths of Blight Town. Yeah. And yeah, then, so, so, so you like Ubisoft games? It's like, what? shut the fuck <laughs> up, man! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, Ubisoft games. That uh, one of my They'll complaints about it Assassin's I don't even Creed know. is that there's too much story, and they try to like go away. Yeah, just go away if good. you're gonna try and like. At least listen to what I'm saying. I don't even know try. how they got that from what we said. <laughs> like, just... uh, yes. <laughs> I love the story of Splinter Cell Blacklist. Sure do love the story of going around and finding the tower and then yeah, uh, climbing it. Elden Tower. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Tom nice. Clancy's tower Elden Ring. Um, yeah, Sorry, and then the more information you find out is what is it? What is the history of this world that led to it being this way for Dark Souls? And then why does your decision matter and what does it ultimately mean? Then you get both the serpents giving you the uh, essentially both options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like maybe like this is where the open world kind of bit him in the ass when they were trying to stay with this story structure. When you get too much to see, you can easily lose sight of what you were here for. I think a good opening cutscene solves that pretty quickly, though, like it did with Dark Souls 1. Oh, can we talk? We haven't talked about that's amazing. We're at oh, eight geez. hours almost. We haven't talked about how the opening cutscene is just a rehash of the other games again. Yeah, like mm -hmm. they need oh. to think of a new way to start that the fucking games, man. That's not true, Mola. Instead of the boss rundown from the man, you get the NPC rundown. NPC rundown. <laughs> I, like, man, just... <laughs> when you watch the Dark Souls 1 opening cutscene, it is a, it's baller. It is so awesome. But with each mm -hmm. game they make, it's becoming more like, Oh yes, once again, there's a big thing. The thing and is split in into multiple corner. things. And then a bunch of these crazy creatures all grab a piece of the thing and you gotta go kill them all. I wonder if you might run into any of them. No. No. Will you succeed the last one or will you end the psych the Elden Ring? <laughs> <I> mean... <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh man. And, and uh, I don't want to be too critical of the opening in this, but I don't know, just the images instead of um, a full cutscene sort of thing. I was just like, oh, okay. Mm. I already forgot about it, if I'm being completely honest. The same I don't know why you'd remember it. It's, it was funny because, like, I think when I got to Godric, I was like, he was he was in the opening, right? Was he? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, was, was he in the opening? The, the thing I'd be critical of it for is it, it fails where Dark Souls 1 succeeded in terms of inform... Even Dark Souls 3 was fine in this count of informing you on why you're doing what you're doing and what you're doing exactly. Like, Dark Souls 1 in no in no unclear terms, informs you as to the state of the world, and then Astora, uh, well, yeah, um, you're told fairly clearly um, what you're what you're going to be doing in the game. And then Dark Souls 3, the opening cutscene, makes pretty clear what you're going to be doing in the game. A bunch of lords came back, they abdicated their thrones because fuck it, uh, you have to go and get them back. Cool. Done. And this is in service of Linking the Flame. Cool. Bloodborns is a lot more obscure, but to an extent, Dude, you could argue that plays into the game's presentation and all that. The amount of fucking work that's been done in Bloodborne's lore, like when you go looking, it's just like, Jesus Christ, they've got yeah. so much here that it makes me think they're wasting it. It needs to be adapted into other things or get a fucking sequel. What are you doing? You've got loads there's of a, this stuff here. <laughs> like, there's a comic series. They, they have a, a that's line not of good enough. comics. Yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> I want $10,300 million movies. Let's get, uh, let's get the Arcane Studio for a to make a Bloodborne <laughs> Dude, show. Dude, that would be fucking awesome. I know. Chris Pratt to voice the protagonist of Dark Soul. <laughs> Dark Soul. Dark Soul. He's the, he is Dark Soul. I am John Soul. Dark Soul. John the Dark good Soul. hunter, and he plays the doll lady. Um, for, for what it's worth for anyone angry with me over this, I understand that to most players this probably doesn't matter a lot, and that's completely fine. 
And to me, honestly, well, in terms of my experience with Elden Ring, it was only specifically damaging in the sense of my engagement with the open world. Let us take this moment to acknowledge this game is quite beloved. Um, like, bit. hardcore by many, including mm -hmm. myself, and many people here. Um, so, of course, Theo has come across as a crazy person in all of this, which is fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. I just like that we got to talk about it all. Because um, I was going to say, that probably wraps up talking about story and characters, which leaves not much left for me to say, uh, topic-wise. And I was just going to say, um, I just want to reaffirm the approach I gave today, and I don't think this is going to be shared by all of you, but this is how I feel. I kind of went with an idea of if we start with it's a masterpiece, and then I will explain all the things I don't think work. That's kind of the way I did it there. I am taking for granted all the things that I think work in this, because it's the same stuff that's worked for kind of a while, with refinements here and laws added there. The game's just frozen on the fucking replay, by the way. Like, that's, that's, this, is a, <laughs> this is a freeze screen. That's the amount it gets to loading before it freezes. Um, but yeah, um, I really love this game. I'm not going to have trouble replaying it. I think it slots in really well. I like it as an attempt to make Dark Souls but open world sort of thing. With all of my criticisms involved, I still really, really like it. Uh, I think maybe it's worthwhile to do this as a closing thing. Not necessarily to close the stream, but just after everything we've discussed, have your thoughts in any way changed and what do you think now? I'm just saying I still love it. There's still plenty, I think, to love and I enjoyed the fuck out of my time with it, even with all of the horrible, frustrating things. All the things we've highlighted as problems as well as, like, enemies that I just fucking despise that I even had to fight, that still doesn't <laughs> represent anywhere near to the whole experience as far as I'm concerned. I just want that yeah. said and explained. But um, I'm going to leave it up to whoever wants to go next with, with this sort of idea, all right? I'm just going to sit down now. Someone else can take it. I, I want to just time. mention kind of quickly... I've been doing a whole bunch of criticizing, but I don't want that to be taken as me not having things that I like about this game. There are things that I like, and I think it does make palpable improvements on the Souls formula if they're going to keep going in this action-oriented direction. I think the game does a few things right. I think one of the main areas of improvement for me has been magic. They made the magic like vastly more interesting in this game than it ever was in the previous ones, and the game is a bit better at accounting for your ability to use it. So I think, you know, bravo on that. Good job on trying like to make shields. like the memory shields. stone system in that regard, yeah. Yeah, actually. Uh, that's a very good system. I think... Hmm. It's something that I don't think is entirely fair, but I don't know about cycling spells and even items by using the d-pad because that means i have to stop moving but again i don't know where else you'd put it so i don't think i can very yeah. fairly criticize Pat that loser, you don't engage the claw hand claw hand oh, i yeah. have to engage with the claw hand but i try to reserve the claw hand for games that you know deserve it like Devil oh, May Cry. oh god oh. you were these things theo you didn't you fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> shit you're right i'll, I'll stay <laughs> From a control standpoint, just the, that reminded me, the claw hand reminded me, I play with an Xbox Elite controller, and I've got those paddles on the back that you can kind of map to any button. Game changer when I mapped B to one of the paddles on the mm -hmm. left. And now anytime I pop over to the PlayStation to like fiddle around with the console version, because that, that's the one I've been streaming, I don't have that paddle. So I'm like, oh no, I can't control the camera while running anymore without doing the claw <laughs> and it's uh it really makes me wish that paddles on the back of controllers were a, a default thing on everything but in, sadly still no oh this bitch got a cutscene. she's not a story boss is she <laughs> mm. is this the bitch at the bottom of the helling tree yeah <laughs> good luck what color is her hair i'm a, I'm hey, a good one um who else wants to give more closing thoughts thoughts I mean, I've been playing it all through the stream, just on the side, just fucking around everywhere. Uh, it's pretty much the same for me. I thought I would be more disappointed at the end after we're done, but pretty much everything I already thought about it was already caught up as well. So it not really changed that much. I think it was pretty much the same things that I already talked about on my streams and everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I'm already almost through my second playthrough. Mm, having a co playthrough plan with Fortia, which we're gonna uh, play on stream, so that's gonna be fun. I, I started a new playthrough on a YouTube stream last night, just with some faith. I'm gonna do that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get like a fuck ton of hours out of this game. 
and I will be returning to that game at some point later again when I'm finally bored of the game for the time being. I'm certain there's going to be DLC coming out at some point. I would be oh, very yeah. surprised they if not. Um, just no what, what was it, like 12 no million copies this thing sold? Yeah, yeah 12 but, million copies. Dude, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Elden Ring 2 is already in production. This is the most <laughs> popular FromSoft game by orders of magnitude. Ever. Yeah, um, yeah, they didn't even expect it to sell and, that well. I think they, they, they were expecting like I think that's way a, less in the, much more time. I think this is a good place to talk about a subject I actually did mean to bring up, but I kind of forgot, which is almost, I'd consider it the meta. Uh, this game exists in a particular place that I absolutely love that it does. It, it like, it comes out, it is more, more than three times the content that you get in most full fledged, mm -hmm. like, AAA games of high price these days for mm -hmm. the same price. Absolutely nuts amount of content. It is insane, it is intense, I can't over-exaggerate it, it is impossible. The amount of time you can spend in this game compared to... A friend of mine was like, oh, you know, this this game, I've, I've, I realize already I've spent more time in it in like a week than I have in all of my time with Halo Infinite. And it's just like, yeah. they're a fan of Halo Infinite as well. Like, it's, it, it, well, yeah. I'm not sure if they are right now. <laughs> because <laughs> you know how it works. Oh, yeah, didn't um, the player base drop off like really hard on Infinite? Yeah. Because, yeah. because there's um, no new content. Yep. This game I got took so long. 34 in Infinite and 150 in Elden Ring. So this game <laughs> took so long to get through. It was so fucking interesting to watch the conversation evolve over the days going by. Like people were citing, "Oh, the most annoying enemy is this, this, this," and like one person would post Millennia, and people would be like, "Who the fuck's that?" <laughs> like, it's just like, uh, yeah, right. Because everyone's at different stages. It takes so long to beat this game because there's so much to do. And then, of course, mm. there's no microtransactions. How did you do yeah. it? How did you create a <laughs> game with no micro? I didn't know that was possible. possible. Um, and it, you know, and they, and did, and they is... didn't even they didn't even brag before it came. Nope. It's like, oh, this is gonna have like a million things to do. There's like, oh yeah, here's Elden Ring. You you, you wanted that? You right? can miss have fun. huge portions of the game. They just don't care. I like what the entirety of Mount Gelmir, like all of it. Exactly. It's an absolutely insane. Uh, bang for your buck. One that mm -hmm. I'm not even... Is this, like, the biggest bang for your buck for a game? Might be. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like Witcher 3 maybe fights it. Yeah, I could see that. With the, DLC With the DLC for Witcher 3, maybe, yeah. Witcher 3 is big, Witcher 3's got a Although, shit I guess, ton of stuff in it. Yeah, also, I guess Witcher, you've got to kind of take into account how much more time they spent on doing things like recording voice lines and writing. Where is this, like, Elden Ring, again, like, we were kind of addressing that on the story end, but it's much more focused on gameplay being the thing that you're here for. Mm hmm Whereas Witcher, like, you can play Witcher on story mode or whatever they call the easiest mode there and still still enjoy it quite a lot. Whereas I think if you, if you added, a, like, a games journalist hand-holding mode into this game, it would kind of kill it. Um, yeah. Mm. And yeah, to sort of close it out, just the um, it's an intense amount of uh, content, and the the price is just normal. It's not even like yeah. they said they could have chopped like a Gelmir or the Halic the Halic Tree could have been DLC. None of us oh, would have absolutely. bad a fucking eye if that was cut out of the game and sold as DLC. They could have done that. Mm -hmm. It's insane and intense that they didn't, and I love the fact that it can baffle so many fucking de developers right now, or maybe not developers, just producers. Be like, how could this be possible? Yeah. How you know, how do we replicate something so successful? And it's like, well, they didn't do any of the usual shit. We might yeah. have to just make a game. <laughs> <laughs> just take time. Just oh take God. fucking time to make it. Because this started developing during Sekiro or right before it or something? Uh, they were concurrent. I think uh, Elden Ring started before Sekiro. And yeah, Sekiro like seven first. years or something. Like this, this is what happens when you take time with your game. Well, and, and, right. and From Software have had copycats now for a while. They still can't be beaten in making these types of games. Yeah. And granted, they've had an engine that they can build on and build on and build on and experience teammates, but I'm just saying, like, there's so many people who have tried to copy them. P people argue that Neo is better in some respects. I, I, I've i played yeah, all of the original Neo, and I, I you could maybe argue that the combat is, but yeah, I, the I always found it ten times better. But Combat the world is, is not, and neither is the story. <laughs> By comparison. My, I think my initial problem with Neo was just how the world came together. 
Yeah. yeah, same. I couldn't have a. And it was it was, was like, not oh, well told. It. They had cut scenes and everything, and I still didn't understand what the fuck was happening. The, yeah. the, the level, more like nice. this, this yes. level select thing going on with the uh, with the card, uh, the Mission map, map yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Neo even weaved in and out of actual history and didn't make much sense. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't never for me. Not because it was bad or something. I was just like, oh, I don't know. I'm just not into this. Kind of, the way I always said it is that Neo was the Ninja Gaiden team making a Dark Souls game, and Sekiro <laughs> yeah. is the Dark Souls team making a Ninja Gaiden game. <laughs> yeah, that's not an unfair comparison. I do earnestly believe that if FromSoft are going to keep going in this direction, that Sekiro is the blueprint to take from rather than Souls. Yeah, Sek Sekiro is still my personal favorite, but uh, again, I think the the <laughs> narrow play style of Sekiro is is probably why it would be hard for me to make the objective argument for it, and zero multiplayer at all, too. You know, yeah, I really liked Sekiro, but I, I did one playthrough and like half of a new game plus one. It's like, I don't, I mean, I know what's going on now. I know how to fight the bosses. You need to I don't play really that. Want to play it again. For me, it's so funny. I'm um I'm happy with Dark Souls. I don't need another one. I'm chill. I've had my fill sort of thing. I'm very happy with Dark Souls 1 and 3 and, and Elden Ring is even good. I want another Bloodborne because I like <laughs> oh, yeah. Bloodborne so yeah. goddamn much and I think they fucked up so many things that can be fixed in Bloodborne with a sequel. It's like, give me, Here's... Give me more. I want more Bloodborne. Here's the question though. Would you want Bloodborne 2 to take cues from Elden Ring and be in like a... Uh... Uh, oh, not post-apocalyptic, but like a big open world thing no. where you've got a no, horse. No, 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 and, no, no, eh? no. Please, no. no. God, Bloodborne, there's so much right in Bloodborne that I, I just feel like just follow along from that. Just make all the tweaks you need. First of all, get that FPS up. For fuck's sake. Get it <laughs> oh, up. yeah. Make a frame rate. Look at the blood vial system. I'm sure there's something we can do there. Um, no. people, people are like, no, we'll let it stay. It's like, well, no, we could trust Rob to make a decent Bloodborne too. It's not like Disney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of the rumors have been saying that Blue Point's just going to be making Bloodborne too. That uh, From apparently doesn't have any interest in um, returning to it. I, I don't know I, how credible why? they are, but if this game is proof what? of anything, it's that From Software will not let you down. Well, that's the thing. I think it would <laughs> that would be nice if Fronsfoff like made the game and then Bluepoint executed it to make it actually run good. <laughs> we're we're in business. Yeah, De Demon mm. Souls looks looks fantastic. I, I think you could argue that the the visuals in Demon Souls are better than Elden Ring, but uh, yeah, and it's like uh, it performs really well. It's like you know smooth as butter. I suppose, and I want to address it, because there's some people who have this thought, and it's just like, well, why not something new in general? Something newer than even Sekiro or Bloodborne are to Dark Souls, newer than that. And it's like, well, sure. Sure. Yeah. I'm not against that. Awesome. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I'm down for them to make whatever they want to make, but I I've would, said it my before. preference is uh, towards innovation, but... I'm not. I'm less so with that right now. I'm just desperate for another Bloodborne soundtrack, gimme. <laughs> yeah. Just skip the game, just give me the soundtrack. You know, PC port motherfucker. Uh, hurry also the fuck that, up. Yeah. But that, yeah, that's Elden Ring then. I, I, yeah. Anything else anybody wants to say about it? No, I'm just going to play the fuck out of it until I die. Mm -hmm. it's, it's killing me that I can't play it more than I already have because, like, there's a lot going on. But the fact that, like, I'm still itching to play it this long, even, in, even this long into it, I'm still itching. Mm -hmm. So something. So. And there's going. nothing really anything out right now that I want to play instead of. Oh um, right. right. So, no. should we uh, yeah, should yeah. we give a number? Ooh, Ooh. Tough. Nine out of ten. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I already I'm, Theo, you're going last, buddy. I'm gonna go with. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go with uh, a really because with everything that I've said. I still think about how this game sits in relation to all our other games, just in our fucking world, and I, I want to say it's... I'm going to give it a solid 7.5 to 8. Yeah, I'm the same. Like I said in the, in the beginning, somewhere between 7.5 and 8.
7.5 no, <laughs> somewhere 7. between 8. 7, 5 and 8 <laughs> <laughs> I realized I kind of ate that point there in the middle. I was like, it's like kind of 7 between 7, 5 and 8 just take a number <laughs> uh, I'm the same same uh, same as you all right, I'm Mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna go eight with um, the possibility to go up to a nine once they've smoothed out all the technical issues. As much as like I, I do think that there are some like uh, all, all the things we discussed as far as design issues go, I I think the overall experience is still extremely high quality, like to the point that. I, I think if if I was asked, hey, make a list of your your top ten games of all time, I like it, it, there's a bit of recency bias, obviously, but I I don't think that I could not include this game, and I mean I, I don't know, it's it's just I I've had such an amazing time playing it. That said, I mean obviously there's the objective criticisms that we've gone over, so eight slash nine ish, and I just don't do point fives. Fair enough. Um, is it, I think that's everyone. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's everyone. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> oh, fuck. Jeez, come on. I give it man. an Elden Ring out of 10, whatever that is. Uh, for context, I guess, very quickly, before I give the number to Elden Ring, I give Dark Souls 1 an 8 for all I rabbit on about it. That game gets an 8. It's not better than an 8. There's a lot wrong with it. This game, I've gone back and forth in terms of numbers quite a lot. Right now, I've settled on a 6. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty reasonable considering the rest of our scores. Well, the funny part to me is that I probably agree with you on Dark Souls 1. Uh, it's just yeah. my favorite. <laughs> it's not that it means it's any, like, yeah, you know, it's how it works. I guess it might be worth stating, by the way, I imagine all of us have a scale that is different than what is often used for video games, where, like, anything yes. lower than an 8 is considered to be, like, seriously oh, yeah, fuck lacking. That. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Five is average. Five is average. Five is, five is five. average. Yeah, five is average. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was, man, I was asked, like, I think it was last night, it's like, oh, what would you give that, uh, what would you give Elden Ring? It's like, oh, yeah, probably like a 7.5 to 8. And it's like, man, that's low. It's like, low? That's like a really that's good really score. That's really high. Yeah, the problem, yeah, the <laughs> problem is really that you think that's, that's low. That's how it works in the video game world, because yeah, uh, Elden Ring yeah. Metacritic is 97. I could probably, um, and, and IGN six is a real world two. So. Yeah, kind of. Um, mm -hmm. And I, what I hope is that we move the scale a bit to something more normal. Yeah. So that it's not that if it's anything below a seven point five, that everybody thinks it sucks. Like, we need to fix the scale that we think about with video games to be more like film. Fellas, there's I some the really fucking good video scale. games out there. Hell yeah! Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. There, are, I can well, probably I, count on one hand the games I would give above an eight. I'd need to think about it more. But off the top of my head, I can come up with like a three. tough score to give out. It's same for movies, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I feel um, I have less hmm. variables by far. Um, I I wonder that there are only on one hand video games that you could rate higher than an eight. Ones that I have played hmm. and would be confident in my rating thereof. I guess it's worth stipulating. Right. Okay. Are you adjusting for time? Like, are you saying, like, well, when the, this came out in 1997, it was the best thing I'd ever I'm not played? Sure how no, I don't, I don't that believe in Metroid dating in that. Yeah. yeah okay. I yeah, no, fair, yeah. fair enough. Super That's, uh, Metroid. I think Super yeah. Metroid is super strong yeah. now. Tetris is like, is yeah. like Tetris. Yeah. Uh, space but that's invaders. It's so much more um, simple. There's so Quake. many. The original Quake. Original Quake, I still think, is one of the yeah. best games ever. Yeah. I don't know how much I. I'm not sure what it means when people say dating. You're like, if something becomes dated, I think it's a little, you know, I guess uh, control schemes can become antiquated, but I don't even know that mm. that's the right um, word to describe I mean, it. Like, I don't Yeah. Know. To defend them to some degree, like, in the equivalent for movies, it's just if someone really went frame by frame in, like, Star Wars, as in A New Hope, and they were like, these special effects don't even hold up. It's like, okay, but they were incredible, considering they came out 50 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm still okay with you judging them by modern standards because I actually do think there are some movies out there that can survive that scrutiny. I think video games are difficult as well because, for instance, maybe I don't need to say it because people would figure it out, I think Tetris is probably... I... Oh, man. It's, it's, I don't like making definitive statements. Tetris is incredible, but it almost feels a little bit unfair because it's so straightforward fundamentally. So it's like, like man. Well, yeah, like, is it fair to compare Elden Ring to something like Tetris? Well, that's what we bring up like about Tetris Lord of the Rings, is... right? 
well yeah yeah right like um do you how do you compare a bottle episode how do you compare 12 angry men to lord of the rings you know one of them is a yeah. massive story in a fantasy world uh that has several major characters and um it's many like there are so many more modifiers lines, yeah. yeah and i think with video games it becomes really clear because the, the more complex these games make the more variables there are at play the design of like super mario world is pretty radically simpler than super mario odyssey even though both games are about jumping through a level they're both platformers where you need to get to the end well get to the end in a sense but they're really different it's not fair but at the same time it is fair right because they're both video games they're mm. both games that provide an experience to you that is whatever it, you know whatever it ends up being um I, I think that's one of the interesting things about the video game medium that the the range between different products and different genres can be so dramatically wide that it would it would almost be like comparing a Pixar short like one of those little like five minute things that happens in front of a Pixar movie to like five seasons of a TV show like which one of those is better it's like I don't know I think the the singing volcanoes from the I don't know that I always remember that ukulele song and stuff is uh, is better than Breaking Bad. And it's like, well, I mean, <laughs> should they even I be think... on the same scale together? <laughs> like, right, and it gets that's... awkward with video games because how do I like Katana Zero is a game that provides like a very strong, yeah. you know, it is it is X hours of of uh, of gameplay that is very specifically trying to be this thing and it executes on it really well. How do I compare that to League of Legends, a totally different game that you're expected to play for hundreds or potentially thousands of hours with a vast amount of content? Like, it, it's... How do I compare these two in terms of saying, you know, how well it achieves what it's trying to be? And also, how much does it matter what a game is trying to be versus what it ends up being? Um, yeah, it's what about where resources, the, the math, you know? The math and review store scores starts to get really messy. Because <laughs> it's well, a, yeah, because that's why I don't put when, numbers on my, my videos. Well, it's like... How do I rate Super Mario Galaxy as a game overall versus how would I rate it as a platformer versus how would I rate it as compared to the rest of the games in the Mario series? I think that those comparisons can make a big difference more so than comparing, I don't know, one superhero film to other superhero films. It's like, well, they're all films fundamentally. They're all roughly the same length. They all have narrative structures that translate to different genres yeah the the point of this is that an eight amongst this crowd is really high yes mm -hmm. yes i agree and with that um we're at eight hours so we will uh yeah. probably end there <laughs> and we will hours? do we, it's eight hours it's insane uh, it's fucking 4 a.m i legit didn't <laughs> fuck me all right we will Here we go uh, do all the super chats for this one uh, on the Wednesday. They'll be the first ones we catch up with, and then just catch up in general. Because um, I'm gonna allow everybody to do life things. Though before we we run off into the wilderness, uh, I guess we should talk a little about who we've got here today. We'll start with good old Mark the Cyborg, since you haven't been here in a little while. What are you Hello. up to, Sam? Where can people find you? Um, I have been working on a, a big kind of documentary on the, the Metroid series where I, I played every single one of the Metroid games and uh, wrote, written my longest video yet, but uh, I was in school doing some extra army medic training over the last few months, and then I was almost finished getting through the audio editing and Elden Ring came out, so hopefully <laughs> if, you, if you guys do want to sub to my channel, there will be a big video on Metroid coming soon, and um, I'm going to be playing Elden Ring with my wife on Sunday after she's done playing Dying Light 2 with As and Quarter Black Lair Garrett. But uh, yeah, I make videos. Hi. Well, I got you linked in chat and the description. Thanks so much for uh, spending eight hours with us talking about this video. Yeah, yeah it's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Um, hmm. Gosh, how do I even... Uh, I mean, because Theo, you still haven't made any videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And yet you have Working. so many opinions to share. You must make videos. I should, I should really get on that. I, mm -hmm. I still have that Devil May Cry thing that I futz with from time to time. I have a bit of it that I could maybe just shave off and make into a video on its own. I don't know. Maybe try that so that I can just make something short. We'll see. Very well. 
Uh, Moodle. What have you been oh, up to lately, nice. you little fuck? Whoa, I'm a big fuck. Excuse me. Uh, all, all kinds of stuff. Like, we have a fuck ton of Elden Ring streams. Like, I don't think I've ever streamed that much in a row in multiple days. Uh, so basically like, all hundred hours plus have been streamed and are being released on the Archive channel if you don't want to watch them on the Twitch. Uh, also, Metal's Forge every week now with Schmexy graphics. Uh, looking real, real, real schmexy. Thumbnails, overlay, looks good as shit. Omega Ridley did the big good uh, on that. Really good shit. Go check him out. There's some... We, we did... Uh, Who was afraid of Virginia Wolf two weeks ago? I thought that was Parkus. And uh, two days ago, I talked about Shoot 'em Up, which is just a really fun movie to talk about. Uh, so yeah, go check that out. And next week, I'll have a meme repository on, and we're going to talk about some... Superman animated schlemes, Ooh, uh, right on. which is what was it? Uh, Superman versus the Elite. Oh, good movie. So, so apparently that one is supposed to be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yesterday I did a live stream on the Archive channel on YouTube because I remembered that months ago I did a poll on the YouTube channel, and there were a lot of people who don't even watch on Twitch. I was like, oh, I should probably do some live streams for those people, and then I did three, and then we did the. The Halloween one, and then I never did another one again, and then I felt bad, so I did <laughs> one of those again. <laughs> so I might, uh, I might think about doing more of those, maybe like once a week on the YouTube channel there, just doing some things there. So yeah, mm. I'm just, I'm just pumping out the content for you guys. So Whoa. you better go fucking subscribe, or I'll eat your toes. Oh no, I need those. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Das. Is there anything you wanted to talk about, or any way, shape, form? Uh, Gadelb's in the works, boys. Oh, yeah. It's, I'm doing the best Woo! I can. <laughs> uh, well, Fringy and Rags? I don't know. Is there anything you guys want to talk about? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> Comic's done. Yeah, right now i got to figure out, and I'm working on, it's just working, working on this. And Leviathan. <laughs> well, yeah, still even be. working on it. I have still not begun work. I, I did work on Gedelb, and now I'm working on something else, which you will see in a week's time. That's got nothing to do with my main channel. It's an EFAP thing. Oh boy, <laughs> next week's going to be an interesting oh, time. I don't know if you... I, 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 I... There's a little... I did a little work for Gedelb. He did. I did. All right. Oh, did you, you guys... You did what? you guys sort that out? <laughs> no. Uh... Well, <laughs> We're not going to say what it said is, anything, frankly. To be fair... I didn't, re I didn't know if he knew. I thought it would well, be a surprise. So, <laughs> fucking people in chat will be able to figure it out, because it was written live, what thing you're referring to. <laughs> I don't know why, why <laughs> you treat it like it's a huge I'm, secret. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ruined it. <laughs> but I have ruined it's it. Oh, well. It's still, it's still funny. Be, it is funny. It's still going to be fun. <laughs> don't worry. It's going to be great. Uh, but yes, well, okay then, yeah, just, as as you heard, stuff is on the way, um, and that, that's about that. I'm really glad that we managed to get through so much Elden Ring chatter, and, um, it's really nice that we had a game like that come out that was real nice. It was real nice, okay? Okay, Theo! Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. But seriously. Theo. Stop uh, yelling at me, Theo. What the fuck? I like things. Sorry. Thank <laughs> you all for creating such a fun little chat, and, uh, I suppose... Uh, well, of course, and thanks, chat, for creating a fun little chat. And thank yeah, you for the chat, donations and the company. And that's that's it for tonight. Good night, and we shall see you next bye -bye. time. Good night, everybody. How do you bye. Sleep? Bye. Good night. Sleep tight. Do not let the Elden Rings bite. Yeah. What even is it? Bye. Whatever it is, don't let it bite. <laughs> Goodbye. See you bye. later. Bye. The elderly people are coming. Bye. Ah.